just like a stakeout. Show me you got soul inside those new shoes. And you can rock and roll with the attitude. So good, so fresh, just the way you like it. Charles Barkley, the focus in her eyes is unparalleled. He's found the power. So I've got goosebumps. This is the bit that gets me. He's so happy. Look at him. He's in disbelief. To the Iron Man banner, the red carpet. They created history today. Going to be an American record for the fastest Iron Man. But now this man has emerged. Executed the perfect victory. victory. Hello everyone and welcome to the 2022 Ironman Hamburg European Championship set in this beautiful city, the third largest, oh sorry, second largest city in Germany, Didi Griesbauer. I am Greg Welch joining us here in studio on an absolutely picturesque morning. We're looking forward to a great day. Absolutely. Of course, the city of Hamburg seeped in triathlon history home, not only to the WTCS championship races, over the past, uh, also host to Ironman celebrating the fifth year of competition here in Hamburg, headlining our professional women here, the Ironman European Championship. Of course, the pro men will have their European Championship in Frankfurt at the end of the month. Yeah, coming up uh, June 26th down there in Frankfurt. But uh, right now we are fed by the Elbe River that goes into the North Sea right here. And we are going to be cycling along the Elbe River all day long today. We're going to be running four laps in beautiful downtown Hamburg. And this is the scene to get us all started today. Yes, we'll be swimming right here in the Alsen Alster. We're going to be going under the Kennedy Bridge and then into the majority of the swim course today, which is, going to, sorry, we're going to be starting in the Binnen Alster and then over into the Alsen Alster as well. So, Didi, we've got a little section in uh, in the Alsen Alster, uh, sorry, Binnen Alster and then under the bridge for the majority of the swim course today. And, of course, our camera says it uh, best. The scenic behind us says it best. Stunningly beautiful city. Going to be some fast, fast racing here today. Weather picture perfect for our athletes. Yep, so right now we should go over and take a look at the course and we'll start with the swim, uh, which we were saying that uh, starts right here in the Binnenalster, right in Hamburg. And we do a clockwise swim course. Why don't you take it away? Absolutely. The clockwise swim course taking uh, uh, athletes uh, under from the inner sea to the outer sea. Single loop course, lots of spectators on each of those two bridges. Uh, again, making a clockwise turn before they come back into one of the longest transitions in Ironman history. That's right. And <laughs> as they go out on the bike course outside of Hamburg, they go along the Elba River. They get out to the 60-kilometer point, and that's where they'll make a U-turn right at this section right there. Along the Elba River, back into town for two laps of this glorious bike ride. Really flat going today, so uh, records can be spoken of maybe at the end of the day. Absolutely. And the run course, uh, Greg, one of the athletes' favorite run courses, four loops for 42.2 kilometers or 26.2 miles for the Hoka run course here. Very flat, very fast times, takes athletes through the heart of the city of Hamburg. And I t can tell you those spectators will be out there in droves cheering them every step of the way. Yes, the uh, biggest hill on the course will be uh, going up onto the bridge today. So uh, <laughs> that's uh, as far as that goes. But there we can see all the kilometre markers and the mile markers out there. By Hoka, yes, that is 26.2 miles and 42.2 kilometres on the marathon run course today. Athletes now set for a start. We've got some of our pro women there just getting focused and uh, going through the race in their mind right now. And for the age groupers, we have thousands of age groupers down here today warming up, preparing for their day to get underway here at 6.15 local time. Absolutely. It's going to be a stunner of a day and a fast, fast day. We've got some tremendous professional female athletes racing here for the title of Ironman European Champion. And of course, three uh, qualifying slots to the Ironman World Championship 
to take place on the Big Island of Hawaii out in Kona in October. So lots on the line for our athletes here today. Yeah, a couple of our athletes have already, you know, qualified. Uh, we can, you know, talk about that, Renee Kiley and also uh, Laura Phillip. And, and Laura Phillip, let's just talk a little bit about her right now because she's coming back from a bout of, uh, you know, COVID-19 and then she raced last weekend at Crash Cow at the 70.3 in Germany, winning the race and uh, having a, a good time of it, you know, defeating, uh, you know, Diana Blamel. So uh, we know that she's in, you know, great shape coming into this race today. So as the athletes get focused, uh, what is it going to take to uh, take her down today? I think it's going to take something special. She's proven that she is truly on form, but the day is going to prove to be a great day for racing. Uh, right now, it is sunny. We expect some clouds coming in later. Right now, temperatures 50 degrees Fahrenheit, 10 degrees Celsius. Expected to climb up to 76 degrees Fahrenheit, 24 degrees Celsius by the end of the day. The water temperature 66.3 degrees Fahrenheit or 19.1 Celsius. So all of our athletes, both professionals and age groupers, will be in wetsuits today. 91% humidity. I think that's indicative of the rain that's coming later this week. So the athlete's very lucky to be getting this race underway today because tomorrow we're expecting rain here in Hamburg. Yeah, perfect racing conditions as it's uh, lining up right now. We're getting very close to a start. We're just under uh, eight minutes for a start right now, right here in Hamburg. So perfect weather conditions should uh, set our athletes off on the good stead as they get underway in the opening discipline right here in Hamburg. And that is going to be the 2.4 miles or 3.8 kilometers right here in Hamburg. And as we see now, a lot of our age group athletes just lining up. Our professional women athletes are still in the water, just having a little bit of a, you know, preparation time. As you can see there, the lower left uh, hand side of the screen there, as we can uh, tell you that a lot of races have been happening here in Hamburg and uh, we are celebrating five years of Ironman, but world championships in the Olympic distance has been held in ha Hamburg, you know, for a number of years and they keep coming back here. It's been a sprint, it's been the Olympic distance, but a lot of the athletes have actually won those championships are now people like Ironman world champions. Jan Fredino and Annie Haugs actually won a world championship here in the mixed relay in 2013 as well. So big history of triathlon in Hamburg. A lot of history and, of course, the fans here in Hamburg, they know all about triathlon. Whether they're triathletes themselves, I'm sure a lot of them uh, watch these races, whether it's the WTCS uh, short course racing or the Ironman events. Uh, all of these athletes getting a tremendous amount of support from the locals here. And I think a few of the locals getting inspired to come out and try a triathlon themselves. Yep, it's no easy feat to uh, organize a major city Ironman triathlon. And you're talking about the second largest city, only the second outside of Berlin in Germany as we get a beautiful overhead shot of our Roka swim start area right now. And Till Shank and Paul Kay are down there, the local uh, commentators on the ground. They're going to be getting all of our athletes underway here at 6.15, coming up in less than uh, seven minutes. And we can see the crowd starting to form here at the swim start slash swim exit. Of course, we see the, the arch there where the swimmers will go into the water. Uh, and on the left of your screen there, uh, that's where the athletes will exit the water. Of course, some notable things about our, our course. It's a single loop swim course, two loops on the bike, flat and fast, as we've said, in four loops through the heart of Hamburg on the run. And as we said, three professional qualifying slots for the Ironman World Championship uh, in Kailua, Kona, Hawaii this October. So a lot on the line today for these athletes. Yeah, an amazing course. And they'll be looping around uh, twice on the bike, like you said. So the spectators will be able to uh, see their favorite athletes. They can also see it on the Ironman Tracker as well. So if you don't have the tracker, you can go to the App Store and Ironman Tracker. That's all you need to download. Once you get there, you just type in their number or their surname and hit enter and it will pull up live timing and live results right to that minute. So there we go. We can see our pro athletes uh, lining up right now, our women in the Ironman Hamburg European Championship. For our women today, Laura Phillip is heading our women's field today. We've had a couple of late pullouts. You know, Diana uh, Blamel was one of those uh, of note. It would have been great to see the two Germans, uh, you know, big, big race against those two. Yeah, absolutely. Daniela Blymel, they had a great battle last weekend at the 70.3. Uh, would have been nice to see them battle today. Nikki Bartlett also appeared on the start list, mm -hmm. but both Daniela uh, and Nikki, I believe, are opting to race in Frankfurt in a few weeks' time, giving both of them a little bit more time after that Ironman World Championship uh, in St. George. Not all that long ago, just taking a little bit more time between between races to get prepared for that. But still, some great athletes here today. Of course, we talked about Laura Phillips. She is a strong favorite today, but we're seeing the Ironman debut of Chelsea Sodaro, the American. A lot of eyes on her to see how she's going to do. The French woman, Manon Genet, 
uh, cream of the crop in terms of her run ability. So we'll see her uh, very strong swim and bike come through on the run as well. Uh, Leanne Fenoy, another favorite uh, that we'll be seeing today. And Renee Kiley from Australia back here. She was second here last year at this event. And Jenny Schultz too. Uh, yes, yeah, so we think that she's... Uh uh, a pull out, so uh, just recently, so she's out of the race. Bib number 15 has been scratched, so uh, Renee Kiley will be slotting into that position right there. All right, so we're just about four and a half minutes away from our race start right now. You see on a beautiful morning here in Hamburg, and we are just about set to get the Minnenal star. Yep. That will be the first port of call for our women athletes here as they go under the Kennedy Brooker as well, under the Kennedy Bridge. And then the majority of the swim is going to be in the Austin Ulster as well there on a clockwise loop. Not going to be too hard to uh, navigate around this course, TD. No, no, absolutely not. And right there in the red cap, we are seeing our race favorite. That is Laura Phillip. Uh, we do have some other color-coded caps. That neon green cap, that is Chelsea Sodaro. Uh, if you see a neon yellow cap, that is going to be Manon Genet. Uh, right there, you do see that yellow cap. And then uh, the Aussie, Renee Kiley, will be in a white cap. So some of our notable females uh, in some, some special colored cap there. So keep an eye out for those if those are the, the athletes that you're cheering for. Yep, you got uh, Sodoro, Jeanne, and Kylie all standing very, very close to each other there. Our four seated athletes in the seated caps there. They will be led by Laura Phillips. She should be one of the first athletes out of the water today as well. Uh, a little bit more superior, you know, in the opening discipline. And we'll see, you know, Renee, uh, you know, Kylie and, and possibly Menon Jeanne and Chelsea Sodoro, you know, possibly come back a little bit at Laura Phillip, possibly not. But uh, my money today is on Laura Phillip for sure. She's got something to prove. She was out with COVID. She came back last week in the 70.3 in Crash Girl and absolutely dominated um, over, you know, Diana Blamel. So it should be a good day today and we cannot wait to get you underway here in less than three minutes. Absolutely. Talk about the nerves the athletes are feeling at this point. We've got less than five minutes to go before the start of their day. The work is done. The nutrition's down the hatch. Right now, it's just managing the nerves before you can get in and, and get underway. I've seen a couple of those wetsuits are uh, not very wet. So uh, <laughs> I think that some of the athletes actually chose to do a dry land warm up, you know, with the, the pulley cords, uh, you know, next to, you know, those barriers there. And, and some would have got in the water. Um, what would you have done, Didi, in this respect? Uh, you know, with 66 water temperature, it's absolutely perfect. It is. It's a nice temperature, but the air is still a bit chilly. I still believe we're down in 50 degrees Fahrenheit, so it's a little bit of a chill in the air. So coming out of that water back into some cold air, I think I would have played it by ear and seen how I felt race morning. If I, if I had a bit of a chill that morning, I might have opted for the dry land, but I always like to get in and feel the water. That's the swimmer in me. I think that's an individual choice, uh, and we can obviously see some of our professional women opted to get in and swim. Uh, some opted to just do some, some jumping jacks, get the shoulders loose, uh, get themselves ready to go on land as we look here at, our, again, our seated athletes in the red cap there, race favorite. Laura Phillip, going to be really hard for any of the athletes uh, to upset her today. I think Chelsea Sodaro could potentially lead her out of the, the water. Um, again, we don't have seated times. We don't have predictions because Chelsea's never done an Ironman. So Chelsea doesn't know what Chelsea's capable and of, but she's a very strong swimmer coming from that 70.3 background. And that will be a talking point of the day as well, Dee Dee. We will be talking about Chelsea Sodoro. She will be doing her first. So this is a debut uh, performance. The uh, women athletes have now been asked to enter the water, head out to the uh, the two black uh, Roka buoys there. That's going to be the start line for our race Today. They're being introduced to the crowd right now, uh, you know, in the uh, um, numerical order downways, uh, you know, from number 20 down to number one. There goes number three, that is Manon Genet. Number two will be Chelsea Sodoro. And last of all, and the favourite's going to be Laura Phillip, the local from Germany. So look for a clean start coming up in less than one minute. And the athletes lining up there behind the start line. We've got a little rope across the start line to hold our professional women in line. Of course, our age groupers will follow um, it, like little lemmings into the water in a rolling start, starting a handful of athletes at the time based on self-seated swim predictions. But our professional women lining up here between the two kayaks, between the two floating Roka inflatables, ready to get their day underway. There's the Kennedy Bridge, and we can see that uh, the swim buoy is set up nicely. They'll be going through the left-hand tunnel on that bridge, and then they will set out onto the 
the second part of the swim course. So we're just 10 seconds away. We are right here in the Binnenalster in Germany, in Hamburg, for the start of the 2022 Ironman Hamburg European Championship. Well, there we go. We're underway, Didi, with a clean start there, with a, a lame uh, little start <laughs> there. I thought it was, that was a... not befitting an Ironman <laughs> European Championship start cannon, I don't think. But we are underway, nevertheless. Uh, our professional women here underway. We see two distinct packs forming. I see that yellow cap um, of Chelsea Sodaro and, of course, the green cap. Um, Manon Genet Manon is Genet. in second right now. And you can see right behind that is Renee Kiley. Uh, she's sitting on the fourth uh, position at this point in time. And then Laura Phillip is sitting right behind Chelsea Sodoro, trying to get into the draft and the bubbles at this stage. But we did see distinctively two different sides were starting. And there we go. Get a good look at that. And all four of our top seeded women have chosen the left-hand side. Absolutely, and again, two packs of athletes. It's a straightaway to that Kennedy Bridge where there'll be spectators lined. They were out there from the time the sun came up this morning, which was pretty early, Greg. So uh, they were out there getting the, the, uh, the first class seats to watch all of the swimmers swim under that bridge as they make their way from the inner harbor here out into the, the, the outermost, the, the sort of the meat and potatoes of our swim course today. Yeah, we can see Menon Genet, the French lady here. The French woman is getting off to a really nice start. Uh, Chelsea Sodoro in the neon green uh, cap on the farther part of the, uh, the TV shot right now. We can tell you that uh, they are going at it right now, side by side, first and second place there. But uh, you can see that now Renee Kylie is just slipping off the back of that uh, group yeah. already. So Sodoro and Genet are off to a great start. I love the way that uh, Jeanne is really throwing her, you know, self at this swim course. And the most beautiful conditions on a glorious morning, Didi, as you set up on the Kennedy Bridge just a moment ago. People lining this course, and I've been here before and I've seen it firsthand. It goes crazy. In oh. the afternoon, it is absolutely packed down there. And it's a festival at atmosphere and a party atmosphere down at the finish line. Well, who doesn't love a good triathlon party? And, and we're going to be in for a party all day. Of course, we're up here in the studio. Of course, all of the fans and spectators down on course as the athletes make their way out from the, the, the sorry, been in Ulster uh, to that Kennedy Bridge, the first significant landmark of our course today. Yeah, we can see now that uh, we have uh, Chelsea Sodoro and also Manon Genet just leading our race at this point in time. Renee Kiley, she looks like she's just slipping back a little bit right now. So our uh, two top-seeded women there with Laura Phillip right up there in the start of this race in the Binnenalster, they're heading toward the Kennedy Bridge. After the Kennedy Bridge, they'll be getting into the crux of the swim course here. This is the Roka swim course. This is Ironman Hamburg and this is the European Championship for Women. There's this beautiful moment in time when neither foot is touching the ground. We are free of gravity and weight, moving above the doubts, past limits, when we are light, transformed and hopeful. And if we were to collect all these moments, join them together, well, this is when anything becomes possible. This is when we fly. Throughout my career, people have doubted my ability and I've had it even more so when I've come into triathlon. I think this year will be very different. There will be bigger expectations on me. I love the way that I race. With my swim background, I'm almost in the driving seat from the gun. I'm the person that everyone is chasing I want to be the best and I'm willing to work as hard as possible to get there. The bin in Alston right now, you can see that it's going to come to a close for these athletes. They're heading toward the Alston Ulster, and that's when they will get into the long part of the course, and the run course is going to be right next to the Alston Ulster as well. So this is going to be one of the places today that uh, if you're hanging out and you're a spectator, it's going to be an awesome place to hang out, but we've got a little break. Uh, yeah, there is a break in the action here. We've got uh, the group of four lead swimmers. It looks like Renee Kiley has been dropped. Uh, she fought hard to, to try to stay on that. that. That would have been a strategic win for Renee, I think, to be able to stay with that pack. Uh, right now, she has uh, been dispensed from that group. 
uh, and is with one other swimmer, and it looks like that leads about maybe 15, 20 meters at this point as they head under the Kennedy Bridge. Yeah, four athletes are leading out uh, in first and second, third and fourth places right now. That is Manon Genet on the right-hand side at the arrow part of this field, and you've got Chelsea Sodoro on the left-hand side here. Narrow opening under the Kennedy Bridge, and then I'll make a left-hand uh, aim toward the far end buoys. The far end buoys, it's, it's really nice because it's like an arrow. Uh, you'll head out to the left side. You'll, it's not a 90 degree. It's a little bit softer than 90 degrees, about a you know, 75 degree turn over to the pointy you know, far end turning buoy, over to the last turning buoy, and then they'll come back on the other side, right there on the left hand side on the way back under the Kennedy Bridge to finish in the Binnenalsta, running up into transition, like you said, one of the longest transitions in Ironman here. Absolutely, but right now their focus is certainly on the swim and swimming under the Kennedy Bridge here. Of course, you can see that lined with the spectators. Uh, on the right of screen, you can see our age group of athletes anxiously awaiting their start. That will be a rolling start getting underway very shortly. Getting underway very shortly for sure, and we can see now that they are under the Kennedy Bridge, about to go into the, the larger part of the swim course here. Now, age group is all set for a start in their race coming up momentarily here as they've been allowed to come into the starting compound here wearing the green caps and the white caps. We've got our men and our women athletes out there today. It'll be a great day for them all because we looked at the weather forecast just a moment ago and it's going to be a fantastic day. Starting out at 50 degrees or 15 degrees Celsius here this morning, heating up to about uh, 22, 23 and eventually up to 24 at about 2 o'clock in the afternoon and that is about 75 degrees Celsius as well. So the pro women are 623 into theirs and our age grippers are coming up very shortly. We've got a couple there focusing very, very deeply. There. I was going to say taking some deep breaths, gathering oneself before a very, very long but very, very exciting day ahead for our age group athletes. Of course, they are competing for Kona slots as well on hand with their uh, hopes and dreams of getting uh, to earn their ticket out to Kailua Kona in October to compete at the Ironman World Championship there. So three professional slots for our women today. And then of course, age group slots designated by the density of participation in each age group. So uh, a lot of excited athletes. A lot of excited athletes, that's for sure. You know, we've got Hamburg this week. We've got Diane Man Frankfurt coming up, uh, and that will be the men's pro championship on June 26th. And uh, we'll have that for you on Facebook Watch as well. Sorry, on Ironman now on the Facebook uh, Watch channels there. So make sure you check all your local listings, and we will be there to give you all the action as we get our women now, our women pro athletes under the Kennedy Bridge up into the Alts and Ulster, and that's where they are headed right at this very point of time. Our four athletes at the front of the race there is led by Manon Genet and Chelsea Sodoro, the American. Let's talk about Chelsea for a minute here because Chelsea's doing her first, her debut race at the Ironman distance. How do you think that's going to turn out today for uh, her? She, on paper, she's got, she's got the good. Right, when we see sort of two different paths for athletes that we've seen historically come from 70.3 racing as they make the step up to Ironman racing, and some do it with incredible ease and grace. Lisa Norden came up one on debut at Ironman Lake Placid last summer. Uh, going back, I, I think of Samantha McGlone, who seemed to take to Ironman very easily, very quickly. For other athletes, it can be a struggle, it can take them three, four, five times before they figure out the nutrition. The nutrition is so different in Ironman racing pacing also very very different some athletes literally take to it like ducks and water others it just takes a little bit of figuring out on paper chelsea sodaro extremely strong swimmer very very good biker very strong runner she's got the goods but does she put it together on a day at a distance that's completely unknown to her when you factor in the complexity of nutrition pacing she makes her home in the United States, so big time zone change. I know she has been out in Europe to prepare for this, so she's done it properly. She's been out there for several weeks, uh, acclimatizing to uh, the time change. She's got her family out there. She's a new mom, um, so she's got her daughter out there with her as well. So she's, she's really set herself up for success, but you never know. Yeah, you never know, but I think that she's doing, you know, everything the right way. I I went in, you know, to Germany to do an Ironman race uh, one time about seven days out, and I didn't think that that was quite enough. And they, you know, they say, you know, one hour for uh, Every, each day, yeah. and, and, you know, it, it was pretty much right. I, I think I was about two or three days short of that. But um, just wanted to go back to 2019 with Chelsea Sodoro, because Chelsea, you know, back then was, you know, coming into some great form. She uh, actually got onto the podium.
of the World Championships in Nice, you know, down there on the uh, the Bay de Anglais, down on the Mediterranean, and had a fantastic day. And, and that's where I thought that she was really destined for stardom, and then COVID hit. And then sure. we had, you know, a break with the pandemic, uh, with all the issues and everything, but we're back now, and we're back to almost full strength. And Chelsea, you know, uh, in that time had a baby and mm -hmm. it was probably good timing and, you know, back into it. So I think she's done a due diligence and she's got here ahead of time and she's ready to go. I think some are surprised to have seen her move up to the full Ironman distance so quickly. I mean, as you said, she has such tremendous potential at 70.3 and not that she won't race the 70.3 distance ever again. But I think what we're seeing is it's hard to do both very, very well. I mean, and when I say very, very well, like podium at the World Championship. I think it's hard to podium at the 70.3 World Championship and the Ironman World Championship simultaneously. I think that's the level of uh, specialization that our sport demands now. So I think a lot of people were surprised to see her come up to the Ironman distance, but she still does have so much potential at 70.3 that hasn't been realized just yet. Uh, coming back from having her baby, she did have an injury. I believe she had a stress fracture somewhere in the foot, low leg, ankle. Um, that sat her down for a bit of time, and, and she came back with, with Iron Man as her focus. Um, and so it is very exciting to see how she will do today. Yeah, well, we're all, uh, you know, pulling for her for sure. We're pulling for all these women today because they are in it and they are in for slots. They are for the World Championship coming up in October. They're in it for the European title that Laura Phillip would love to, uh, you know, get back. And here she is sitting in third place right now, equal third place. And, uh, you know, just sitting on the feet of Chelsea Sedora right uh, behind, uh, you know, Manon Genet is another one of our pro athletes. But they have cleared out. They have yes. cleared out in the Austin Ulster. And uh, they... Will be looking toward, uh, you know, getting a, a decent gap here. The person they're probably worried about most behind there is Renee Kylie, who dropped off, you know, quite uh, quickly. You know, after around about 200 meters, it, there was a considerable, you know, gap there, Didi. So these uh, these four have really, you know, put the hammer down on the first part. And uh, Laura Phillip, if she can hang on to this pace, that's great news for her. No, absolutely. You talk about that one day for for every hour of time change and. And that could be something that's bothering Renee Kiley right now. She traveled, she'd been training uh, in Flagstaff in Arizona, in, in the US. She had made that her training base going into the Ironman World Championship last month. Returned there to do a bit of training and only came to Hamburg, I believe on Wednesday. Uh, had some bike dramas, bike didn't arrive. And so she's had some stress since she's been in Hamburg. Uh, but that's a quick turnaround. That's, 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 that's a big time change and not a lot of days to get accustomed to it. And coming off an Ironman distance race and that of St. George is not the easiest race in the world. It's actually quite challenging. And as we saw Christian Blumenfeld and, uh, you know, Daniela Reef this year, uh, just, uh, you know, this month, earlier this, uh, sorry, last month, um, getting, you know, their world titles uh, outside of Kona for the very first time since 1978. So that was, uh, that was quite, uh, you know, um, unbelievable and at the same time incredible you know incredible that we were able to host the 2021 world championship and at the same time i'm sort of happy that we're going back to kona in uh, you know in october early october it'll be great to get back to the island and um, you know see if the course can hold up and, and give us some nastiness <laughs> you know madame <laughs> pele hasn't really been there for us over the last couple of years uh, uh well actually before that in in 2019 we've had uh, quite a few years where it hasn't been rather windy so i'd like to see the trade winds kick up and and offer a hard race for them again <laughs> but anyway I'm the, easy I'm for the, you to say from the comfort of the air condition oh, booth okay. bag. that's that, that's <laughs> thank you Dee. i'm not being you know sadistical or anything, a little bit a <laughs> little bit maybe all right well look at this wonderful port city it's the third largest european port city right here and it is hamburg it leads to the north sea via the elba river and it's turning on a spectacular day today did you know one of the unique qualities one of the unique features to this port city every ship that enters the city gets its own uh unique greeting uh, the harbor master plays the national anthem for where the ship is from. So they welcome them by playing their national anthem as they enter the harbor. I did not know that about Hamburg, but it's a fun little fact I picked up here. Love it. I love all those fun facts. We'll be giving those to you all day today. We'll give you another fact. This is the Roka Swim Course, and it's 3.8 kilometers long, or 2.4 miles, and the age group athletes are just 50 seconds away from getting their day started here at 6.30 local time here in Hamburg, and it is 
beautiful morning here and a beautiful swim course is set up. Look at this, a sea of green right now. <laughs> a sea of green that's taking off in 40 seconds. Absolutely, and of course our rolling start here, uh, well received from the athletes. Of course, we love the images of the mass start, but a much safer and easier way uh, to get your day underway here. Of course, we see our volunteers there, the Team 2022 volunteers. They will drop their arms, let a couple of athletes in at a time, put the arms back up, let those 10 to 15 swimmers get underway. Every two to three seconds, they will allow another 10 to 15 athletes in the water. And look at all the athletes. Yeah, it'll take about 15 minutes maybe to get them all in. All right, let's get them underway. All right, they're underway. And as you can see with this rolling start, we'll give you an idea how it works. So they have three to five athletes, depending on which race it is. And they go off about every three to five seconds. And there will be a horn there and uh, a clock there, that, which uh, determines when they start as well. And you can see, Didi, like you say, it takes about 45 minutes uh, to an hour to get everybody underway here. But like you said, it gives them an open you know, uh, window of, of swimming here. There is plenty of room here anyway in the Binnen Ulster and then also in the Alsen Ulster as well. But it gives them lots of space to get, you know, spread out, no panic and just get out there and have your own space and, and swim well. Right, and it's self-seated, so you choose the time, your predicted swim time, so you're with swimmers of, of a similar ability to yours. Um, you can find some faster feet, um, but you're not going to get run over by, by faster swimming athletes coming behind you. So it, it allows a degree of comfort uh, to the athletes as they get underway here on what will be a very big day for each and every one of them. I love the uh, the first line of athletes today was two men and one woman. I saw a woman, <laughs> you know, you know, she, standing she in the... She pushed her way right oh, up yeah. to the front of that. I'm like, you go, girl. Oh, she's, yep. Yeah, she's you go, girl. She's, she's gonna, confident. Oh, for sure. And you know she's going to be a, a fast swimmer. You can notice a couple of different caps and we have some of the old world athletes sure. out there as well. And they, you know, at the moment they can choose wherever they want to line up and, and generally there are placards and they are, they are down there right now and it's like you know sub 50, 50 to 55, 55 to an hour and so on and so on. Athletes have two hours and 20 minutes to complete the course from when they go across the start line there. So there will be cutoffs on the bike course and on the run course during the day but uh, they have two hours and 20 minutes to get their day started in the opening discipline. Absolutely, and what a stunner of a day it is. Love these camera shots here. What a beautiful, beautiful morning to get underway here at the Ironman European Championship here in Hamburg as we see our group of four women uh, continuing to get it done. Still a group of four, uh, Manon Genet and Chelsea Sodaro at the front. Uh, with Laura Phillip and another one of our professional women. I haven't been able to grab a number off of her swim cap, uh, but the four of them uh, swimming together. And, and right now, I love the position of, of the woman in pink, um, our unknown athlete at this time. She's right on the hip there of Laura Phillip uh, and sort of in between the two lead swimmers. So she's getting a nice toe along right there. She's in a very good strategic position. Not too bad. I think I'd rather be swimming on the bubbles on the feet of Manon Genet, actually. Um, you know, she could uh, just allow, you know, Manon to do all the navigating as well. But Manon's gone off to the right-hand yep. side. She swam a good line. She was really close to that, uh, you know, the lead buoy, um, you know, just going under the Kennedy Bridge or under the Kennedy uh, Bruca. And she got under there really well. And you can see that Laura Phillips, she has been glued absolutely glued to the toes of Chelsea Sodoro right now. So looking at shots of this beautiful port city of Hamburg, we're under underway now with the crux of the race. The whole race has started now. The pro women started their European championship and our age groupers have started their race as well. And as our professional women continue to make their way around the Roca swim course here, uh, I don't believe they have made that outermost point. So they are still uh, less than one and a half kilometers in to the swim today. So lots of action here to get underway as we see Chelsea Sodaro and Manon Genet leading the way for our professional women here in Hamburg at the Ironman European Championship. Whether it's on the road or in the pool, your activity has high demands. 
Rooted in sweat and grounded in science, we understand your unique fueling needs. That is why we created formulas just for you, endurance athletes, helping you replace what you're losing and keeping you fueled. And there's nowhere we'd rather be than with you along this journey, because together we are formulated for farther. From the creators of Gatorade, Gatorade Endurance, formulated for you, formulated for farther. And we are back here in the Roka Swim Course here at the Ironman European Championship in Hamburg. I'm Didi Griesbauer here in studio with Greg Welch, and you are watching Chelsea Sodaro lead the way with Manon Genet in second. That's Laura Phillip in the red cap. She's our race favorite today. She is sitting on Chelsea Sodaro's feet. She knows that Chelsea is one that could potentially upset her today, and I don't think she wants to let Chelsea out of her sights. And that's a good point. Uh, <laughs> she shouldn't, uh, because Chelsea doing a first race, you know, she's going to have the, the bit between the teeth, as we say. And Chelsea now has uh, accelerated a little bit and gone ahead of Menon Genet right now. You can see that uh, she's really, you know, just navigating really well. I, I look at about every third or fourth stroke there. She's looking up and, you know, this is really good. Look at that. About every fourth stroke she's doing it, she's taking a sneaky peek over her right-hand shoulder, you know, where Menon is. And, uh, you know, I think the camera angle was a little bit... Uh, you know, different there. So, you know, swimming along at uh, very even paces right now, you can see that their uh, rhythm, their stroke rates too, pretty similar. And I'm looking at Laura Phillips. She's got a long stroke there right behind there. I love the way that she's just, you know, stroking out. Uh, Dee Dee, you're a Stanford swimmer. You're a very good swimmer there. So just uh, break it down for us right now, each one of these four athletes. Yeah, I mean, again, very, very similar. I think we've got a little bit of uh, Manon Genet here, who is at the, the front of the camera. She's got a she does a funny thing with her head as she sights. She picks her head up almost later. I prefer for the athlete to sight at the start of the stroke. You sort of lean your chin forward. She tends to sight at the end of her stroke, which I think when you pick that head up that late in the breath cycle tends to sink the hips a little bit. But hey, she's in the lead of the race right now, so who am I to point fingers? And I'm loving her stroke. <laughs> um, look at this. You know, she's just uh, entering the water almost at about 90% of the arm's length there, almost about 95% of the arm's length. She's just stretching it right out like a beautiful stroke there. She's pulling the water nicely. And, you know, yeah, she's, she does, uh, like you say, she does pull her head, you know, very late, you know, in the breath yes. uh, section there. But uh, I don't think it's hurting her whatsoever because she's in the lead of the race. Look at uh, Chelsea Sodoro. She's got a very fast stroke yes. there. You can see that her left arm is just really thrashing through there. Really nice entry as well. But she's navigating differently, head up swimming there. You can see that I think that Manon Genet's, uh, you know, Efficiency is probably a little better than uh, Chelsea's right now, but uh, Laura is just sitting in there nicely with the red cap. This is our first turn at the uh, the arrow part of the course there. That's it. It's not a 90 degree turn. It's a softer turn, like a 75, you know, degree uh, turn. There they go off to the next turning it buoy. And uh, look at this, Menon. She's got the she knows she's got, got the, the inside good line. Well, what I think is happening, and, and it's interesting. Watching Chelsea Sodaro, she was swimming literally head up. She wasn't sighting. She was swimming with her head up. I think she's having a hard time seeing. Well, she has a light. She has a light shade of goggle on, and they are swimming direct into the sun. I think she was having trouble seeing that next buoy. Yeah, they're almost swimming directly into the sun. It's not really at 12 o'clock. It's just before 12 o'clock if you're looking at, uh, you know, the angle. And uh, you can see that Manon Genet is now on the inside as she has been the whole way. Nothing has changed. Look at that. Laura's still stuck there, and now other women pro athlete is just on the hip of Laura Phillip as well. So they've got a, a short section. They'll go over there another two right-hand turns before they head back toward the Kennedy Bridge and then they come back into Binnen Alster to finish it off today. But right now you can see her right across the far uh, side there to the left-hand side there, Dee Dee. That's our beautiful run course out there. They're going to be heading out there about four kilometres out. They'll go out to a turnaround point. They'll do one turnaround. They'll come back to take a right. They'll do another turnaround, then back into town. So four laps on the run today. A gorgeous run course. But the swim course here, look at this. They don't have anybody to side off up ahead. There's no paddler. There's no one to do it. They've got to do it themselves and Manon Genet right now she is right on the inside so Chelsea Sodoro she has to be taking the, the right course here because the other two have gone with her well you th you think uh, it's it's always difficult when you're in the midst of an open water swim because even if you think the athlete in front of you isn't taking the best line if you go if you lose the feet and try to cut the tangent to make a better line oftentimes it doesn't work out so even if Laura thinks that Chelsea is swimming a little wide, 
Manol Genet has the correct line. She would be mistaken to try to cut in to get on Manon's feet. She's better off staying right on Chelsea's feet here. But it, I, I can't tell if it's the camera angle, but it does seem to be quite a bit of separation between them right now. So one of them is right and one of them is not you as know, right. I want, to say it's a, <laughs> I want to say there's about an eight to ten meter gap in, yeah. between, uh, in between them right now. But Chelsea seems to be doing a lot of navigating out there. You can see the head up and uh, looking. Yeah, you got one of the uh, photographer boats out there and we are traveling along right now with an official boat. So. They are on course, that's for sure. And we know that they're coming up to that last, or the, sorry, to the second to last, you know, turning buoys out here in the Alsa and Alsa uh, as well. So this is coming to, uh, look at this. And uh, just as we said it, uh, Menon Genet had to uh, redirect herself yep. and head back over toward Chelsea. So he goes the right-hand turn. First one around is um, Chelsea Sidoro. So now Men Menon just had a look up there. She paused for about a half a stroke and uh, took a good look up uh, to see where she's going and signed off the next buoy because now they got the sun at nine o'clock. Well, and Manon Genet may have made a slight strategic error there because she had the opportunity in rounding that buoy to get on Chelsea's feet. She actually was on Chelsea's feet, but she has come back to the inside line, allowing that, that fourth woman who is in this lead pack, who we're trying to desperately get a number from our spotters down there. Um, I think Manon might have been better off just sitting on Chelsea's feet at that point, letting Chelsea do all of the pace setting. Um, but she cut back inside and now she's not, she doesn't have feet to chase. Yeah, no feet to chase, but she's going to get back up under the hip, I think, of Chelsea Sodoro here pretty soon. You can see that Laura Phillip is just trailing, uh, you know, from the very outset. She's been right on the back and, you know, like, like super glued onto the back of Chelsea Sodoro's feet here today, which is very, very smart racing. Great tactics by our European champion. Let's see if she can take that all the way to the finish line today and go back to back uh, in those years in the European Championship. But Sodoro right now from the United States leads uh, Manon Genet from France, and then you've got got Laura Phillip in third place, the German. Yep, and she is holding it down for Germany right now. And you can see as they start making their way back into town here, and they'll be going under the Kennedy Bridge in just about, uh, you know, 10 or so minutes. And then they just have about eight minutes or so after that. Absolutely. And as they round this next buoy, that will indicate that they are two kilometers through uh, the swim. Uh, so approaching the halfway point as they will make the turn and head back uh, towards the finish. Uh, beautiful conditions. You can see as we get further away from uh, the, the inner part of the harbor there, uh, a little bit of texture on the water, but still I think winds are pretty calm. Uh, so great, great swimming conditions out there today. And look at these scenics, Rag. What a beautiful, beautiful city we're at here in Hamburg. Yeah, love it when you can see the port, you know, in the very far background there. That's way up the Elba River. That is the North Sea right at the head, right up there in the uh, the foreground there. And we are here at the Ironman European Championship Hamburg, our pro women's race today. No men here. And this is absolutely gorgeous as we're seeing a very picturesque downtown at the moment. This is the Olsen Alster and down there in the foreground, that is our run course coming up a little bit later on this afternoon in around about six or so hours from now. One of the unique features of this city is you, you see the, the greenery amidst what is the second largest city in Germany. And so it's really absolutely delightful uh, for us as visitors here to Hamburg, but for the residents here that you can be in such a densely urban environment, second largest city in Germany, but to have so much greenery and parks right there within the center of the city. Yeah, northern part of Germany, you know, gets a little windy from time to time. You can see the sailboats down there. Yep, they're probably going to hang their sails out here a little bit later on because our women are using the water right now. <laughs> and then our age group athletes here at the European Championship, they are halfway through the swim, halfway to go before heading out onto the bike.
The returned leg for Chelsea Sidoro gone past all the turnarounds at the far end of this clockwise swim course here in two different lengths. We started out at the Binnen Ulster and then now we are in the Altsen Ulster and then we will go back to the Kennedy Bridge and finish off in the Binnen Ulster and then head over to the transition area. But it's Chelsea Sidoro from the United States. Manon Genet on the left side of the screen there, but Laura Phillip is sitting handily right behind Chelsea Sidoro and our Fourth athlete there looks like just struggling a little bit to get on to the feet of Laura Phillip right now, Leedy. Absolutely. And this to me says that Chelsea Sodaro knows what she's doing. She's being very patient. Coming from the 70.3 background, I know she's got some good top end speed. Uh, we saw her be patient, maybe uh, taking the nod from some more experienced Ironman racers. Um, but it looks like she may be trying to negative split this uh, and could very well drop the rest of the group because she's got plenty of real estate left to do it. Yeah, it's a nice, strong, uh, you know, long and drawn out swim course, just like another one in Canada, in Mont Tremblant. The Subaru Ironman Mont Tremblant is an experience of a lifetime. Nestled in mountains, the city of Mont Tremblant offers plenty of tourist activities. Athletes begin with a swim in the clear, calm water of Lake Mont Tremblant ride the challenging rolling hills on the bike course through picturesque mountains. Spectators line the streets cheering all athletes as they run toward the finish line. This breathtaking and pristine getaway is a 10-time Ironman Athlete Choice Award winner. Sign up today at ironman.com to race Subaru Ironman Mont Tremblant. Have you done that one? I have not. Well, I what's better, stopping you from I signing up? I better get to it. I know I should go to Ironman.com and sign up right now. But right now, I need to talk <laughs> about Chelsea Sodaro, who is leading our women's race. And it's Laura Phillip there in the red cap, who has been on her feet since the very start. Uh, again, I think she's got her eyes on Chelsea. She knows that Chelsea, it's her first Ironman. No one knows what she's going to do, but we know what she's capable of. And I think uh, Laura Phillip wants to keep a very close eye on her. Manon Genet in the yellow cap, taking the inside line as she has done all swim, doing all the work all by herself. I'd love to see her get over and try to take advantage of some of the draft, but she's choosing to go it alone. Yeah, I think she's uh, happy to be out there doing it alone, uh, to be quite honest. And I just think that she's been struggling just a little bit navigation-wise. I mean, Chelsea's had the navigation down pat today. And, uh, you know, Manon's just uh, coming over to the shoulder of Laura Phillip at this point in time. And, you know, I think that she just realised that she was swimming a little bit wider there at one point. But uh, Chelsea has definitely been the better of the two, you know, navigating right now. And it looks like Manon just falling off the pace a little bit too. Uh, I think that the sting's gone out of her... You you know, swim stroke, it sort of slowed down just a tad. Just looks like she's laboring a little bit more than what she did when she started. Yeah, no, she did. And she, there's a lot more head movement as well. I think the head is is definitely bobbing a lot more. Uh, could be could be fatigue, could be struggles with the sighting. Um, but but yes, we, we definitely were through halfway uh, of this Roka swim course now. Uh, and she just doesn't have the zip that she had at the start. But hey, she's in the lead pack. She's where she needs to be. There's no need for heroics at this stage. No, it looks like Chelsea Sodoro still got the same, you know, uh, RPMs going. She's she's doing very well. I still love, you know, the way that she's stretching out there. Laura Phillip, her stroke hasn't changed one little bit. She's just stretching out nicely. And you can see the long arms of Phillip. Look at the size of those arms. She's got a, a decent wingspan, <laughs> yeah. I would imagine. Yep, just she's like got the you. long arms, long legs. Uh, it's, doing a, it's doing a great job for her. She hasn't had to sight it all. She's got the bubbles of Chelsea Sodaro's kick right in front of her. And, and in watching, I have not seen her pick up her head to sight even once. She's just, she's in a perfect position to sight off those bubbles from Chelsea Sodaro, trusting Chelsea to take the right line uh, and is just swimming along right behind her. It's great, great position for Laura Phillip right now. Yeah, she hasn't had to, uh, to do too much, that's for sure. The uh, navigating has been done by who's ahead of her right now, Manon Genet. Now he's off to the side of Laura Phillip and our fourth-placed athlete here. Just sitting behind Laura Phillip nicely, so just uh, cranking it along. We've got our lead four women, and uh, to get off the swim here and on, out onto the bike ride, it'll be very important to see these four athletes, how they, you know, partake, uh, you know, with the, the transition here today, and that is always very important. <laughs> um, you know, on a day like today, is a, you know, wind jacket or a vest or something like that uh, in the works? Uh, the humidity is up. I think with the temperatures where they're going, I think the athletes will be fine without it. Uh, the water's chilly, but the sun is out. There's bright sunshine. There's no precipitation expected. So I think we'll see them in just race kits. 
Uh, that would be my bet as we look at Chelsea Sodaro here. We are just about 34 minutes and 15 seconds underway here. Of course, the swim course record uh, set by Lauren Brandon here just last year at 47.45. So we'll see if Chelsea Sodaro can take a swing at that. If I'm a betting woman, I'm going to say probably not. I think Lauren can probably rest easy that her course record here in Hamburg will stick, but you never know. Yeah, I don't think the uh, swim course record's going to go down. If uh, if I'm wrong, well, that, that's okay too. But um, Lauren Brandon's probably one of the two fastest, uh, you know, women professional athletes uh, in the sport of triathlon swimming. You know, her and Lucy Charles have had the, you know, the you know line honors in in that uh, discipline over the last you know five years at least now, and uh, Lauren probably a little bit longer because Lucy, you know, just uh, coming out of uh, the age group division, heard about two thousand and. 16 she uh, was actually world champion at uh, Kona you know for the age group and then Lucy ended up turning pro and has had a very good you know uh, <laughs> very good career so far at such a young age and unfortunately she's out uh, injured at the moment and we wish her well as she makes her way back toward uh, racing again but uh, right now Chelsea Sodoro she's leading our race and she talks about a fighting chance I'm Chelsea Sodaro, I'm from Reno, Nevada, and I'm here in Hamburg doing my first Ironman. I raced in Alcudia, Mallorca, about a month ago. A little mid Ironman prep 70.3 tune-up. 70.3 has been my sweet spot. My first full Ironman, yeah. Ooh, <laughs> how you feeling? <laughs> I feel good. I feel nervous and excited and, um, you know, one of my favorite things about like transitioning from being a pure runner to a triathlete is getting to be a beginner again. And I sort of feel like this is another chance to do that. Like, of course I want to do well and I have an idea of what I think I can do out there, but also there aren't a ton of expectations. So, and I think that Kona is the pinnacle of our sport and I like racing. I love racing against the best people and that's what, you know, the best athletes in our sport are gearing up for every year and I want to be there with them. I made a big coaching change two years ago in anticipation for this pursuit of the full distance Ironman. So I started working with um, Dan Plus back in, I guess, the summer of 2020. My bigger sessions are much longer than they used to be. Um, I am doing like more total volume than I was maybe, but like the real emphasis is on those big long days, um, rather than like massive changes in my, in my overall volume. It's like getting in those big long bike sessions and big run sessions. It's a full-time job being a mom as any new mother will tell you. Um, but it's been really fun. Like I have this whole nother inspiration and source of joy in my life and there have been a lot of really hard moments in this return to racing and I'm still figuring out how to balance it all but um, mostly it's just like a lot of joy that she's brought into my life which I think ultimately will make me a better athlete. I think when you're enjoying your life and you're happy in all aspects of your life you perform better. Well, that's a fighting chance with Chelsea Sodoro, and I have a lot of admiration, Didi, for uh, Chelsea. You know, any mother out there racing, uh, you know, just you know, with a child, doesn't matter what age, and there's always shuffling to be to be had, and uh, you know, things to do all the time, and you know, you got to be on a schedule, and it's great that she's also taken a, a deeper dive into into coaching. And, you know, she's uh, just said that she's doing a lot more in volume, uh, probably a lot more, you know, quality in the in the volume as well. So let's see how Chelsea goes over this Ironman distance. And uh, my guess is that she's going to do pretty well. Well, again, on paper, she's got the goods. She's, she's leading the race right now, so she's certainly a strong swimmer. She's strong on the bike. She comes from a running background, so we know she's very solid there. Again, the big question mark is, does she get the pacing correct? Does she get the nutrition correct? Um, and has she practiced that nutrition across those long training sessions. She's well coached, I'm sure she has, but you never know what's gonna happen in your first Ironman. Um, and we'll see if she takes to it or if she dabbles in the Ironman and, and maintains her focus at 70.3. Certainly being a new mom, uh, the hours involved in Ironman training make it certainly more difficult. I know she's got a tremendous uh, support network. Her mother travels with her quite a bit uh, to help with her, her baby girl, um, which I think is a, a source of 
a great comfort to her that she knows that her daughter's in good hands when she's out getting her training done. And obviously she's got a hugely supportive husband as well. Uh, so she's, you know, every athlete has a team behind them. Uh, but I guess when you're managing a young child as well, the team is all that much more important. Well, there you go. This is a side buoy there around the left-hand side of that, the port side. They're going to go back under the Kennedy Bridge, the Kennedy Brugge, and then they are going to be in the last section. So it's fair to say that she's come here for that Ironman qualifying spot for the World Championship coming up on October 6th. Yep, that's right, October 6th. It's going to be a Thursday for their women's <laughs> professional race at the Ironman World Championship for 2022 back on the Big Island of Hawaii. But right now they're swimming right here in Hamburg at the Ironman European Championship. That thing John Moran has, that's a hypervolt. That thing he uses to warm up and stay loose before he throws it down. That thing Tony Finau uses on course between shots. Ooh, that's money. That thing Robin and I use before and after we're on the bike so we can ride harder tomorrow. That thing Erlen Holland uses before smashing it into the back of the net. That thing that's for everyone. The hypervolt from Hyperice. Give your body the daily relief it's been asking for. Well, I bet you the athletes right now are wishing they got a hyper ice for, you know, right now uh, t attached to their shoulders to keep them nice and loose and get them uh, a little bit onto the legs because they are coming to the end of this swim course, the Roka swim course right here, Didi Griesbauer. You're a great swimmer yourself and a professional triathlete, Ironman champion, and they are now just uh, around about 10 or so minutes away from the end of the swim here. They are just about to finish off swimming in the Olsen Alster and then they going into the Binnen Alster for the last time today, then over to the transition. So right now you can see that Chelsea Sodoro is still in first place, Laura Phillip in second, and Manon Genet is now onto the hip of Laura Phillip in third. This is a great swim for Manon Genet. I, I think in, in the past we wouldn't have seen her with the likes of a Laura Phillip and certainly not a Chelsea Sodoro. So... Right now, I'm wondering if Chelsea is being super conservative or if these other women are having, you know, phenomenal swims. Of course, we never know. Uh, but I think Chelsea is being fairly conservative in her efforts here. Uh, she's typically a, maybe not a super front pack, but a, a, a strong swimmer across the 70.3 distance as well. And, and I would have expected her to almost be out on her own. So these, these other three women are doing a fantastic job uh, keeping pace with Chelsea here as they make their way under the Kennedy Bridge they're at three kilometers, so nearing the end of this Oroka swim course. Yeah, just to give you an idea on last year's swim times, Lauren Brandon was 47-46, uh, like you had mentioned before. That's the record for the swim, Didi. But Renee Kiley, who's actually in this race, swam a 56-12. So that was, uh, you know, nine minutes, uh, nine and a bit minutes or so down, you know, on Lauren Brandon. So I'm looking at, uh, you know, these women today, uh, approximately, you know, that 50-minute uh, that mark. So we'll have to wait and see here uh, where they're actually going to swim and where Renee Kiley comes out of the water as well as we see all of our age groupers now with their staggered start, their rolling start. Uh, heading out into the swim course right now. So it's great to see. Look at them. They're still all spread out. It's fantastic. And, and Laura Phillip has absolutely stapled herself to Chelsea Sodaro's <laughs> feet. Uh, she has been this way since the very early strokes uh, of this race and, and has been right there. And it's been a great asset to her. She, again, she hasn't had to sight at all. Uh, she's just been watching the bubbles of Chelsea Sodaro and Chelsea's literally towed her all the way around the course. The mm -hmm. fourth place athlete, also doing a good job in the draft. It's Manon Genet who is sitting by herself on the inside line, who is doing so much unnecessary work. Uh, she would have been so much better, and to no benefit. Uh, I guess my point is that she would have been better off slotting in behind Chelsea as well and, and taking advantage of the draft. It, it's so much easier to swim in the draft, and now it looks like she's trying to do that. 800 meters to go right now. You can see that they're under the Kennedy Bridge. 
at this point in time with Hamburg right dead ahead there. They're going to make a left-hand turn around this next buoy and then head over toward the transition area on the left-hand side there. And that will be the finish of that 3.8 kilometre or 2.4 mile swim. So Chelsea Sidoro doing all the navigating on the way back home. And there is Menon Genet with the fluoro green cap closest to screen and Laura Phillip in the red cap at the moment as well. So first, second, third and fourth have all gone under the Kennedy Bridge and inside of 800 metres to swim. And one of the things that's unique about this Ironman Hamburg course is the, the length, and we've, we've touched on it slightly and we'll see it in just moments, the length of the run into T1 is like no other in sport. It is one of the longest transitions and could be strategic for our athletes here today, Greg. Yeah, you know, some of the athletes use that uh, time, you know, to get the wetsuit down. Some of the athletes, uh, you know, if they consider themselves a little bit weaker on the bike, they might want to, you know, pick up the pace or so and, uh, you know, use that strength when they, you know, head toward their uh, bike car today and, and try and limit the amount of time they're actually in transition as well because when you're going through the transition here, there's a lot to think about. It's also where your heart rate's at its highest. These women are going to be coming out of the water on a horizontal position over the last, you know, 45, 50 minutes or so. Then they get up into the vertical position. They have to switch the, uh, you know, the blood's going to be all in the upper body. The blood's going to be trans transformed, you know, and, and, and transcending down toward the lower leg, uh, you know, into the bigger muscles on the body here, the, the quadricep, the hamstrings, down into the calf muscles. And we're going to start, you know, to see a, a little bit of, you know, the raising in the heart rate. They're going to well, go, you know, try. And, and I mean, the, my, I guess my point is knowing that you're coming to Hamburg and, and racing a race with a very long transition, it's worth practicing that, right? Coming out of the swim when you're in the horizontal going to the vertical, to your point, jacks the heart rate, and we've got a super long run on top of that, mm -hmm. it's a good thing to practice because it doesn't feel very good. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, in the Olympic distance racing, obviously the transitions are a huge part of the, sure. the sport. You know, uh, if you, you snooze, you lose in, in the Olympic distance. In Ironman distance, uh, I'm not really going to say that, you know, a, a race can be won or lost in the transition, but it can certainly make you feel a little bit better or more comfortable in the position that you come in sure. and the position that you go out, the amount of time that you lost or the amount of time that you've gained. So you just have to sort of practice it a little bit. But but definitely, you see a lot of our age group is a little bit later on when they hop out of the water, you know, a little bit disoriented and uh, it's sort of hard to, you know, find your rhythm. And the older you get, the harder it gets too. So, you know, these athletes here, they won't have a problem with it whatsoever. It's just that their pace, they're going to have to be comfortable with what they do on the day. It's the same thing like when they start out on the bike. They can only go out at their pace. If they go out a little bit above, you know, what the red line, then they're going to pay for it around about halfway, you know, to the back end of the bike course today, which is two laps around this beautiful city of Hamburg here. But we are just moments away minutes away from seeing our athletes heading out of the water here and up into transition. And as we look at these four lead women, it's, I, I'm trying to project what we'll see on the bike. Certainly Laura Phillip, I would put as the cream of the crop of this group. Again, Chelsea Sodaro has never raced an Ironman. She's quite strong on the bike across 70.3 and does that carry to Ironman or does she try to be slightly more conservative uh, in her first Ironman effort. Uh, Laura Phillips certainly has the confidence of experience um, and the confidence coming off, of course, her win last weekend at the 70.3. Really remarkable uh, that Laura Phillips is, is even here. Of course, she missed the Ironman World Championship in St. George, uh, tested positive for COVID uh, the day she was meant to travel uh, to St. George, which was heartbreak. Fortunately, she was planning on uh, going to St. George plenty early, so gave it a few days to see if she could, <clears throat> excuse me, beat it, feel better. Uh, unfortunately, it was not the case. Uh, obviously, heartbreaking to have to miss the World Championship, uh, but has put herself right back into fine form, dominating performance last weekend, and she's back out here again this weekend, racing here in Hamburg in search of that Ironman European Championship title. European <laughs> Championship uh, title is going to be up for grabs in around about uh, eight hours from now because we can see our leader, Chelsea Sodoro, is an Ironman debutante. Yep, a very first time at this distance and she's leading the swim right here in Hamburg. Laura Phillip is in second place. 
There goes uh, Manon Genet from France in third place as they make uh, just that little turn. As you can see that uh, Manon has uh, turned uh, <laughs> toward the boat once more. And uh, I think that a little bit close there, but Chelsea Sidoro has definitely got the navigation down today. Manon's going to try and slip in there behind Laura, but she's going to have to fight off the other, age, uh, the other professional athlete here because <laughs> she doesn't want a part of that. She wants to have those feet all to herself right now as Chelsea Sidoro is now sprinting toward the transition area. You can see there in the, the background there, right hard up against those five-story buildings there. Absolutely gorgeous on a great day here in Hamburg as Sodaro leads her first Ironman distance race here in Hamburg. And Chelsea's in a great position. Again, she's an Ironman rookie, uh, but she's got some veterans around her. Um, she was patient at the start of the swim. Uh, she tried to break away. I, uh, again, she's in good company on the bike, and we'll see if she sort of defers to Laura Phillip as they get onto two wheels, making their way into transition very close to the conclusion of the Roca Swim course here at the Ironman European Championship in Hamburg. We're back here in Hamburg for the Ironman European Championship, bringing our professional women to the conclusion of the Roca swim course. The swim is being led right now by the American Chelsea Sodaro in her Ironman debut. The red cap belongs to one of our race favorites. That's a Laura Phillip. The yellow cap is the French woman, Manon Genet. And I believe the pink cap may be that of the British athlete, Chantel Cummings. Uh, this is our pack of four lead women. Renee Kylie tried to stay on the back of this group at the start was within 300 meters, dropped off the group, and this group has been alone and working together with Chelsea at the front nearly the entire time, doing a lion's share of the work. She has done the lion's share of the work there, Diddy, and uh, these four athletes can be very proud of themselves for getting themselves around this course, a beautiful clockwise course right here in downtown Hamburg. The crowds are strong. It's going to be loud getting out of the water today before they head off onto the bike ride. They're going to have a very long run in transition today. It's one of the longer runs in uh, Ironman triathlon, that's for sure. But it's going to be led by Chelsea Sidoro as she closes in on this swim course right now. We're already over 52 minutes, so the race record of 47 minutes of Lauren Brandon is going to stand and I think it'll be a race uh, record that stands for a long time because Lauren Brandon being one of the fastest swimmers ever in the sport of Ironman triathlon in the women's category and today she has already you know been uh, safe with that one with a 47 46 52 and a half minutes on that uh, clock at the moment so we're probably going to look at around about 55 to 56 minutes getting out. Uh, absolutely, which isn't a stunningly fast swim for a wetsuit swim. Again, uh, with the conditions on the day, I would have expected slightly faster. But again, we look at our lead women. These, in this field, they are leading the pack. I think it, it, there are stronger swimmers out there in Ironman racing. Lauren Brandon, of course, you mentioned. Um, but, you know, good enough for leading the swim today. One of the longer tunnels that you'll ever experience in the swim courses, that's for sure, around the world is right here in Hamburg. And it's almost like they're swimming in Venice, isn't it, uh, Didi? As you can look down right now, this is uh, the swim course. And uh, we can tell you that it's been a great one today. And Chelsea Sidoro in a very first Ironman distance race is leading from the United States. In second place is Laura Phillip from Germany. So she is the local. She's going to have that crowd on her side as well. Manon Genet from one of the neighboring countries in France is in third place. And our fourth place getter is sitting right on the back of Laura Phillips' feet as well. So as we close in 
on the opening discipline with our top four women athletes here. A very closely fought race through the first discipline. Can they take it deep into the bike? And you see Chelsea Sodaro picking up the tempo here, increasing her kick a little bit, trying to get some blood flow into the legs. Uh, smart maneuver there. Uh, again, it does bring the heart rate up slightly when you increase the kick, but it brings the blood flow into the legs so that they feel like they can do their job uh, when you stand them up and, and try to run through transition. Yeah, I don't know how different, you know, this will be, you know, to an Ironman 70.3 uh, distance uh, transition for Chelsea Sodoro because, you know, as we've been saying, the first time at this distance, is she going to do different things with her clothing? Is she going to, you know, have a different bike set up with the shoes? Uh, you know, how is she going to attack things you know, differently. Is she going to have to strap, you know, nutrition into the back of a shirt as well? So we'll just have to wait and see. Time will tell because now they've hit the water, the exit of the water here, and they are up running and out on to the bike course here in just a second. There you go, 54.38 for our leader. 54.39 is Laura Phillip. 54.40 is Menon Genet and 54.41. So all separated by just three seconds. Absolutely, and here we go. Watch this, Greg, as they get underway here on this massive long run uh, to the transition area. Of course, lined with the fans. Uh, we've got the cameraman doing extra work, uh, trying to outpace our professional women here as they Peel the wetsuit down to the waist, uh, get it ready to peel off. The cap and goggles come off. You can uh, tuck those into the arm of the wetsuit for safe storage there as you have them in your hand. When you pull your hand through the sleeve of your wetsuit, just release the cap and goggles. Sits there for safe storage. Little hashtag pro tip there. Uh, as our women <laughs> run, continuing to run. Yes, they're not there yet. Here are their gear bags again. Oops. Little strategic error on the wrong side there as they go to their gear bags. Again, that's another reason why during your warm-ups in the morning you want to run that transition, make sure you know where you're going. Looks a little different in the heat of the race. All of our women here making their way into the change tents where they'll lose the wetsuits and get ready to take to the bike. Yeah, and it's just a reverse effect, um, you know, the transition. So they'll run in after the swim this way, head out on the bike the other way, but head back in the bike the same way and then out on the run at the other end. So it's all fair for each athlete, you know, that are competing today. You'd often, you know, think about, well, how do they make it fair? Well, they just have a reverse effect, um, you know, from swim to bike and from bike to run. So there we see our first athletes there getting uh, ready to head out. There's Chelsea Sodoro from the United States just strapping the aero helmet on and getting ready for for her day on the bike. And then we see our athlete just heading out uh, toward the bike right now. And that is crazy. What an incredible transition here. I mean, she was absolutely lightning fast. <laughs> yep, that's Laura Phillip uh, leading the charge there through transition um, and making her way down to the bike racks. Again, a really long run from the change tent down to the bike racks. Of course, our pros will be likely racked near the bike exit, so they will be one of the last to pick up their bikes uh, before they start going. That is Chantelle Cummings from Great Britain. She was the fourth athlete in that group. Super swim for her. Uh, and here comes Chelsea Sodaro back. She was a little bit slower getting the helmet on. Uh, but now running shoulder to shoulder with the woman from Great Britain. Well, as you were talking about before there, Didi, uh, you know, how, how fast are they going to run in transition and, and how are they going to approach it? Well, Laura Phillips just approaching it like a, just a, a day in the, you know, in the life of the, you know, <laughs> of a runner here. She's just like striding out and uh, not getting, uh, you know, too, you know, flashy with her speed and everything. So I think that she's done a great job. Chelsea Sodoro, on the other hand, has a little bit of time to make up and she knows it exactly exactly how good Laura Phillip is on the bike. So she is now trying to make up time that she lost in the tent there changing. Back up to here on Laura Phillip because Laura Phillip is going to be the one to watch out for on the bike. Well, for sure. I mean, Laura Phillip is super strong on the bike, but I think Chelsea's all, also got to be mindful of racing her own race. This is her first Ironman. Of course, we heard her say in her Fighting Chance video, which you can go back and watch on the Ironman Now channel on Facebook. Um, really no expectations for her. She's got to dial into her race. She's here for a very specific reason. Uh, sure, she'd love to win on debut, but I think that would be arrogant to say when you're racing an athlete like Laura Phillip. Uh, but she stands a great chance uh, of, of collecting that Kona slot. Uh, but she's got to race her race and not necessarily get caught up in what Laura Phillip is doing as we go back to our group of chasers. That white cap is Renee Kiley. Again, we're looking at almost five minutes down from our race leaders uh, coming out of the water here, just under 59 minutes. 
Yes, so Laura Phillip was the first one out of the bike. Uh, to, uh, sorry, out of the uh, bike. That's right. It was Chelsea Sidoro who led the swim today from Laura Phillip and then Menagene with Chantel Sainter, you know, coming in fourth place there. And then heading uh, in the swim right now is Karina Gosvig. Uh, they're from Denmark, and then also Renee Kiley from Australia. So they were 58.46 and 58.48 respectively there. So looking at a deficit of 4.07 and 4.09, you know, back after the swim. That's a lot of time to make up, but uh, this is just the start. It, it is just the start, and, and again, it's a lot of time to make up, but Renee was further back of Lauren Brandon out of the swim last year because Lauren was so much faster uh, and, and Renee still managed to finish in second place. So I don't think Renee is going to be at all concerned. Again, each of these athletes, they use each other in the swim where drafting is legal, but once they get onto the bike, they really do have to race their own race, dial into their own power, manage their own effort throughout the course, uh, start right in on the nutrition and, and, and take care of their own business uh, and be less mindful of what others are doing. I noticed that it took a couple of minutes for, um, you know, Laura Phillip to get out on the road before she actually put her feet into the shoes uh, as Renee Kiley, uh, you know, and also Karina Gosvig uh, come out of the water. There's uh, Renee Kiley from Australia on shot right now. So she knows this race. She was second place here last year. But I just want to get back to the, uh, the bike of Laura Phillip because I noticed just a, a moment ago that Laura Phillip actually, you know, took about two minutes. But she wanted to get up to pace, right? And that's what you do when you start with your feet on top of the shoes. You want to get up to pace and then you reach down, put one foot in, you get up to pace, put the other foot in to the shoes as well. But I did notice on Laura Phillip's bike that when athletes put their shoes on their bike in the cranks there in the pedals, they put a rubber band around the back of the, uh, the, the chain stay there. And the rubber band hadn't snapped yet. They anticipated to snap, but the rubber band hadn't snapped. And I'm I'm curious to look down there and see if it's um, snapped now. Not on the chain side, on the on the left hand side of the wheel there. So it was still hanging on. And that is a little bit of um, uh, definitely a little bit of friction um, that she wants to not have. Absolutely, it depends a little bit on the strength of the rubber band. If she realizes it, she may reach down and snap it herself. Uh, of course, it may be if it's if it's that light a rubber band, she may not notice it for the entirety of the, of the bike as we look at Renee Kiley uh, making her way through the long run to the bike racks as she will get on her bike uh, and pursue our lead group of four women. Uh, Renee Kiley, again, qualified for the Ironman World Championship by way of her, I believe, 14th place finish uh, at the Ironman World Championship uh, just a month or so ago back in St. George, uh, choosing to back up that performance uh, here in Hamburg. Had a great race here last year, so obviously emotionally wanted to come back uh, and try to get one step further up the podium. Uh, it's going to be a big ask for her given the, her competition today, but uh, solid swim for Renee, and she's on her way to the bike. Yeah, she's got a great story, and uh, that of one we will talk about a little bit later on. We'll have a look at a, an interview uh, or two with Renee coming up in the show, possibly uh, on the bike a little bit later on. She does have a wonderful story that we will tell you. All right, so there's our Women Pro Bike Racks right at the very end of transition on the right-hand side. Now we're looking forward to seeing our next couple of swimmers coming out of the water. We already have six out of the water, obviously, with Chelsea Sodoro leading them, Laura Phillip, Menon Genet, Chantel Sainter, Karina. Gosvig, then was Renee Kiley. Now it is Verena Walter coming in from Germany as well. And she is now 7.36 down on the leaders. And then there's Heine Hardekainen uh, from Finland. So, um, you know, she's got a good chance today as well. So our top eight within seven and a half minutes. Yep, absolutely. And uh, Heine Hardekainen, again, she will br breathe uh, a sigh of relief that that swim is over. She's much more known for her uh, bike and run. Uh, so she will be, breathe a sigh of relief to have that swim behind her, but they've got, they've got their work cut out for them as we look at Renee Kiley uh, getting her feet. There's that rubber band you mentioned. That one just snapped perfectly for Renee uh, as she gets underway here on the bike. Yeah, it took a while, um, you know, for uh, Laura Phillips to snap over there, and that was uh, on the first pedal stroke. But it doesn't seem to have uh, stopped Laura. She got out of transition really fast, and I think that she knew exactly why she had to do that because she had the debutante. Yep, the first time at Chelsea Sodaro, the girl, the lady who has been on the podium at the Ironman 70.3 World Championships before. And Laura, she is so strong on the bike. She wants to get out there and get herself some space between her and the other athletes, as now we see Heine coming through from Finland at this point. Yeah, I don't think Laura Phillip is going to look back. I think she's 
fully eyes forward. Uh, I think she's going to be very, very dominant here today. And I think Chelsea Sodaro wisely is going to focus on her own race. It's her first Ironman, right? She's got a lot to, to learn. She's got a lot to figure out. I think if she tries to get caught up in what Laura Phillip is, is doing, uh, it's not probably going to bode well for her. Certainly, if there are athletes around her, she will use them uh, for motivation, for pacing, uh, taking turns legally. Obviously, it's always nice to have some company out there on the bike course, but I think uh, Laura Phillip is going to be in, a, in another zip code in not too much time as we watch our athletes make their way through transition out onto the bike course. We're going to take a quick break, but we're going to come back with all of the action here for the Ironman European Championship here in Hamburg. I'm Dede Griesbauer in studio with Greg Welch. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. There's this beautiful moment in time when neither foot is touching the ground. We are free of gravity and weight, moving above the doubts, past limits, when we are light, transformed, and hopeful. And if we were to collect all these moments, join them together, well, this is when anything becomes possible. This is when we fly. Throughout my career, people have doubted my ability, and I've had it even more so when I've come into triathlon. I think this year will be very different. There will be bigger expectations on me. I love the way that I race. With my swim background, I'm almost in the driving seat from the gun. I'm the person that everyone is chasing. I want to be the best, and I'm willing to work as hard as possible to get there. And back with the action here is our professional women making their way through the first transition. You're looking at Verena Walter uh, from Germany. She currently sits in seventh place, I believe, out of the water in chase uh, of the women ahead of her. She came out of the water uh, with Heini Hartikainen from Finland as that pair makes their way through transition. And we can see, if you look at the athlete tracker here, how significant that transition time is. And we look at the group of four that led the swim together, Laura Phillip, Chelsea Sodaro, um, Chantal saint uh, and Manon Genet, all swam together, 15 second gap by the time they got out of transition. So the long run can add some separation to the women as they get uh, onto the bike here as we look uh, at our next pair of athletes getting onto the bike course here. Yeah, and then also just getting out of the water there in our top 10, uh, just after he Heine Hardekainen was uh, Jenny Ney from Sweden and then Vanessa Pereira from Portugal. So our top 10 women pro athletes are out of the water and pursuing the bike course at this point in time. But Laura Phillip has got a solid lead already there. She is getting stuck into the nutrition at this early part, pushing a very nice gear. Love the position laying over the top of the bike like that. She's got a nice arm tuck at the front there and you can just see the long body of Laura Phillip. She's got great levers and yep. just looks like Jan Fredino on a bike, you know, on the men's side. I mean, they look like they were born on a bike. But Laura Phillip leading the swim... Oh, sorry, first out onto the bike course today at around about 58.04. Sonoro was second onto the bike course at a 58.09. Sodora uh, was, you know, just made up a little bit of time where she lost in the transition, but Sainter, she was sticking like glue, but the person who lost a bit of time was Manon Genet, losing 15 seconds. 15 seconds in the transition. Again, it's a long day out there, not super significant, but if you can have that carrot in front of you and be with another athlete, uh, it's certainly a nice way to start the bike. Uh, the focus does have to come to yourself as we check in here with Chelsea Sodaro currently riding in second place in her Ironman debut again. Uh, the roads here leading out of the city, uh, a couple of bumps and, and, and bruises there in the road. So very much heads up riding here through some of the more technical sections before they get out into the long straightaway, uh, the real meat and potatoes of the bike course. Yeah, see, you're just pushing herself back on the saddle there. She has a little bit more of a tighter position than what uh, Laura Phillip has. I love her turnover. She's got a beautiful cadence happening at the moment, and uh, you can definitely see, you know, the power that she's, you know, throwing down on the on the downstroke. So very nice, you know, set up. A little bit different than Laura Phillips, and, uh, you know, I love the wheel set up today. It's a very flat course. They're going to be heading over to the Elba River, and once they head on to the Elba uh, River, they're just going to be, like, you know, going along the side of this beautiful river right up until that, you know, 40 plus K marker. Then they'll go inland a little bit to the 60 K marker and then all the way back into town to finish off their first lap. Then they'll go out and do it all again. And it's going to be 
absolutely gorgeous here in Hamburg all day. So the conditions are really, really good for these athletes at this point of time. Look absolutely. at that. Absolutely, yeah, stunningly beautiful day here in, in, uh, in Hamburg. I recall back to a year ago uh, calling this race. It was rainy. Uh, the city streets were a bit slick. I think the athletes were a little uh, cautious through these opening sections. Again, you get a lot of auto traffic there. Oil on the roads can be a little bit slippery, but stunningly beautiful day today. A couple of degrees warmer than when we started. Currently, 52 degrees Fahrenheit, uh, but on our way up to 76 degrees Fahrenheit or about 23, 24 degrees Celsius uh, peak temperature later today. Humidity high, 87%. Uh, again, that is in anticipation of some rain expected later in the week. So uh, athletes getting a, a perfect day here today. Winds calm east-northeast at eight kilometers or five miles an hour. So uh, this bike is going to be uh, smoking fast, I think, Greg. Yeah, really fast. And Laura's, you know, <laughs> just getting along really nicely. A couple of things I want to talk about. The, uh, the rubber band is, uh, it's released, but it's still on the back of the bike shoe, which uh, it's not bothering me, but I can see it. It is bothering uh, you, I can tell. <laughs> <laughs> okay, it's still there, but whatever. It's not. It, it's really not going to play into the hands of anything. Um, it's just there. Uh, anyway, but I love the way that she stretched out on the bike. So we got a, you know, side-by-side shot, uh, side shot of Chelsea Sororo and Laura Phillip will be able to to explain it a little bit better, but I'm going to explain it like this. If you look at the elbow of Laura Phillip right now, it's around about five inches uh, in front of where the knee of, you know, her elbow is landing. Now, if you look on this shot, this is around about three inches. So, you know, it's a lot tighter, you know, the position that uh, she's using. But again, you know, I'm just nitpicking and uh, everybody has a different position on their bike. They have a different position on how they lay over it. They have a different height. And, uh, you know, the way that they uh, get their efficiency is about numbers. You go into, you know, do some testing, get your power outputs and you, you do your setup, you know, professionally. And that's, that's it for you. But I just, I love the way that, you know, Laura Phillips is laying over the bike. Um, the way that she's doing and Chelsea here you know she's got a good position for her she's a lot shorter athlete right and her legs are a lot shorter so you know there's visually there's it's very difficult because you look at an athlete like, like <laughs> right exactly yep. that, that Laura Phillip is yep. just so long and lanky and, yep. and it's it's really difficult for her not to look good on a bike I think because she has those long levers she has those long arms um, and she just sits beautifully on the bike and, and the important thing uh, it, as with fit all of these athletes, I think, can get more aero. You can, you can be more aero, but they're, the tipping point with Ironman racing is that you have to be able to run off of the position, right? So you can have an aggressive, aggressive uh, fit, be more aero, but if you can't stand up and run off it, it doesn't do you any good. So that's the tipping point these athletes need to calculate. Yes, they can go into the wind tunnel and make changes to be faster, but can they ride that comfortably and run effectively off of it? It's something they tweak over time. I think many of the professionals will check in with their bike fitter um, a couple of times a year to see where they can tweak. Uh, and then we have Laura Phillip getting some splits there, no doubt from her husband, uh, giving her the, the business out there, getting her going as she gets underway. You know, she did take a, a nice long look uh, the second uh, corner ago. And, um, you know, she was, uh, you know, quite a bit in front of her, but she was interested to know exactly where uh, Chelsea Sedora is. And we can tell you that she's at 33 seconds down. 33 seconds down. And again, that is just uh, at nine kilometers as we are underway here in Hamburg. Uh, one of the showcases, a beautiful European city here. All of our European events combine beautiful landscapes with captivating cities. And Ironman Copenhagen also allows the athletes to experience a true capital city and a sightseeing adventure. The lagoon at Amgar Strand Park provides the ideal swim conditions and calm waters, catching stunning views while you ride through the city, coastline, and beautiful countryside. In the heart of Copenhagen, athletes run past the famous attractions, including the Little Mermaid and the Amlenberg Castle before heading to the finish line at Christianborg Palace. Come and see why this event is a European favorite. Register at Ironman Copenhagen today at ironman.com. Gorgeous race. You know what? It's not too far away from here as no, well. No, no, just a little bit further north. Yeah, just a little bit further north and, uh, you know, to the east. Uh, you, you can actually uh, drive over there, but it'll take you a little bit longer than flying. But uh, you can go up on the 
Um, on the western side of, of Germany, uh, the northwestern side, and that's where you hit the border with Denmark as well. All right, so Laura Phillip here riding along nicely. Got the arms just spread out right on top there, just looking really, really nice. Look at that head. It really hasn't moved too much. I think she's got a great position there. She doesn't move her shoulders much at all either. She's oh, very... She's going to lose that back bottle. Uh, <laughs> she just hit a pothole. She is going to yeah. lose that back can bottle. See I saw it was about oh, an inch. Boy. Out. If she hits another pothole, she is going to lose. You could see that it's not all the way tucked down. And I could see as you were talking there, Greg, that it, it, it had bounced out about an inch. She just hit another pothole. If she hits another one, uh, it's going to bounce, which at this stage of the race, not ideal. Not ideal because a lot of these athletes will have their, their own personal nutrition. There's great nutrition options on the course, of course, with uh, the Gatorade Endurance Formula, uh, the Morton Gels. But... Some of the athletes, certainly in the early stages of the race, will have their own personalized nutrition, and no, no doubt that that bottle on the back uh, of Laura Phillips' uh, bike isn't in danger. <laughs> yeah, agree. Um, it's it's always been an issue, you know, in Ironman racing, Ironman 70.3 races, or is any triathlon, you know, uh, with that. Um, when you're going, you know, with courses and you know that there's speed bumps coming up and you just need to reach around and just make sure that they're there uh, still and, or, you know, they need to be repositioned or whatever, but... You know, that's that's one of the things that you, it's give or take, you know, on, on these races. You never know what type of course you're going to get. But when you do hit a, a speed bump, you need to know that, you know, you, you just have to, you know, diligently yep. reach around and just make sure. And that I think it's a little solid. a little pre race course recon to know that the early sections of this road, as Correct. we see Renee Kylie uh, navigating some of those bumps and bruises uh, along the road here. As soon as the athlete gets to the main part of this race course, uh, that the roads definitely smooth out. I mean, these are great rate riding conditions, but we're in a major metropolitan city, so there are bound to be some potholes. Another fail-safe there is just to, to wrap a, a very small rubber band around the base of the bottle, um, up to the nipple of the bottle. Again, holds it onto the cage, and it's easy to just sort of fling the rubber band off the top. Just gives it a little bit of insurance policy uh, that that's going to stay put, and I would have added that for a, a city race like this or any course that you know there's going to be some bumps along the way. Beautiful course, though, very scenic as they make their way out of Ham uh, Hamburg right now. They're going to make their way down onto the Elba River, and then they're going to make their way to the back end of the race there. That's where they're going to turn around and come back in toward town here. But uh, Laura Phillip right now, she is accelerating away from her competition, but not that quick. You know, the Chelsea's lost, uh, what, 34 seconds over the first 10 kilometres. So that's not too bad if he goes along at that rate. Yep, it will be a few minutes, uh, you know, at the turnaround and then quite possibly a little bit more than that on the way back. But uh, Sodoro doing a good job. She's in second alone by 45 seconds. And uh, Menonji Janae, she is uh, sitting right behind Sainter in fourth position. You would imagine that those two athletes will be cycling alongside of each other here pretty soon. And Sodoro has got a bit of work to do, but uh, just keep it in sight, Laura Phillip. And I tell you what, she's uh, she's the woman to beat today for sure. Yeah, I think, uh, you know, on paper, this is Laura Phillip's race to lose. Of course, the big question mark is this woman, Chelsea Sodaro, uh, makes her home in Reno, Nevada, uh, used to make her home in the Bay Area. They've moved recently to Reno. Um, and Iron Man debut here. So we she, she doesn't know what to expect of herself. I think you can mathematically run the numbers and uh, know where she could be. But I think right now she's got to take her mind off of Laura Phillip and put her mind strictly on what can Chelsea Sodaro do Back today. Back into the game plan. Exactly, right. She will have discussed this with her coach, uh, have pacing, uh, have power estimates, a nutrition plan, and that's got to be her focus uh, straight away. Right now, I am telepathically telling Laura Phillip to reach around behind and tuck that <laughs> bottle in. If the rubber band on her shoe is bugging you, this bottle is giving me so much anxiety right now. <laughs> yeah, well, that's uh, the all-important bottle, isn't it? Because, you know, they have a solution that the athletes have formulated over, you know, months and months of training, if not years of training, and, and trying to find out what, you know, what individual, you know, has uh, for themselves. Everybody's different and everybody figures out, you know, a different formula for each other. A lot of people go off, uh, you know, a mixture of carbs and proteins. A lot of uh, athletes, you know, go off carbs alone. So a lot of athletes are going off a, a little bit more higher sugars, which I don't really recommend in the first half of anything. But um, 
Laura Phillip there just riding along nicely, the bike. Uh, to your dismay, has not moved an inch at this point of time, so she's doing all right. But this is Chelsea Sodoro. You know, you can see that she's just pushing away there, and Laura and Chelsea pretty much have the same sort of cadence going on at the moment. That's around about a, you know, 90 cadence, I would imagine. And uh, this is, you know, right, right in the efficiency ratings where I, I think that they should be. Well, let's talk about that. Why, what, what is the range of acceptability in your mind? I, I wouldn't even call it acceptability. I would call it something like, you know, efficiencies. And, you know, everybody has to find their own, you know, sweet spot, as you say. And, uh, you know, it doesn't matter if you can accept like a 70 cadence, like a grinder. Yep. It's just absolutely just, uh, you know, just giving it the big gear crunching, you know, at the same time. Or if it's someone that's up at around about 100, because you never know uh, with somebody's, you know, cadence. Like if I was to push a, a 100 cadence or 110 cadence, my heart rate would be through the roof. So you just settle back to what you learn over the months of training and, uh, you know, you get your numbers, you know, spat out by all these monitors these days and uh, these power meters. So this is Laura Phillip and she's leading our pro women at Ironman Hamburg European Championship. Whether it's on the road or in the pool, your activity has high demands. Rooted in sweat and grounded in science, we understand your unique fueling needs. That is why we created formulas just for you, endurance athletes, helping you replace what you're losing and keeping you fueled. And there's nowhere we'd rather be than with you along this journey, because together we are formulated for farther. From the creators of Gatorade, Gatorade Endurance, formulated for you, formulated for farther. Gatorade Endurance is definitely going to be something that's in the minds of the athletes today as they make their way around the Ironman Hamburg circuit. Two laps on the bike. We've already had one lap swim. It was a good one as well. All the age groupers will be finishing off their swim in Hamburg right now as they, uh, you know, set out to see the bike course as well. But right now, Laura Phillip has had an early charge on the bike course and she's 34 seconds ahead of second place Chelsea Sodaro from the United to say so the German is having it all of her own way at right at this particular point of time in a little bit of a downhill section at this point you can see that the water bottle just hanging on by a thread <laughs> on a gorgeous day right here in Hamburg it started off at 50 degrees Fahrenheit or 10 degrees Celsius this morning a little on the chilly side humidity is keeping it really nice out there and it feels like 48 or 9 degrees which is sort of dipped down a touch but it now is just starting to rise up the UVEC UV index is way down. The wind, very light at five miles per hour, eight kilometers per hour out there today. So beautiful conditions for our pro women here at the European Championship on what promises to be a perfect race day. That's right. And when we look at our professional women here, of course, when people start asking where are the pro men, where's the coverage of the pro men, no pro men here. They will be racing their European Championship in Frankfurt in a few weeks' time. This is just pro women only. Uh, three slots available. Of course, keep in mind, Laura Phillip is already qualified for the Ironman World Championship in October by virtue of her uh, win at Ironman Austria back in 2021. Renee Kiley also already qualified for the Ironman World Championship by virtue of her finish at the World Championship in St. George just about a month or so ago. Yeah, then she uh, headed off to uh, Flagstaff, Arizona, did a little bit of an altitude, you know, training camp uh, for a little bit there and then uh, arrived over in Hamburg, we believe, on Wednesday, which is very, very close to the race start here, but coming in from altitude, probably wanting to, you know, have that effect on her body, you know, coming there. Okay, so you can see on the left there, Laura Phillip is just making her way on the outskirts of Hamburg right now. She makes her way out on to the Elba River and out toward the far end of the course. It's not going to be so urban out there, so she'll uh, get protection right now from the wind with all these big buildings, but in about 10 kilometres or so, she'll be out into the sticks where she'll make her way toward that turnaround. But right now, wearing the number one is number one, Laura Philippa, Germany, just riding along nicely. 
Yeah, what a great, what a great opportunity for Laura Phillip. Obviously, a massive disappointment for her to have to miss the Ironman World Championship uh, due to a positive COVID test on the day she was meant to travel uh, to the, that event. Just the heartbreak of that. Uh, really, really difficult. Not only to, not to mention the the illness that she suffered. She was flat out in bed for several days, unable to train uh, appropriately for a few weeks. But boy, has she turned that around. Yeah, she'll be able to turn it around. I mean, she's gotten herself into, you know, great shape for the World Championship, obviously. And then, you know, having to, you know, have a forced rest for, you know, two, three, four days or whatever it is. And then just sort of, you know, slowly start that build up again. It's not going to hurt her one little bit as long as she got over there COVID, you know, uh, well. Uh, because last weekend at Crash Cow, she had a fantastic race. So, you know, that she, you know the, the, the training was there, the, the, the um, you know, the pace was there and her fitness is right where it needs to be. And right now she's showing exactly that. Well, I think she has such an appreciation too for just being able to be out there racing. Uh, nothing makes you appreciate racing more than not being able to race. So uh, I think she's racing with a lot of gratitude today to be back, be healthy, uh, and to be able to perform here in her home country. Yeah, but it's early season. She's only got a couple of races under her belt so far this year, but uh, just about what everybody's had as well. So at uh, nine kilometres, it was 34 seconds of deficit for Sodaro. They were saying to her at 112, 119 was Genea France. The Australian was at 646, so losing a bit of time in transition and over the first 10 kilometres. Then it was Gonsvig from uh, Denmark was right there at 735. Hart Tetnigan uh, from um, uh, Finland was at 9.43 and then Walter and Nath from Sweden and Germany were at 11 and 13 minutes respectively there. So it is stretching out a little bit here in the early part of it, but we uh, sort of knew that would happen. Laura Phillip, though, at the pointy end of the field is just riding along nicely and uh, she knows that she's looking down there. She can see what her numbers are and she's just uh, in the groove. She absolutely is in the groove, and, and this is a, a camera shot, folks, that you should get used to because I think we're going to see a lot of it uh, over the course of this bike course. Uh, I think my prediction is that Laura Phillip will continue to increase that lead as we come back here to third and fourth place. Uh, Chantel saint here and Manon Genet, uh, the two of them locked together. We had a chance to catch up with Chantel saint before the race, and here's her profile in A Fighting Chance. Hi, I'm Chantal Sainter, I'm 31 and I'm from London in the UK. I do train totally on feel, um, so I used to train with data, I actually think it held me back. Uh, part of that I think is due to the fact that when I, I was a rower, in the sort of formative years of my life, we didn't really have tech, massive technology then, so you had to really learn how to feel, get the feel for yourself, and so my I think I'm very in tune with my body. Being able to race on field just allows me to be a proper racer and that's what I am at heart. Um, I do like the training, but for me, race day is, is, is what I do it for. Um, and being stuck to numbers, I think, can hold you in a place where you can potentially lose the opportunity to go and do something pretty special. Um, you know, and at the end of the day, if you go too hard and you blow up, well, you've lost nothing really because you've put yourself out there and, and that's sort of how I've been racing so far and it's paid off, so yeah, it's been good. Um, I love training in a group. I think you kind of have to do some of your training on your own. You know, race day is, is a day on your own. Um, you've obviously got competitors around you, but you really need to stick to your own race plan. Um, so I think you need a mixture of both. I'd obviously love to train with people all the time, every day. Um, that's not really possible where I live and train. Um, so yeah, I think you need a mixture of both. You really need that sort of solidarity training on the turbo, hours and hours on your own. Um, so in a flat race, you've got to train your brain to be focused on what you're doing. It's so easy to think about, you know, what am I going to have for dinner later? Or, you know, anything that might be on your, you know, come into your mind because your brain's trying to entertain itself. So I think those long hours on the turbo or just training on your own allows you to maintain that focus that you'll need in a race. I love the focus of uh, Chantel Sainter there, but we've had a Morton move out there. We've got uh, Manon Genet from France has gone by uh, Sainter right now, and she made that Morton move just a moment ago while the interview was happening there. So Sainter now has slipped back into fourth position. Manon Genet is right up there in third position, just stroking away at those pedals at this point in time here, and there's a nice little gap in between, at least 20 to 30 metres, which is absolutely fantastic to 
to know that they're not, you know, getting into that draft zone or into the, you know, the blocking zone, but there's no one else around anyway. So that's it for third and fourth. The Morton move was made by Manon Genet into third place. Absolutely. Manon Genet off to a great start to her 2022 season. She is obviously in pursuit of one of the three qualifying slots for the Ironman World Championship, but so far this year she placed fourth at the Ironman 70.3 in Majorca back at the beginning of May. So a strong start from Noel Genet. Uh, no doubt that Kona slot is on her mind. It will be on her mind all day long today because we've got two slots that have already been taken by uh, Renee and also uh, Laura up there. So three more are going to roll down there today. So that's great news for the other ladies that have not qualified. And Chelsea Sidoro comes here, you know, looking for one of those spots and, uh, you know, doing a first uh, race at the Ironman distance, you know, a little bit of pressure, you know, going in, you know, probably thinking about, well, I'll make my debut here in Germany and then I will use that as a stepping stone to Kona, but first time I have to make sure that I have a good race, you know, to get that spot as well. Well, she's got to be, she's got to be careful. All today, Chelsea Sodaro has to focus on is being smart uh, and executing that race plan to the best of her ability. Again, she's got the talent uh, to put it together. Got to keep on top of the nutrition. That's so critical. The one, I would say, major difference between Ironman racing and Ironman 70.3 racing is uh, that nutrition. And this is bib number five we are looking at here. That is Manon Genet. Uh, again, has made the move uh, into ahead of Chantel uh, and now sits in third place. I really like, um, you know, how the athletes have uh, used these, you know, aero frames and done the aero bottles as well because it does make a bit of a difference, you know, for the aerodynamics of, of everything. I know that the, the human body takes up pretty much all of it, but when we look at the, the bikes and the way that everything is set up, you know, they're these very, very nice and clean machines. When you look at them from the front, they look so stealth. It's amazing. So I love the way that they've, uh, you know, gone to the attention to detail. And, uh, you know, with Manon, you can see that that, that aero bottle sitting down uh, on the tube there, right, tucked behind that uh, little sign there on a bike there. So this is perfect riding from Manon Genet right now. She made that Morton move just a moment ago and uh, up into third place. And now she's uh, getting a bit of hurry on by the look of it and uh, seeing if she can bridge that up uh, up to Chelsea Sodoro, which is looking uh, not too bad. Yeah, Manon Genet uh, really discovered triathlon at the age of 18, but it wasn't until uh, years later that she got more serious about that. Uh, she put the focus on her studies as she was going through school. Good girl, Manon. Um, and triathlon became her full-time job at the age of 27 uh, when she realized that she um, had nothing to lose by giving it a try. See. Uh, if she could be the best that she could be. And she has done a great job of it. She's had uh, some stellar results over the years. As I mentioned, a fourth place in Mallorca earlier this year. Um, and she was second place at the World Triathlon Long Distance Championship just last year in, in 2021. So a uh, super, super talented athlete, Manon Genet. Yeah, she's put up some really good results and I uh, wouldn't be at all surprised today that, you know, she's going to give one of those great uh, great efforts again and uh, I'm looking for her to have a podium uh, position here today. I think that uh, out there in our top three places with, uh, you know, Sidoro. You're calling and, the podium already, Greg. I, yeah, I mean, I, I really do think that... That's Manon, aggressive. I, it's very aggressive, one and a half hours into this <laughs> race here, but I, I'm feeling pretty good about it. But uh, Manon, she's, she's had some good races, uh, you know, in the past. And I just think that, you know, she's getting pretty aggressive with it right now. I mean, Chantel could probably use this, to, you know, to her benefit um, by just sitting back there and let Manon, you know, sort of set the pace here. As long as she stays uh, legal distance back, you know, more than 12 bike lengths, she's going to be okay. And uh, you can see right now that, uh, you know, coming now behind, uh, this is uh, uh, Chantel. So uh, we can see that uh, another move is going to be made here. Yeah, these, I think these two are, are going to be back and forth working together legally as we uh, sometimes tend to see and like to see. I think it's a couple of bottle drops there. Uh, not going to get it this time there. Chantel, uh, again, so important, particularly on these flat courses. To slow course down. Designers, yep. Course designers do such a good job in setting up the, tr the, the aid stations on more undulating courses to set them up on an uphill. But on these flat courses, really important that you slow down to grab those bottles because if you're carrying that much speed, you're just going to bounce the bottle. But she got it there um, at the end. But uh, Chantel Sainter, again, we know her as Chantel Cummings 
uh, recently married, comes from the United Kingdom. Uh, and she was fifth place at Ironman Austria back in 2021 and third place uh, at Ironman UK uh, the same year, 2021. So uh, that there being in her home country, so a thrill for her. Uh, she's had a very quiet start to the season. This is her first uh, full Ironman here uh, in Hamburg. This evening's athletes sort of heading into a, a little bit of a headwind. I saw a little bit of wind on the flags on the side of the road there just a moment ago, and you know that that's going to get up to around about uh, five miles or six miles an hour right now. It may get up a little bit more a little bit later on in the afternoon, but the early part of it is that Laura Phillip is slicing that headwind as she makes her way out toward that turnaround on the bike course on the first loop right here at the Ironman Hamburg European Championship. Ladies are going full gas here. As we can see, that that was Dee Dee's uh, little pet peeve there. And the water bottle went out over the cobble. So now Laura Phillip has lost her special needs bottle at the back there. So she's going to be without some of her nutrition at this early part of the bike ride. So only at about 25 kilometres into it. And Laura Phillip is down to one water bottle, Dee Dee. Down to a bottle. And at this point, there's nothing she can do. Uh, does she go back for it this early on? Uh, uh, she knows she would have dropped it. She hit the cobbles, must have heard the bottle bounce. She, she elected not to go back for it. it could, it's possible she can replace those calories with, with on-service, on-course nutrition, no doubt. Um, but at this point, she's just got to put it out of her mind because there's nothing can be done. She's maybe going to do some calculations mathematically in her head to know what was in that bottle and what she's got to replace it with that she can grab on the course. Yeah, like you say, best thing is to uh, not freak out about it. Just uh, Like I know, just did. <laughs> there you go. So, she, well, she just reached around to see if it was there or not and now she gets, she gets the answer that she was uh, not wanting to get and that is that the bottle is gone. Um, so she's going to have to, like you say, recalculate uh, the formulas now and I don't know what she's got on that uh, down tube bottle there but uh, I would imagine that she's got two very equal bottles Models of, you know, um, concentrated, uh, you know, formula to get herself through it. So you can see that uh, Philip now is down to one bottle on the bike course at this early stage. Uh, but continues to lead the race, biking very, very strong. Again, she's, she's lovely to look at on a bicycle. Uh, those long levers, the long legs, the long arms, um, super fit, just pushes some great, great power, uh, gets the full length of that pedal stroke. You see the heel comes all the way down through the bottom part of the pedal stroke. Chelsea Sidoro is still sitting out there in second place, not too far behind uh, at this point in time. I don't think she's lost too much time over the last 10 kilometres or so. So Chelsea riding a pretty good race at the moment, trying to chase down Laura Phillip, who is now down to one bottle on the bike. And now you can see that Chelsea still has her second bottle strapped onto the back of the bike there, looking very, very nice in her first Ironman distance race today. So the American is riding now alongside of the Elba River here. Elba heading in the other direction of the North Sea, and it is a gorgeous river, as we can see out there. Very flat riding conditions today, Didi, so there's not going to be much chance for any respite whatsoever. No, not at all. Again, and, and we, we heard Chantel talk about that in her fighting chance, that you've got to maintain that focus uh, because the mind tends to wander when there aren't, uh, you know, the course isn't throwing things at you, climbs, turns, etc. 
Uh, so holding that arrow position, it creates, I think a lot of athletes think, oh, the flat courses are the, the easy ones. Uh, I'll take the other side of that and holding that arrow position for that long, being locked in uh, is very, very challenging physically. Very challenging physically, but they've done it before, especially Laura Phillips. She's done it a bunch of times, and she's done it very, very well. She gets onto the narrower part of the course right now, protected here from the wind a little bit as she makes her way out on the, the narrow roads of the outskirts of Hamburg at the moment as she makes her way toward the turnaround, and she's not going to take too much time to get out there. Once she does hit that turnaround, it'll be all the way back into Hamburg for a second lap. They'll be retracing their steps out there, Didi, and this is beautiful. Beautiful uh, conditions on the on the bike course here at the moment. Look at these roads; just very nice pavement out yep. there. Flat conditions, pretty fast riding. Absolutely. And when we we talk about Laura Phillip, it, you you've got to mention that this the absolutely stunning ascension she's had into the sport. Uh, she only turned pro in, in 2015. Uh, and on debut for the Ironman distance at Ironman Barcelona in 2018, uh, she certainly made a statement posting a winning time of eight hours, 34 minutes and, and 57 seconds. Uh, and, and I think that made the triathlon world take notice that uh, certainly she was uh, something uh, to, to contend with in the future. Um, but again, she's having her struggles out there this morning. Well, you can see the struggle and uh, we'll go back and take a look at it again because as she uh, come around there under the cobbles, there's only about a 30 to 40 meter section of cobbles there. And there it goes, propelling out of the back of the bike there of Laura Phillip and out onto the course. He chose not to go back and get it because I don't think that she actually realized at the time that it went out unless she did hear it. But you can see that she's got that aero helmet on. And sometimes you can't quite hear everything that's going on. But she did realize uh, about a kilometer later or so, she put her hand around the back of the bike there, Didi, and unfortunately didn't feel anything back there. Well, and at that point, that's where you just shift your mindset and say, look, it's, it, what's done is done. Um, hopefully, she's got the, the personal needs bags uh, set. Athletes will have uh, the opportunity to refresh some of those personal nutritions uh, if, if she had left a bottle, and, and hopefully she will have done that. So for the second half of the course, uh, typically those are placed around the halfway point. She'll, she'll be able to reload and will make do with what she's got. And of course, she's got access to... Uh, the Gatorade Endurance Formula and all of the Morton gels that will be available on course at every aid station. And still going over another paved section uh, of the road there, you can see, uh, you know, uh, back to Chelsea Sodoro onto the bitumen, you know, we call it the, you know, the hot mix and the blacktop, but uh, there's a couple of paved sections, a couple of cobble sections out there as well. So, you know, they've got to take that into account. All right, so we've got Sainte here in Menon's Genet. Genet is trying to uh, get around Sainte there so they can keep that pace going, but look Looks like they're very, very, you know, close to that uh, drafting, drafting distance right now. So Sainte leads Manon Genet as they make their way across the back of the course as well. And they're all pretty tight at the moment, I would say, in between about three minutes of each other, our lead four. It, it, a flat course like this, it's hard to get that separation. And, and athletes of this caliber, all of these women can ride a super strong uh, first half, I think the separation we start to see later in the bike and, of course, into the marathon, and that's where early mistakes and why we're, we're sort of harping on this issue with Laura Phillip in the bottle, those nutritional shortcomings, um, again, can, can have consequences later on in the race. But so far, we're not going to see a ton of separation as these two uh, maintain locked together as they have been since they got out of the water. They have been locked together, absolutely, and they are making it an interesting race for us, for sure, because they are going back and forth, and you see Menon Genet now taking in some of that all-important nutrition, and this is from the down tube, so they'll go back and forth from the back bottle to the uh, down tube bottle as well. So explain that, uh, Didi, how do you do it in your Ironman races? Uh, I have a pretty similar setup with uh, a bottle on the down tube and a, a rear bottle, uh, that tends to be a spare. I also have uh, a bottle between my arms that I, I typically tend to put plain water there. So my calories are locked into the frame on the down tube uh, with a supplemental bottle on the back and, and water at the front with a little straw poking up, reminding me to keep on to the hydration, uh, having access to it there without having to move about and grab at bottles uh, for me is, is, is super successful. Across another paved section of the race course once again, there is Laura Phillip, our women's leader, 
at this point in time, coming up to, um, up onto the third hour, starting the third hour, coming up in about 18 minutes' time from now. So Laura Phillip has been very close to the lead, if not in it, for the most amount of time today from this lady here. And Chelsea Sidoro was our early swim leader there today, but she was overtaken in transition by the fast Laura Phillip, and that was just experience I'm putting that down to. Chelsea Sidoro did a respectable transition out there, and she did run pretty quickly quickly up into the, you know, the second spot there, got on a bike and here she is again, just riding along nicely. And, uh, you know, early parts of the bike ride right now, stay on the nutrition, stay on the game plan here and you can do it because she's, you know, done it at 70.3 level. We know the talent of Chelsea Sodaro, already a top three, a podium finish at the Ironman, 70.3 World Championships in 2019 in Nice, France. And today she sets herself a very big goal of two things. Firstly, getting across that finish line, and secondly, grabbing one of those spots to the Ironman World Championship, coming back to Kona in October this year. Yeah, very, very exciting indeed. The three slots up for grabs here, of course, with Laura Phillip uh, and Renee Kiley already in possession, but all of the other women uh, in our professional women's race today uh, in pursuit of one of those slots, and, and one could go to this woman. Right here, and that is Chantelle Sainter from the UK and she's riding nicely. I love that the power she's putting out right now as we get Laura, she's making a right-hand turn, getting out to the back end of the course as well. Done nicely, takes a look around. She's very curious to see where Chelsea Sodoro is and I think that she's happy to not see anything back there because I think that Sodoro is, uh, you know, sitting at around about 1.30 down. But we'll get a little bit of a, a break here. We'll get a, a chance to see, you know, how close our athletes are to each other when we go through the next Next time check, which will be at 54 kilometers. And Laura Phillip returning to racing, unfortunately having to miss that Ironman World Championship, but showing that she hasn't missed a beat uh, was very strong. Last weekend at a 70.3, and that's, that's a tough turnaround using a 70.3 a, a race as a warm-up. Uh, to your Ironman, a bold move by Laura Phillip. Uh, yeah, a bold move, but I think it was a move that... Um, she didn't really have a choice. And if she wanted to get a race in before her Ironman race, then that was last weekend. All right, let's just recap the nine-kilometre bike for our top 12 athletes here. It was Laura Phillip going through there at 1.11 on the total time. Sodoro was second at 34 down. St. Jeanne were riding together. Uh, Kylie came up there. Renee Kylie is up at 6.46. There was Gosvig and then Harkinen and then also Walter Ney, Pereira, Lubin and Tim from Germany, our top 12 at 20 minutes separation at the 10 kilometer point. And Laura Phillip continuing to lead and dominate here in Hamburg. Very, very comfortable on her bike. Uh, we've got the fully supported uh, aero bars there with uh, the bars going all the way from the elbow up to the middle of the forearm, uh, not putting pressure on the arm at all, providing a, a high degree of comfort, enabling her to keep those shoulders nice and relaxed. Uh, she just drives so well um, through the hip to the bottom part of the pedal stroke. We look at Chelsea Sodaro, uh, it tends to be a little toeier. She points her toe a little bit. Uh, I'd like to see her drive a little bit more into the bottom with that heel as she did when she cornered there. Doesn't get that with each pedal stroke though, Greg. No, she's not getting that, and she's probably around about two minutes down now as Laura Phillip goes around the corner. Sodaro around two minutes down on our leader at this point in time, and then Sainter and Jeanne, who are on screen right now, they're coming up to this corner here in just a few moments. But look at the gear that uh, Sainter is pushing right now. She's pushing a fairly solid gear here as she comes up to make that turn, and uh, Jeanne is sitting right in behind in fourth place at this point in time. So Sainter riding along strongly at this early part of the bike course today. We've got all of our age groupers out there as well. If you want to track along with those age groupers, why don't you go to the Ironman Tracker? If you don't have it loaded, go to the App Store. Just load it. The Ironman Tracker will pop up there. It's free. You can track anybody out there in the race today and any of the races around the globe. So get it there, Ironman Tracker. Poke in their last name or their race number. Hit enter. That'll give you exactly where they are on the course at that time or and their estimated times of arrival at the finish line or at transitions or wherever they need to be. Here we go. We've got Laura Phillip here. She's in the lead of the Ironman Hamburg European Championship, and this is our women's pro race only. She wants to defend that championship. We'll be able to do that. 
We'll come back right after this break and we'll just see how she's getting about it. That's a hypervolt. That thing he uses to warm up and stay loose before he throws it down. That thing Tony Finau uses on course between shots. Ooh, that's money. That thing Robin and I use before and after we're on the bike so we can ride harder tomorrow. That thing Erlen Holland uses before smashing it into the back of the net. That thing that's for everyone. The hypervolt from Hyperice. Give your body the daily relief it's been asking for. The Ironman European Championship Hamburg continues with our pro women's race. And right now, Laura Phillip has a commanding lead over Chelsea Sodoro. Sainter in third and Janae in fourth. The top five is rounded out by Australia's Renee Kylie. And she's doing a good race. And she was second place in this race last year, uh, Didi. She's got a bit of work to do to get back up to that position. Yeah, she does have a bit of work ahead of her, but that's all right. She was... She was not as far back as she was a year ago from the leader. So a lot of time and a lot of racing still to do. I think the one difference is that um, she has an Ironman in her legs from the Ironman World Championship. Of course, we know that was a very challenging course. Uh, a lot of undulation there. I think that run course in particular uh, beat the athlete's legs up quite a bit. So uh, we will see if she was able to recover from that. Obviously, I don't think she'd have made the trip across if she didn't feel like she could uh, factor into today's race. Well, women athletes here today are fighting a little bit of a headwind and their age groupers as well. Going out to the turnaround point, you can see that uh, right now they're right alongside of one of the canals here and uh, there's going to be over 100 canals that they're going to go past, you know, in this bike course, which is absolutely amazing. And they just jut off, you know, the Elba River here and there and everywhere. So a fantastic, you know, point of the course here, but this is absolutely gorgeous knowing that this port city in Hamburg is just turning on a spectacular day for us today. You can see the wind shifts right there along the river at the moment, uh, you know, just lining up. You're protected on, on the right side, so you can see that it's coming across at a little bit of an angle right now, but for Laura Phillip, doesn't seem to be too much of a problem. No problem at all, and just stunning scenic beauty here at Ironman Hamburg. What a fitting site for the European Championship. Of course, this city is surrounded uh, by water. The city has more bridges than any city in the world at approximately 2,300 bridges. That's, that's a amazing. lot of bridges. That's a lot of engineering. That's a, okay, that's a lot of maintenance, too. It's <laughs> a lot of maintenance. Uh, yeah, but anyway, the, the Brukas uh, over there, yeah, 2,300 of them in this region. It's absolutely amazing. There's 2 million you know, people that live in the city of Hamburg and around about 5 million inhabitants in the metropolitan area of Hamburg. It is the second largest city in Germany, only that to Berlin. So amazing to know that that these are little statistics and little, uh, you know, tidbits for you. All right, so Laura Phillip there, she's leading our race, and uh, Chelsea Sodoro is in a chasing position right now. Menagene and uh, Chantel Sainter in third and fourth positions. Renee Kiley from Australia is trying to cut into that lead, but just losing a little bit of time at this point of the course right now. But beautiful look at the rural, you know, parts of Hamburg right now. And gorgeous overhead shot here of our women's leader as she continues to drill away at this bike. Uh, again, lost her bottle early on. We'll see if that factors into her performance later on. Hopefully she's got some backup calories uh, stashed here or there, but... Uh, uh, my money's on her. I don't think it's going to be a problem. She's just far too talented. Um, and, and while not a lot of years of experience, um, certainly she is experienced enough at top-level racing uh, to know how to, uh, to manage that, that earlier bobble. Well, she's, uh, you know, the earlier part for her started out fantastic, in my opinion. It was a great start to the day. It was a 6.15 a.m. start here in Hamburg, and what a great way to get under underway under beautiful blue skies. There's Paul Kane, Till Shank getting everybody underway here. 
and it was a great start for our athletes, but it was quick to get underway here. You saw a group of four just getting together on the, um, you know, on the right-hand side of the course, and unfortunately, Renee Kiley was caught out and one of the first athletes to be shifted off the back of the uh, lead pack. Absolutely, and that happened before 600 meters, so Renee didn't didn't make that group, and, and they just uh, dispensed with her immediately. Uh, this group, largely with Chelsea Sodaro at the front of it, Ford, a lion's share of it. Uh, Manon Genet took a different line and swam most of it by herself with uh, Laura Phillip and Chantel falling in and, and, and tapping on toes throughout the entire uh, length of the swim. Yeah, Manon Genet, they're just uh, swimming the whole uh, swim course in her own little style there. You can see the other three athletes were swimming on the, well, the other two athletes were swimming on the bubbles of Chelsea Sidoro, but it was all Chelsea Sidoro in the swim today as they made their one way under the Kennedy Bridge with 800 metres to go. And it was a very nice long tunnel in the swim here. Do you think it was a little eerie, a little spooky? I think you tend to lose some of the sighting, and that may have been why Chelsea Sadara wore the lighter goggles. I think when you go under those long bridges, uh, you tend to get a little lost in there. It gets really echoey. It is a little spooky under those bridges. In any case, it was okay for Chelsea Sadara because she led out of the water. Laura Phillip in second, Menagene in third place, and then also Chantel Sainta was in fourth place. But now we... Uh, catch back up to the live action here and this is Laura Phillip in first place. This is in third place right now. Below there is Chantel and also Manon Genet. But back to the lead of the race at this point in time is Laura Phillip as we can see right now. I wonder if she's looking down at that Wahoo and uh, just making sure that she knows exactly where she's going, where the heart rate's at and uh, average speed and so on. Yeah, she has been a little bit curious about what's going on behind her. Every time she's made a turn, she's looked over that shoulder. Uh, but as you can see here from this camera angle, ain't nothing to be seen out there. If there's nothing behind her, I think she's continuing to uh, extend her lead there. This, of course, coming back to Chelsea Sodaro, the American who is making her Ironman debut. Again, um, Chelsea had a very, very successful career as a runner, but as many runners suffered some injuries and sort of found triathlon as a, as a second coming uh, and an opportunity for her to sort of uh, prove what she could achieve in sport in a whole new sport. And of course, as she mentioned in her uh, fighting chance profile that we saw earlier, of course, you can go back to Iron Man now uh, on Facebook and watch that in its entirety if you missed it. But um, she talks about moving up to Iron Man and how that's very similarly another chance again to be a rookie to to learn something new to to see what is possible and what she can achieve at this new distance Manon Genet from France on screen right now as you can see the sheep on the side of the road there just uh <laughs> pecking away at the, giving her a shout out oh they give a shout out to the sheep <laughs> I tell you what they got to give him a shout out there they're spectating and uh anyway they're behaving themselves behind that fence there but um you know just getting back to um you know Chelsea Sodoro and the you know running and the track and field and you know doing different Different distances. You always start at the, you know the lower distances and make your way up. It's just like in triathlon with Olympic distance and stuff. But but anyway, she's now made her way up into you know into triathlon. And as you age, you just start making your way through you know those different distances. As we see, you know people like Jan Frodeno, you know started down at the Olympic distance. The same with Annie Haug and, and Danielle Reef. They've both gone to a couple of Olympic games and then they went over to the Ironman 70.3. And now look what Danielle Reef has done in her career, which is absolutely fantastic and astounding. I mean, she's got five Ironman World Championship wins now. She's going to hone in on, you know, Natasha Bardman, six uh, from, you know, Switzerland. And maybe she can get up to the Queen of Kona, Paula Newby Fraser. You'll never know. But this is Laura Phillip who wants to make an impression in Kona herself. And I do think that's going to happen this year. But Chelsea Sidoro chasing Laura Phillip right now. Beautiful drone shots here. Just outside of Hamburg as we see Chelsea Sodoro getting after it, chasing down Laura Phillip. Yeah, Chelsea Sodoro again, got to keep the focus on herself. Uh, she can look up the road. There is nothing to be seen. Actually, this is Renee Kiley we're coming back to, I believe. I think that's a pink jersey. This may be Renee Kiley, um, who was second here last year. Again, opted to come over here, uh, put another Ironman into her legs. Not necessarily necessary because she has her, her slot for the world championship in the fall, but uh, I think felt ready to, to go again after the world championship in St. George and, and made the trip over uh, and trying to fight her way back into the top three here. 
Yep, so Renee Kiley was uh, about 6.46 down at 10 kilometres into the bike today. And uh, as we go back to Laura Phillip, our leader out on the course at the moment, and she's just, um, you know, streeting ahead a little bit at this point in time, but you would understand that she's got the, the fitness and she's got, uh, I, I think that she's a little bit angry, you know, that she, you know, missed out on that IMM World Championship in St. George as well. And there was a lot of pent-up energy, um, you know, ready to disperse, you know, from this body. And, and then, you know, on top of, you know, being able to, you know, sort of not not go there and sit in bed and and have to, you know, take a forced time out. I mean, that's that's a little frustrating, you know, for someone like, um, you know, Laura. There was a lot on the line, right? There's a lot of, you know, you, world. You can only wonder There's, what might have been, right? Yeah. I think a lot of had predicted that she would have factored certainly into the podium uh, there in St. George, uh, and unfortunately, it just wasn't meant to be. Uh, but here we take a look at Manon Genet, who is looking to stamp her ticket to the Ironman World Championship uh, for this fall in October. We caught up with Manon pre-race, and here's what she said in her fighting chance. This is Manon Genet. I'm from France. I'm a professional triathlete, and I'm here to race the Ironman European Championship in Hamburg. Hamburg is... Uh, do you say Hamburg or Hamburg? Hamburg. I guess. Hamburg. You know. <laughs> we don't, we don't speak it, so <laughs> so, Hamburg? Hamburg is uh, it's European Championship, so I think it get it will gather uh, many very strong girls, and it's going to be interesting, an interesting race. Uh, I think the best is you do like a long ride, like 160k, and then a, a short run, rather fast, like 6k or not more, but rather fast. And then the second day, you do a short ride kind of fast and then a long run. I think it's a, it's a key, it's a key training. Balance is life is everything to me because I think uh, the more balanced you are, the more happy you are and the happier you are, the more successful you could be or you can be. And uh, to me, it's very important because I'm not only an athlete, I'm also a woman, I'm also a sister, I'm also a daughter. And I'm also uh, someone who loves other things than uh, that triathlon. So I try to keep my life very balanced and uh, give time to everything that uh, are part of me. So yeah, I try to, to keep that balance and I think it is the key to my happiness and success. Well, great insights there from Anon talking about balance and how important it is uh, to her. Uh, again, we said earlier I had mentioned that she discovered triathlon at the age of 18, but was really patient uh, as she increased her focus on the sport and didn't dedicate herself fully to it uh, until the age of 27. Her studies obviously were very important to her. Um, and, and again, she loves spending time uh, with her family. Um, she says that uh, some of her favorite uh, things to do outside of sports. She mentions her family. She loves holidays in the Pyrenees um, and the French Riviera. And um, she, her favorite meal treat is crepes with chocolate. Oh, I can make that for her. I love to make that. Uh, yeah, Nutella crepes. Anyway, uh, that's great. I love her attitude. It, it's really nice to see and it's very refreshing, you know, that she's uh, bubbly and just, you know, willing to, you know, bring a lot of fun into it. I think that that's, you know, something that a professional athlete has to have a, a better balance with and, you know, can't take everything too seriously. Okay, yes, it's, it's a job. That's what we do. But, you know, there needs to be a little bit of the fun factor that comes into it as well. All right, Laura Phillip here. She's riding along nicely at this point in time. And Eugene and Laura Phillip have very, very similar setups on their bikes. Uh, and, you, you know, you can notice that, you know, both of them are sitting a little bit further back, you know, from the, um, the front of the bike there. You can see that her... Uh, Beautiful arm carriage. Look at that. That's 90 degrees out there. Uh, you know, a lot of the athletes these days are bringing the, you know, the handlebars up in the front there, you know, going for a little bit more aerodynamics. And again, it goes down to the comfortability, I think of it, you know, over aerodynamics. Again, it's not going to make that much of a difference. Like statistically, you can look at, you know, all the wind tunnel information and everything. But if you're not comfortable with your arms up like that, then don't do it. Look, well, here's there you a go. great visual of, of the two go. different positions where you've got Laura Phillip right. with a more traditional 90 degree angle uh, of her arms in a very flat position. Uh, and Chelsea Sodaro with those hands tucked up, 
ideally the point there behind Chelsea's position is that she then tucks her head behind her hands uh, and is able to have a, a sort of a smaller uh, frontal focus to the win there. Yeah, and pushing back a lot on the seat too. So, yeah, there you go. See, Chelsea's, you know, in that position where she's uh, wanting to go back, so she's sneaking up on the saddle, whereas Laura, not not one little bit. She's been rock solid. She's been in that position the whole time. So, you know, you'll, you'll notice now that, you know, Chelsea will, you know, shove herself backward, you know, on that seat a little bit. As You, you can see that she's just edging up just that little bit. She really bit bites bit. the nose of that saddle. There you go. She, yeah, Again. she bites the nose. Yeah. Of that saddle right. pretty pretty hard, and then does force herself back. She's also uh, rides with a, a more of a pointed toe. Um, I think she could drive down through that heel and, and generate a, a couple of more uh, watts if she got a little bit more into her heel. I think that side by side we had with Laura Phillip um, shows the difference in their the bottom part of their pedal stroke. Uh, again, Chelsea Sadar, a very accomplished athlete. Again, we're just saying what we see. Uh, but differences in in style for sure. Yeah, I like the I like the pedal stroke of, of Chelsea. Um, I don't like you know just pushing back all the time because it it's going to be a lot of energy, you know just you know going back and forth uh, like that. But here's uh, Chantel Sainte uh, just trying to keep the back of uh, the back wheel in sight there of Manon Genet. They're going back and forth. They're doing you know good uh, little sets of uh, pacing for themselves here. So you can see that uh, Sainte right now is just uh, sitting in a nice position at this point in time. The wind is getting up a little bit earlier on than expected. It was only five miles an hour at the start of the race today, but it now has kicked up to about eight miles an hour out on course at this point in time. Our women are heading toward the turnaround of the bike course. It is two laps. They're going out for the first quarter of the bike ride right now. Laura Phillip continues to lead the race right here in Hamburg for the Ironman European Championship here for our pro women. But Chelsea Sidoro, not going to give up without a fight, that's for sure, in her first Ironman full-distance race here as they race toward the end of the first out and back here. So they are approaching oh, around about 45 kilometres coming up here pretty soon, and then they'll go on the out and back. Once they hit that turnaround point, we'll give you an update exactly what the splits are with our athletes out on the bike course, but Chelsea Sodoro still riding along nicely, using most of the road there, and uh, as you can see, the wind getting a little bit up, the wind shear on our river here. That's the Elba looking at our wind aids out there, so there is the temperatures. Didi, how are we looking? Yeah, we're looking a little bit warmer. We've gained a few degrees. We started the day at 50 degrees Fahrenheit, uh, 10 degrees Celsius, so we can see we're uh, ticking up there, getting a bit warmer humidity still Nice and high, 87%. Uh, the feels like 53 degrees Fahrenheit, 11 degrees Celsius. So uh, that humidity keeping a little bit of coolness to the air. Um, mostly sunny, not a cloud in the sky. Laura Phillip now getting another bottle. She's uh, got it on the back of the bike there. So uh, our pro women at uh, 2.06 into it there. We can see that uh, Laura has the two bottles and going along nicely as we see that she's pushing the pace on the way out to the turnaround here. So two hours and seven minutes coming up here. We've got our age group race that is underway. If you want to track your favourite age group athlete there at Hamburg today, go to the Ironman Tracker. You only have to enter their surname or their race number and hit enter. It'll give you up-to-date results out there right now. This is Chelsea Sidoro and riding along nicely. We can see that uh, the arms are tucked in, the legs are doing the work here, and she's been out in second place all alone there the whole time. I was just thinking what 
must be going through Chelsea Sodaro's mind right now. Like, can you remember back to your first Ironman and what you were thinking at, at 40 Ks into the bike? Uh, like, what is she, like, again, I, I, if she's smart, she's running through her menu of things. What's my power? What's my cadence? When did I last eat? When did I last drink? But there's got to be a little teeny bit of excitement in her brain being like, I'm doing it. I'm doing my first Ironman. Well, I was so excited. I, I didn't even know what I was doing. So I was very young. I was 22 years of age and uh, had no idea. I just wanted to get through it and finish the race and get across that finish line. And there was really no expectation on it. But, you know, doing your Ironman for the first time as, you know, a professional athlete at the same time as well is a little bit different. You know, you, you're already a top-level athlete. You're already trained, you know, in the other distances and got a lot of, you know, work, you know, under your belt anyway. So I think that... You know, with Chelsea right now, I think that she knows that she can go the distance. It's just how, how she can trust, you know, what she's been doing, you know, with, with the distances. And it's the unknown of not knowing how that all that's going to feel because obviously we can replicate, and, and she said in her uh, A Fighting Chance video, she's increased her volume. Uh, the focus has been on the really big days uh, out there in training, but it never feels the way in training the way that it doesn't feel it feels on race day. Of course, it feels better in a lot of ways because you've got the adrenaline, you've got the fans out there. It makes it a lot easier, but it's unlikely that you're ever putting together a full Ironman swim with a full Ironman bike and, and a long run at the end of it. So I think that unknown is where the trepidation comes in. Yeah, definitely the unknown. And, uh, you know, she'll get to find out everything today, you know, from the, you know, the minor blips, you know, in nutrition. Uh, she'll get to find out what pacing's all about uh, and just about, you know, the whole day in general. So, you know, talk to her in, in six and a half hours from now and and, <laughs> and, we'll, and we'll find out exactly how that experience was. But right now, these two have been locked in battle ever since they left the transition today. So, men Jeanne up in uh, third place. And we got Chantel uh, Sainte there just uh, working that, you know, fourth position uh, at this point in time. So it looks like Manon Jeanne has been on the, you know, on the drive here for quite some time. Has been. Chantel Sainte moves around quite a bit as well. She's got a lot of movement to her body. She sort of generates the rhythm of that pedal stroke with her shoulder. She sort of bounces there uh, as she pedals. I'd like to see her smooth that out slightly. Yeah, not really using the upswing here. Um, you can see that she could probably do with a little bit more height on her saddle, uh, just a touch there. And, and I'd like to see a little bit more of a, you know, a 360 degree turn here. It sort of almost looks like, you know, two pedal strokes there, an up and a down instead of a round and a round. And, um, you know, when you look at the turnover like Chelsea Sidoro and, and Laura Phillip, uh, it was just, you know, it's poetry in motion. It's a little but more he, fluid, yeah. It's a little bit more fluid. So, you know, it's maybe something that's, you know, something that's Chantel can take away from that. Um, look at that. You can see the, the speed there and, and the turning of, you know, those legs right now with, with Laura for sure. Yep, uh, Laura taking on the nutrition there. She's got a, a built-in bottle, just sipping on the straw, getting the calories in. Back to Chelsea Sodaro. Very, very focused. Good head position there. Uh, looking down, glincing at that power meter and also up the road ahead. This first loop of the bike for the professionals, it can be lonely out there, right? There, there's, there's not a lot of spectators out this far end of the course. Uh, they really are just stuck in their own minds, uh, running through their sort of mental inventory of the things they've got to keep track of. Keep in mind, when they come back through this stretch of roads, they're going to be sharing it with uh, thousands of their age group friends. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and uh, we can see that... Uh you know, she's doing just fine right now, but she's very quiet on the bike. You know, we're mentioning, you know, just a moment ago with Chantel, you know, seeing to just rocking around a little bit. I'd like to say, you know, a little bit quiet is Chelsea Sidoro and also Laura Phillip right now. But let's go over and take a look at Oceana. I'm in Oceana. Just take a look at this. Experience a whole new world of racing in New Zealand and Australia. Tow the line in Taupo at the Kellogg's Nutrigrain Ironman New Zealand. Soak up 35 years of history in the National Storage Ironman Australia. Race in paradise at the Cairns Airport Ironman Cairns. Or chase a Kona slot at the GWM Ironman Western Australia. So when you're planning your season, why not head down under and race Oceania style? 
Why wouldn't you go down under and race Oceana style? Because it is absolutely gorgeous down there. But taking a nice long slow-mo look at Laura Phillip as she makes her way through the bike course here today. Back to Chelsea Sodoro right now, riding along nicely. And we were talking about that quiet position. She's not rocking around. There's not really much friction in the back of the bike there. You can see that she's got... Very good control. The arms are sitting right in a nice little position right up on the front of the bike there. There's no rocking from side to side, and she's using that rhythm very, very well. So Chelsea Sodoro going through for a first Ironman, uh, you know, distance race here. It'll be interesting to see how she attacks the nutritional side of things. She's uh, been well-trained. She's going to go out there in her training and, and try and learn exactly what formula she needs to get undertaken for this race here today. And uh, you can see that still got that bottle on the back there. She's lost the down tube bottle, but she's got one up front as well. So she's working that nutrition and taking a bit of weight off the bike with that bottle as well. But there's not much to speak of when you talking about an empty bottle as opposed to a full bottle but she's working and I love how she's got the arms tucked together love how they got that bottle in between you can see the bottle there Didi and that's when they know that they're going to be able to take it because I was always a proponent of having something up front so that you could see it and it also always reminds you you know to drink and I also had my watch you know set on a countdown timer as well if it ever got past 10 minutes that would be absolutely disastrous and I and I got a drink, drink, drink at that point in time. And I certainly had a, a good idea of how much I wanted to take in on a day, especially in Kona, because I didn't do many Ironman races outside of Kona. So, you know, those humid conditions and everything. So every race is different. Every athlete is different. You have to figure out those formulas. But I'm glad that she's got that bottle up front because if it's in sight, you'll see it and you'll use it. Oh, absolutely. I think having the visual of it right there in front of you, that's why I said I like having the straw there. Uh, it just reminds you uh, to constantly eat and drink and, and be sipping on those calories because, as I said, particularly as it pertains to Chelsea Sodaro, <clears throat> coming up to this Ironman distance, that the biggest challenge that she's going to have is going to be nailing the nutrition because it's so, so uh, much a different story than racing, of course, the 70.3. I, I think if, if disaster struck across the 70.3, you could get by with a couple of bottles of water and, and a couple of Morton gels uh, and fake it. Um, for four hours, but I think across an Ironman, uh, you just can't fake that. No, no faking it out there uh, whatsoever. You know, this is an individual sport and you've got to get out there and do it yourself and uh, make sure that you do a good job of it. So, you know, it's a bit of a science in itself, you know, learning during training, you know, exactly what to do as well. It's okay to just go out there and train and do the distances. I mean, when you swim, you don't obviously hydrate, um, you know, right. during a race, but you can hydrate, you know, when you're swimming training. So that's the only, you know, the only time that you get to do that. When you're biking, it's easy. You go out there, you learn how to do it. You have harder days, you have easier days. On the harder days when you're putting yourself under distress, that's a time that you can, you know, really test the nutrition because you want to put your body into a, you know, distressing, um, you know, situation. Uh, the body's working a lot harder than what it would be just on a mediocre, you know, training day. And then running, obviously, is very, very difficult to, you know, run and, and do aid stations and, and get on that nutrition that actually works for you. Yeah, I, I think in particular the run is very difficult to self-support uh, when you go out for a long 20-mile training run to, to get the actual calories and the, and the aid that you would get and to mimic exactly what you will encounter in a race is very difficult to do. Um, I think some people with supportive coaches and, and partners uh, will go out there and, and sag their long runs to give them that opportunity. Uh, certainly easier on the bike where you can reload. But uh, yeah, all very, very important and pieces of the puzzle that uh, the athletes need to, to train day in and day out to get their bodies used to that volume of caloric intake and how they want to execute it on race day. Another beautiful overhead shot of the Elba River right now, just outside of Hamburg. We're getting a little bit out there now. You can see that the wind shifts are definitely uh, visible on the river here at this point in time. We got the, another one of our little uh, channels that are just ducking off to the side there, and our athletes are getting out. You can see those wind farms there and the, uh, the windmills. They are picking up speed right now because we can tell you at the start of the race today, it was only five miles an hour. Now it is up to 10 
miles an hour and gradually picking up speed right here in Hamburg. This is in the rural section of this wonderful city, the second biggest in Germany, and we are happy to be here in Hamburg as our women pros make their way around the field on the bike course. There's this beautiful moment in time when neither foot is touching the ground. We are free of gravity and weight, moving above the doubts, past limits, when we are light, transformed and hopeful. And if we were to collect all these moments, join them together, well, this is when anything becomes possible. This is when we fly. Throughout my career, people have doubted my ability and I've had it even more so when I've come into triathlon. I think this year will be very different. There will be bigger expectations on me. I love the way that I race. With my swim background, I'm almost in the driving seat from the gun. I'm the person that everyone is chasing. I want to be the best and I'm willing to work as hard as possible to get there. Chelsea Sidoro just heading through the countryside here of Hamburg at the moment as we can see that still riding nicely here, very powerful. And there is Laura Phillip talking about powerful. You can see that she hasn't missed a beat. She hasn't been skipping anything because she's been just rocketing along the outskirts of Hamburg right now in a beautiful turnover. The position hasn't changed. And as we talked about, you know, a little bit, you know, movement on the bike with, uh, you know, a few of the other athletes, when we talk about a quiet body, a quiet mind that means that the bike is just absolutely where it needs to be and Laura Phillip and Chelsea Sodaro they look very good on their bikes today yeah I, I find I find it difficult to find any fault with uh, with Laura Phillips setup here in terms of how she uh, she pedals that ride she, she's one of those athletes who just looks absolutely fantastic on a bike it's it's lovely to watch her um, turn the pedals over I mean so powerful but also so fluid very, very fluid as we see the motion of Laura Phillip going through there right now. Nothing much has changed from the first kilometre to this kilometre that we're looking at right now. Two hours and 20 minutes have gone on the race clock at this point in time. So we've been out there riding for just over an hour and 20 minutes on this beautiful course. We're at about 45 to 50 kilometres coming up here very, very shortly as Laura Phillip is heading out toward that far end turnaround. So about a quarter of the bike ride done, three quarters to go and then we can see then when they start to come in uh, back toward town there DD they're going to be seeing those age group men athletes had uh, you know had a 15 minute you know gap on their start of the race today so a lot of our you know fast age group men athletes will probably have the uh, you know the ability to catch up toward the end of the bike ride today but not before that yeah no absolutely I think uh, it'll be a, a welcome sight for uh, the professionals to see uh, some of the age group athletes, again, our sport is so unique in that the pros and the, the age group athletes share the same course on the on the same day. And I think it's so inspiring for, for both groups of athletes. Um, the, 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 I think the, the age groupers get a, a thrill out of seeing uh, the pros go by. And, and I think that the pros, uh, again, these women have been out there, as you said, Greg, for an hour and 20 minutes all on their own. Uh, not a lot of hamburgers out there at this far end of the course. Of course, <laughs> uh, we know that in the city of Hamburg, the residents are called hamburgers. Uh, and it is where the, the beef patty got its name. Uh, interestingly enough, uh, apparently it, uh, it's the, the mince meat used to uh, ship across the Atlantic from Hamburg. Uh, and that is, that is where the beef patty got its name. It's the Americans, however, you need to know this, Greg, that added the bun and the condiment to make it the full package. <laughs> I, I don't doubt it. I don't doubt it. Yeah, no, it was it was the the ships leaving Hamburg carried the mince patties across the Atlantic. So that is why we call them hamburgers. But we do call the residents of Hamburg, we call them hamburgers as well. But not a lot of hamburgers out on the course at this far end. So I, I think our, our, our lead women are getting a little lonely out there. Yeah, maybe later. There might be <laughs> maybe some more brats or something like that. But uh, hamburgers may be the, the, the thing of the day a little bit later on. But right now, I think the nutrition, um, you know, is going to be a little bit different <laughs> in the way of uh, all in uh, the name of a liquid in their calories today. So I was just mentioning a moment ago, 
Dee Dee, that she's, un, you know, she's down to uh, two bottles now. Uh, she will be able to go through, you know, a special needs station coming up at around about halfway on the bike course. But, um, you know, still managing to, uh, you know, work that nutrition there. And it's so, so important. And that's the one thing that her uh, coaches and, and any uh, training partners will have ingrained in her is how critical uh, the nutritional component to Ironman racing is. Uh, and the one big thing that's going to be a big adjustment for Chelsea. I mean, nutrition, obviously important for uh, an elite athlete of, of any sport and any caliber, but coming up to the full Ironman distance from uh, 70.3 racing is going to be a big focus for her out there today in order for her to have a successful day. Laura Phillip continues on the outskirts of Hamburg to drive this women's pro race. She is the defending champion of the European Championship and she would like to go back to back. And today she is doing very, very well. The Ironman tracker is where you need to be if you would like to go and see any of your athletes. And we will check on the Ironman tracker here momentarily because we have a new set of times to report. Yep, we have a split. Laura Phillip now the only uh, professional female through the 54-kilometer marker. So start your watches, and we will uh, count up to see how much distance she has been able to put uh, on Chelsea Sodaro and all of the other female competitors. Of course, we have to go all the way back to the 10-kilometer mark where the gap between Laura Phillip and Chelsea Sodaro was 33 seconds, obviously, uh, we can see from our brilliant camera shots and, and shout out to all of our, our camera crews out there for bringing this beautiful uh, footage uh, to us all around the world here on Iron Man Now on Facebook Watch. But uh, it's been 33 seconds that I've been rambling and still no sign of Chelsea Sodaro. <laughs> well, here she is right now and uh, she's about to do the turnaround at the 53 and a half kilometer marker. And there it goes. So you can see the penalty tent for any of the athletes, you know, suffering a blocking or a drafting, uh, drafting penalty. They'll have to stop there and uh, serve their time. So this Sodaro, she hasn't lost too much time at two minutes and three seconds. So that's very respectable at this point in time there, Didi. And uh, the way that Laura Phillips you know, is cycling along there in Chelsea's first race. She should be very, very pleased with that. I, I think so. And, and again, I think Chelsea went into this race with eyes wide open, realizing that going up against the likes of Laura Phillip, I don't think her goals sure it'd be fantastic if she could beat Laura, but I think Chelsea's looking to gain some valuable experience here in her first Ironman. I'm sure she's going to get that valuable experience absolutely 100% because this is uh, her first race. And in the first race, you learn a lot. There's a, you know, there's a couple of little things. You'll have uh, what we call the teething, you know, uh, section where you, uh, you will learn some things that, uh, that you didn't think would happen. When things go wrong and uh, when you have to re resort back to, uh, you know, plan B or plan C or however it goes. But if you just stay and stick to your plan, each, each person should have a plan and and when I look at like a world championship you know race and you know you get out onto the you know the the, the the lava fields of Kona and and you've got you know 60 guys that are riding along in the space of you know 45 seconds and that to me just you know tells me that there's you know signs of you know just not quite knowing what their pace is and you're probably you know redlining it when you shouldn't be and you're not giving yourself a, you know a, a decent chance to have a good race so there's the pass there we can see the the morton pass the going past one way was um chelsea sedora heading back toward hamburg and going out to the turnaround menagene and chantel sainter is still behind well all of these women will have made that turn and taken a look at their watches so that they can get their own splits Obviously, they don't have the Ironman tracker on their bikes with them, uh, but they will, when they make that turn, take a look at the clock and be able to do some quick math, which, by the way, gets much harder the deeper into the race you get. I find that's the first thing to go is your ability <laughs> to do math and calculate splits. But uh, in this particular case, early miles here, they will take that split and know what the time gaps are. Humid conditions down here in Hamburg this morning. Uh, met the athletes at 6.15 when they got underway. Sodoro, uh, just see, just taking on some nutrition at the moment, and she wants to keep that going just right on cue. We've been talking about it. You do your own thing. And now she reaches into the back and, uh, you know, pulls out some Morton gels and, uh, you know, just fueling up at this point in time. So well done. She's staying, you know, you know on target with uh, all of her plan today but sitting at two minutes and three seconds down 
on our leaders at this point in time as we get our Laura Phillip, our bike leader, just making her way back toward Hamburg. So we've got our third and fourth place athletes just about to go through that 54 kilometre marker and we will get you updated with our split as soon as we have it. Absolutely, and I keep my eyes peeled on the other side of the road to see uh, if we might catch a glimpse of Renee Kylie, uh, who at last check was uh, our athlete sitting in fifth place. So right now waiting uh, at that 54 kilometer mark for the likes of Chantel Sainter, Manon Genet, and Renee Kylie. And we will bring those splits to you absolutely as soon as we've got them. Yes, this is an out and back course, and uh, we can see that the age group athletes will be coming, you know, past this way uh, momentarily. And it's a 524, so they have lost a considerable amount of time. So it's Sodoro who's lost the least amount of time to our leader, and that is Laura Phillip Genet in third. And then Sainta is still sticking right on pace with Manon Genet from France. So France and England are in third and fourth positions right now, but they're all chasing this lady, Laura Phillip who is just, you know, showing us exactly what form she's in. You know, unfortunately, we've talked about it before and we'll talk about it again. She was not able to go to the World Championship Ironman, you know, down in St. George last month because she had a, you know, a positive for COVID, you know, about a week or so, you know, where she had to, um, you know, sort of just... Uh, isolate and, and get herself right and, and recover from COVID. And then it was last weekend in Crash Cow and a great result for her there and a win. And here she is just a week later doing her thing. And she's been very smart about it. I mean, if you watch her social channels, obviously there was the devastation of the news that she wasn't going to be able to compete and having to sit home and watch it on TV, not to mention dealing with the illness, uh, sitting out, missing training. There's nothing worse uh, for a professional athlete than um, sitting out and being forced uh, to, to not be able to do not only your job, but your passion. Uh, so really, really difficult, but coming out of it, did all the requisite tests to make sure the heart was in order, that the lungs were functioning as proper uh, before she really got back to training. And it is proving absolutely uh, that she is on point and rightly so was considered to be very much in the mix of the world championship. But she is our race leader here in Hamburg. Whether it's on the road or in the pool, your activity has high demands. Rooted in sweat and grounded in science, we understand your unique fueling needs. That is why we created formulas just for you, endurance athletes, helping you replace what you're losing and keeping you fueled. And there's nowhere we'd rather be than with you along this journey, because together we are formulated for farther. From the creators of Gatorade, Gatorade Endurance, formulated for you, formulated for farther. And we are back to the action here. Our leaders in our professional women's field here, the Ironman European Championship coming to you live from Frankfurt. This is Renee Kylie. She is currently sitting in fifth place. Oh, did I say Frankfurt? I meant Hamburg. Yeah, you I were just thinking down that. the road. I was so away. excited for the men's European Championship <laughs> that I said Frankfurt. No, we are definitely in Hamburg. I, 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 I should know that. Uh, but we are looking at Renee Kylie. She is currently riding in fifth place. Uh, had a slightly weaker swim. She was dropped from her group of lead women about 300 meters into the swim, uh, was paired up, uh, but lost a, a significant amount of time and now is chasing back. And by my math, she still has not yet gotten to that 54 kilometer mark. She's lost more time through the 54K. Yeah, it's right there. And, uh, you know, it looks like she's riding nicely, though. I, I love the way that we can see her style from behind there. It'd be nice to get a pan shot as well. Yeah, we'll get one uh, coming up here pretty soon. But as they make the turnaround right here, you know, she's going to be, you know, eight, nine minutes down from our leader. But let's just uh, keep an eye on, on how far she is down on, you know, Sainter and Genet. And that is, you know, four, just under four minutes, you know, away from uh, Sainter and Genet. So she hasn't lost too much, you know, time 
time from those those two, um, especially riding on her own as she looks down at the you know bike and just um, having a look and uh, you know getting into a nutrition as soon as she gets out of that you know corner there. So I'm thinking that she's actually riding pretty nicely on her own here, and she, she's, she's made uh, up a bit of time on the on yeah. the duo of um, Center and Janae. So a bit of time. Yeah, a bit I, of time. I, I think that um, I think that we're going to look at you know Renee to be you know pretty rock solid uh, during the uh, the race today. So let's go and take a listen to a fighting chance with Renee Kylie. I'm Renee Kylie. I'm 39 years old. I'm from Australia, and I'm a full time professional athlete. Oh my gosh, where are you getting these questions from? <laughs> no one's asked me these difficult questions before. <laughs> Yeah, the short story of um, my background is I used to weigh 104 kilos, which is about 230 pounds, smoking a packet of cigarettes a day and running um, a couple of small businesses in the city. And I'd never heard of triathlon before. And then in 2014, I lost 45 kilos, stopped smoking, did my first sprint triathlon, came 252nd female in that first race. Uh, and just completely fell in love with the sport. And basically, over the next couple of years, I progressed really quickly through the age group ranks. I did my first Ironman in 2015, um, and I won it, and then I went to Kona that year. So like everybody in this sport, I just got fully obsessed with it. Um, and then here I am today. <laughs> um, so I think it's one of those sports that there's so many components, like swimming, biking, running, equipment. There's so many things that you have to get right and that you can improve on. So I think it's really suited, suited to my personality type. I would actually say the hardest part has been my transition from age group to professional, to be honest, which most people might say, oh, the weight loss would have been hard or the quitting smoking would have been hard. But um, so I'd say that side of it, like the body image and always feeling like I don't have that history in the sport so I can never be as good as the best. I'd say they're my biggest challenges in the sport, actually. My background and my story is this is my battle in my head now is it's really important to me and will never change and it's an important part of who I am but I don't want to be known in triathlon as just the girl who used to be big and it turned pro. I do want to be one of the best iron distance athletes in the world. I'm, I'm very realistic about my ability and I will never be you know top 10 in the world or anything like that but I want to be on the start line of the world championships every year as a professional so what drives me now is like, I guess it's a point to prove that I can be um, one of the best in the world every year for the rest of my career. And I, I don't want to be average, got to be better than that. Well, she's more than average because that is an incredible story. A woman who has lost like 45 kilograms. She's a professional athlete. She smoked a packet of cigarettes a day. This is absolutely nuts. What a great story that is. And we're all behind Renee. And you know what? It's, she won't be labeled, you know, the, the, the big girl, you know? No. She, she doesn't want to be labeled that. And But look at this. Look what she's doing. But that's See, that's the inspiring thing is that I think it says to everyone out there, she started late. Like, it's not like she, you know, has been a, a fantastic athlete. And I just think the message is that to anybody, and, and I don't think even Renee would advocate, well, you don't have to do an Ironman, but you can do significant things to improve your health and improve your life. Um, you know, she wasn't necessarily anything special. She got a little bit, she, she got motivated. She watched a race and, and made a, a promise that the, a year from then she was going to, she was going to compete in that race. And I think she's just proof that, that if she can do it, anyone can. Um, and, and you don't have to go out and do an Ironman, but you can make small changes that yield big results. Didi, you know, a couple of things I, I'm going to say. You know, one is a little bit cliche, the second one. But the first one is don't give up on your dreams. Sure. Never give up on your dreams. And, you know, I, I tell that to my two daughters. And, you know, every day of the week, it's just work hard, play hard, and do not ever give up on your dreams. But then when you talk about, you know, Renee Kylie, this is an inspirational story that anybody could take away. And the second one is... It's not cliche because it belongs to Iron Man. Anything is possible. So get out there and, you know, and if you're, you know, struggling for motivation or inspiration, just look and, and see what, you know, Renee Kylie has done, you know, over the course of her career, and that is to put herself back in the game. All right, so Heine Hartekainen from uh, Finland has come into the picture as well, 1331 down in sixth place. Our ladies are losing a little bit of time to Laura Phillip, but Sodaro still doing very well at the pointy end of the field. Janae and Sainter have lost 
just a little bit of time, but Riley, sorry, Renee Kiley is right in there at 9.32. And there is Hardikainen from Finland right in there at sixth place. So as we get a good look at, uh, you know, Renee, as she's making her way around this course again, it's great to see that, you know, she's got a good pace going. As the two women in front of her have been riding alongside of each other the whole way, not so for Kylie. Right, exactly. Again, this that, that turnaround is the first sort of feedback Renee Kylie's gotten since they left the, the city center um, some nearly, I don't know, hour and 40 some minutes ago. Uh, so she will be encouraged. She will likely have gotten a split uh, coming out of the water to where she was. To the likes of Laura Phillip, now the, the debatable now, she is seeing that she will have lost time to Laura Phillip, but that she is gaining on St. and Janae, and that will be encouraging because on a course like this where you're not getting much feedback, not a lot of fan support out in the more rural section of this course, uh, that feedback is super important. It's just a little carrot that's dangling in front of her uh, and, and encouraging her that things are going well for her so far today. Laura just getting out of the saddle, changing positions just to uh, stretch out the body just a little bit because it's a very, very flat course. And uh, we were saying before there is no, you know, respite out there because there are no hills in it. And here, look at this. We've got a little bit of a, a slowing down. Chelsea Sodoro just missed the bottle. She's like, I cannot do without that bottle. And she looks across and just says, wow, that was very, very <sighs> difficult, you know, to get what I needed, you know, from that aid station. That's going to cost her about 30 seconds of momentum a, a little bit there and you can see she sort of looked over at her camera and sort of breathed a sigh of relief i don't know if that was relief or exasperation at how difficult it was uh to grab that bottle but uh very very important um to get that aid uh and she knows it so the fact that she did was willing to sacrifice 30 seconds to get it to me says that she is so mindful of her nutrition which i think bodes well for her performance today yeah, that's great. That's very, very smart and uh, very well trained. Great advice, uh, you know, and that's what you get when you, you know, coach well. So you can see the age group is now going the other way, heading toward that turnaround as well. So you'll see a steady stream of athletes here coming up very, very shortly. And now bike course here is going to be alive. So the full gas bike course is going to be very active here pretty soon. There you get to see a couple of athletes going the other way there and also some officials and, uh, you know, draft marshals out there doing their trick as well. So Chelsea Sodoro makes her way back toward town and, uh, you know, Renee Kiley is doing a great job back there in fifth place at 9.32 down, but they're all chasing Laura Phillip, who's looking very, very solid again. Yeah, she's definitely uh, putting the best pace out and extending her lead. Chelsea Zadaro holding tough, the only one that's even close to matching the pace of Laura Phillip. And even then, uh, she's still leaking a little bit of time. Uh, Manon Genet and Chantal Sainter, uh, the two of them have been locked together essentially since the start of the race uh, because they swam together as well. Uh, but Renee Kiley making up a little bit of ground on number three and four. Laura Phillip continues to lead here. That uh, lead's going to go out over 203 from Chelsea Sodoro for sure because Chelsea just a moment ago had to slow down going through uh, a little bit of a, an issue going through the aid station there. And, you know, it's, <laughs> she's got a wits about her because, you know, to have the, uh, you know, the patience to slow down and make sure that you do get the bottle, unlike, you know, what Laura Phillip did, you know, in the early part of the bike course today when she went across <laughs> those cobblestones and lost the bottle and, and, uh, you know, she's, you know, got the nutrition back on board now. But um, those things can happen. You have to go to plan plan B. And um, that's come to fruition for Chelsea Sidoro today, just making that decision. Well, and I think it, again, I just think it speaks to the presence of mind that Chelsea Sidoro has, that it has been drilled into her how important nutrition is going to be in yielding the kind of performance she wants to put out today. Um, yeah, it's, it's great. Um, it's great that she's that mindful. Um, she's on the nutrition and, and has, you know, no worries. Right now, she is very much in this race with Laura Phillip, um, distancing herself from Manon Genet and, and Chantel Sainter and Renee Kiley and all of the rest of the women. So uh, a good day today uh, so far for Chelsea Sodaro. We are coming to you live uh, from Hamburg in the Ironman European Championship. We'll be right back.
And we're back to the action here as we look at our race leader, as has been uh, from the exit of T1. This is Laura Phillip continuing to extend her lead on the rest of the field, looking smooth like a hot knife through butter. <laughs> I like that, uh, <laughs> hot knife through butter. Yes, it's very humid down here in uh, Hamburg today. So we see the wind farms out there. The, uh, the That one's turned off, as you can see. But there is a little bit of wind happening, and it's coming sideways at the moment, uh, up to about 10 miles an hour. But it doesn't seem to be affecting uh, Laura Phillip at this point in time because she's got a 2.03 lead over Chelsea Sedoro, and it's actually going to be a little bit more than that when we get our next uh, timing split as they make their way through Hamburg, you know, um, at about the halfway point of this uh, bike course here today. But the women now are, you know, approaching that 70 kilometre mark, Didi. This is the time that, you know, you have to be on with your nutrition. This is the second time that we've seen Laura Phillip, you know, get out of the saddle and just try and stretch that body out. So, again, there's no respite in this race here because there's no hills. Here goes the water bottle from behind and uh, the nutrition going into the uh, into the reservoir down there into the frame so that's great to know that she's got that you know that nutrition on board in the frame yeah no absolutely she's been sipping on that straw so we knew the reservoir was there of course she had lost that bottle uh somehow got that back but getting those uh personal calories back on board so again all of our athletes uh being mindful of the nutrition is Things are starting to get real in the race, right? The first hour of riding, everyone's euphoric, everyone's settling into the bike, oh, isn't this fun? But now things are starting to get a little bit real, a little bit of fatigue building in. Again, we've seen Laura get up, stand, stretch out the back. Important to do that. You mentioned you used to set your clock to remind you to feed, to sip on that nutrition and hydration. A lot of athletes on a flat course like this will do the same, reminding them to just stand up, stretch the back, uh, and not a, not a bad thing to do. Yeah, you can see uh, Chantel, you know, we've, we've talked about her just, you know, sort of moving around on the bike a little bit. She tends to uh, drop the head as well and uh, look down at the front wheel um, just like that right there for about, you know, two or three seconds and then, you know, head back up again. As you can see, the age group is just heading out and our professional women will be heading back in toward town. So there are the wind farms out there. You can see that they're kicking in right now. Those big propellers are going to be moving around a little bit this afternoon as well but the action is going to continue well into the afternoon as we get our pro women getting across that line later this afternoon they are racing for the european championship and the title for pro woman champion right here in europe for 2022 and we can see that uh you know our age group is heading out there laura phillip heading back in she's got the reservoir filled up she's back into that position again and she's very very you know dedicated to a craft right now she's got her head down she's focused she's not moving around on that bike whatsoever i love a quiet body and she's doing just that yeah she looks again it's hard to find fault with uh with the way that laura phillip rides a bike both the power that she generates uh the form that she has uh just absolutely fantastic um and you compare and contrast that again it sounds like i don't want to bag on Ch Chantel sainter a s extremely accomplished athlete. She was third at Ironman UK back in 2021. Uh, obviously gets the job done, but you can just see visually the differences. And I think if she could clean up some of those mechanics on the bike, uh, it's just going to make her more powerful and yield better power output. Yeah, we hope, you know, constructive criticism here. And that's, uh, you know, no, uh, there is no... Uh, we're not trying to be the experts here. We we just are analysts and we're just trying to, you know, make it that uh, we just want to put our point across here. And the point is that she does move around a little bit on a bike and, you know, drop their head and that's okay. That's her style. We've talked about nutrition. We've talked about everybody having a different formula. Not everything works for the, for the you know, the same person. So, you know, Chantel is just gutsy. She gets after yeah. it. She just loves to, you know, like, she's just getting after it right here. I think that Menage and you know, over the last 25 kilometers has not, you know, had Chantel come around her because I don't think Chantel can at this point in time. I'm just thinking that she's happy to let uh, Manon, Gen you know, Genet do all of the pace setting and and that's just it. Well, traditionally that goes one of two ways, right? Either either Chantel St. Her is biking above her ability to stay with Manon Genet to try to appreciate the pace setting that Manon is doing or she's being super smart and she says, you know what, I know I can outrun Manon Genet, so I'm just going to sit right here and, and try to fight her for the podium spot. 
Yeah, and that's what she's going to have to do at this point in time because uh, they've lost a little bit more time to Laura Phillip. They've lost time to Chelsea Sodoro as well. So Chelsea, we know that at last... Um, Eight station slowed down quite a bit there just to make sure that she got a bottle. Unlike uh, Laura Phillip here, she's just moving through the race course right now, as we can see on this, you know, very rural section of Hamburg here. Won't be too long before she gets to the inner part, you know, in back into the urban part, and she'll be protected from those, you know, those big buildings and as she gets uh, herself through and uh, the opportunity to get out onto the second lap of the bike course. Well, and as we watch Laura Phillip drill through this bike course, one of the ways she became uh, one of the greatest cyclists in our sport, perhaps, is by using full gas. Of course, full gas is the Iron official indoor cycling training platform of Ironman. Full gas features over 30 official Ironman routes, including the 2022 Super Sapiens Ironman World Championship bike course. With 4K video, real world terrain, and cutting edge training platform, Full Gas is your year-round training partner. You can upload your workouts, create segments of any route, or set up private group rides with friends. You can download Full Gas today at fullgas.com and use the promo 30 Day Ironman to claim your free 30 day trial. Available for Android, iOS, Mac, and of course, Windows. So great platform, super realistic, and you can get out there and actually virtually ride all of these Ironman courses. Yeah, it is a great platform, and uh, to have that in your pocket is amazing. You know, you don't have to go to those courses and do training. You can be set up, you know, in your basement or wherever you are, in your house or out on your balcony or whatever, wherever it is. It's a great it way to do course reconnaissance, right? If you're, really if you're going to make a trip over the pond and race, say, Ironman mm -hmm. Frankfurt uh, coming up and you don't know that much about the course, you can ride it virtually and, and get to know it. There you go. Virtually is better than nothing at all, and it's a great platform. So recommend doing that on full gas. So here we go, coming up to the three-hour mark right now. The women threw 53.5K at 2.21. Total time was Laura Phillips. Sadaro in second, Janae Sainter in third and fourth, and Kylie were rounding out the top five there just within 10 minutes. But it's going to be a little bit more than that. When they come back into town, you know that Laura Phillips is accelerating right now. She's got a bit of an entourage down there at the moment as well but she is getting plenty of uh getting plenty of uh air time we can see there laura phillip from germany riding along nicely and uh she makes uh use of that tailwind coming back into town the wind's picking up a little bit so she's going to be you know nice and tucked into a great position but uh in about you know, half an hour's time, she's going to have to come out and face it again. But you know what? You've got a tailwind one way, headwind going the other way. So you just have to, you know, make sure that your pacing's right on target. Well, absolutely. And I think <clears throat> while the headwind can be uh, demoralizing at some points because it will impact the overall pace, it also gives you something to sort of bite into uh, so long as it's not too strong. So it really does enable you to sort of keep those power numbers up um, sometimes it's hard, particularly in a stronger wind with a tailwind to keep that power up. Uh, athletes tend to spin out. That's certainly not the case here because winds not yet that strong. Again, we started with winds at about five miles an hour. So only up to about 10 miles an hour. So not really impacting performance here, but obviously Laura Phillip being mindful of her aerodynamics, uh, throughout both segments, both headwind and tailwind sections. Yeah, just moving around a little bit there on the side of the road there, but uh, nothing too much to, uh, you know, talk about there. She's just, uh, you know, trying to handle those winds as they're coming a little bit tailwind, a little bit crosswind at this point in time here. You can see the bushes to the right there just like leaning over in her favour at this point in time. Look at the age group athletes just making their way out on course. It's a nice steady stream of athletes and that's what you absolutely love to see. The Ironman event directors have done a great job, you know, coming together and, and formulating a great start for these athletes and that is a rolling start at the beginning of the race. The reason why we do it is all about safety. It's all about having people have a little bit of room out there and, uh, you know, just to get out there, stretch the legs, stretch the arms in the swim, and uh, it works absolutely perfectly. And, you you know, you get them all in the water in between 45 to one hour anyway, Didi, and, and everybody's got two hours and 20 minutes, you know, from when they cross that starting line themselves. Absolutely no pressure on those age group athletes. Uh... Uh, to rush to the front of the swim because everyone has that complete two hours, 20 minutes to make their way around that course. Of course, our professional women's not needing uh, two hours and 20 minutes to make their way around the swim this morning. Uh, records were safe. Uh, that record set by Lauren Brandon last year at this event 
uh, our top swimmer this morning was Chelsea Sidaro with a time of 54.38. Now we're well into the bike leg uh, and well on our way to deciding who will be the Ironman European champion for our professional women. We're coming to you live from Hamburg. I'm Dee Griesbauer, joined in studio by Greg Welch. We're going to take a quick break, but we'll be right back. Don't go anywhere. Lots of action still to come. John Moran has, that's a hyperbole. That thing he uses to warm up and stay loose before he throws it down. That thing Tony Finau uses on course between shots. Ooh, that's money. That thing Robin and I use before and after we're on the bike so we can ride harder tomorrow. That thing Erlen Holland uses before smashing it into the back of the net. That thing that's for everyone. The hyperbole from Hyper Ice. Give your body the daily relief it's been asking for. And we're back with the live action here. You're looking at the race leader. That's Laura Phillip from Germany leading the way. Has been from the moment she got onto her bike, extending her lead over second place Chelsea Sodaro, then the likes of the French woman Manon Genet and Chantal Sainter riding together, being chased down by the Aussie Renee Kiley sitting in fifth place. Currently not quite through one loop of the bike, Laura Phillip making her way back into the Hamburg city center where she will turn around and do this all over again. Philip got off to a great start today. You know, right from the outset in the swim, she, um, you know, positioned herself very well. She probably knew that um, I'm going to have to stay behind Chelsea Sodaro or Manajene. And today it worked very well. And, and Laura just, like, used that beautiful arm, you know, arm action. She's got a huge wingspan. She just got off to a great start. I love the way that she positioned herself in the swim. And once she got into, um, you know, T1, I think Didi, you know, a little bit of experience, you know, sort of fell in her lap, um, so to say. But when she ran to the bike, there was no there was no sign of urgency or, you know, she there was any panic or whatsoever. She just ran up there beautifully and just loved the way that she got onto a bike and really accelerated away from Chelsea. And I, I think that tactically she needed to do that. I think that Laura, you know, once she gets into the lead of these races, she, you know, gains another, you know, piece of confidence as well. And, I mean, who doesn't when you lead a race? I mean, that's that's just a given, right? So she's out there right now. She's sort of like, she's not in no man's land. She's leading this race, but she doesn't know, sure. you know, where, you know, Chelsea or the other women are right well, now. She knows well, she she's knew from, Yeah, right. she knew from the turnaround, but she didn't know, you know, exactly what time it was unless she did look down at a computer and, you know, do the calculation on that. But as we get back to third and fourth places right now, nothing's changed there. Manon Genet from France is leading Chantal Sainter, and this is the fast pedaling action right now of uh, Chelsea Sidoro in second place. Yeah, Chelsea's been doing a great job all day. I think <clears throat> from the get-go, she knew, you know, it'd be, a, it'd be a tremendous accomplishment for her to upset Laura Phillip in this race, but I think her mind is on getting to the finish line of her first Ironman and learning a whole bunch in the process, right? She's got to learn, um, you know, pacing. Were her estimates right in terms of, you know, she said in her A Fighting Chance video, she pretty much knows numerically what, what she's capable of, but she needs to put it together on the day and actually execute it. So huge learning curve here for Chelsea Sodaro. She's well studied, would be very, very well prepared. Uh, she came over to Europe uh, a while ago. She raced at the 70.3 in Mallorca, uh, did a training camp there with her BMC team, uh, then stayed on to, to finish her preparations for this race. Uh, really, really smart move, very thoughtful move uh, to get that, that body clock adjusted to European time because that's a big, big adjustment. No, I, I think you hit the nail on the head there, Didi, and everything perfectly spoken. And it is a big deal when, when an athlete, you know, does go to Europe from the United States because of the time change. And you need to get over there and just get, you know, acclimated to, you know, not only the time change, but the difference, uh, you know, humidity levels or dryness or whatever it is. But I think that she did absolutely the right thing. And by staying over there, 
plenty of races in Europe happening right now, as is, you know, in the United States. We're in full swing right now in the season. There's multiple races happening every weekend. You know, last weekend we had Crash Cow, we had Ironman Victoria, we had an Ironman race here and there. And, you know, so as we look at Laura Phillip, you know, going back through one of the tunnels right now and, uh, you know, just getting herself... Uh, underway here and set back toward Hamburg. So there she is. We can see Laura Phillip. A yeah, little bit of a wet road here and there. We can see just going through there. But um, here she goes. She just goes one up, up those uh, one of those little hills. Uh, she gets a little bit of a, an opportunity to get out of the saddle and uh, start pedaling freely again. So here we go with Laura Phillip. She's making her way back toward Hamburg. It won't be too long before she gets into town. Makes a U-turn and heads back out onto the second lap. Absolutely, and she has seen the age groupers on their first loop heading out of town. Of course, all of them making their way out of the swim and onto the bike course. She is approaching the halfway point and having a good, strong ride so far, increasing her lead on all of her competitors out there today. And a good, a good boost to her confidence as we come back here. First time I've seen Chantal Sainter move in front of Manon Genet for quite some time. Yeah, for quite some time. So that's good news for Chantel. She's still feeling the, the pinch. I mean, you know, feeling the, the pedals there. She's still feeling the energy. And Manon just like slipping back into fourth place there. Manon's got plenty of nutrition on there. She probably took a bottle at the last aid station as well. So Manon doing very well handling that. And you can see that her pace there, she has to just settle back because once that, you know, plane of the front wheel has been broken from your other competitor, it's up to you, the person that's been passed to drop back, not that of the one that's done the overtaking. No, absolutely, and it looks like she is sort of enjoying the opportunity to have Chantel do a little bit of the pace setting here, was able to sit up, stretch her neck, stretch her back out a little bit. I sense she might be a little bit frustrated that this isn't the pace she necessarily wanted to hold, but even at this draft legal distance, she's getting a benefit, so she should enjoy the fact that she's getting to not have to press on the pedals quite as strong let Chantel take a turn out there. Yeah, and if it's, um, you know, not what she quite wanted, then she'll go back around and, uh, you know, just get back into her pace. So, you know, she'll she'll be able to uh, be the judge of that one. But Laura Phillips, she's judged it perfectly at the moment because she's still out in the front there. She is gaining time on everyone in our women's pro field. The age group athletes in our men's category, probably the only ones that are riding a little bit faster than um, Laura. And I wouldn't doubt that they're just riding just a touch faster, not a lot faster. Not a lot faster again. I think we may see some of the uh, age group men trickle into the back of the professional women's field and perhaps run uh, into maybe fifth, sixth place by the time this is all done. It was a 15 minute gap. Uh, between some of the between the professional women and our age groupers, as Laura Phillip is making her way, you can see the cityscape uh, start to appear on the horizon. There, you can also see uh, the degradation in the roads as we get back to city roads. Uh, so Laura navigating some of those uh, bumps and bruises uh, along the road. There, already lost a bottle today. Uh, so certainly doesn't want to do that again. Yeah, and you can see that they've all been highlighted, you know, from the uh, the event staff as well in the orange, you know, tape there. So it's good to see that they can, you know, see those, uh, you know, little, uh, in, uh, sorry, imperfections in the road there. So here goes Laura Phillips. She's making that hard right-hand turn. She's keeping a pace through that out of the saddle, driving to keep the pace right up where it was before she went into the corner there. Chantel Sainter is leading now Manon Genet. She's, uh, you know, you know, cycling very, very strongly there. We can see that now the age group athletes out on course right now on a two-lane road there. Absolutely gorgeous. A little windy out there, but they're doing very well. Yeah, doing very, very well. And now Chantal Sainter leading Manon Genet uh, all the way out of town. Manon had the lead on Chantal. Chantal seemed content. I don't know. We didn't obviously see it, but it may have been the case that it, had that been me, had I been in Manon's position, I might have flicked my finger a little bit and said, hey, come uh, on around. Let, let, let's come on around. You, you take a turn at it. Uh, but they are back and forth. They've been together, locked together since the start of the race. Uh, they were part of the lead group of four swimmers. And these two uh, have been together since the start of the bike. Coming back into town with a bit of a tailwind is always going to be a nice thing, especially in the second loop. 
But in the uh, the way out on the uh, the next loop here, it's going to be a headwind, and that is the trying time. That is the telling time where an athlete is getting tired or if they have the energy, and you can see their average pace, if it's staying where it was in the first lap or if they're, you know, negative splitting or positive splitting it. There's, it's not too often you negative split a second lap on the bike uh, or the run course in an Ironman race just because of the nature of the distances and what you've already done on that day. All right, there's another good look at our 53 and a half K uh, splits there. It's all gonna change around once again, once they hit town at the 90 kilometer marker because Laura Phillip has really been throwing down here today in Hamburg. Sodaro's in second, Janae Sainter in third and fourth, Kylie's in fifth place, and there's the Finn, and then the Dane are in sixth and seventh. We've got Walter from Germany in eighth, Pereira from Portugal, Lubin from the Netherlands, and then Tim the German, and Ney, the Swedish athlete, at 27 down at that point in time. So there's going to be a big gap, you know, from 1 to 12 coming in at the 90 kilometre marker, but Laura Phillip is really really taken the race by the horns. Well, she certainly is in a league of her own. Chelsea Sodaro taking a good swing at her, mitigating the damage. Uh, again, Chelsea Sodaro was the, was the complete unknown in this race going in. Never raced an Ironman. Super talented across 70.3. So we got the sense that Laura Phillip had her eyes on Chelsea Sodaro. Certainly used her at the swim. Chelsea led, did a lion's share of the work in the swim. Laura took advantage of that. And it may have been that Laura bombed through that, that T1 time uh, to establish some distance between herself and Sodaro. I think Laura would have known that on paper she's likely the stronger cyclist, but I didn't think she wanted to, she likely did not want to give uh, Chelsea even an ounce of hope out there. Smooth sailing from the smooth ride of Laura Phillip right now. She looks very good on a bike today. It was very smooth what she did just a moment ago, just reaching down and grabbing that bottle and it was almost like she didn't even like, you know, she orchestrated a, a beautiful move and just put it back down. The bike hardly moved at all. She kept the pace up, kept her eye on the road up, uh, eye, you know, eye on the road up ahead and, uh, you know, there she goes, just looking down. Now she's going to fill up that reservoir again, or she's getting ready for a change at the aid station. It looks like she's getting ready to dump that at the bottle drop area, grab another bottle. Um, she's sort of motioning to the, I think she caught some of the volunteers off guard there, to be honest. Uh, they had their backs turned to her. They didn't realize she was, uh, she was coming through, but here she goes uh, looking for that bottle she wants. And on the last chance, she didn't get it. Again, got to slow down. We saw Chelsea Sidaros almost come to a complete stop to grab that bottle and I think Laura just carrying a little bit too much speed bounced the bottle and she knew she had missed the first volunteers with the with the with the bottles she knew that bottle was the last one uh, that was an aggressive grab knowing that it was the last chance this is an interesting thing uh, you know I'm just gonna throw it out there Didi but when you when you sign up for a race um, you look at course profiles and you see that if it oh that suits me or whatever it is or that's a destination race that I want to go to uh, in this race, I look at the bike profile, it's dead flat. Yep. So I know that, like, there's not going to be any chance of, you know, an aid station, they're going to be on an uphill. All right, so therefore, I'm going to have to readjust and just say, okay, and therefore, I'm going to have to slow down at these aid stations because those athletes are not going to get the aid of somebody <coughs> running next to them and giving them a bottle. They're going to have to slow down and take it, and that's going to be the name of the game. So it's patience, safety, and slowing down just a little bit to make sure that you get your nutrition. If you don't have your nutrition, you don't have power. If you don't have power, you don't finish. Laura Phillip leading the Ironman European Championship right here in Hamburg. Don't go away. We'll be right back.
deep and achieve your goals. That's right. If you're looking for an Ironman or an Ironman 70.3 race, you want to go on to Ironman.com. Look at all the races there. You can continue to watch the live action from races all around the world. If you want to track an athlete in today's race, you download the Athlete Tracker on the App Store on the Google Play Store. You can go on there. It's just simple. Ironman Tracker. There you just load it, put the year, enter the information of your favourite athlete, their number or their surname. You hit enter. You get instant results of where they are on the course that day and actually it will predict their finish time it'll <laughs> tell you where they're going to be in the next aid station or the next uh, time check but for laura phillip we know here where exactly she is she's going into downtown hamburg and Didi, she is riding a great race today and now she's going to be protected by these buildings from the wind here so you can see that she's going to utilize that she's going to stay to the right hand side of the road she goes over the, some of these bridges 2300 bridges inside of Hamburg here, so you know that Laura Phillip is just about set to come to the end of the first loop of the bike ride here today. 90 kilometres almost done for this incredible German athlete. 90 kilometres in the bank for Laura Phillip and not an uneventful start to the race. Of course, she lost her nutrition bottle, was able to get it back, and at the last aid station there, she missed a bottle, carrying a little too much speed there, uh, bounced it off the hand of the volunteer. Uh, so she is... Uh, struggling a little bit to, to maintain the fluids and calories um, due to some extenuating circumstances there. But again, she's experienced. Uh, I think she's poised and um, hopefully the next aid station she'll be able to grab that bottle. Yep, we apologize for a little bit of picture breakup. We are under the, uh, you know, cell uh, service here. So um, we hope that the cell service gods come back with us here momentarily. But look at the spires over the top of Hamburg City right here in this beautiful port city, third biggest port city in Europe. And uh, that is to Rotterdam and Antwerp as well. So we know that Hamburg bringing a lot of produce and export import right into this city here. And we can see that it's now time for the rowers yeah, to have their time right down here. Yep. And that is <laughs> the crew boats getting their their workouts in uh, today. A couple of couple of eights down there on the water. I saw a couple of fours. Uh, so they are enjoying this beautiful day that we're uh, being served up here in Hamburg. Yes, Germany being one of the powerhouses in rowing, of course, and also kayak and canoe sprint. They've always been there. And very, very solid. And they're sailing as well. And we know that the wind's going to kick up a little bit later on today. So we'll have all the sailboats out there as well. we got a double kayaker out there. Look at that. They're just, uh, wow, look at the backdrop here. Let's just go out for a little bit of a paddle I here. was going to say, I think we should take a little break and take a little bit of a paddle. Yeah, well, I, I think, you know, with everybody with two hours and 20 minutes, you know, uh, <laughs> to do this uh, swim, the swim cutoff has, uh, you know, since gone now. And we've got all of our athletes out on course and we can see Hamburg in all of its glory right now on a picture perfect day. And Laura Phillip is making her way back into Hamburg city proper. And she'll be doing that U-turn, heading back out in front of that very large crowd that's gathering down there in downtown Hamburg. They're down there. They're watching Iron Man now. They are listening to it on the radio. They're watching it on local TV. And they know that the athlete tracker is telling them that Laura Phillip is about to hit town. Well, she's going to get a, a huge reception when she rolls through town here again. Uh, seeing a German in the lead of this race here in Hamburg going to be a great thrill for all of the fans out there as we see them. Uh, the hamburgers dotting the streets there, uh, welcoming our professional women back into town, but not for long. They're going to make a U-turn and go back out and do it all over again. Yep, 90 kilometers down, 90 kilometers to go. So we'll see where Laura Phillip, you know, um, goes up against the other athletes here and we'll get the time splits uh, as she heads back out onto the course again. We'll have um, those splits to Chelsea Sodoro and, you know, that, that one time that Chelsea slowed down a little bit, well, you know, Laura slowed down a little bit as well because she had to. She was, want, you know, wanting to get that water bottle at the last chance, but she missed it as well. The athletes do get an opportunity to get a special needs package, Dee. Why yep. don't you explain that? Well, sure. Uh, race officials will, in the athlete's um, packet at uh, registration, uh, give them a personal needs bag for both the bike and the run, and athletes are welcome to put whatever they like in that. Uh, they typically tend to be lined up at the halfway point of the bike and roughly the halfway point of the run. Again, given the local setup, it could be off a few uh, kilometers here and there. Uh, but athletes can put, if, if it's going to be inclement weather, perhaps uh, wardrobe changes if they think they might want a jacket, if temperatures are meant to drop, 
Um, they mostly will put nutrition in there, anything they think they might, may need. Uh, and they will have the opportunity to grab that uh, as they roll through that personal needs um, area, both on the bike and the run. They can grab uh, extra nutrition. If they miss it, uh, they don't get it back. That is the one uh, gear bag you do not get back at the end of the day. So if you're headed to a race uh, soon and think you might use that personal needs bag, you don't want to put anything valuable in there because if you don't pick it up, you will not be getting it back. But uh, no doubt Laura Phillip will have uh, I imagine a couple of bottles of nutrition in there, and we will see her grab that bag uh, when she rolls through that aid station. Yeah, she's going to need it because over the last eight kilometers, she hasn't had a rear water bottle there, so therefore she's going to have to rely on, on the reservoir, which is inside of the bike frame right here on her machine at the moment. Going through one of our long tunnels here in Hamburg is Laura Phillip, and she'll come out the other side in first place in our pro women's division right now here in the European Championship for our pro women in 2022. Our pro men's race coming up in Frankfurt in three weeks' time as we head a little bit south there and down into the financial district of Frankfurt City. A beautiful course down there. Uh, also, you know, with a couple of paved sections, a couple of cobble sections there, we know that they're going to go to Hippolstein. They'll descend uh, really fast. I mean... Yeah, Fredino, a few years ago, he hit that, uh, you know, 85 kilometers an hour going down one of the descents there. Now you can see the crowds of Hamburg coming out in their thousands. It's going to get crazy on the run course a little bit later on today, but that's it. End of 90 kilometers on the bike course here. What do we got? Uh, right now we are looking at uh, three hours, 13 minutes, 18 minutes race time, two hours, 15 minutes, 14 seconds bike time. So... Uh, very, very fast pace through there, over uh, 40 and a half kilometers per hour through that last segment. So uh, definitely taking advantage a little bit of that, that tailwind situation. Yes, definitely so, as uh, now we heading back out onto the bike course and for the second lap at three hours and 13, three hours and 14 minutes into the course right now, we've got our second place athlete here going in toward town and that is Chelsea Sodoro from the United States as she makes her way through that 90 kilometer mark. You see the last of the athletes heading out after the swim course today, starting out their first lap. Now these athletes are gonna have to be a little bit careful as they make their way out onto the second lap of the bike sure. course today too, Dee. So they have to be very careful about the way that they overtake and the time that they got to overtake. Well, if we've learned anything across the first 90 kilometers of this bike course, it's not a wide roadway. Um, right, it's a fairly narrow roadway, and when you've got uh, the age group athletes and the professional athletes, um, just a little bit of common courtesies there. It's 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 all going to be fine, but the athletes going to have to be a little bit more head up uh, through the first loop. Our professional women have had been able to have their head down, uh, really just focus on that bike computer, not think about too much other than that. Uh, but the, the remainder of this bike course, they're going to have to be a lot more heads up. And of course, for Chelsea Sudaro, as she makes her way towards the bike turnaround. She's now in uncharted territory. She's never raced this far on the bike in a triathlon before. Coming from a short door, uh, short uh, distance, you know, um, back in the day, she uh, took that uh, turn pretty wide. She knows you have to take it uh, wide. You're doing a U-turn, 180 degrees. You've got to slow right down, and then you'll have to build your momentum back up again. But Laura Phillip has a very, very good uh, average pace happening at the moment. Chelsea Sodoro slowing down at one of the aid stations just about 20 kilometres ago. She would have lost a little bit of time here, so it'll be really interesting to see where it goes to. It was 2.03 back then with an estimated about 30 seconds of lost time there. So what are we looking at, Didi? Probably three to four minutes down? Uh, by my internal clock, I'd say we've, we've lost, yeah. I mean, it's we've been, it's going to be close to five minutes, I believe, that deficit, which will be more significant than the deficit from the first half of the first loop. So uh, it, it's it's pretty safe to say that Chelsea Sodaro is losing more time. It, 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 at the onset, we were sort of impressed that she had only lost two minutes through that first sort of 45 kilometers. Uh, but now the deficit, ah, oh, 301. 301 is this, so only well, another, that's, good news that's for very Chelsea. good news for Chelsea. That's yes. very good news for Chelsea. That is better Chelsea. than I was anticipating. My internal clock was off. My timing was off. 
No, I think, you know, we, we factored in the time that, you know, she lost when she slowed down, but there was a little bit of time that, uh, you know, Laura Phillip lost when she slowed down in that aid station as well. But given that the average pace is, uh, you know, better for Laura Phillip, we've done all right with that. All right, so let's have a look at our leader right now. That's Laura Phillip, but let's go back and take a look at what's happened thus far. Look at this, the beautiful running of Laura Phillip heading out to the T1 here, out of the swim and onto the bike. Very, very fluent, puts the shield down on the helmet. Here comes Chelsea Sidoro trying to make up a little bit of lost time in transition. That's right, Chelsea was a little slower getting that helmet on in the change tent there, perhaps a little slower getting the wetsuit off. Laura Phillip capitalized on that, was the first to mount her bike across the mount line there uh, and stormed away from the rest of the competitors. It was Chelsea Sidoro uh, giving chase uh, with, the, with the likes of Manon Genet and Chantal uh, Sainter uh, in third and fourth, followed by Renee Kiley in fifth place. Uh, we saw some baubles on the aid station in the early going here. Chantel Sainter uh, missing a couple of bottles, did eventually grab uh, the very, very last one as Manon Genet went by her. That is how those two rode for the entire first loop of the bike with Manon Genet at the lead, Chantel Sainter chasing her. Then we had the bottle drop of Laura Phillip uh, making her left-hand turn there over some cobblestones. Another uh, bottle bobble here from, uh, say that 10 times fast, from Chelsea Sodaro. Almost came to a complete stop here to grab this bottle from the volunteer. That is a veteran-like move from an Ironman rookie, knowing how important that bottle was, being willing to sacrifice. Then we saw Laura Phillip again, I think caught the volunteers a little bit by surprise at the at the, the the start of the aid station and then carrying just way too much speed dropped the bottle yeah she sort of um you know she was very upset you know at the end part of it there but you've really got to slow down you know to get that bottle at the same time because it is your nutrition that you're thinking about and uh you know it's an iron man race it goes on for over eight hours for our women here and you know don't leave it to you know, something like that. Something that uh, you don't practice that, you know, out on a training ride. So you just have to slow down. Um, it, it's very difficult at 40 kilometers an hour or 36 kilometers an hour to, you know, grab a bottle from someone that's stationary. It, it is, and it, you're, you're absolutely right. You, you hit the nail on the head there, Greg, in terms of it's something we don't practice. I coached an athlete once who, tremendous powerhouse on the bike, but went into her first race and asked me, quite literally the day before the race, how do I get more water? I, we hadn't even talked about aid stations. You just, you don't know what the athletes don't know. Um, but it's something that the athletes should practice. Uh, if you have a quiet stretch of road, get out there with uh, a family member or a training partner and learn actually how much speed you can carry going into those aid stations because it's so, so important, especially as we'll see in the second loop, as those aid stations get more congested with our professional women then lapping some of our age group athletes on their first loop, those aid stations are going to be a little bit more crowded. Well, the Ironman European Championship Hamburg, the European Championship for our pro women's race, started at 6.15 local time this morning to beautiful, clear blue skies. And we still have it right now. And we are approaching the fourth hour of our racing going on right now. It's Laura Philip that leads in Germany for the German right now. She's in a great spot. What can she do on the second lap of the bike? There's this beautiful moment in time when neither foot is touching the ground. We are free of gravity and weight, moving above the doubts, past limits. When we are light, transformed and hopeful. And if we were to collect all these moments, join them together, well, this is when anything becomes possible. This is when we fly. Throughout my career, people have doubted my ability and I've had it even more so when I've come into triathlon. I think this year will be very different. There will be bigger expectations on me. I love the way that I race. With my swim background, I'm almost in the driving seat from the gun. I'm the person that everyone is chasing. I want to be the best and I'm willing to work as hard as possible to get there. Laura Phillip just asking one of the officials uh, a couple of questions here, just unsure of what uh, what the, uh, the question really is right now, but uh, maybe about the aid stations, I don't know. She shouldn't be complaining too much because she's got a 
three minute lead over Jossi Sedora, the iron rookie from the USA right now. And that, they've had both bobbles on either side. First, it was Laura Phillip losing her nutrition on the first lap. Then it was Chelsea Sodoro almost coming to a stop, you know, through an aid station to pick up her nutrition. The one thing about that as well, Didi, is that um, Chelsea didn't gear down, so she was still in a really big gear, you know, to get back into her momentum. She would have geared down after we were off shot, right? But, you know, she was still, you know, having to, you know, pick that momentum up. So I think that... Um, you know, she should be all right, like, you know, coming back into town. Momentum's back there where it needs to be, and now she looks like she's doing okay, and the cadence is very good. Yeah, the cadence is very good, and in the meantime, we've had uh, Chantal Sainter and Manon Genet come through the end of the first loop of the bike. They now trail by 8 minutes and 21 seconds. Of course, if we go back to the turnaround on the bike back at 54K, uh, that gap was five minutes, 23 seconds. So another three or so minutes lost. Of course, still waiting for Renee Kiley to see if she is slowly continuing to reel in the pair of Chantal Sainter and Manon Genet. I think it's going to be a better time for uh, Renee for sure. I, she looked the better of, um, you know, out of her Sainter and Genet. I, I do think that uh, Renee Kiley looked a little bit better. Her momentum looked a little bit better at least. And I think that that's what we're going to be looking at. All right, so we can see here, we're going through town, uh, one of our uh, PC athletes there, uh, just going through, or one of our special interest stories for sure. As we see, uh, this is Chelsea Sidoro just coming uh, through town here, doing a really nice job of it. I still love her turnover, just absolutely beautiful. And I think she's doing pretty well for a first time out. I, I think she's got to be thrilled, obviously a little wide-eyed at the, at the idea of doing your first Ironman. I think that brings a whole other degree of, of nerves when you go into uncharted territory like that. Less significant on the swim. I think any 70.3 athlete specialist will easily be swimming four or five, six K swims in their training session. So the concept of going out there and swimming a full Ironman swim, not that frightening. But when you get out there into racing the full bike and then of course the marathon on top of it that's where the eyes get a bit wide uh chelsea seems very very well prepared um confident in her preparations certainly she has demonstrated that she's been mindful of the importance of nutrition across ironman racing uh and and she's she's holding a, a really nice candle to laura phillip who we know how strong laura phillip is so i i think chelsea has every reason to be very very encouraged by her performance thus far but as i said so far, she hasn't really done anything that she hasn't done before. Uh, this, is, this is where we'll start to see if there have been rookie errors in, in pacing, uh, in nutrition. It's the second half and particularly perhaps the last 40K of the bike where that's going to start to show itself. Yep, that's absolutely correct. And, you know, this is the furthest she's ever been in a race right now. So she's already gone past that 90 kilometer marker, like you were saying. So the Ironman 70.3 distance she's surpassed that she's into uncharted territory right now she's going to have to make sure that she stays on the nutrition formula right here scientifically proven to know that you can go the distance if you've got a full tank of gas you can't go like always go down to like a racing car analogy for me if you don't have a full tank of gas you know you're only you're only as good as like you know your pit crew and if you don't have a pit crew like the aid stations then you can't get your full advantage of all the power going out all right, so Sodaro, she's uh, heading out into a second bike course lap right now of 90 kilometers. She's already gone through that 56 mile or 90 kilometer marker, three minutes of deficit, as she tries to chase down Laura Phillip. Now we know that Laura is very, very strong on the second lap of these bike courses. So the interesting, you know, time checks that we're gonna get down the road here are going to tell the story. Is Sodaro gonna be able to keep pace or is, uh, you know, Laura Phillip just going to, you know, really bike away with this discipline? And then it'll come down to the run as it normally does. Again, yes, it could come down to the run. And again, on paper, I believe these two are relatively equally matched in terms of their ability to run. Again, the big question mark being the fact that Chelsea Sodaro has never run a marathon off the bike before. But if we just use their 70.3 run splits on paper, if we look back, Chelsea ran 119.16 at 70.3 Oceanside just this year. Um, and Laura clocked 119.20 uh, just last weekend. So 
on paper, they are very evenly matched for their run fitness across the 70.3 distance. Factors to consider. Laura Phillip raced 70.3 last weekend. Is that still going to be in her legs? Chelsea Sodaro has never raced an Ironman before and has absolutely no idea what is going to happen to her legs beyond the halfway point of, of, well, certainly the bike at this point and certainly when she gets into the marathon. So how aggressive will Chelsea be in her pacing of the marathon? Uh, so this, uh, while it seems like this may be a done deal for Laura Phillip, there's a reason in the early stage of this, of stages of this bike Laura kept looking over her shoulder. Is Chelsea there? Is Chelsea there? I, I can guarantee you that Chelsea Sodaro is on the mind of Laura Phillip. Yeah, it's never a done deal. Um, you know, when she's uh, riding out and getting um, a little bit more advantage each time, you, you may as well, you know, say, hey, you know, she's got a great chance of, of doing this, but it's never over until it's over. And uh, the marathon is a long way, 26 miles or 42 kilometers is a long way to run. Doesn't matter if you're in the lead or not. So it's for all athletes have all got to get out there on the same course. And this is how they get to do it. Like right now, Manon Genet has now taken their fourth spot again, just behind uh, um, uh, Chantel uh, at this point of time. And there's a little, you know, little hill here, you know, under the bridge there. They just go up a little bit. So a nice little time to find a different sort of rhythm because once they're out on the course out of town, it is dead flat. There is no resting. You can't free wheel. You lose all of your momentum. And it's, you know, it's not like Ironman Frankfurt, you know, coming up in three weeks, it's pretty rolling. You've got a lot of good descents where you can sort of cruise a little bit. You can get your nutrition in. You can sort of catch your breath here. Not so much. Well, not so much. And I think the athletes are, as we look at Manon Genet there, she's now sitting up out of her bars, taking advantage of this more technical section through the city center where there's a lot of turns. Um, perhaps some rough road situations. She's taking advantage of not sitting in the air in the aero position, uh, enabling her to just sort of stretch the back out. And that's one of the benefits of sort of a more varied course in terms of the terrain. You mentioned Frankfurt because it's upcoming and our men's European championship in just a few weeks time. But those undulations and changes in terrain enable you to, to sit up for a while, to attack a climb, to get up out of the saddle. This course doesn't afford that. So I think the smart athletes, as we saw Manon Genet doing, taking advantage of the ability to sit up for a bit through some of these more technical sections, because once they're back out in that rural section, just like Chelsea Sodaro, they're locked into that aero position. Third place at the 2022 Ironman 70.3 Mallorca. Chelsea Sodaro wants to go a couple of better today. The Ironman rookie is having a great race so far. This time it's in Hamburg at the Ironman European Championship for our pro women. We are on the second lap of two here in Hamburg with four laps of running upcoming in the next couple of hours. Don't go away. We'll be right back. Chelsea Sodaro is chasing down Laura Phillip. Whether it's on the road or in the pool, your activity has high demands. Rooted in sweat and grounded in science, we understand your unique fueling needs. That is why we created formulas just for you, endurance athletes, helping you replace what you're losing and keeping you fueled. And there's nowhere we'd rather be than with you along this journey, because together we are formulated for farther. From the creators of Gatorade, Gatorade Endurance, formulated for you, formulated for farther. Gatorade Endurance is going to be the talk of the town today because that's what you're going to need to fuel yourself on the second lap of the bike course. And you can tell you what here, Chelsea Sodaro is doing just that because she is in pursuit of Laura Phillip, who is up the road and she is running on high octane at this point of the course here, going through 97.5 kilometers. Sodaro is still at 303. So no change in that last uh, seven and a half kilometers, Didi. So it looks like Sodaro might be, uh, you know, the one to watch on the second part. Well, certainly, again, I think Chelsea is going to be the more conservative of the two in terms of her racing strategy. I think that's just the natural inclination of someone who's never raced this distance before. 
Uh, we sort of saw it a little bit in the swim where certainly she led, but she led with the company of Manon Genet until they turned around at the halfway point and she really went to the front and wasn't able to break away from the rest of the women, but, but certainly uh, was the more aggressive and it seemed like she was the one pushing the pace. I have no doubt that she will have been advised to be smart in her first race. You, it, I think that the risk of being super aggressive, had she tried to hold pace with Laura Phillip, might not have been the best strategy, but she's been able to hold the gap um, to just over three minutes through the halfway point on the bike, and I think that's very, very exciting. It'll be very exciting for everyone to know that we have a race right at the front there at the European Championship for our pro women today, and uh, don't uh, count out or discount Chantelle Sainte from the UK and also from France, Manon Genet, who are putting up a very good fight. They haven't gone through our next time split at this uh, this time just yet, but 303 for Sodaro is exactly what she turned around seven and a half kilometers ago. So she was holding pace with our race leader. What can our next two chases come up with right now as we get toward the front end of the competition again when they're just about to leave the outskirts of Hamburg to get back out into the rural country and back out onto those wind-filled roads? And if we go back to just the halfway point at the turn, it was Renee Kiley uh, still in fifth place, 11.53 back. So she continues to very slightly chip away at Chantal Sainter and Manon Genet, but not really making any inroads at this point. Again, we talk about other things that the athletes are contemplating at the moment, the three qualifying slots to the Ironman World Championship. Currently, Laura Phillip has one. So were she to win the race, the first slot would go to, should she maintain her position in second, Chelsea Sodaro. Both of these women, Chantal Sainter and Manon Genet, are in positions right now to hold on to a Kona qualifying slot. And of course, they've got a pretty significant cushion because behind them in fifth place, Renee Kiley also has a slot. So right now, if these women are able to just hold on, they'll be pretty happy with at least picking up a qualifying slot to the Ironman World Championship in October. Yep, the European Championship comes with a title for sure, but a lot of these ladies have come here to grab, you know, a qualifying slot for the World Championship coming up October 6th, later this year in 2022, as we make our way back to the Big Island of Hawaii to get ready for the action to return to the Big Island. We've been gone for a couple of years and I'm sure the island misses us and we miss the island. So we will be getting back there. There's no place like Kona when it comes to the World Championship. You never know what it throws to you, Didi. You swim in water that's up to 900 feet deep. You get out onto the bike course, you could crack an egg and cook it in within 20 seconds. It is so hot on the surface of the road there and the winds are unpredictable. They absolutely are, and I don't want to, I mean, I'm as excited as anyone to get back to, to, to uh, the Big Island of Hawaii this fall, but let's not discount the, the event that we had in St. George just uh, a few short weeks ago, because that was absolutely next level and, and very fitting for an Ironman World Championship event. I think that course through just about everything, including uh, the kitchen sink at the athletes as well. You know, completely different races when you talk about it, the humidity of, of Kona, uh, the, as opposed to the dryness and the winds uh, that were predictable, you know, in uh, St. George. Um, in Kona, the, you can predict the, the humidity is gonna be there every day of the year, but you can't predict the wind because it is, it, some days it's there and some days it's just not. Um, on an average day in Kona, you get those headwinds, you know, coming out of the south on the way back, but they're pretty light, you know, like eight, eight miles an hour or something like this. And uh, when Madame Pele blows uh, her head off, um, she throws about 25 to 30 knots of wind at you uh, with about 35 mile an hour gusts or about, you know, 50 kilometer an hour gusts out there as well. So. You know, given those two uh, courses, very different and very different elevation wise as well. A lot of long grinding climbs in St. George, not so much in Kona. You've got that one grinding climb, you know, from uh, Kauai High to Harvey, which is 19 miles long, but it's not, you know, at the percentage of what the climbs are of St. George. So, but anyway, back here in Hamburg, you have a completely different course again, flat bike, flat run, and a very nice swim course here today. When we saw it, uh, you know, start up this morning, it was absolutely fantastic as 
one of our age group athletes uh, here just uh, getting overtaken. And uh, we can see that they got through their swim in less than two hours and 20 minutes today because our professional athletes, they swam just under the hour today. Menage A, although she was third out of the water, she still sits third in this course right now, but she's gone and gone to the front to do the pacemaking again in third and fourth. Well, as, as Manon passed that age group competitor, I did not see uh, Chantel on her wheel. She may have used that little twist and turn and passing the age group competitor to sort of snap that elastic that had been so firmly entrenched through the first half of the bike. Yeah, well, at 97.5K, it was only a three-second gap, but we'll have to wait and see when we get a visual on them one more time. There's Chelsea Sodaro from the United States. She's at 3.03 down, holding pace with our leader right now as they go past the port right here in Hamburg. Remember, this is the third largest port in Europe, only third to Amsterdam and also um, Antwerp in Belgium. And then we are here at Hamburg at number three. It's the second largest city in Germany, only that to Berlin. And as we mentioned earlier at the top of the show, because I'm so impressed by this, if you were to sail your ship into Hamburg Harbor, <laughs> they would play your Australian national anthem for you as you entered the harbor as well, a welcome. I might to try the, that. To Hamburg. I might try that one day. <laughs> Get a little dinghy. Get a little dinghy. Row my boat. I don't know if they do it for dinghies. Oh, okay. You might you might need something a little bigger. It has to be like 100 feet long or so. I, I don't know the size requirement, but they do play the national anthem to welcome the international ships to Hamburg Harbor, which I think is wonderful for this gorgeous and stunning city uh, here as we race the Ironman European Championship, as we look at Laura Phillip continuing to make her way through the second half of this bike course, now overtaking some of these age group athletes who are on their first loop, Laura Phillip very heads up as she navigates these twists and turns through the city center on her way out to the more rural section of the course, yet still to come. Yep, so here we go. We're going off to a break here in just a few seconds, but Laura Phillip heads her way out of Hamburg, getting back out into the rural stretches of this bike course today. This is the business end of the bike course. This is where it's gonna throw the challenges. And right now, Laura Phillip navigates her way through the age group crowd. Don't go away, we'll be right back. Laura Phillip continues to lead. She is the top German. She is the top female pro athlete as she makes her way around Hamburg. And she's about to exit Hamburg for the second time today. She'll have about 80 kilometers to ride right now as she makes her way outside. Chelsea Sidoro is 303 down. Jeanne and Saint are at 912 down. And Kylie now at 1232. So right about the same sort of situation here. So the other women are keeping their times, but it's only Sodaro that's holding Philip. It is, and Renee Kiley inching closer, but not significantly to Manon Genet and Chantel Sainter. Uh, we saw just a moment ago that Manon Genet may have dispensed of Chantel Sainter. It was a technical section of the course. I didn't have eyes on Chantel, but we'll get a camera back there uh, to see if the pair are together. I would almost be sad to see them break up. They've been such a lovely couple since the start of the race. It would be sad to see them break up. But uh, race unfolding here as we watch Chelsea Sodaro in her Ironman debut uh, came here to Hamburg uh, to learn about this distance, see what she could do. And she is learning from some of the best, chasing Laura Phillip, so dominant across this distance. Of course, Laura Phillip having the huge disappointment of not getting to compete at the Ironman World Championship last month in St. George. Uh, due to a positive COVID test, but she has 
certainly bounced back and bounced back very, very well, winning the 70.3 here in Germany just last weekend, back out on a race course today. Yep, Chelsea Sodaro right now on screen in second place, just riding along very, very nicely. Doesn't look anything different than what she did in the uh, the first lap. So very well done there as we do now look over to Chantel Sainter there. She's really grinding those pedals right now. You can see that there's a very big effort happening at this point in time. She's got the same sort of momentum going, got the same gear. She doesn't pedal the turnover. Oh, there's Manon, so they are yep. still together. Phew. She she doesn't pedal the turnover, there's Janon and, uh, you know, Sodoro are pedaling at the moment. It's probably about five, you know, RPMs, a little bit, you know, slower per minute uh, than the other athletes here, but she's a grinder. She knows how to hurt. Yeah, absolutely. Again, you talk about the benefits of that, and every athlete has their own sort of sweet spot, and that may be different if, if we were to watch uh, Chantel Sainter race in a 70.3. Her cadence might actually be different at a different power output, so every athlete for each power output has a sweet spot in terms of their own cadence. But when you talk about what the norms and sort of ideals are, one of the downsides to that sort of bigger, grindier cadence, when you get off the bike, you're having to actually speed up your legs to hit your run cadence. So if you're at a, a slightly higher cadence, it's a more natural transition. But certainly for Chantel Sainter, uh, that's where she feels strongest and feels connected to the bike uh, down there in that bigger gear uh, grinding away. Yeah, I don't think, uh, you know, the first part of the Ironman bike course, you know, they're, they're probably uh, outputting, you know, very close to what they would do in a 70.3. But in the second lap, you know, honestly, if they don't back off and, you know, the wattage comes down, they're going to lose all of their efficiency and they won't save anything, you know, for the run. So definitely, you know, in the Ironman distance, you know, you've got to drop down on the watts and then, you know, of, of course, you know, on the run, you know, your efficiencies are going to be limited to how much energy you have left and, and how the muscles are holding up because, you know, you can store a lot of energy in those, uh, in, you know, glycogen in those muscles and and uh, you, you want to give yourself the opportunity to have, you know, that third discipline to, you know, get you to the finish line. So if you don't, you know, give yourself that opportunity, you won't have that chance. As we take a look here at Laura Phillip, who it does not appear uh, grabbed her personal need bag, does not have a bottle again on the back. Uh, we saw her drop that bottle on the first loop, was able to get it back, and then bobbled a uh, bottle heading into town, has not yet replaced it. Of course, we know she's got that uh, internal bladder, so she is not entirely without uh, calories and fluids, but uh, definitely uh, not carrying the same amount of fluids as she heads out on the second loop here. Yep, and there we go. We can see that the reservoir, she's filled it up, and uh, at the front there, she has a straw that she can pull back and take her calories in there, but she uh, does not have that one on the back there. She's already filled that, you know, the reservoir up. So. Going into that second lap there, Didi, she needs to be right on point with the nutrition. Is she going to be able to get those things at the aid station that she needs? Uh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think whether her... her if she slows down enough. If her personal fueling sources are different than what's offered on course, uh, I think most athletes will have done some recon ahead of time to know what is available on course so that if you do have a disaster, a well-prepared athlete will know uh, how to make up for the calories that you've lost as we watch Chelsea Sodaro here tuck that bottle uh, back into her rear cage as she continues underway. Yeah, she did that pretty well too, you know, going across the bridge and, you know, a little bit of a rough section of the road there. So always a little bit, uh, you know, sketchy, a little bit dangerous, but uh, just take your time, you know, cruise a little bit, make sure that water bottle goes in there. There are penalties assessed too if you, you know, do litter out there on course as well. Absolutely. And right now we're going to take a look at our partner, Full Gas. So. My name is Mike Lucas. I'm the founder of Full Gas, and we're dedicated to doing things for triathletes. 
It started out as basically a Friday hackathon for a app development business that I ran and it just ran away on its own. It became more and more popular and it was all about typical middle-aged dad. I couldn't go and do the rides I used to do. I wanted to find a way to bring them to me. Fast forward further on, it's been used to win world championship time trial titles on the road in cycling. It's won Olympic medals, Paralympic medals, just because people trust that accuracy in the product. The reason riding full gas helps an athlete so much is it's a really accurate representation of the course. So the gradient you'll see behind up that climb in Snow Canyon, it feels just like the real Snow Canyon. So that really helps people understand what gearing they need, what equipment to choose. We actually had situations where people changed their equipment for the recent Paralympics in Tokyo, having ridden it in full gas, and it gave them a big advantage on the day. So our aim really is to give um, Ironman triathletes the home ground advantage to whatever course they go to. A crucial thing that's coming is we're filming every race on race day. So for you as an athlete, you can experience what it's going to be like on race day. So you can see where the, the transition areas are, you can see where the feed stations are, the turnarounds, the signage. And because we're part of the Ironman group, it's the official course on race day and no one else can do that. Oh, what, a great little, what a great little piece of software there. Uh, what a great Love way it. to course recon and and have a real course experience there with full gas, so definitely go check that out. It's so real, I mean, I, I really <laughs> love that. All right, so Sainta is at 9.12, and at 12.32 is uh, Kylie, uh, the last update, then uh, Hartikainen uh, from uh, Finland at 15.41, so she's dropped a couple of more minutes, and Walter at 19.36, dropping a little bit as well. So our top 12 were under the 20 minute mark just a moment ago, um, sorry, under the 30 minute mark just a moment ago. So we're looking at big drops from our, you know, probably eighth to 12th places, but these ladies right here are keeping it fairly interesting, like under 20 minutes for seven athletes here. So Laura Phillip is just riding so nicely at the moment, getting another bottle there onto the back. She's just going to put it into the reservoir down onto the bike there. You can see just filling it up so that she can stay in that aero position and use the straw so she doesn't have to come up. This is the only time that she's unaerodynamic. Exactly, when she sits up. But again, it gives her the opportunity to stretch out that back. Um, it is sort of a necessary feature. So taking the opportunity and being productive with the time that you are out of aero is a very, very smart move. She gets up out of the saddle and then will no doubt tuck back into her aerodynamic position as we take a look at second place, Chelsea Sodaro who on debut right now seems so poised um, and, and doing just a great job in her very first Ironman. Seems to me every time we're getting a shot lately, we're getting a shot of uh, one of these women drinking and hydrating. So it must be uh, still very humid outside and they must be, you know, just really getting, you know, very, very into what has to happen on the second lap and being just in the moment, you know, knowing and having their wits about them. I need to stay powered. I need to stay fueled. If I don't have that fuel, I won't be able to do the time that I want. I won't be able to get off in the position I want and I won't be able to run the way that I want as well. So it's great to see that both of our lead women are really, you know, thinking about their nutrition and getting it in. Yeah, no, absolutely. And I was just going to get an updated uh, look at the weather right now in Hamburg. Temperatures continuing uh, to increase again. We're expecting a high temperature of 76 degrees Fahrenheit. Of course, that's about 24 degrees Celsius right now. We're about 10 degrees Fahrenheit south of that. So we're at 65 Fahrenheit. So we've added about 10 degrees since the start of the, the bike. So things are definitely warming up. And with that humidity, that's what's feeling a little bit stuffier for the, for the athletes out there. Again, the temperature, not that significant, but the humidity is gonna make them sweat it out a little bit. A little bit of a cross tailwind heading back out of town now. You're just noticing the flags on the right hand side of the screen there. So they're getting a little bit of help, you know, as they make their way out into the rural area of Hamburg. At this point in time, you can see the trees just moving around just a little bit. You can see the age group athletes coming back into town to finish off their first loop. So you can see that the, the faster swimmers and now the faster bikers on the age group side of things are starting to appear at the front of the race there as they make their way back into town there. There goes a couple of passes and uh, plenty of room out there for our age groupers as well. No, oh, absolutely. And uh, as we come back and look at Chelsea Sodaro, her body position, her cadence has not changed one bit from the start of this race. And to me, that says she's in a, in a pretty good position right now with how, how she's feeling and how things are going out there for her today. 
doing very well. Chelsea Sodaro here. I'm very, very impressed by the way that she's cycling and I'm very impressed by the amount of, you know, uh, dedication going into the front of that bike there and that is the nutrition. Love to see that water bottle up there and it's going to be very important for her to stay on that, to have the power that she needs to get through the back end of this bike course. We've always talked about this, Didi, but after the 100 kilometre marker, that's where the bike course starts. After that 100 kilometre marker, if you don't have the power in the legs if you don't have the power strapped onto the bike it's going to be a very difficult thing to do and these two athletes at the front of the course have had no one around them the whole time it's been mano y mano you know out there just racing against each other and it's only a deficit of three minutes well and that's the thing is chelsea sodaro is very much keeping this extremely interesting uh in terms of a race i think we said that coming in laura phillip is the heavy heavy favorite to win this race. However, uh, Chelsea Sodaro is a, is a big question mark. You never know how athletes will adapt moving up from the 70.3 to the Ironman. There is a learning curve involved and some athletes do it absolutely brilliantly and think, wow, like I might actually even be better at Ironman than I was at 70.3. Other athletes will struggle to get the nutrition or the pacing or what have you. Uh, but right now, the fact that Chelsea Sodaro only uh, trails Laura Phillip by three minutes is very, very impressive in her Ironman debut. So some of our age group uh, swimmers out there today, the fastest one was 50-58, which was um, KW Larson from Denmark. So that was a great time. Ashton from the UK was a 51-17, but getting into the end of the bike lap, it is now Jamie Berry from the UK that's our leader at uh, 98 kilometres. It's Jorgensen from Denmark in second, and he was uh, just a little bit behind there, just 142 down. Kindworth from Germany was in third. There's Jonas Weller in fourth place in our age group competition. And from Belgium, Pierre uh, Balti is in fifth. Ashton, now that he was our, one of our swim leaders, he's now down to sixth place. KW Larsen in seven. There's Brooke from the UK in eighth. Ninth place is Sorensen from Denmark. And rounding out the top Ten in our age group, men, is Wigrich, and uh, he's from uh, Germany. So right now, that's uh, how it stands in our age group men's race. So pretty good. In our age group women, our swim leader was Carrie Hickson out of the United Kingdom. She swam 57:46 through the first lap of the bike. However, uh, it's Henka Gruber uh, out of Germany who leads the women's race. No one else is through that first lap of the bike. Uh, back at 54K, Carrie Hickson uh, trailed uh, her by about five minutes and two seconds. So that's what's going on there in our age group women's race. Well, there you have it. So we get you caught up to speed right now. You're watching images of this incredible iron rookie. That is Chelsea Sodaro. She hails from the United States. She's already been a podium finisher at the Ironman 70.3 World Championship. Can she get on the podium in a very first Ironman distance race? We're going to have to wait and see in about three and a half to four hours time what she's capable of doing. You are watching Ironman Now on Facebook Watch. Ironman European Championship from Hamburg. That's a hyperbole. That thing he uses to warm up and stay loose before he throws it down. That thing Tony Finau uses on course between shots. Ooh, that's money. That thing Robin and I use before and after we're on the bike so we can ride harder tomorrow. That thing Erlen Holland uses before smashing it into the back of the net. That thing that's for everyone. The hyperbole from Hyper Ice. Give your body the daily relief it's been asking for. Well into the second lap of the women's pro field here at the Ironman Hamburg European Championship, and it's Laura Phillip 
The hometown girl, well, not the hometown girl, but the home country girl here. She's getting a lot of clapping, a lot of, you know, uh, recognition out on the side of the road there today, Didi, because she is leading, the German leading in Germany for the European Championship. There's a lot on the line for this young lady. And after battling COVID over the last few weeks, and then she goes out and does 70.3 crash girl last weekend, takes an emphatic victory there, seems to be right on point. Absolutely on point and, and, and a tremendous amount of uh, gratitude for her to be able to be out and back healthy racing. Obviously, a huge heartache uh, to miss the Ironman World Championship. She was in every conversation uh, we had about a, a podium contender. So to miss out on that opportunity. And we talk about, we you know had just recently talked about some of the differences between uh, the Ironman Hawaii World Championship event and the Ironman World Championship event in St. George. And I think that St. George course really would have suited uh, Laura Phillip. So I think that there was a tremendous amount of heartache uh, that went into to missing that event, obviously fully dedicated and pre-qualified for the Ironman World Championship in October, uh, but difficult to, to miss that. But to bounce back as quickly as she has is super duper impressive. She and her team, super smart. I saw from her social, she was in there being checked by the doctors, make sure the heart, the lungs, all of it was full clear of the COVID. Uh, with no no vulnerability, uh, and she got right back uh, to business and back out on the race course. Looks like she's doing very well right now, going over one of those uh, pave sections of the course here at the moment. You can see the upper body just moving around just a touch and the slightest of uh, movements, but uh, it is moving. And she's really working it, you know, going into the early part of the second lap here. But this is where the damage will be done, you know, between her and Sodaro or her and, you know, the rest of the chasers as well, because the gaps started opening up, you know, the strength of the cyclist or, you know, that particular person on the back end of any one of those disciplines is the telling story. And I'm predicting that, uh, you know, the, the gaps are going to start opening up, you know, fairly widely with third and fourth, but not so much with Chelsea Sodoro until the next uh, time check. But after the next time check, that's going to be the turnaround. Then we come back into Hamburg. I, th I think if Chelsea Sodoro can hold the gap to Laura Phillip to less than five minutes coming off the bike, that's going to be a super exciting race because again on paper both of these women barely evenly matched in terms of their run potential the big question mark being Chelsea Sodaro has never run a marathon at the end of a triathlon but she comes from a run background so we know that she's an experienced runner in general yeah very experienced runner we know that um, but you know put that in uh, with a you know, 180 kilometer bike ride in front of it and a, you know, 3.8 kilometer swim. It all changes things around. They're riding into a headwind at this point in time. These athletes, no wonder they're moving around a little bit on their bikes. It's a little bit tough there. And uh, as she uh, just saw something on the road there, she uh, sat up there just for a minute and um, had a little question. There uh -oh, might be uh -oh. a mechanical she here. She may have a flat. Might be a mechanical that she's having at this point in time. So she's. Uh, just had to stop and slow down there just for a second. So we'll have to wait and see what that was all about there. But uh, that was very unusual. We didn't really get to to see, uh, you know, what was going on there. She looks like she's got good speed. So I don't know about the flat tire. Yeah, I don't think if it's a flat, she would have stopped. But she pulled over and unclipped so aggressively. I don't know if she maybe had her head down and almost ran into the moto. Uh, it, something startled her for sure, and she was about to get off her bike in, in a hurry, but she seems to be back in action and everything uh, is going okay. Everything's going okay for sure, but that was a, a scary moment for her, but she's uh, back into it. She's uh, getting that nutrition down. There goes another one of the gels that she's been hiding underneath that tri-suit right there, but she's uh, getting back into it, and here she goes again. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm putting that one down to the wind. Definitely the wind just, you know, swept her across uh, just a little bit and, uh, you know, a little, little close there, but she's back into it and here she goes. Yep, continuing to focus on that nutrition as any iron rookie should do. And I am impressed to see her so mindful of that, still super present in the moment, uh, getting the calories down, uh, continuing to hammer away. Uh, she trails race leader, uh, by three minutes and about two seconds at the last time check. 
Yeah, so sort of like a little bit of a slip on the pedal there, you know, with the pedal released, um, uh, sorry, the shoe released from the pedal there. So uh, that's what we're, we're being told. So um, anyway, a little bit of a mishap there and a little mechanical should put it back, you know, 10 or 15 seconds on momentum in that respect there. But uh, Laura Phillip is still leading, but we've still got our glue. We're still <laughs> holding on. We've got the rubber band. It's not even about to snap for these two. Manol Genet has been leading, you know, uh, Chantel, you know, Santa here for quite some time. They've been going back and forward, but, um, yep, I think they rather enjoy each other's company. Well, right now, I don't know that one would know where to go without the other. They've been <laughs> together for, for four hours and 50 seconds now uh, of this race and, and show no signs of, of that changing. Again, Manon Genet did a lion's share of the work uh, with Chantel sort of sitting back legally for most of the first loop. Chantel did come around uh, a little bit at the end of the first loop, but it's back to business as usual as we take a look back at Laura Phillip, our race leader, who continues to navigate our lapped age groupers here as she continues to hammer away on the second loop oh, of she this looks bike great. course. Yeah, she looks great, Dee Dee. I'm sorry to jump in over the top of you there. She looks absolutely amazing right now, and I just love the way that she got out of the saddle before going in there, stretched it out a little bit. Now she's coming up on a little bit of lap traffic, so that's the one thing that she's going to have to, you know, negotiate you know, coming up onto the second lap. So a little bit of safety uh, is going to be a concern there. Not so much for the Hout route, though. The Hout route Pyrenees taking place from July 5 to 9 allows riders to discover the raw beauty of the Pyrenees in this ultimate pilgrimage. Starting in stunning seaside Bay Ritz, cyclists will traverse through the raw, undiscovered gems of the Basque country and tackle the beasts of the Hout Pyrenees, all the way to the beautiful saint Lary soulon Spanning across Pyrenees, riders will travel from one city to another each day. The logistics of a point-to-point -point adventure can be complicated on your own, but the Hout Route Premium Services make sure that the only thing riders need to think about is to ride. Register for your experience today at houtroute.org. I think you should be signing up for that one, too. You think I should? You're just, you're, oh, yeah, you're, you're an ultra. You're an ultra. <laughs> you love it. The longer, the better. The longer, the better. Yeah, and the more days, the better for Take, you. Takes me a little while to warm up. Yeah, they call you the this, turbo diesel, don't they? Yeah, the turbo diesel. The, these <laughs> Ironman races, too much of a sprint for me these days, I'm telling you. <laughs> All right, well, it's not so much of a sprint for a lot of people because we're at about four hours and three minutes on the race clock coming up here in just a few seconds. The pro women, this is their European Championship and this part of the episode has been brought to you by Gatorade Endurance. Laura Phillip continues to lead as she now has open roads out there on the outskirts of Hamburg at this point in time. We are open in these roads here and that is open to wind as well. Yeah, open to wind again. It doesn't seem all that gusty. Uh, the wind certainly uh, projected to pick up throughout the day, but not to be uh, that significant a factor. And it's good news for Laura Phillip that a lot of our age group athletes now nice and spread out, not very bunchy. That's one of the benefits of that rolling start is that there's some separation amongst the age group ranks, makes it a little safer out there on the course for everyone, Laura Phillip continuing to hammer away. Love these roads are sort of protected by, you know, a berm as well. You can see the Elba River on the right-hand side and the berms are sitting at about, you know, eight to 10 feet up from, uh, you know, road road level there. So they get a little protection um, from a crosswind, but not so much from a headwind or a tailwind. You can see on the Elba River there, you got a little bit of, uh, you know, texture right down the center of that, which just gives you an idea that the wind, you know, is up at around about 10 miles an hour we talk about the wind it, it's not so much but it is something little that makes a bit of a difference you know in somebody's race day but not for Laura Phillip because look at this she's overtaking you know lapped riders here and they're just going out on their first lap Laura Phillip is 90 kilometers in front of these other age group competitors as she makes her way around a couple of competitors just having a couple of little chats with each other out there they are a uh, little reminder to the age group competitors, again, they tend to lose focus. They're focused on their their own business. Uh, a little beep beep from the moto, letting them know that uh, Laura Phillip is motoing through uh, the age group ranks here as she makes her way out to the far turnaround. Uh, that will be uh, kilometer 143. And the last time check we get before the athletes 
return to town and transition to the run. Yeah, um, when you're in the you know the global Ironman uh, routes here, you've got uh, you got to stay right and uh, you know pass left. If you're in Australia or England, you know you stay left and and, and pass right. So it's the opposite. But uh, so today, when you you know pass an athlete, just head back over to the right side. You've got your 25 seconds to pass and and do it and uh, move back over. That's pretty simple. So. Here for Chelsea Sodoro, though, she's just uh, having no problem with that. She's not having to put the timer on to 25 seconds. I would mm, even say about, oh, eight seconds to get past these age groupers. Like, you know, she's absolutely rocketing. So Chelsea Sodoro looking great at this point, and I'm really happy to see that. No, she does. She looks fabulous. The cadence is, is what I notice. I think when athletes tend to fatigue, sometimes they tend to grind a bigger gear. Uh, in an effort to find the power that they're looking for when their legs start to tire, but she's keeping her cadence nice and light. Uh, again, holding, I don't want to say holding pace, but not losing a ton of pace to Laura Phillip. A very, very impressive performance from Chelsea Sodaro so far. Yeah, so far, as you can see, the wind farm's up there to the right. They're yeah, just uh, propelling around nicely. The birds are enjoying their Sunday morning over here in Hamburg, Germany. And we can tell you that Laura Phillip is riding a beautiful race right now. We are trailing Chelsea Sodoro from high above with our drone shot right now. So the American, the Ironman rookie, is doing a magnificent job of doubling the distance. This is the very first time that she's gone this Ironman distance. So now this is uncharted territory for this American athlete, Diddy. This is where she needs to stay on point. She needs to, she needs to execute the training plan and the race plan that's been put in front of her. And it's all about pacing and it's all about nutrition. Well, and everything that we've seen from her today would indicate that she is doing that very thing. Uh, we have seen her uh, eating, drinking, uh, holding that arrow position brilliantly. So uh, I think she has been well coached and has done her homework uh, and, and is doing a, a fabulous job. And I can't, I literally cannot wait uh, for 143 uh, kilometer timing mat to see if she's able to minimize that damage. I mean, Laura Phillip is looking fantastic as well. Uh, but but Chelsea Sodaro putting up a really, really good fight here. Yeah, great fight. And uh, you would expect that of a champion. Uh, she'd been a podium finisher at the World Championships. Even though it was at the 70.3 distance, you know that a champion like that is also going to, you know, get themselves up for, a, you know, a championship race at the double the distance. Doesn't matter if it's on your first or your 10th your try. You know that this is a European championship. She wants a spot to Kona. There's a lot on the line for this young lady today. And she's going through the plan perfectly right now. So let's just hope that she can stick to the plan, execute it, get herself across that finish line well, get that qualifying slot, and onwards and upwards. Well, it's been a huge investment uh, for Chelsea Sodaro. She made her way over to Europe to race uh, the Mallorca 70.3 and stayed over here to, to finish out her preparations for this race. She brought her mother with her. Uh, again, she's got her young daughter there. So... Uh, needed an extra set of hands. So it's been a big investment, not only in time, but also in resources to make this event happen for Chelsea Sodaro. Yeah, and those are the uh, sacrifices that you have to make in, in life. And, and that is to, you know, you've got to pick up your family and, and go. And uh, Chelsea's got, a, you know, a career at this. And she's been, you know, rising up in the ranks of uh, triathlon over the last, you know, few years. And once it got to the pandemic, you know, unfortunately put a little bit of a stop, you know, to that and to the racing, but she's hung on and she's doing very, very well. And 2019 might have been a podium at Ironman 70.3, but now as she makes her way through double the distance, she's doing just fine as she heads out of town for the second and last time before that turnaround. Heading back into town, she'll get those running shoes on and start heading out. But now... It's finishing off the bike, and she's doing a great amount of work.
Can't take anything away from Laura Phillip today because she's having it all her own way on the bike course. She's been absolutely superb out there today, right from the very outset. She got out to a quick 3.03 break at the end of the first lap of the bike. But now it's a charging Sodaro. Can she limit that loss of 3.03 at this point in time? Only time will tell as we get toward that all-important turnaround. The athletes will get to have a good long look at each other and check out exactly what they look like and then what they've got to do for the last part of the bike ride. That last 45 kilometres is going to be very important coming back into town with a little bit of help. A little bit of help from the wind, certainly, but I tell you, this second loop, things everything gets a little bit more complicated, right? Navigating the roadway with the age group athletes out, sharing the course, navigating the aid stations uh, as you go through an aid station with the age group athletes, but also as they enter the turnaround point, their only point of reference is one another in and out of that turn. So if Chelsea is not, she needs to focus on the road ahead, but she also needs to focus on the other side of the road uh, so that she can get a time check to, to Laura Phillip and see where she stands as they make the turn for home. It'll be interesting to see, you know, what uh, what is going on inside of the head of Josie uh, Sedora. So you you pretty much summed it up for me, Didi, so I, I can't really throw the question back at you. Pretty much answered what I was going to say, and that is, you know, what is going through the, the head of an iron rookie at this point in time going after Laura Phillip, who is one of the best Ironman athletes at this time in the sport? I mean, come on, let's look at it. Got Daniela Reef, you got Lucy Charles, you got Kat Matthews, you've got Annie Haug, you know, Laura Phillips in the conversation as well. Chelsea Sodaro is an Ironman rookie and she's chasing after one of the best. Absolutely. And, and again, we you know we heard in her uh, her video a fighting chance. On paper, she thinks she knows what she can do, it's but it's about executing it on the day. So as much as she would aspire to uh dethrone, I don't want to hand her the title, but dethrone Laura Phillip, um, I think she's been pretty smart uh, in keeping her eyes on her own page, right? Keeping her eyes on, on, on what she's got to do to execute her best day. Again, one of her big goals will be to pick up one of those qualifying slots and, and gain that valuable experience in doing so. And how great to have someone who has the potential to be on the podium at the world championship at this distance to chase, to learn from, to, to be a, a, a measuring stick for Chelsea Sodaro. So a, a lot of upside here for Chelsea. Yeah, for sure. And there's the wind on the right-hand side, the texture on the water. The wind uh, farms are on fire right now. They are just spinning around. The wind is up at about 10 to 12 miles an hour. You can see by this beautiful overhead shot that Chantel Sainter has gone ahead again of um, uh, Menon uh, at this point in time. So uh, it's really good to see that those two are, are really helping each other, you know, by doing the, the pacemaking at this point in time. But they are losing time to our leader. They are losing time to our second place athlete, but they are definitely keeping each other in the hunt. And, and at this stage of the race, it's almost nice to have that company, that focus um, to try to incent each other to keep, keep the power up. Uh, I think the mind tends to drift if you're on your own there. So I think having each other, uh, they're holding each other accountable out there uh, to keep up the pace. And again, um, they want to stay away from Renee Kiley. Renee was sort of chipping away at them uh, and, and one of these two women would very much like to hold on to the podium. Both of these women still in uh, qualifying potential for the qualifying slots, three slots on offer here today for our professional women. Yeah, they really want to get after that. So uh, very important to keep the pace happening, <clears throat> give themselves a chance, excuse me, uh, give themselves a good chance, you know, when it comes to the run as we look at beautiful Elba River here and it does head in from the North Sea. It's heading down to the south at the moment. It goes down quite a ways outside of Hamburg here. Absolutely gorgeous day that we're experiencing right now. I think we lucked out with the weather too, Didi. Forecast not so nice for the next couple of days here in Hamburg. So it's going to be a, a great day here for all of our athletes as we go into the later hours of our race today. This part of the program brought to you by Santini, the pro women race here. Four hours and 15 minutes into the Ironman European Championship here in Hamburg. And we've got a beautiful overhead shot. That is Menon Genet down there in fourth place. And in third place, that is Chantel Sainter from the UK. And they are getting up 
after. Yep, they are definitely trying to get after Laura Phillip and also Chelsea Sodaro, who's on screen right now. I think it would be very, very exciting uh, for both of these women to pick up that qualifying slot, but particularly for Chantel, never competed in the Ironman World Championship before. So uh, Manon Genet has had the opportunity to compete there uh, as a professional back in uh, 2018. Uh, she competed there and finished in 31st place, so no doubt looking to uh, potentially improve on that. But she has the experience on the Big Island, and it would be a thrill certainly for Chantel, uh, who has not yet had that experience in her career. Yeah, and definitely wants it. You know, they all want it. It's the uh, it's the holy grail. Everyone wants a, a crack at, you know, the, uh, the island and, and see what it's all about. And I can tell you right now, it's a great race. It's a tough race. It's It's very taxing on the body but it's also taxing mentally i think that a lot of people you know don't don't really you know take it all in uh, or actually don't really know how to take it all in because they're so wound up about you know all of their you know times and and all this sort of stuff don't go into kind of kind of with a time <laughs> go in there with a with a, a mindset of getting yourself to the finish line and the best possible in a way that you can trust your training you know just get out there and make sure that your nutrition on race day is there look after yourself you know that when you go to the humidity of the islands that your heart rate is going to be higher it's going to be hotter you know there's all these different factors that come into it and you know we we sometimes ignore them and we sometimes overthink things well i think it being a world championship event like this being a european championship event people try to do something next level and oftentimes that comes back to to haunt them uh, to your point, Greg, trust your training and, and trust the plan. Uh, I think anything um, uh, that you try to do in a superhuman kind of way um, doesn't necessarily pay dividends. Well, we're off on the second part of the bike course right now. The first part of the bike course today was a doozy. Yes, it was. It was really, really good to see Laura Phillip, you know, keeping that pace right up the front there. She swings wide to go back under the tunnel and get after that second lap. That was Chelsea Sodaro also swinging wide, just a little bit slower there, a little bit more timid going through that corner there. But Laura Phillip was fantastic, got back into a pace straight away. Chelsea Sodaro, what's been really impressive though, thus far is she's keeping pace with Laura Phillip, who is the defending European champion, and that in itself is impressive. And Manon Genet and Chantel Sainter have been really good in pacing one another. The twins separated at birth, Manon Genet, Chantel Sainter, uh, these two locked together in battle from the start of the swim, uh, covering the entirety of this course, uh, never more than that uh, 15 meters apart from one another. <laughs> And that's been great. I mean, they've, they've been keeping the pace up. They've been keeping each other, you know, uh, right in the hunt. Because if you do lose your focus, it can go away, you know, quite easily there. And there it was, Genet and Sainter. They were at 9.12, but now they're a little bit further down. All right, back to the action right here. We've got Manoj Genet. She's in fourth place. She's got Chantel Sainter just right up ahead. That is the carrot. That's right. And there is an age group athlete just getting out on their first lap. So, so Sainter and Genet are sitting in third and fourth spot at this point in time. Coming up to four and a half hours on the clock, nutrition. Nutrition, nutrition. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, I would say at this point, if you haven't been focusing on your nutrition, it's too late, right? It needs to be a continued focus. And, and that's what b becomes difficult in Ironman racing is that focus. The focus rate wanes as the fatigue builds uh, your attention to detail, not what it was two hours ago, three hours ago. It becomes harder to focus. Math becomes more difficult. Has it been five minutes since I last ate? Has it been 20 minutes since I last ate? Um, and you tend to get into a bit more of a fog, but, but the focus has to maintain, has to be super sharp. Uh, but I would say if you haven't taken care of nutrition yet, you, it's, it's way too late. Yeah, I mean, you've got to be on it from the outset. So, you know, that's just how it goes. And get a good look at the wind farms right now. They're just, uh, you know, clocking around pretty good there. One on the right, it's obviously locked and turned off, but the wind farm's providing lots of energy for this region right here in Hamburg, as we know that it is the port city, the third largest port in Europe, only uh, third to Amsterdam and Antwerp. At this point in time, you can see the Elba River, and that is one of the main thoroughfares for all of our boats uh, to be shipping, you know, bringing in 
the imports and taking out the exports right here in Hamburg. And they say that it's the gateway to the globe for the Germans. And did you also know that it is home to the first modern zoo? Back in 1907. Back in 1907, uh, zoo founder Carl Hagenbrook Jr. started a zoo with more humane treatment of the animals. Prior to that time, animals were kept in, in cages. Uh, he was the first to put them in a more natural habitat, uh, resembling their habitat out in the wild. Uh, and the model for the first modern zoo right here in Hamburg. Well, you talked about your mincemeat. You talked about the hamburgers. Let's talk about something a little bit different. Theresa Merkel. Yeah, absolutely. A chancellor of Germany, born right here in Hamburg. And also, people like to listen to music when they train. Well, it doesn't come from the UK. It comes from Hamburg because that's exactly where the Beatles got their start, right? The, the Beatles they were happy to. I did. I did do some research on this. I heard they were struggling to get gigs. They came to Hamburg, and that really put them on the map. And they got very, very popular uh, based on their early performances here in Hamburg. So the Liverpool lads didn't get it from Liverpool. They got it from Hamburg. You heard it right here. Anyway, Manon Genet, she has now gone into third position to overtake the pace setting now for these two here. That is Chantel Sainter that has just now gone into fourth position and just have to get out of that little section of 12 bike lengths there. So Chantel needs to sort of relax just for a second. But there goes Manon Genet. She's picked up the pace. And you can see that now they are riding into a pretty good-sized headwind. Yeah, the wind, you can tell, definitely picking up here as you see the grasses along the embankment there uh, starting to move considerably more than they did certainly on the first loop. And, of course, this at the outermost point. Anytime you see a wind farm, you know it's a windy place, right? So uh, the fact that, uh, the, that their wind farms exist here, we know that the wind can be significant here. Not a super crazy windy day, but definitely the wind picking up uh, more significantly than it was at the at the start of the, the bike. Yeah, very close to the North Sea, and we know that the North Sea can actually get some pretty decent winds through the channel there, you know, in between Denmark and also Sweden and, uh, you know, so and the north of Germany. So, and Rostock just down the road from Hamburg as well. So the North Sea, very, very close, but we are very close to closing in. On the bike course here, we're only a few kilometres away from the athletes turning around for the very last time and coming back into Hamburg, getting ready for the run. Don't go away. we got plenty of action to come. There's this beautiful moment in time when neither foot is touching the ground. We are free of gravity and weight, moving above the doubts, past limits. When we are light, transformed and hopeful. And if we were to collect all these moments, join them together, well, this is when anything becomes possible. This is when we fly. Throughout my career, people have doubted my ability and I've had it even more so when I've come into triathlon. I think this year will be very different. There will be bigger expectations on me. I love the way that I race. With my swim background, I'm almost in the driving seat from the gun. I'm the person that everyone is chasing. I want to be the best, and I'm willing to work as hard as possible to get there. Back with the action here as we look at our third and fourth place competitors, Manon Genet and Chantelle Sainter. Both of these women in pursuit of a qualifying slot for the Ironman World Championship coming up in October. Manon Genet has had the opportunity to race there prior. It would be a debut world championship appearance for Chantelle Sainter. So no doubt that factoring into their minds here at this stage of the race. Yeah, still grinding away there. Sainter is, uh, you know, hot on the heels of, you know, the uh, the Pursui there, which is uh, Manon Genet from France. And she's had a... She had a pretty good race today. You know, back in the swim, I think Manon was, you know, pretty pretty decent. You know, had a lot of energy in the first part. And, and Chantel was able to just, you know, sit in that third position right behind Laura Phillip today. And they, they were all sitting behind Chelsea Sedora, who was, you know, the, the pace setter all the way there. And, you know, Chantel's had a, a, a very good race so far. She's been very, very strong on the bike ride. You can see that, you know, right behind Manon, she hasn't let her get 
you know, out of sight at all. It's been <laughs> really, really good. She's been going full gas for sure. So Menon, you can see the Menon now and uh, both Chantel are riding into a pretty stiff headwind because that's a pretty big gear, you know, that they were pushing. Have a look at the science down here on Hamburg City and then down onto the sea here. You can see that the uh, the texture right down, you know, the waterway here is really, really stiff at the moment. So, you know, 10 to 15 miles an hour out there, it's a big, big difference, you know, um, to uh, the athletes when it's, when it's there. So let's go and listen to our race director down there, Bjorn Bem, with a fighting chance. Hi, my name is Bjorn Beam and I'm the race director for the Ironman European Championship Hamburg. Right now, as you can see, it's once again raining, but uh, this will clear up for the weekend and to be sure, it's the mixture if you look around you and you'll see when you come to the finish line, you have a lovely city view and you will also be outside in the countryside on the bike course. So it's a very great mixture of historic sites, of touristy spots and the peace and quiet that you have in more rural parts of the race course. We will start at swim course uh, right in the city center. Um, we have a quite nice lake here uh, that you'll also get to experience for the run course. It's somewhat, somewhat warm, um, so I think we'll be safe with the wetsuits. Looking forward to that. And once you get to the bike course, you'll have a great mixture of um, the city again with some touristy highlights like the Reeperbahn or the Speicherstadt, uh, things that are known well outside of the city. The Elbphilomini is another one you will see. Um, You'll get to experience some of these touristy highlights and then you'll head out of the city um, into the more rural parts where we'll have green pastures and sheeps. So again, you have this, this mixture of the city and the less urban areas. Finally, we have a run course that is um, well beloved in the Ironman circuit. We'll always get great feedback on that. Um, again, very picturesque. You'll be running along the river on one side. Uh, you have some very nice mansions and, and park stretches on the other side, as well as when you come back to the city center, just a great experience with all the fans here. You just everything going on around you, so a lot of motivation every time you come by the finish line. We always hear the fans shouting, moin moin. Can you tell me what that means? That is a regional greeting. Um, it's sort of saying hello. Um, the origins or the actual meaning are somewhat disputed. Some people say it's good morning, but you can actually say it all day long out here. Well, moin moin to you too. Good morning and good day and uh, whatever it takes to, uh, you know, just welcome each other for sure. Well, Hamburg is heating up this morning. Uh, right now we can tell you at four and a half hours into the course, we're at about 61 Fahrenheit, 16 Celsius. We're going to go up about another six degrees Celsius on that right now. So the wind is a little bit more than that. That's a uh, typo. So it's around about 10 miles an hour out on the course at this point of time. The humidity is dropping a bit, though. Uh, I think as maybe the wind picks up, it's blowing some of that humidity out. So humidity dropping there for the athletes. Yeah, you know, um, just looking down, you know, on the uh, on the water there, you can see our rowers and that's still out there, you know, having a great time there. But I tell you what, it's not going <clears> to, <throat> it's, it's always going to drop down around about the, you know, the midday hours. Then in the afternoon, it, it picks up again. It, that's pretty much, you know, a given everywhere. So, you know, it's, but it hasn't gone down that much, you know, from where it started. So we're around about 90 to what, 70, 75 now. So that's pretty reasonable. And, uh, you know, these athletes are, are going to be, um, you know, thinking about, okay, where they're at with the temperature. Okay, so the temperature was at what, 61, 16 or whatever it is. It's still coming up, but the humidity is keeping it warmer, right? Uh, but the wind, the wind is definitely a factor out of town. It's a little bit less in town because they are protected sure. by those building, buildings. But right now you can tell that once you get out into these rural areas and the green pastures, as Bjorn was talking about, yep, it does kick up. So they're going to have to factor that in. Absolutely, as we continue to watch second and third, or sorry, third and fourth place here, Manon Genet from France, uh, as well as Chantal Sainter out of Great Britain. Uh, this is the furthest they've been apart since the start of the race. Uh, it could be Manon Genet trying to uh, make a move here. It could be a little bit of fatigue or lack of focus there uh, from Chantal, but she has let a little bit more daylight uh, between herself and Manon Genet, but these two have been locked in it since the start of the race. 
they really have been locked in and uh, they're not going anywhere, I don't think. I think they, they're going to get off the bikes in third and fourth places here today, but they've still got the uh, out and back to do and that's where they're going to be able to see, you know, the rest of the field, in particular Laura Phillip and also, you know, Chelsea Sidoro, who they are very interested in and uh, whereabouts they are because at last, uh, you know, time check, they were hitting, you know, just about that 10-minute marker and we'll have to wait and see just exactly what Laura Phillip and Chelsea's, you know, Sadara have left in the tank and we talk about this a lot Didi that you know in the back you know 50 kilometers of all the last 60 kilometer kilometers of these Ironman races is really the telling story you know between you know somebody being strong on the day or somebody being fueled up correctly on the day as well. No, absolutely. And and the other thing that we're going to be taking a look at when we get to that 143 kilometer mark Renee Kiley has she been able to continue to chip away at Manon Genet and uh, Chantel Sainter, Renee Kiley has experience on this course. Talk about how important that is. Yeah, well, it's very, very, very important, you know, somebody to come back and, and know the course and know that they've already done a, uh, a 439, you know, bike ride on this on this course. It's a pretty flat and fast course, but, you know, obviously you can see the wind there. You look what the wind's doing to the, to the fountain out there. Um, <laughs> right here where they started, you know, early this morning. And look at that beautiful rainbow that it's it's providing. So it is up a little bit. And, you, you know, she knows that this course is going to produce, you know, and harvest, you know, fast times. But is she going to have to accelerate a little bit out of her comfort zone to get after Laura Phillip or to get after, you know, Chelsea Sodoro? Or does she have to just, like, stay in her zone uh, to be able to, you know, get a good, um, you know, finish at the end of the day? She doesn't have to worry about the World Championship slot. She's That's right. already in a pocket. Right. Right? So she just has to keep, you know, her game plan where it needs to be. And, you know, she came from Flagstaff. You mentioned that. Like, let's, let's talk about that for a little bit because she arrived on Wednesday for a Sunday race. It's only four and a half days out, but you're talking about eight hours of different time zones, right? So, therefore... You know, I, I don't think that she would be fully acc acclimated, you know, to the weather um, right here. Where she's training in uh, Arizona in Flagstaff, super it is dry. up at 6,000 feet, super dry um, and different time zones. So, you know, I think that she could have come in a little bit earlier. And then the last factor is that do you, do you she did lose the Ironman race. You, let me ask you this. Do you lose that benefit of altitude if you extend your stay, right? If you, if you time it, do you want to sort of your body to go down to sea level and all of a sudden your body's like, ooh, look at all this oxygen. Do you lose some of that if you come seven, eight, nine days out? All right, here's, here, <laughs> okay, here's my take on this whole thing. I'm not a scientist, but I'm going to tell you how I think about But you about play it. one on TV. <laughs> <laughs> I try. Um, <laughs> let, me, let me just say this. Um, she did an Ironman triathlon at 3,000 feet of altitude, um, you know, May 7th. Um, then she's, you know, lining up here on June 4th. It's about three and a half weeks later with the travel and everything. She had to go back to Flagstaff from St. George. She had to recover from an Ironman triathlon. And then really, how much benefit is it going to be to go back up to altitude when it takes you a few days to get back? You know, the blood, you know, starts forming those extra red blood cells. Your hematocrit levels start going back up again. But she she is on the deficit of things because I think that she's still recovering. Yes. From an Ironman, so she can't possibly have the the high end training that you need to to finish off, you know, going into a taper. So I think that if she went back and she got smart about it, and she you know took a week, you know, really really easy, a couple of swims, a couple of bikes, a couple of runs, you know, just not even the runs, you know, just you know just make sure that you're getting yourself, you know, rested so that you can enable yourself to have those training days, and then going into the last, you know, week, obviously. I, don't, I just don't think it's enough time to recover uh, properly to come here, you know, five days out. Well, and it's a lesson, too, I would have hoped that Renee would have learned last year. She went on quite uh, a racing tear last year as well, and it didn't end um, dreadfully well. She started her race with Ironman Cans uh, on June 6th, followed that June 27th, Ironman Coeur d'Alene, followed that Ironman Lake Placid uh, July 25th. Uh, then traveled to Hamburg, had a great race, her best race of the season here in Hamburg, came second. That was on August 29th. Uh, tried to back that up with the World, Tri World Triathlon Long Distance Championship 
on September 12th. And the body just said, absolutely not. Yeah, so uh, she pulled out of that race and, and realized that the, the race almost, I'm going to call it race gluttony. That's a lot of Ironman racing and not a significant amount of time. Well, it's averaging one a month. Yeah. You know, from June, you know, right through the end of the year. So I think that's too many. You can't possibly, you know, think that you're going to recover, you know, from an Ironman race. Look, top marathoners only run two marathons a year, right? Possibly three. But it's normally two to get the best out of their body so that they can recover properly, their muscles can, re you know, recover properly and then go again. Ironman triathlon's a little bit different. I don't think that the athletes in Ironman triathlon are going to rip their bodies apart like a marathoner does because we have three sports. We do swimming with our upper bodies. We do biking with the strength of those big muscles and aerodynamics. We do running, but running is gravity. But we're not running times like, you know, a, a, a 205 or something like that. We're running, you know, 240. 40s these days and and therefore or 235s and 238s like Blumenfeld and Chris, uh, sorry uh, Gustav Eden and you know Fredino and Patrick Langer have been doing you know incredible times Matt Hansen and and so on and so forth but I just don't think that um, you know the the recovery is there to do six Ironman races in six consecutive months correct at a very high level well which which it brings me to my point of why would she have been in such a rush to get back out on an Ironman course after Ironman World Championships in St. George? We, we had a couple of other athletes um, who have raced Ironmans this year whose names were on the start list. Um, certainly we had um, Daniela Blymel, who was going to race, has elected to push her race to Frankfurt in a few weeks' time. She was coming off a win at Ironman South Africa in April. And then we had Nikki Bartlett, who also raced the Ironman World Championship in St. George, thought maybe this would be the race, said, you know what, I need a couple of more weeks. She's also going to Frankfurt. So again, every athlete is different and every athlete with their coach and their, their, their support system has to make these decisions. But I guess my point uh, with Renee Kylie is that all of that racing volume last year definitely uh, did not serve her by the time she got to the end of the season, uh, had her worst Ironman performance at the end of the year at Ironman Florida. She was 14th, I believe, um, just got sort of more and more and more and more tired as the year went on and doesn't seem to have learned from that this year. All right, we're on the out and back right now for um, our leader right now, Laura Phil. But I will say this, you know, she, I, I, I do believe the reason why um, she is here right now, and that is Renee Kylie, is because she feels good about the race. She had a great result last year, and I think that she feels good coming back here, knowing that she can have a good result. That's what I think that, you know, that's, and that's why significant. she's here. That is right. significant. Yes. I want to I want to bring up another thing, like, um, as, you know, Laura Phillip gets to our, our turnaround here, we're going to get a, a time split coming up, Didi. Ben Hoffman in Ironman Texas this year, and then he went over to yep. Ironman St. George yep. and had two incredible races. He was incredible at Ironman Texas. And personally, I think he was incredible at the Ironman World Championship in St. George. You know, he came off, you know, two weeks. So it's impossible to go back and recover, um, you know, and get back up to, you know, solid training. He just had to go on what he had. He had to get rested, and he did. He got rested... I know that Ben was a little bit upset with his 10th place at the World Championships, but I'm calling that a great race because it was on a very tough course and coming off an Ironman win just two weeks before that, and Ben's just sitting at under 40 years of age. Ben also has, I think, a lot more experience and knowledge. And I, I spoke to Ben, and, and the reason they went to Texas was because he thought it would actually make his Ironman World Championship performance better than if he hadn't raced. And he just knows that from years and years and years and literally a decade of experience at racing the Ironman distance, that doubling up those kinds of races works for him. It doesn't work for every athlete. Laura Phillip has made the turnaround. She's heading back to Frankfurt for the last time on the bike ride today. Her pursuers are on the way out to the turnaround. Don't go away. We'll be right back with all the action from the final part of the bike course here at the Ironman European Championship for our pro women right here in Hamburg.
whether it's on the road or in the pool, your activity has high demands. Rooted in sweat and grounded in science, we understand your unique fueling needs. That is why we created formulas just for you, endurance athletes, helping you replace what you're losing and keeping you fueled. And there's nowhere we'd rather be than with you along this journey, because together we are formulated for farther. From the creators of Gatorade, Gatorade Endurance, formulated for you, formulated for farther. Laura Phillip is waiting to see across the other side of the road where Chelsea Sodaro is today because at last time check, it was 3.03 and that was in town, you know, a few kilometres ago. So once we get that cross, we know that that is going to be the telling story, the telling factor and what, you know, is expected from our athletes as they make their way back into town. Sodaro is going to look across the other side of the road and see a fast-flying German in the name of Laura Phillip, who seems to be having everything her way right now as she makes her way through lap traffic here in Hamburg. And there goes Sodaro on the other side of the road here, just coming up uh, in a few seconds' time, and then we'll get the split as she goes around that turnaround. Again, mathematically, I think it's going to be about four minutes, so I think Laura Phillip has put another minute or so into Chelsea Sodaro. Not dissimilar to sort of the gaps that we've seen. So Chelsea is holding it to a pretty solid race here with the likes of Laura Phillip. Sounds like Groundhog Day. You said that an hour ago. <laughs> it's the truth. It, it remains the same. <laughs> Oh, there right, we go, 329. 329. 329, so that's very respectable from Chelsea Sodaro right now. Just a loss of 26 seconds over that, uh, you know, 45 kilometres, Didi. That is really good going, you know, in the likes of Laura Phillip here today. So Sodaro and Phillip, definitely the class of the field today. Menage and A, and also Chantel Santa. What have they got to say about that as they go, you know, into the last part of their bike ride right now? Beautiful over overhead shots here of Hamburg on a gorgeous setting here. A uh, spectacular venue. Again, this triathlon crazed city uh, home, not only to Ironman racing, but to uh, World Triathlon Championship Series racing as well. Uh, just great, great hosts uh, for all things triathlon and what a stunning venue we've got here today. Yep, just getting some of the sails set up on the uh, the boats out there. They're going out for a little bit of a regatta this afternoon. We can see that the flag is flying high there at about 10 miles an hour right now. Gorgeous here in Hamburg. You've got to get here and check out this race. Not only is it a great course, but a magnificent city, the second biggest city in Germany, only to Berlin. We're going to cut over to part two on Facebook in just a few moments. So if you'd like to reset back on Ironman Now on the Facebook Watch channel here, we will see you on the other side. Go ahead and reset. We are closing in on the finish of our women's pro race here on the bike ride. Then they'll be heading out on the run, coming right up. And before we get to that break, just checking back in with Laura Phillip, who continues uh, to hammer away at this bike. She is now officially headed for home, Greg, and looks spectacular. She will have taken that split, known she's put another 30 seconds or so into Chelsea Sodaro, but... If I'm in the head of Laura Phillip, I'm not super comfortable with that, again, because Chelsea is an unknown entity across this distance, and I think on paper gives every reason uh, for people to believe that she will be a fierce competitor across this distance. And so far, her execution has been, at least by observation from us here in the booth, nearly flawless. She seems to be very mindful of her nutrition, uh, making strategic choices to nearly stop at aid stations. Uh, nearly every time we have a camera on her, she is uh, eating, she is drinking. She seems very much in the moment. Um, and on paper, the two of these women uh, run pretty similarly. So I don't think, uh, Greg, that Laura Phillip is going to be super comfortable with three and a half minutes. It's, it's better than 30 seconds, uh, certainly you wouldn't necessarily want to head out on the marathon course being stride for stride. Uh, so she's got a little bit of a cushion, but I can tell you it's going to be uh, an exciting marathon because Chelsea Sodaro, while she lags by three minutes and 28 seconds at 143 kilometers, is still very much in this race. And of course, now we're still waiting 
for third and fourth place, that would be Manon Genet and Chantal uh, uh, Sainter uh, to make their way to the outermost turnaround point and head for home on this bike split. So back for those two women at 98 kilometers, Manon Genet and Ch Chantal Sainter lagged by nine, we'll call it nine minutes, 10 seconds. Uh, so waiting for them to cross 143 kilometers, Greg, to see what that deficit is now. I definitely want you to say Chantel Santa 10 times five. <laughs> repeat, repeat, repeat. Okay, so Chelsea Sadara having a, a good old race today. Laura Phillip is the class of the field right at the pointy end of the race at the moment. You can see that she's just starting to move those hips around a little bit, Dee. That's something that we don't see, you know, too much. But, yep, fatigue is going to set in. It doesn't matter who you are at about, you know, 150 kilometers into any Ironman race. Something's going to go a little bit awry. And uh, you can tell that, um, you know, it's just starting to happen there. The nutrition is stuck on board of Laura Phillips, uh, you know, little jet engine there. And we can see that she's having a great race. And it's good to see that, you know, she made that comeback after COVID-19 and, uh, you know, having that little forced rest and then getting off to Kratzkow. You know, last week was uh, an important thing for her. Just like you said about Ben Hoffman a few moments ago, it was important to her to do a race before this race. And it just so happened that, you know, Kratzka was right there. I don't know if it was, uh, you know, planned or not. But, um, you know, she's done it well. And uh, today you can see that she's uh, got that form going. And right now she looks untouchable. She absolutely did. Well, we know from Ironman Racing that no one is untouchable. Uh, no, no lead is ever secure until it's at the finish line. So, uh, as I said, I think... Laura Phillip will be happy with a three and a half minute gap, but with an athlete like uh, Chelsea Sodaro, it's it's it is far from over. Uh, as we come back here to the duo of Manon Genet and uh, Chantel Sainter as well, up out of the saddle uh, through a little bit of a curve here, overtaking some age group athletes as those women are still headed on the outbound section out to the turnaround. Yeah, you see um, just Chantel just uh, taking a little swerve there. Sometimes the wind catches the front wheel or, you know, just taking your eyes off the road. You know, Chantel does put her head down a lot and uh, looks down at the front wheel. And, you know, sometimes when you're on a road where you've got the ghost line, which is the, uh, the white striping on the right-hand side, definitely in the USA, but you don't see a lot of that, you know, in Europe right here on these country roads. So you can see it on the left-hand side of the road, they do, but this has got a gutter, uh, you know, hard up against the side of the road there. So, you know, Chantel, you can see just, you know, battling a little bit of wind there. So we can see the wind, uh, you know, is just uh, going sideways there. And that's probably why she had that little bobble just a minute ago. Here's Chelsea Sodaro is looking very, very good right now. She was third place at the 2022 Ironman 70.3 Mallorca this year. And she was also third place at the Ironman World Championship back in 2019 in Nice. And what a great event that was. That was a really hard course on the bike. And Daniela Reef just took it to the other women. Like, you know, it wasn't only just the ascent, but it was the way that she descended, sure. you know, back into town and uh, and the way that she came back with that decent lead and just ran away with it that day. But it was uh, it was good enough for, you know, Chelsea to get onto the podium there. And it was very, very impressive and equally as impressive as what she's doing right now. Well, yeah, I mean, I, I said earlier uh, in the race that I, I was almost surprised when I saw her name on the start list. It was one of those ones that I thought, huh, Interesting. But again, because she, she has so much potential across the 70.3, she's still very young. So the fact that she's moving up to this distance that early, I would have thought maybe a couple more years at the 70.3, but she felt a calling, as, as she said in her Fighting Chance video. Uh, she was excited to sort of reinvent herself and be a rookie all over again. She sort of had that long running career, uh, was hopeful to make the Olympic team, didn't, had some injuries, came to triathlon, got to be a rookie all over again. And she said here now at Ironman, she's getting to do that again by being a rookie at this distance. Yeah, look at the wind coming sideways there. You can see that Chantel is uh, absolutely fighting that from the right-hand side. Just moving around the road there a little bit, but uh, I want to go back to Lucy Charles. Lucy Charles was pretty young, you know, taking on Ironman triathlon as well back in the, you know, 23, 24. And, you know, when she turned pro and uh, got to the very, you know, 
the top end of uh, Ironman very, very quickly after she won her world championship in the age group and then turned pro and straight onto the podium she goes. So Lucy Charles being that, you know, young athlete as well. So Chelsea Sodaro, another one of those switching over, you know, pretty quickly. So Chantel Sainter now heading back toward town here. And uh, we can see that uh, just back from the uh, the out and back there. So we got Laura Phillip and Sonara. They've gone through that. We're waiting now for Sainte and uh, Menon uh, Gene to come through and go through that section at 142.5 kilometers. And we know that that gap is growing. Yeah, we absolutely know that gap is growing. Still waiting for them to come through 143 kilometers, which means that their deficit is increasing also seems likely then that Renee Kiley is not making many inroads either to move up the rankings as well. So Renee Kiley, she's come here knowing that uh, this is a course that's suited for her. She, uh, you know, participated last year and did very well in a second place. She holds the uh, the bike course record there for a 4.39, and that may be in a little bit of danger today with Laura Phillip because Laura Phillip is rocketing back toward Hamburg, and then she's going to strap those running shoes on for the Hoka. Time to fly run course, 42 kilometres, four laps around the beautiful town of Hamburg this afternoon, and the crowds they are going to be large this part of the program is brought to you by wahoo chelsea sodaro probably looking down at her wahoo thinking wow i'm right on pace she's saying i'm crushing it i'm crushing it in my <laughs> iron man debut but she is crushing it um she's had a, a great performance thus far a lot of racing left to go of course we know that errors made early in the race come back to uh, be magnified later in the race but so far uh chelsea sodaro looking like a veteran here in her rookie Ironman performance here at the Ironman European Championships in Hamburg. We're going to take a quick break, but don't go anywhere because there's a lot of exciting racing still to come. back to the action here and latest update the duo of Manon Genet and Chantal Sainter is no more through 143 kilometers Manon Genet has snapped the cord she is also losing a lot of ground to our lead women she's 1349 back but now leads Chantal Sainter by about 25 seconds so uh, a little bit of separation for the first time all day between those two women. Yeah, big gaps, you know, starting to form uh, in our top four. But, um, the, you know, that was sort of predictable, you know, as we saw them, you know, uh, losing time there uh, as they're going through our time checks. And you can see now that uh, Laura Phillip is just, uh, you know, rock steady, really nice at the front of the race right now. Got a beautiful cadence happening still. I love the quiet body there. Her shoulders aren't moving. The head is locked in position there. She's got the beautiful cadence. Those legs are doing a lot of work. You can see the shiny you know, part of her calf muscles now. So you know that it is very humid out there today and she is sweating up a storm. All right, so Chase, uh, Chelsea Sodaro, she is the one that's really chasing here at the moment because she's only at 329 down. So only, you know, the, the deficit there was only 26 seconds different, you know, coming out over that last 45 kilometres. So that's really good news for Chelsea as now she just 
gets her head down over the handlebars there. She's tucking it down between the bottle, trying to get as arrow as she possibly can. As they make their way back into town, they're going to have a tailwind crosswind all the way back into town. So that's going to help them immensely as they make their way back toward that run course. Now with the, the last, you know, 35 kilometres or so on the bike ride, how important now, Didi, is the nutrition going in? Because they're now going to set out on a 42 kilometre run. And if they are not properly prepared heading into that, that could spell disaster. Oh, absolutely. Again, the work needs to be done nutritionally from the start, but it can't, they can't let up. Uh, at this point, they're going to want to be thinking about um, what they need to top up on. They can't miss any aid stations. Again, mistakes made later in the race are just, they can be detrimental. They can be catastrophic. The early mistakes, you can sort of make up for them over time, but mistakes at this point, dropped bottles, um, missing calories, um, it, it's going gonna, it's gonna to have an impact in that they're not going to be able to, to have the run performances they want. As we look here at Manon Genet, She's currently sitting now alone in third place. And again, if I look at some of her run performances, again, on paper, she has some equal performances to that of the women up the road. Again, she's pretty significantly far back and it does seem like a you know, 13 minute deficit to Laura Phillips. She's never gonna get that back, but anything can happen in the marathon, absolutely. Yeah, anything can happen and will happen, that's for sure. And, uh, you know, it's, it's all about pacing. It's all about nutrition. It's all about just keeping your head in the game as well. So as Laura Phillip is making her way back in toward Hamburg, she's got a tailwind, a little bit of a crosswind. She's got a little bit of age group traffic to get through. Let's go and talk about our next little Ironman. Porta Princesa, Ironman events offers some of the most amazing views in the best locations around the world. Welcome to Porta Princesa, Philippines, where nature begins and never ends. The race destination for the new Ironman 70.3 Porta Princesa. Athletes will begin with a beautiful open water swim. While on their bikes, they will enjoy a ride through the lush rainforest. The run, well, that takes athletes through the city centre, crossing the finish line at Ramon V. Mitra Junior Sports Complex. Enjoy the wonders of nature has to offer. The stunning Ironman 70.3 Water Princessa takes place on November 13. Register now at Ironman.com. Another one that you should be signing up for you're there, just, Didi. You're just sending me all... You're going to for, pay for all my plane tickets. Please. I will go there and support you. <laughs> okay. We just need to find someone to fund all of my travel to these wonderful locations. Right. Right. <laughs> uh, back at it here with Laura Phillip as she charges towards the finish line of this bike course, starting to prepare herself mentally for the marathon that's still to come. At this point, the athletes are maybe making some judgments on how their legs are feeling. Are they still feeling full up? Are they, are they on top of their nutrition? Can they get some more calories down so that they, they go in to T2 as topped up as they can? Obviously, at this point, you're never going to replace the calories that you're burning out there uh, while racing this hard for that kind of duration. But you want to be absolutely as full up as possible. So at this point, maybe an extra gel if they're feeling a little low energy. Uh, grabbing an extra Morton. Uh, if they're starting to feel a little, perhaps twinge of a cramp, they're gonna up the hydration uh, a little bit, up the Gatorade endurance formula, uh, get some additional sodium on board just to prepare themselves as best they can to run to their full potential. Well, the Morton move was, uh, you know, uh, right uh, just a moment ago as uh, we had Chantel, you know, saying to just dropping back a little bit. So Manon Genet made the Morton move on Chantel right at that turnaround part with about a quarter of the bike course to go. Now you can see Laura Phillip is hitting her strap. She is enjoying that tailwind coming back into town and she'll be thinking about that run course coming up here in the next 10 kilometres or so. She's got about 20 20, 25 kilometers to go, but this is the lady that we're all going to be talking about coming in. Is she going to be able to challenge Laura Phillip for the lead? Is she going to have enough in the legs? Will she know exactly what output she needs to put into? Because the Iron Rookie hasn't been the distance. She is now in uncharted, ter uncharted territory, and now she needs to just trust the plan, trust the process, and now get out there and execute. This is going to be a long, you know, 25, 30 kilometres for Chelsea Sodara. She's got a lot to think about. 
she does have a lot to think about, but one of the things she has to look forward to is this uh, Hoka marathon course because it is one of the best on the Ironman circuit. Anytime you've got a four loop marathon course that is chock full of Ironman super fans out there, uh, it's a great place for her to debut. So she's got a lot to look forward to as we continue covering our professional women here at the Ironman European Championship here in Hamburg. We're gonna take a quick break, but we'll be right back. Laura Phillip out of the saddle, just reaching around and grabbing that water bottle, taking a few very, very long sips out of the bottle there. She is now anticipating the run course. She's closing in on the finish of the bike course here at five hours and 30 seconds into the course. Well, we started out at 6.15 this morning and what a great start it was for Laura Phillip as we got underway in the opening discipline, the 3.8 kilometre swim leg or 2.4 miles. It was Laura Phillip that went straight onto the feet of this young lady right here, Chelsea Soldaro. She was our swim leader, but then it was Laura Phillip out of transition in first place and accelerated from the very outset. But Sodoro, all credit to the Ironman rookie, she has done a great bike ride today. She only has 20 kilometres to ride before she gets off the bike and out onto the run course. So the Iron rookie from the United States is having a good day thus far, but she has to chase down Laura Phillip, who is ranked in the top five in the world at this point in time, even with those little COVID issues and, you know, it set her back a little bit, but today is going to be Laura Phillip. She's going to have, you know, she's going to have the lead out there, Dee Dee. She'll be on the Hoka time to fly run course, and it's going to be about catching her. Yeah, absolutely. It will be about catching her again. It's, it's, you feel a little bad for Chelsea Sodaro because it's a bit like David and Goliath. You've got Laura Phillip, the, the country woman from Germany, uh, obviously a huge following here and a lot of support uh, from the German fans. So, I, you know, I don't envy Chelsea Sodaro. She's probably not going to have the crowd on her side quite as much as Laura. But, hey, I mean, she's got to be wide-eyed and just full of excitement that, again, while she's focusing on all the little details, you know, how's my power and my fueling, in the back of her brain, she's just got to be giggling a little bit, being like, hey, I'm doing it. I'm doing my first Ironman. She's doing great. She's doing really, really well. You can see the age group athletes going through their aid station on the other side of the road here. We've got some of the athletes coming into town to finish off their first lap. Chelsea Sodaro, she'll be coming in to finish off her bike ride. She'll be getting onto the run course. Then it's going to be about pacing going out a little bit easier, trying to build into that momentum and then just trying to build upon, you know, what she's already created today. You know, she's only down three minutes and 30 seconds at the moment. Like you say, anything can happen on an Ironman run course yep. and anything will happen out on an Ironman run course. It's all about the pacing, the nutrition and just managing your way through it. Yeah, absolutely. You know, the unfortunate thing, obviously, for Chelsea is she's never had to do it before, so she doesn't know what awaits her. But all signs so far point to the fact that she is extremely well prepared for this event. Uh, her team has her in a great, great position, um, and she looks to be very much a force across the full distance. A lot of racing left to go, though. A lot of racing to go as we see uh, Sodaro right now pushing a beautiful gear here, just looking so smooth. Very impressive today as Laura Phillip and Chelsea Sodaro have been on their bikes and uh, not a lot of movement going on, which means that they are in control of those bikes. They are in control of themselves and they are in control of their own destiny right now with only just a few, you know, handful of minutes to go before they head into the transition area. 
area coming up onto the city centre of Hamburg and then the crowd. You know that they're going to get right behind the German, but they'll give everybody a little bit extra incentive to get out there and run fast today. It is really electric out there. They have a great fan base here. Oh, it's amazing. It's just a triathlon crazed town. I mean, anything, the physicality, we've seen it today. We've seen the boats out on the... the um, out on the, the water there, the, the crew boats. Uh, just a, a city that, for, a, for an urban center, uh, very, very mindful of, of physical activity and exercise and just great, great fans of all sport, uh, and especially triathlon. Triathlon is a very, very special place in <clears throat> Hamburg's heart over here right now because they've been coming here for years, you know, with the Olympic distance, world championships, and over the last five years, we've been celebrating Ironman right here in Hamburg with huge crowds getting down early in the afternoon to welcome all of our athletes in the pro divisions, but they stay to the latter hours in the night time. They're here to support everybody that comes down to the race. Hyper Ice, and uh, we are bringing it to you on behalf of them right now in this portion and this segment of our coverage today on Ironman Now on Facebook. Watch channel as we look at Laura Phillip looking as good as when she did when she started the race today. Yeah, she looks, she looks absolutely bulletproof. I mean, again, she's lovely to watch on a bike because she has those nice long levers. Um, she just turns the pedals over so consistent, so smooth. Uh, you talk about power all the way around the pedal strokes. Uh, not a lot of dead spots in there that we see. Really fluid pedal stroke gets the heel down nicely through the bottom part of the stroke, uh, maximizing the power out of each pedal stroke. Again, uh, you can learn a lot from watching Laura Phillip ride a bike. Yes, you sure can. And if you're watching out there and you're looking at this young lady, that is the way to ride a bike. Yeah, she's one of the nicest to watch out there. Daniela Reef, you know that she is an absolute gear cruncher and is as powerful as they ever come. You can put uh, Daniela Reef and Natasha Bardman together and you would have Laura Phillip because you've got the styles, you know, two very different and distinct styles. You know, Natasha Bardman, and if you're not... <laughs> if you don't know who Natasha Bartman is, you, you, you <laughs> watch have to out, go Greg. back. And, I was going to say, we're getting to that point. <clears throat> we Sadly. have to go back and watch some yes. videotapes. Exactly. Yeah, yeah that's in the VCR. Yeah, the VCR. <laughs> we'll, uh, we'll, you know, we'll dust the VCR off. But if you go back and watch the turnover of Natasha Bartman, it didn't even look like she was, you know, pushing anything because it's just so smooth. And then you look at the likes of, you know, Danielle Reef, the power that she can, you know, uh, output, you know, the whole way in 112 miles or 180 kilometers is just absolutely insane. And that's when you look at Laura Phillips, she's just so smooth today. It's very, very impressive. And now we look at Chelsea Sodaro. And for an iron rookie, this is very impressive as we're looking through five hours and seven minutes of racing coming up in the clock right now. Chelsea Sodaro is in second place and honing in on the end of the bike ride. Again, she's been leaking, you know, seconds here and there uh, to Laura Phillips since they got on to the bike, but has every reason to be super proud of her performance so far here today. Everything I have seen about her has been super duper positive in how she's managing herself uh, through her first Ironman, full distance Ironman race here. Uh, and, and she is very much a threat still to Laura Phillips. Very much a threat. It's, it's going to go all the way into the afternoon here. We'll get Laura Phillip off the bike first. We'll get Chelsea Sodaro off. And then we'll get, uh, you know, the rest of the, in the likes of, you know, Chantel uh, Sainter. We'll get Menon Genet in there. And Menon can run too, you know. Don't uh, don't go away, ladies and gentlemen. We've got a thrilling finish that's about to happen. And then in second place last year, you know, Renee, you know, Kylie, she's not going to give up without a fight as well. She may be a little bit down at this point in time, but... You can always come back. Laura Phillip, she is German. She's racing in Germany for the European Championship. She's going to get a lot of support out on uh, course today, and deservedly so. This young lady right here, I'll tell you what, come October this year, I'll be really, really, you know, uh, <laughs> I, I'm very impatient to know what's <laughs> going to happen in Kona this year because we've got, you know, a lot of new athletes as well, like Kat Matthews is going to come in and, and, and do something special as well. Annie Haug, you know, can she defend her Kona crown? You know, Daniela Reef, will she get back to the, the form that she's just shown in St. George? I say yes to all of that. In Lucy Charles, is she going to make the start line? So it's a very interesting interesting, you know, storyline, you know, that's starting to happen right now. Oh, absolutely. And, and eyes now that, that racing is, is truly in full swing, which let's just take a minute and pause 
and appreciate that for a minute because it wasn't always so. So the fact that uh, races are rolling out around the country, um, or around the world rather, on almost every weekend uh, of the summer here is very, very exciting because it wasn't so long ago we were sort of uncertain that races were gonna happen and we thought they would and then they got canceled. So the, back, the fact that we are back to a full race schedule is absolutely to, to be celebrated. And yeah, I think athletes are throwing down around the world and saying, okay, well, I saw what you did last weekend. Here's what I can do this weekend. And that just all leads to the excitement leading into the world championship in October. Not to mention, we now have the possibility for, for two athletes to become a two-time world champion in the same year, which is also very exciting. Yeah, very exciting. And, uh, you know, St. George was the 2021 Ironman World Championship and, uh, you know, the Intermountain Healthcare World Championship in St. George, Utah was, uh, you know, held in May. October is going to be the 2022 Ironman World Championship coming up in October 6th and 8th. The 6th is going to be reserved for our women and some of our men age group athletes as well. And then on the Saturday, we'll be happening with our second race. And then back in St. George at the end of October, we'll be there with our Intermountain Healthcare Ironman 70.3 World Championship coming up on October 28th. And that's going to be a doozy as well. We've got two days of racing coming up at the end of October. All right, so we're looking at Laura Phillip here. She's coming up on some lapped age group athletes here, doing very well. You can see the wind now is just whipping around a little bit. She's uh, cycling there. She's just overtaking in the lane there right now. She's getting through in perfect timing, and you can see that the uh, the number flapping around on that age group athlete there. He's just waiting to get through and uh, have his time to overtake the next person in front of him. But Laura Phillip is making her way back in toward Hamburg and doing it steadfast. She is incredible today. She's back on form and look at that. There goes the nutrition. She's making sure that she's not letting up on those pedals at the same time. Love it. Absolutely perfect. Absolutely. And, and she's going to have a fire in her belly again, the, the heartache of having to miss uh, that Ironman World Championship in St. George when she was fully prepared, um, absolutely fully prepared. All the work had been done. From that point, it was just travel to the race, sharpen and 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 get there and 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 do the do the thing. Uh, and unfortunately, at the last minute, it was yanked out from from under her. So, no doubt, she's got a next level fire in her belly to to get this one done, to take home this European Championship in her home country here in Germany. Uh, but Chelsea Sodaro is not going to give it to her. She's not going to give it to her at all. She know. You Look, both of them are going to get out there and start uh, the run at their own paces and, and sort of try and hang on, you know, for dear life. Get into their race plan and, and just, you know, just sort of adapt to the, the, you know, the new landscape out there. And that is going to be the run course. It is dead flat. There's only one little part they have to negotiate, and that's up onto the, one of the bridges here, um, you know, out onto the early part of each lap. Uh, once they get onto the far side of the course, it's absolutely gorgeous. They get, you know, the lake on one side and, and trees on the other it's great out there the trail is fantastic and uh, it's very well marked they do get two opportunities to see each other on the laps just a little bit over four kilometers and around about 4.5 kilometers they see each other twice there so they'll have the opportunity to you know eye each other up see how each other's looking and uh, you know judge for themselves what they have to do but for the most part they'll be looking down at their you know at their wahoo watches and the element and and just seeing where the heart rate is what our pace is how am i going can i sustain this you know it all it's a little bit of a trick you know you're always talking to yourself and Didi, you know how that goes you're in training and you know some things you know don't go according to plan so you, you switch things up is that fair to say I, you know, I think you, you do the best to triage. I think you get later into the race. It's it's hard to change your race plan at that point, but you go to triage mode uh, when things start to slide off the plate because inevitably towards the end of an Ironman, particularly in that last 10K, nobody is feeling good in that last 10K and things do tend to, to, to slide off the plate. So your your job at that point, your job at this point in the race is to to manage to maintain when you get later into the miles of the marathon, it's about triage. It's about fixing the things that are starting to go wrong because for every athlete out there, something will go wrong during the marathon. 
We're looking at the Alsen Alster, and that is where we were in the water this morning, swimming around, and, and that's where they're going to be running around as well, coming up in a little bit of time from now. As Laura Phillip makes her way toward the end of the bike course here, just riding out and stretching her legs, just pumping down on those pedals once again. She's in a very good zone right now, and she is now heading back toward Fra um, Hamburg. We're going, to, we're going to Frankfurt in three weeks, right? We're going to Frankfurt in three weeks. We're here in Hamburg. We've got to get that out of my out of my mind here. So Laura Phillip here, she is uh, making her way back into Ward Town and doing it expressively. She has got a really nice turnover happening and I tell you what, she's been mighty impressive today. Look at that turnover. Nothing has changed ever since the first kilometre that, that she put her you know, feet in those shoes and got out of T1. So that's been an impressive bike ride from our European champion. She might go back to back, but she's going to have a challenge right behind her. She does, and that challenge comes in the form of Chelsea Sodaro, who is unproven across this distance, but so far is playing the role of a wily old veteran in how she has executed thus far into the race. Thus far into the race, we don't have too far to go now as they're making their way on the outskirts of Hamburg and coming through a couple of our little villages here on the way back in. You can protect it from that wind that they've been experiencing over the last 20 to 30 kilometres. A little bit of texture out there on the river that you can still see. And this is Chelsea Sodaro coming around that left-hander out of the saddle, trying to keep the pace up and the rhythm, rhythm going back down into the saddle there and get tucked in. Those arms will go on the front of those handlebars and she will be back into pace but look at that she is back up into that uh, nice little position right now Chelsea Sonaro the iron rookie has having a good day so far but it's all Laura Phillip in front of her home country fans here in Germany that is leading the Ironman European Championship right here in Hamburg don't go away ladies and gentlemen we are going off to a break and then we'll be right back with the hooker time to fly Run course. we go Laura Phillips she is now heading into the outskirts of Hamburg not too far to go now we are looking at five hours and 17 minutes coming up on our clock we know that they swam under the hour today what are they going to be cycling here we'll be able to tell you in a few kilometers time because last year we can tell you that Renee Kiley rode a 439 and that is the race record for our women's uh, bike ride and we are in the Women's European Championship here today. No men's championship here. It's going to be happening in three weeks at Ironman Frankfurt and that will be down uh, a little bit south of here, Dee Dee. A little bit south down in Frankfurt uh, in a few weeks time, but right now is all about the professional women uh, and all of the German fans are readying themselves in the T2 area for the German favorite to make her way towards transition where she will swap the bike for a pair of run shoes and make her way out onto the marathon course. Her lead we know will be at least three minutes and 29 seconds. I doubt that Chelsea has chipped away at that. If anything, uh, I would anticipate that Laura may have increased that ever so slightly. It's been the pattern of about 30 to 45 seconds per length of the course. So could be as much as four minutes, but again, still very much 
um, a, a, a battle here uh, for the for the championship title. Yeah, there's been no soft spots. There hasn't been any uh, dead spots in Laura Phillips' uh, arsenal today. She has been on fine form, and uh, as she makes a left-hand turn to come back in toward Hamburg, she is absolutely flying. This is Chelsea Sodoro. She's coming up at the back of the, you know, this uh, little area that uh, we've already had Laura Phillip go through, but Laura Phillip has been just absolutely spot on today, and Chelsea Sodaro, i got to tell you, she has been right there with her. I, I think that these two ladies have gone, you know, exactly and according to both of their plans here today. So there goes Chelsea through our little village that Laura went through, you know, quite a quite a bit ago. I, I do think that the, um, the deficit has uh, streaked out a little bit. I think it's going to be well over four minutes as Chelsea, you know, comes on into town here. But uh, Laura Phillip has been absolutely amazing. This young lady has to be very proud of herself getting through this part, um, you know, right now. Everything does indeed seem to be going according to plan for Chelsea Sodaro. But while our focus has been so much on Laura Phillip and Chelsea Sodaro, but if we look behind them, still very much a race for the podium between Manon Genet um, and uh, saint Tier as, and, as well as Renee Kiley, all of those women within about three minutes of each other, maybe up to four. Uh, but that is still very, very much a battle as well. So while the focus is on who is going to take the title, the battle for the podium is very, very intense here. It's very intense as we get toward the end of the bike ride because, uh, you know, anytime you, <laughs> anytime you get to the end of the bike ride, you know you've got to do a marathon, right? A marathon, 42 kilometres or 26 miles. That's a long way. And after you've been, you know, just uh, expressing yourself out there by, you know, putting the hammer down on those pedals and, uh, you know, getting your, getting your uh, way around this course and uh, just as they have to negotiate, you know, probably the last aid station for Laura, she's got uh, some lap traffic here, so it might be a little bit difficult you know, getting some nutrition there, but she, uh, you know, decides to forego that. Anyway, she looks like she's got plenty strapped on the bike at this point of time. But, yeah, when they're going flat out out there, you know, on the bike course, it's, it's hard to, you know, sort of fathom, okay, what sort of speed am I going to do? They have to wait until they get through the first couple of miles, you know, to see to see what sort of legs they have, right? And it all comes down to, you know, how they've prepared for the race, uh, how their nutrition's gone on race day. Um, and, it, you know, time will tell. It'll, tell, you know, take about 20 minutes or so to know what sort of, uh, you know, pace they're going to be setting and how they feel. Well, and anyone who's raced Ironman racing knows that the first steps off the bike are meaningless. And I mean that in both ways. If you come off the bike and you feel like you have great legs, you can be very encouraged and be like, oh man, I, I, I'm on it today. I'm going to nail it. This is the day I'm just going to have a cracker and by 10K you're walking. Uh, conversely, you can get off the bike and feel like, oh, I have the worst legs ever. And it seems to take an eternity for your legs to come around. So there are so many ups and downs and those ups and downs just get magnified. The amplitude of the ups and downs gets so much more significant the deeper into the race you get. So Little things that might have been a small annoyance to you in the opening 40K of the bike in the last 10K of the run can cause massive emotional swings. So it's super important. That's why the nutrition is so important because usually when, when the blood sugar starts to drop, the emotions start to take the better of you. You don't think quite as rationally. So uh, those little things that, that shouldn't bother you at all become magnificent annoyances to you. Uh, and so that's why it's so, so important to stay on top of that nutrition and keep your focus, stay in the moment and start to realize that there's going to be highs and lows throughout the marathon leg and that everything passes. So the lows, they pass. There's the high right around the corner. If you're on a high, enjoy it because you know the next low is just around the bend. So tell us a little bit about those emotional highs and lows because, you know, when you when things go wrong in a marathon, you start thinking, you know, definitely, uh, sorry, differently and uh, irrationally. And, you know, um, I didn't have uh, such a great record at Ironman. I mean, I did okay. I, I won the <laughs> Ironman World Championship, but I, I can only say People that I... People smack you in the head. <laughs> I, I, well, I know, but I'm just... Okay, so... <laughs> <laughs> all right, let me rephrase that. Okay, I, thanks. You okay, I, choose your words. Yeah, okay, <laughs> all right. I did okay at Ironman Distance, but I didn't have perfect races, right? So what I'm trying to say is that when things went wrong, I used to, you know, just, you know, start thinking about my favorite training runs or, you know, start thinking about my, you know, my best 10K in a, in a training run or 5Ks and, and I'd get shorter and shorter and shorter until I would trick myself, you know, into, you know, making sure that I was keeping my rhythm. Is that sort of something that comes into your head? Well, how do you, you know, get through that? 
Uh, typically with me, the, the emotions and the, the negativity, I would say, that, that uh, sort of descends on you throughout the course of the marathon, to me, that is best treated nutritionally. Um, the apathy that comes in, oh, I don't, I don't care anymore. This has gone, this has gone sideways. My day is over. I, I'm reduced to the plod. Um, you can turn that around oftentimes nutritionally. It, it's often a, 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 a low blood sugar situation. And if you get perhaps just a little bit of sugar on board, uh, grab a Morton gel, grab a caffeinated Morton gel. Uh, sometimes that can put the pep back into your step. Uh, and super important to break the marathon down into uh, individual smaller smaller pieces. You can't get off the bike and think, I have to run a marathon. You need to be mindful of the fact that you're going to run a marathon, but you can't think about the entirety of the marathon in those first steps. You have to think, okay, what do I need to do in the first 10K? And I think the mindset has to be the best performance on the day isn't in the first hour of the marathon. It's who can run the last hour the strongest or the least slow. Yeah, definitely just get out there and get, <laughs> well, get into a rhythm. And, yep. and and that's the thing, you know, just, you know, find your pace. That, you know, that's uh, the one thing you, you know, back in the coaching days that I had was just, you know, with our, my age group is that I was coaching, you know, just to tell them to get into a good pace. It's never a smart thing to do is, is to go out and run your, you know, your first, you know, three or four miles well ahead of, you know, where you you should be so it's better to go out and sort of you know come home at a negative or a, you know just an even split because you, you 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 can't possibly think that you can go out there and do your you know fastest you know four miles you know straight up and and that's going to be good enough it's not you have to work into your pace you have to work into your nutrition program and you have to stay under your red line and you have to you know have you know you have to have the brain to do it you have to be caught up in the moment and you just have to be patient well and that, to that point i think pace is a dangerous word right it's got to be a feeling right it can't be you cannot get emotional about the number because as i said you can come off and hit the number easily in the opening mile that's not going to come as easily after 20K, after 30K, certainly as you head towards 40K. So it's got to be a feeling. And that's where experience really helps. And that's where I, I tip my hat a little bit to Laura Phillip in this battle we have going on between her and Chelsea Sodaro. She knows what that's supposed to feel like. She knows what the last 10K of an Ironman feels like. Chelsea Sodaro doesn't. She's going on textbook learning. She's going on the experience of training partners, the guidance of coaches, uh, but she doesn't know what awaits her. And I think that experience, yes, Chelsea has said on paper, she thinks she knows what she can do, uh, but it's not just a number on paper. It's it's a feeling. Well, I would be uh, trusting my Wahoo element because it's never going to lie to me. It's going to tell me the heart rate. It's going to tell me my pace. It's going to tell me my steps. It's not going to do anything other than give me good information. So as we head to a break, this is Laura Phillip, and she is winding down the bike ride here in the pro women's section of our Ironman European Championship right from Hamburg. There's this beautiful moment in time when neither foot is touching the ground. We are free of gravity and weight, moving above the doubts, past limits. When we are light, transformed and hopeful. And if we were to collect all these moments, join them together, well, this is when anything becomes possible. This is when we fly. Throughout my career, people have doubted my ability and I've had it even more so when I've come into triathlon. I think this year will be very different. There will be bigger expectations on me. I love the way that I race. With my swim background, I'm almost in the driving seat from the gun. I'm the person that everyone is chasing. I want to be the best and I'm willing to work as hard as possible to get there. Laura Phillip only has one tunnel to negotiate, the hard right 180 degree turn and then she is going to be heading toward that transition. Once she gets off that bike, she'll be trading the helmet, she'll be trading the bike for some running shoes and a hat, maybe some sunglasses, get out onto the race course and then start heading toward a second Ironman European Championship. Will she have enough in the tank? Well, we've been talking about it enough. Will Chelsea Sodaro have enough in her tank? Will she have enough 
energy and spark into her tank to make a bit of a rush, a bit of a push toward the lead today. Laura Phillip takes one last long look around over the shoulder. Now she reaches down. She's going to unstrap those feet from the shoes. She'll put the feet up on top of the shoes as she comes into the transition area. Now inside of the last couple of kilometres, Dee Dee, this is all happening for Laura Phillip, the defending European champion right here in Germany. Absolutely. Of course, we love to call the first few steps off of the bike the judgment zone, uh, where we try to predict an athlete's marathon performance off the first couple of steps off the bike. My guess is that we are going to see a bounding stride out of Laura Phillip as she uh, hands her bike off to a volunteer who will re-rack it for her, and she makes the very long run. Again, we remember how far <laughs> they had to run from the water to grab their bikes. They've got to do that in reverse this time. So they'll drop off the bike, make a long run to the gear bags where they'll pick up their gear into the change tent, and then it's still a long run before they make their start onto the marathon course. And you watch it run out. And just look at like, those crowds, Greg. Yeah, the crowds are fantastic here in Hamburg. Absolutely magnificent. But you watch Laura Phillip. I mean, slowly and controlled, she does. She doesn't really show any, you know, um, speed or any, you know, uh, she's very, very patient. And there's no rush about this young lady. Look at even the, she goes around the wrong side of the racks there. It's okay. I just put it up there and oops. Uh, <laughs> and uh, as she runs off to the change tent. So any Anyway, I think that Laura Phillip is just going to get into a stride nicely. She just has that beautiful rhythm anyway. Look at that. She looks absolutely Arch, the fine. The hips already look open. That makes me angry. Laura, stop it. You're making us all look bad, but she does. She looks great already. The hips look open. The stride looks nice and long. I mean, again, you have legs uh, that go up to her neck. Of course, they're gonna. it's going to be a nice long stride, but she looks fantastic right from the first steps. She looks like McKeeley Jones of old, you know, throwing those arms across the body like that, shaking it out right now. But look at those legs. They look fresh as daisy. She got off the bike and look at that, fleet-footed already as she makes her way toward the change tent. Still got the helmet on. She hasn't bothered taking it off yet, and that's a great idea because it's going to be in the arms and you'd have to carry it. So anyway, she's going to get her bike shoes on. We'll have to wait and see what the deficit's going to be to Chelsea Sodaro. But my guess is that she'll be through the change tent onto the run course before Sadara gets off the bike. Which is significant because it's a long transition, so she's going to be in there a while. It looks like she may be uh, making herself a stop here. Uh, part of the reason she's running so fast, going to take a little bit of a nature call there, uh, take the opportunity while she can. She's got the time cushion. We know uh, back at 143 kilometers, it was three and a half minutes to Sadaro. so taking care of business now is Sadaro making her way in to the Hamburg City Center, where she will follow the steps of Laura Phillip, uh, make her dismount off the bike, and get set into her marathon course. And there we go, a very quick break there for Laura Phillip, and then she gets the tri-suit back up over the shoulders there. She'll get it zipped up and ready to go out onto that run course today. Yep, it is time to fly on the Hooker run course as she gets to the gear bags, and then she'll head off to that changing tent and then out onto the run course. Look at that, a beautiful little stride happening at this point of time. Explain the, uh, the change for us. Well, again, they will go into the change tent. She will take the helmet off, get the run shoes on. The helmet goes into the gear bag. Volunteer will grab that and re-rack it for her. Uh, but again, she's got to be quick but efficient here. You don't want to leave anything in the bag. Uh, it looks like she's got all of her nutrition already in a bag. Uh, that's going to speed up her transition. So she can get the shoes on, just grab the Ziploc bag she's got there. Uh, and as she runs out, again, keep in mind, she still has a long run to the start of the marathon, so she can grab all the little bits and bobs out of that Ziploc bag and get them stashed into the pockets where she wants them while she's moving. So efficient use of time there uh, from Laura Phillip. Yep, and as we get Chelsea Sodaro now, we know that she's uh, just inside of the last uh, half a kilometre to go as well. She's going to be getting out of those uh, bike shoes here and then heading into transition as well. So it's going to be a hefty change, but it's going to be a little bit more of a deficit than what we saw at last time point there as Laura Phillip now hits a full stride and heads out onto the run course looking great. You said that you'll be able to tell, you know, in the first moments that she gets onto the run course. What are your thoughts now? Uh, she looks fantastic. Uh, again, she looks absolutely bulletproof out there. Of course, we know no one's bulletproof out on an Ironman race course. But as I said, she's getting all of that uh, nutrition out of the bag, tucking it into the various pockets. 
really hard in this moment. She's She's got all those hordes of fans out there cheering, screaming at her uh, to really control the pace. You can't let the adrenaline uh, get the better of you. She's got to settle right into that pace as we watch Chelsea Sodaro make her exit off of the bike's bike course. Uh, here she goes, opening steps. Uh, Laura Phillip missed this turn. It looks like, uh, yep, Chelsea's going to do the same thing, make that hard turn. Uh, both of our lead women got a little confused with that barrier there. Uh, Chelsea racking the bike, and she will make the same run that Laura Phillip did. And she looks pretty good getting off the bike as well. Just a little ginger there. She's just making sure that she's uh, got the bike racked. And uh, I tell you what, that's not a bad turnover as well. So uh, very nice running uh, off the bike for our second place woman, Chelsea Sodaro, the and, iron rookie. Yep. And again, the pattern held true. It was another 30 seconds from 143 kilometers to the conclusion of the bike. So uh, the gap off of the bike for Chelsea Sodaro Three minutes, 59 seconds. We'll see how she executes this transition. If she can scratch a few seconds back uh, to Laura Phillip here. Again, Laura made uh, made the stop at the porta potty there. So we'll see if uh, Chelsea runs straight on through. But right now, she looks great as well. Looking terrific. Our first two ladies off the bike ride today. Our pro women are going out onto the run. The Hoko run course, 42 kilometres over a four-lap circuit. And look at Laura Phillips. She is wasting no time getting stuck into that pace. And I tell you what, she is uh, really getting after it. There's no... Uh, patience or anything there she's just like in the full stride at this point in time and looking great i mean these two women up front they've been on their own the whole way on the bike ride they they swam together but uh getting out onto the run course now it just comes down to who's going to have the goods who's going to have the stride who's going to have the power and who's going to have the energy well, that's right. I mean, it's a long it's a long way to run, and, and both of these women are going to fall apart a little bit as the marathon um, carries on. Again, nobody feels great in that last 10 kilometers, uh, particularly for Chelsea Sodaro, who's never uh, experienced this before. Again, so far, she looks extremely well-prepared as she makes her um, grab for her gear. She gets those Hoka run shoes on. Uh, she doesn't even bother sitting down. Uh, so she's uh, she's got her strategy um, very quick there, getting the shoes on. Uh, she needs to remember that the helmet is still on her head. Uh, someone's going to need to remind her of that so she doesn't run out with the helmet still on. I've seen that happen before. Uh, but she's uh, she's making good work of it. A pretty good transition in my book. Yeah, I, I probably only would have said that, you know, it looked like she should have sat down because she was hanging onto the bench there. But, hey, you know, do what you uh, are used to and if she's practiced that. But there goes the helmet right now. Into the bag it goes. And on goes the hat or she'll take the hat and the sunnies and head out of the transition there right now. And there goes the bag. And then she'll be straight out onto the Hoka run course. So the Hoka athlete is on the Hoka run course right here in Hamburg. And we got two women out on the run. And waiting for Chelsea to make her way to the entrance of the marathon. Again, this is a very long transition. So as she crosses the timing mat here, it was four minutes deficit uh, to the conclusion of the bike. And as they exit uh, T2, 3.39. So uh, Chelsea Sodaro got 20 seconds on Laura Phillip. I'm guessing that was the bathroom break uh, for, for Laura, that, that 20 seconds there. But right now she is running like she stole it. Yep, just under the Kennedy Bridge they go and uh, back out uh, alongside of where they swam just about five hours ago, just under five hours ago there. And uh, Laura, well, that's where she started her race today and she started it in good fashion by getting onto the feet of this young lady right here. And what a great swim it was by both of these ladies, but very impressive by Laura to hang on there and to get out in the equal lead. Then she got out onto the bike course and what a great bike ride she had today. She was three minutes and 40 seconds better getting out of the bike ride and heading out onto the run. And that is the deficit. Look at that, 340 from 359. So that was a, a makeup of 19 seconds, and exactly what you said. That was probably the bathroom break that uh, our leader, Laura Phillip, did when she got off the bike. So we got our first two ladies out onto the hoka. It is time to fly run course right here at Ironman European Championship Hamburg. And the crowds are building late in the uh, day, right? Well, it's not late in the day, but but it's right just after the, you know, uh, the midday hour here, and we are looking at a great race underway. Great race underway, and we see those crowds lining uh, this marathon course. That will be a feature for the entirety of this marathon course. Tons and tons of support for the athletes out there today. This four-loop marathon course 
um, is absolutely brilliant for these athletes. Of course, we had a chance to chat with um, Laura Phillip, and we're going to get to that in just a minute. But right now, let's just admire this nice, long, loping, powerful stride of our women's leader. She's looking great. We'll have our first, uh, our first split at four kilometers into the marathon. So we'll see uh, how the paces differ between the veteran Laura Phillip and the rookie Chelsea Sodaro as they get underway here on the marathon course. Yeah, I was just taking a listen to the foot speed here. Let's just take a listen to uh, Laura Phillip's uh, foot speed. Well, there you go, Dee Dee. I think that she's got one of the longest strides in, uh, you know, women's Ironman triathlon, that's for sure. I mean, Lucy Charles is a very, very tall and daunting figure. You know, Daniela Reef, she doesn't have quite the, you know, the long stride, but she has the power. She is very, very good like that. And I tell you what, this young lady here, Laura Phillip, is really getting into her stride right now. This is going to be interesting to see just how quick she runs today because I, I'm really impressed with what we're seeing today with this young lady. Oh, no doubt. Uh, considering how low her low was uh, back uh, in the early part of May uh, to, to how well she has rebounded and, and how uh, well she has executed this race, again, just a week after uh, her outstanding performance at 70.3 one week ago, doesn't seem to be in her legs at all. Well, we see now just striding out. Interesting to note that she doesn't have a hat on. So that's, uh, you know, it's that athlete, a uh, particular, you know, um, well, all of our styles are different, right? And uh, if you like a hat, if you don't like a hat, if you're wearing sunscreen, if you're not wearing sunscreen, you've all got to do what's, you know, comfortable to you. And obviously, you know, Laura is, you know, foregoing the hat right now and, um, and that's her thing. But striding out now, it's gorgeous. You can see the sailing boats out there that we knew that we're going to get out there this afternoon. <laughs> well, actually, we're just approaching the midday hour right now, but uh, we can see that, yep, it's absolutely gorgeous here in Hamburg and what a pretty run course that we have. Look at all the, you know, the Sunday goers out there are just walking the paths here. Just a delightful day in Hamburg. Here goes Chelsea Sodaro. Look at the foot speed that we've got going here as well. These are two very, very solid runs. Absolutely. And, and the foot speed, it's, it's interesting the difference in, in styles. Again, we, we talked about the differences uh, between Laura Phillip and Chelsea Sodaro in terms of their bike setup. That has more to do with uh, the, the physique of each athlete. Uh, Laura being a much taller, lankier athlete. Uh, Chelsea being a, a shorter um, limbed athlete. Uh, but we look at the, the run styles as well, and we've got that really short, quick, poppy, powerful turnover of Chelsea Sodaro, and you compare that to the long stride of Laura Phillip, both of them proving to be very, very quick. Very, very quick turnovers, and uh, you look at this, you can see the <laughs> you can see the experience that this young lady has in running uh, before coming into triathlon, for sure, because look at that turnover. When you look from the hips down, it's all about the turnover. When you look at this young lady right here, she's got the stride length, she's got the turnover, and she's got the will to push it. Look at those arms. She's got a great drive. Arm carriage is really nice as well, and I love the way for a tall runner that she is throwing her shoulders into it. She's got that chin tucked down. And I love when there's a little bit of a forward lean, Didi, because gravity takes over. I remember, uh, recall back to her win at the European Championship a year ago. She set out on that marathon course feeling absolutely amazing. And her uh, coach and partner was, was giving her the, the thumbs down saying, hey, put a lid on it, put a lid on it. She's like, oh, no, but it feels so good. It feels so good. Uh, she did say by the end of that marathon, she was not feeling so good anymore. But I can tell you visually, she did not give any indication that she felt any different than she did in the opening stride. And right now, uh, I, I'm recalling that race because she looks just as good to me as she did uh, back in Finland a year ago. Yeah, but it looks like she's shaken off uh, COVID just fine. She's got the legs to get out here at the early part. She's got a half Ironman in those legs from last weekend, but uh, doesn't uh, doesn't look as though any of those signs are, of fatigue are coming through the face or the legs or the pace of our leader right now. That is Laura Philip of Germany. We are in Germany racing for the Ironman European Championship, and she's having it all of her own way. She was in the bike ride. She was absolutely fantastic in the bike ride. She 
He just accelerated away from Chelsea Sodoro just a little bit at a time, but most of the damage was done in the first lap of the bike. And then the second lap, it was a little bit of, you know, Chelsea Sodoro just going into, you know, a little bit of uh, the mode of just, you know, okay, I've, I've, I've got to make sure that I the deficit stays around about the same. She lost a little bit. She was pretty good on that uh, second lap there. So I give that second lap to Chelsea Sodoro for, you know, in Ironman rookie year. That was fantastic job. Uh, well done. But now she's out onto the run course. We've got four laps here. So they're going to get a good look at each other as they make their way around this run course. Four times of 10 and a bit K each time, Didi. How do you uh, plan that and how do you put that in your head, you know, during the race day and you'll be able to see each other those times? Are you going to take a, uh, a split? I think both of these athletes are looking at their splits as, as they cross each, each kilometre or each mile, depending on uh, how they like to pace it again. We saw uh, Chelsea taking a peek there at her watch. They're, they're watching the each lap pace and making sure that they are just nailing the pace that, again, it should feel pretty cruisy at this point. It should be coming pretty easily to them if this is a pace that they're going to be able to sustain I'll say through 30k because everyone everyone's pace sort of degrades in the last 10k but you've got to be mindful of is this a pace I can sustain for an entire marathon and to that effect it should feel pretty easy at this stage of the race Looks easy to me. Uh, that's easy for me to say because I'm sitting in the studio talking about this, but uh, nothing's easy out there on the Ironman course. This course is going to be very, very fast today. And so is another race, just like this one. Got laps on the run. You're able to see other people out there as well. This is the valley of the PR where personal bests and dreams, uh, dream getaways intersect. Ironman Arizona features urban charm and scenic desert vistas, including a ride through Arizona Indian country. Those seeking speed will find it on this flat, fast and world record breaking course. Those seeking a late season racecation will find world renowned resorts and legendary southwestern hospitality just minutes away from the race venue. Ironman Arizona is 90% sold out, so register today and lock in your spot at the start line. Head on over to ironman.com to register today. And you know what? That race uh, in Arizona, a lot like this one, the uh, Didi, when you run around, you know, other side of Tempe Town Lake, it's like running uh, right here alongside of the swim course as well. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, stunningly beautiful. Great crowd support there as well. Definitely worth checking out that Ironman Arizona as we come back to our third place professional female here. This is Manon Genet making her way to the end of the bike course here, trying to get her split uh, and see what the deficit is and how far behind the likes of uh, Chantel Santer, uh, Sainter are as well as Renee Kiley, because uh, that battle for the podium is going to be rich as well. I tell you what, the battle for the podium is really heating up and uh, so too with the bike times because today there was an eight minute, uh, you know, breaking of the record. Uh, Laura Phillip today broke, uh, you know, the record that was set last year by almost eight minutes today, so a 4.31. So congrats to, uh, you know, Laura Phillip for a, such a great ride. 4.35.09 goes out to Chelsea Sodoro. Mar uh, Manon Genet with a 4.47. So our two leading ladies have really really put the hammer down on the last lap of the bike ride. Absolutely. So the deficit for Manon Genet off the bike, 16 minutes, 53 seconds. Uh, that's about minus four minutes. So, uh, so 12 minutes and 53 seconds to second place. Uh, so a pretty comfortable gap right now for our lead. Two women, Manon Genet going to be looking over her shoulder. Uh, she shared the work um, with Chantal Sainter on the bike, uh, but in the, the last, I'll call it 30 kilometers, has been able to distance herself. I don't see any sign of Chantal behind her. So right now, Manon Genet alone in third place. Alone in third place. So the UK athlete just fading a little bit toward the end of the uh, the last lap there. We could, uh, you know, see that the wind was, you know, whipping up out on the on the outer part of the course there, and it was a little bit too much for Chantel. But... 
What will she have left in the tank when she gets onto the run course today? We'll have to wait and see. Won't be too far away from uh, getting our fourth woman across that finish line of the bike ride to get off onto the run course today. But Manon looks really good up on the toes. And, uh, you know, really exciting to see that uh, our third place uh, getter right now looks good on the run too. Yeah, she does again. And if we look at some of her 70.3 run splits, they are not dissimilar to the likes of Laura Phillip and Chelsea Sodaro. So uh, we know that Manon Genet is... Uh, an exceptional runner as well. Uh, unfortunately, just has a pretty sizable deficit uh, of 16 minutes, 53 seconds. And it's another two minutes back to Chantel Sainter, who now comes off the bike in fourth place, 18.49 down from our leader, two minutes down from Manon Genet. So Manon uh, really able to distance herself in the closing kilometers from Chantel Sainter. Yeah, so it looks like, you know, Chantel just like faded a little bit toward the end there, but uh, Laura Phillip kept that pace on. So too did Chelsea Sodaro. Manon felt the pace was a little bit too much on the second of the two laps out on the bike ride as well. But now they have four laps on the run to make it up. And look at this young lady right now. This is Chelsea Sodaro. And look at the turnover right now. This is absolutely gorgeous. It, it almost could be Marinda Carfrey up there, just a little bit shorter in the street tried, but yep. uh, very, very similar running styles. Yeah, very similar statute of an athlete. Again, um, I would say that uh, um, Chelsea Sodaro is, is a relatively petite athlete by size as opposed to Laura Phillip, who's taller, lankier. Uh, yeah, I, I would agree with you, Greg, that, that she looks a bit like Rini. Of course, she doesn't have the same uh, I don't think hip drive or uh, kick that Rini does. Rini is, is, is otherworldly when it comes to her run form, but uh, both looking really good as Manon Genet gets underway here uh, to the cheers of the German crowd here. Lots of applause for all of our athletes out there as we come back to our women's leader, Laura Phillip, who went through the first four kilometers clocking a cool 300, sorry, three minute, 39 minute Ks through that first four kilometers of the run. Yeah, and she looks absolutely fantastic here. You know, the left arm just, you know, swinging out there a little wide, but who cares? When you look at the hips down, you can see the knee drive is right there, and they look at those legs just coming way out there. The, it's just amazing, her stride length. And look at Manon Genet. Her stride length is very, very small, you know, in comparison to someone of our leader right now, you know, in Laura Phillips. So... This is going to be all about turnover for Manon Genet. It looks like that she's getting, uh, you know, a lot of water pouring over her head, so she might be a little bit hot here as we see Chantel. Chantel looks great. She looks pretty fresh. Yep, she does. Uh, just getting those shoes on, adjusting. Again, you want to make sure the feet are getting in there uh, well. The last thing you want to do is have to stop uh, mid-run to adjust if, if the tongue of the shoe or the laces are a bit too tight. Uh, we've seen that before where a lot of the athletes use these quick laces, these elastic laces, because they're faster than absolute, than actually tying your shoe. Uh, but if you don't get that tension right, that can come back to haunt you later in the marathon if uh, you lose the circulation to your feet and also uh, gotta be, be careful in making sure that those shoes are set just right. I love what we're seeing right now. Laura Phillip in full stride. This is amazing. She's just uh, running really, really nicely at the moment. You can see that uh, right up on the toes there. and She's got a nice stride. Uh, you know, the heels are kicking out right behind there. And we've got our next athlete off the bike from Finland. Absolutely, as we make our way here, that is Heine Hartikainen, who has gone past Renee Kiley. She comes off the bike in fifth place. She is... 21 minutes, 32 seconds down. That is not great news for Renee Kylie. Renee was able to hold uh, Heine at bay, but uh, Heine has gone past her uh, since 143 kilometers. And right now I see no signs of Renee Kylie, which is not a great sign for Renee. Uh, still a great battle though, uh, between Manon Genet, Chantal Sainter, and Heine Hartikainen for the third spot on the podium. All of those athletes within about five minutes of each other. So lots of running to determine uh, who will stand on that third step of the podium. Yeah, Heine, uh, you know, uh, was limiting her loss, uh, you know, to our leader at least. But uh, to the other athletes, she seems to be, you know, hanging in there and having a bit of a, you know, a bit of a sniff on the, on the third place there. I think that, you know, Manon's got a work cut out there. She's got a nice little stride going, you know, for her. But uh, Heine's going to be, you know, trying to run it down. Chantel's going to be trying to run it down. They'll all get, to good, get a good look at each other at about the four and a half kilometre marker. But right now, 
now. They're all chasing this lady right now, and that is Laura Phillip, and she is really running well after a solid swim and an even better bike ride. Well, and I said it, Greg, on paper, both Laura Phillip and Chelsea Sodaro match up really, really evenly, and their f split through four kilometers proves that. Again, we saw out of T2, Chelsea Sodaro with a deficit of three minutes, 39 seconds, uh, only a couple of seconds uh, three seconds separate uh, them through 4K. So Laura Philp, an additional three seconds ahead of Chelsea Sodaro through 4K. So effectively running identical paces. Yeah, running a very nice uh, kilometer average uh, times right now. If you want to find out what your favorite athlete is capable of doing or that, what they are doing out on course today, go to the Athlete Tracker and that's where you'll be able to get all that information. There we go, just sitting down there, our Finnish athlete getting the sunglasses and hat on. She could have done that on the run that, to save exactly, about, yep. you know, 10 seconds or so, but now go the, uh, the socks and uh, just like that, look at that. She didn't brush her foot off either, so there might be a couple of little pedals up you know, pebbles on there. And I, I like the way that, you know, uh, Chantel and both, um, oh, actually all the women, you know, got down there and swept the bottom of the foot uh, just to get those pebbles out underneath the, uh, the feet there. Anyway, on go the running shoes. We can see that it's taking a little bit more time than our previous uh, three or four athletes. And uh, just tightening up the shoelaces right now. That helmet's going to have to go back in the bag. Then it goes into the drop area where they will get it back at the end of the day. But there you go as she's running toward the drop there. And you can see that uh, just a little bit more ginger than the other athletes. But look at Sodaro now. She's in full flight out onto the run course and really thrusting that upper body. She's got the arm carriage going. The legs are turning over. Look at this. She's in good form. Takes a look at the, the Wahoo element and just to get on pace. Is the heart rate right? Is the pacing right? What do I have to do? And at this time, she's doing a great job equaling that of Laura Phillip. Absolutely. The wicked turnover here from Chelsea Sodaro. She looks absolutely just fierce out there. Again, she's losing a second or two per K to Laura Phillip, but absolutely uh, standing up to her, trying to match her stride for stride. Very different strides between the top two athletes. So break it down for us, Didi. You know, going into the first lap, you know, obviously you got the adrenaline going, you're feeling good, um, you know, the power's there. Uh, you've got your nutrition that you've had throughout the bike ride. Now you've had to save it up a little bit for the run course here, but you're only in the first lap of the run course here, and then you've got three to go. The crowd is going to have a big part of today's race. I do believe it's going to keep these athletes going through at a good clip but you know pacing is very very important through the first part of this run oh it absolutely is very important and that's where uh slight advantage to laura phillip because she's done this before she knows how to pace it chelsea is figuring out how to pace it in theory based on what she's done in training based on um you know uh, some of her transition runs off of the bike but never done it fully in actuality and, and doesn't know what awaits her through 42 kilometers of running. Uh, she's, she's basing her strategy on theory versus Laura Phillip basing it uh, on experience. But uh, right now, Chelsea Sodaro looking absolutely fantastic. I'm going to go powder my nose so I can look fantastic when we come back from this quick break. Don't go anywhere. This race is absolutely heating up. We'll be back in just a second. Whether it's on the road or in the pool, your activity has high demands. Rooted in sweat and grounded in science, we understand your unique fueling needs. That is why we created formulas just for you, endurance athletes, helping you replace what you're losing and keeping you fueled. And there's nowhere we'd rather be than with you along this journey, because together we are formulated for farther. From the creators of Gatorade, Gatorade Endurance, formulated for you, formulated for farther. 
Laura Phillip continues to lead the Ironman European Championship for our pro women right now, coming up to the six hour mark. Right here, she's been in the lead of this race for five hours at this point in time. And she knows the way around Hamburg. She knows how to win races as well. And she knows how to pace set. At this point in time, Laura Phillip is doing a very, very nice job of her pacing at this time. And now we're going to go back and let's talk a little bit about Chelsea Sodoro because she hasn't been this distance. She's only gone the half, you know, the 70.3 distance before there, Didi. What is it going to take for her to get through this? Is it nutrition? Is it pacing? Or is it a mixture of both? Oh, I think it's a mixture of both. Like she, she's got to be patient. Uh, she's a pretty fierce competitor, so she is chasing Laura Phillip pretty hard, but she's got to be super duper patient. But I absolutely believe in what we've witnessed so far from Chelsea Sodaro. She's been very well prepared for this. Um, she, she acted like a, a veteran on the bike, uh, super mindful, uh, holding her arrow uh, position really, really nicely, uh, staying on top of the nutrition, making key choices that even cost her some time in terms of grabbing bottles at aid stations, but for the greater good of staying on top of the nutrition. So, so far she is acting like a seasoned veteran across this Ironman distance. I think what becomes difficult is that the longest some of these athletes may run off the bike, it, it pales in comparison to actually running a full marathon. Again, a little concerned. Uh, we still have not seen Renee Kiley come off the bike. Uh, this is Verena Walter we're seeing back here in transition uh, in sixth place. She is 28 minutes, 58, sorry, 28 minutes, 58 seconds back. Uh, still no sign of Renee Kiley. I don't know if that's a mechanical issue Renee has had uh, or if the day has, has slipped off the plate for Renee Kiley. We'll try to get updates uh, from the course on what's going on there. But again, I, I think for Chelsea Sodaro, I, she's go, the, like the bike is uncharted territory, but she will have biked that far in training. Whether she's run, she will not have run a marathon off the bike in training. So um, this is truly uncharted territory for Chelsea Sodaro, but she looks like, she, I mean, she's moving really, really well. Uh, she's obviously well prepared uh, and, and she's, she's gonna fight for it, but it, she's up against a fierce competitor in Laura Phillip. Yeah, the two uh, leaders right now, uh, you know, especially Laura Phillip is off to a great start. So is uh, Chelsea Sodaro. You can see that her pace is just absolutely smoking hot right now. So very impressive running by our lead two athletes out on course at the moment. Menage Genet, however, she's found her stride as well. So she's absolutely flying through the course. So very impressive running, you know, from our top three. But do you know what's unfair is that when you compare Manon Genet, who is a great, great runner, to how Laura Phillip and Chelsea Sodaro look right now, I mean, Laura and, and Chelsea are, are making Manon look kind of okay. <laughs> yeah. Right? I mean, am I, she doesn't have the turnover that Chelsea has. She doesn't look have the, the stride the length that Laura does. It at the end of the day, you just have to go back and look at, you know, average average pace at the moment as well. And I know what you're saying about, you know, everybody has their different style. And uh, I generally, you know, just look at the hips down and just say, oh, well, the turnover's there. Look at how many, you know, um, you know, well, same as swimming, you know, strokes uh, strokes per minute as, uh, you know, steps per minute on the uh, on the run course and uh, time spent on the ground. I mean, look at the foot speed, you know, right now of uh, Laura Phillip, you know, for the tall athlete, you know that she's always going to lose a little bit of the, you know, the foot speed because she's so tall. Um, but you've got the gr great stride length and I just absolutely love what I'm seeing, you know, from Laura Phillip right now. I see, you know, a little bit of Lucy Charles in there. I see a little bit of, you know, other athletes as well. And uh, I just love the way that she's running. I just love the way that she's got that forward lean as well and uh, there's no <laughs> no real nitpicking you know with laura phillips she's got everything going at the moment yeah i mean again she looks great so far she's turning in the fastest pace out there on the marathon course looking to extend her lead a couple of seconds per k over chelsea sodaro and chelsea sitting very comfortably in second place with uh manon Genet more than about about 13 minutes back uh again trying to get an update from the course on what has become of Renee Kiley as she has been passed by a couple of athletes now still not in off the bike. 
All right, so as Laura Phillip now is uh, just about to head under another one of our little uh, tunnels and another one of our bridges out there, 2,300 bridges in Hamburg itself. So that's a, an amazing feat in itself, and that's a lot of engineering to be to be talking about as well there, Didi. But uh, right now, Laura Phillip having a great old day here in the European Championship, hoping that she can defend her you know, European Championship right in front of her you know, her fans here in Germany. This is her country. Last time it was raced in Finland and, uh, you know, we she came across with a win. So back in uh, her own uh, country right now of Germany, we've got, uh, you know, Chelsea Sodoro. She wants to do something about that and uh, maybe take the crown herself. But Sodoro is still running the way that she did when she uh, took off on the run just moments ago. So at, uh, a, a deficit now of 350, um, you know, that was a 319, you know, heading out there. So she's losing a little bit of time, every kilometre losing about four or five seconds. Yeah, just a couple of seconds. I think it was 340 out of transition. So it's been about 10 seconds across the first 4K for Chelsea Sodaro. But again, Chelsea displayed a great deal of patience across the bike. She wasn't uh, drawn in by Laura Phillips. She didn't try to chase Laura Phillips. And my sense is that Chelsea is racing Chelsea's race right now. I, I don't think she came in necessarily with the notion that she was going to compete directly with Laura Phillips. She really needed to compete in her first Ironman and see what was possible. And I think we'll be very encouraged to know uh, that through more than five kilometers of running, uh, she's only three minutes and 50 seconds back from one of the best in the world. Both of these women running incredibly fast. Incredibly fast. So Chelsea Sidoro, the new uh, new lady on the block. We won't say new kid on the block because she's got a kid and uh, she's here watching mummy today. So uh, we know that uh, she is the, the new kid on the block, that's for sure. And Chelsea Sidoro from the United States having a good iron rookie race today. She's only three minutes and 50 seconds down on one of the best out there in the sport of Ironman triathlon right now. And that is Laura Phillip leading the way around Hamburg here, 10 and a half kilometers each lap, each four of the laps that they will be, uh, you know, circumnavigating their way around Hamburg today. So this is uh, the bigger part of the city loop. This is where they are going to come up to uh, our next time check and then we'll be able to tell you. But look at Ben Angene just making a way through this run course with a nice little, uh, you know, little pitter-patter happening right now. So Ben Angene, she's in the race as well. Absolutely, sitting. Uh, she made that charge at the end of the bike to distance herself from uh, Chantal Sainter and now sits alone in third place with a pretty comfortable margin uh, ahead of Chantal. Of course, uh, neither Manonjene nor Chantal have made it across the four kilometer uh, marker yet, so we don't know what kinds of paces they're setting, but uh, visually, I would say Manon looks quite good. Looks really good, and uh, Chelsea uh, just. Uh Taking that turn a little bit wide there, but uh, I think that's only because she had so much speed going in there. But Chelsea's looking very good for a you know first attempt at this marathon uh, distance out there today. She hadn't been as far as uh, 90 kilometers on the bike in a race before, so today she's doubled that distance. Yep, she's been 56 miles further than she's ever been before, and today she's going to be running 21 kilometers or 13.1 miles longer than she's ever gone in a race before. So our eye and rookie here in second place is chasing down Laura Phillip, who's gone through 8.5 kilometers in six hours and five minutes of total time right now as they head back out onto the run course. Uh, also of note, uh, Chelsea Sodaro also under the previous course record on the bike, that bag split 435.09. So again, on debut, just record setting performance from Chelsea Sodaro, only Laura Phillip uh, faster uh, on the bike. And that was by, uh, you know, four minutes as well. So that's uh, yep. a great feat, you know, to get done. Uh, Renee Kiley, unfor you know, unfortunately, we don't know what's going on right now. And uh, it may have been a little bit too much for her to, you know, come back after the World Championship just a few weeks ago. And, uh, you know, after a very, very difficult World Championship, going back to altitude and traveling, it's a lot to get done. But take nothing away from Laura Phillip and Chelsea Sodaro right now because they are at absolutely flying around our run course. This is impressive racing and you would imagine, you know, they're going full gas, that's for sure. And they are racing after a championship. They're racing for a title and they're racing to get to Kona for the world championship coming up in October. Well, of course we know that Laura Phillip already uh, booked her plans for Kona in October. Uh, she will have qualified for that event back uh, at the end of 2021 at Ironman Austria. Uh, so that qualifying slot 
all wrapped up. I think for Laura Phillip, this really is her world championship for the first part of the year. Again, she had to sit down uh, from the race in St. George last month uh, with a COVID-19 positive test. So right now she is getting to show not only her fans and supporters, but herself, the fitness that she was carrying into that race. And, and again, only adds fire to her belly uh, for what's to come in October, but uh, showing that she is in, in great form. Running hard up against the fence there, just deciding to uh, run the line that she wants to run today. We're going up to the uh, end of the first lap of the run. She's going to be running into town here, and Laura's going to have a lot of fans down here. And when it gets to the turnaround, it is going to get noisy as all the German fans will come out. Hop, hop, hop. They'll be screaming from the side of the streets here as they make their way back into the city here. Active City, that's right, you're on the home uh, stretch here for the uh, for the laps and this is Hamburg they call it the active city right here but they're on the Hoka run course and it is time to fly and she's showing us exactly that she is again the long stride the camera angle almost just magnifies uh, the long legs and the and the the powerful stride of Laura Phillip and again she's got that impressive arm carriage with those elbows pointing straight backwards uh, possibly a little bit wide a little bit winged but uh, no criticisms from me as she makes her way to the end of the first lap. One down, three to go. Three to go, that's right. And Laura Phillip just making her way around there. She's going to get to the uh, inner part of the city here in Hamburg in just a few moments. One down, three to go. Just like you say, Didi, we're right here at the Ironman European Championship for our pro women from Hamburg. Don't go away. We will be right back. Going full gas for sure. This is Chelsea Sodaro, the Iron Rookie from the United States. She's been on the podium of an Ironman 70.3 event in 2019 held in Nice, France on the beautiful um, Côte d'Azur there just a few years back. It was in the COVID year. Now we haven't been back until just now at full speed and she is now upping the ante. She has gone double the distance. She's doubling down on what is going to be a big call for her as she wants to go to the Ironman World Championship later this year in October. She sits in second place and that would be good enough to get one of those qualifying spots, Didi, as Laura Phillip has already claimed hers and now Laura Phillip extending her lead. Absolutely, Laura Phillip extending her lead. Just absolutely driving force through this marathon course. She looks amazing. She looks so at ease, uh, so easy in her stride. Shoulders are nice and relaxed. Um, she looks absolutely terrific. She will be getting a ton of support out there as she makes her way into the city center, will make her turn and head out uh, on lap number two in just a few moments here. Chelsea Sodaro uh, is four minutes and six seconds back, so through uh, 8K, she has lost uh, another, again, handful of seconds here and there, here and there, here and there. Manon Genet is 17.53 back. Uh, she's got a lead of about two and a half minutes over Chantal Sainter uh, and Heine Hartekainen in fifth place. Those women only through 
4K so far. Look at that consistent rhythm that she's carrying through. I mean, look at that carriage of the arms there. It's absolutely gorgeous. The legs are turning over. The hips are pointed at the target. Our three lead women right now are really showing us a great race today. Laura Phillip is heading through the centre part of Hamburg right now, and the streets will be lined around about the finish line here as she makes her way around the hooker run course here. But Laura Phillip is having it all of her own way right now with just three laps to go in the Hoka run course here. And that might be good enough for a title today, but three laps is 30 kilometers and we'll just have to wait and see. She takes a bit of a split down onto her arm there. She looks at a heart rate, she looks at a pace. I think she's happy with what she sees and there is no change in what we're seeing with her runability. Well, if she's not happy with what she sees, Greg, you and I are gonna have to go have a conversation uh, with her after, after the race, because uh, I don't know what her expectation would be if she is not pleased with her performance thus far. Well, you know, we'll have to have a conversation <laughs> with one other German because uh, our world champion is uh, on the line right now and Annie Hauk is uh, joining us from Germany today. Annie, how's it going? I'm fine. I'm not a champion, but I'm so watching it from there. Oh, it's so great to have you, Anne. And, uh, you know, you are the current Ironman world champion, you know, from Kona, and uh, it's going to be exciting to get back there. But just give us a good, uh, you know, a little snapshot of what you're thinking about Laura's race right now, you know, having COVID just a few weeks back, doing crash cow last weekend, and now she's looking pretty good. Yeah, she does an amazing race. I, I'm really happy for her because I was infected with COVID myself, and I know what it goes through. You never know. Does it have any effect on your performance? But uh, I mean, watching her, it, it's pretty amazing. And I think she used um, um, Kreichgau as a good warm up, and now she's like flying. So it's amazing to watch her. Annie, let me ask you this. You had a tremendous performance last month at the 2021 Ironman World Championship in St. George, taking home third place. Two questions for you about that race. Number one, first opportunity to have an Ironman World Championship not on the big island of Hawaii. Tell me a little bit about how you found the course uh, and were you excited to have the Ironman World Championship be in a different venue? Yeah, I think it was quite exciting to finally race each other again. So uh, in the tour, it was an absolutely brutal course for everyone. And, you know, the nerves of um, doing the big races are always a bit different than racing in other races. So the pressure is on and we haven't had the time to compare to each other for two years. So it was a, little, a box of a chocolate for everyone. And I'm pretty happy with my third place. Also, I didn't have the race I was uh, trained for, I was hoping for, but I mean, on the day you have to deal with the, with the stuff you have and I gave it everything. So I'm happy with the third place and two ladies were just stronger than me. So I'm really looking forward to why now. And so what, what lessons then do you take from that performance that will sort of tweak your preparations going into Kona in October? Yeah, I mean, I had a bit of um, problems with my energy intake on the bike, so I was really struggling from the beginning on. I couldn't get any energy in, so I tried to sort that out for Hawaii because it's <laughs> essential to have energy left to run a fast marathon uh, and not being absolutely empty before you even started. So that's an issue I'm, I'm working on at the moment. And, of course, I need to step up my bike performance. And, um, yeah, it was a, a, was a good test to see where you're up to, what um, things you have to work on. And that's the reason why I'm here in Club Lasanda, Lazzarotti, to be stronger in Hawaii. And uh, Annie, you know, going into Hawaii, you've you've always, uh, you know, put down a, a solid performance, the, you know, always on the podium. But, um, you know, on the, when you were saying, you know, on the bike, you need to, you know, make sure that you have the right nutrition and the right pacing. And you've always done well in Kona on the bike anyway. So any improvement is just going to be sort of bad news for everyone else. <laughs> I mean, everyone is improving. So if you if you are the way you are as three years before, you're just not fast enough anymore. So you have to go with the flow, and everyone is improving. The the sport is growing and getting better each year. So if you start like stop improving, you're 
to slow. <laughs> That's the right sport. <laughs> <laughs> so how much do you watch these races around the world? Uh, right now we're watching Laura Phillip put an absolutely dominant performance here together in Hamburg. Do you take notice of those things or do you just sort of shrug your shoulders and say, yeah, she had a good race, but I'm doing my own thing. How much are you paying to, attention to your competitors and how they're progressing through their seasons? I think you have to find a healthy balance. I mean, you of course, you need to know how good the others are to see in comparison how good you are and what you have to work on. But it's not good to like fuck your head around that. So you should stay in your own bubble a bit and do your own thing. And by the end of the day, it's you have to improve your own performance. You can't influence what everyone else is doing. So you have to notice it, take the best out of it, but concentrate on yourself and do the best possible you can do to get your performance up. Well, it sounds like you're, um, you know, you're very fired up about heading back to Kona. You're down there in Lanzarote, you know, trying to use the, the, the heat, the humidity, the wind and everything. Sounds like you're prepared to, you know, put everything out there and on the line in October. It's going to be a great race, but we've got more athletes now from, you know, a few years ago. We've got Cat Matthews that now comes into the picture. You know, yourself, you've got Danielle Reef hitting her straps, getting back to the best that she's ever been in St. George a few weeks ago, you know, and, and, and you know, maybe the return of Lucy Charles. So it's going to be a, you know, very well fought out race. So uh, what's, uh, what's in store for you, you know, down the road and um, how long are you going to be in Kona before the race starts? Um, I, I do the preparation I always do. I mean, I prepare here in Lanzarote and La Santa until the three weeks before the race. Then I head over to Hawaii doing there two and a half. Uh, I think I arrived two and a half weeks before to get acclimatized side to the, the, the heat and the, the humidity. And then I'm racing, yeah. And it's great to see how close the the athletes are, how good everyone is. So it's a really, really stuck field. And you have to be the best ever it, your own best ever to be competitive and that's a great challenge because to see how the women's field is is, is closer now it's it's amazing and yeah it will need to take the best out of yourself to be on the podium again well annie you've been so generous with your time we really appreciate you taking the time to spend some time with us here uh checking in on the race and letting us know how your preparations are going for the second half of your season. We wish you all of the best of luck. I know you've had a busy training day today already, so I'm going to let you get to the business of recovering and getting ready for tomorrow. Thank you, Annie, for your time. Thank you very much. Bye. Well, Peter's saying thank you, Annie. She's probably going to uh, reach over now and get the hyper ice out and get recovered just like that. Laura Phillip is now running into her second lap and she is now extending her lead just a little bit. She's out to about 4 minutes and 21 right now, Dee Dee, and that is a, an increase of about 20 more seconds. So it's around about, you know, 3 to 4 seconds every kilometre that she is gaining over her competition. It is, and again, she if she can keep doing that, that's great. At some point, both of these women will stall. So if... If Chelsea can sort of hold the stall off longer than Laura, I think she could eat some of this time back in the second half. But right now, Laura Phillips shows no signs of fading, still looking incredibly strong. Laura's running a time of around about two hours and 52 minutes on the marathon at this point in time. So that would be absolutely incredible if she can get that, you know, done today. That is uh, world class. You know, only, you know, people like Marinda Carfrey and, and a few others have been able to, you know, hit that 250 marker and, and get right down there. So that's absolutely incredible. And, and let's just hope that she can keep that pace going. On the other hand, with Chelsea Sodoro in a first Ironman race, you know, She's going in a little bit blind at the moment. She's not knowing how the back end of the marathon is going to turn out. She's not going to know how the, the nutritional, you know, plan pans out as well. As long as she stays on it and she's got a good effort going through without, you know, exerting herself, she's going to do just fine. And I think that right now she's in a pace. She hasn't made up time on, on Laura Phillips, so we know that, you know, she's just doing her own race. Manon Genet, on the other hand, you know, she's uh, still in there. She's losing a little bit of time as well. So, you know, it really is Laura Phillips having a, a career day again. Yeah, Laura Phillips absolutely dominant here, and Chelsea Sedaro doing all she can to uh, chase her, uh, unfortunately, in doing so, is losing a few seconds here and there per kilometer, but sitting very comfortably in second place. I don't think at any point 
Uh, Chelsea Cedar is going to be thinking about Manon Genet in third place. She's got such a, um, a comfortable lead over third that it would take a a pretty catastrophic meltdown from Chelsea Sodaro to, to lose second place. Uh, but she's got to focus right now on the experience. She's sort of got to put Laura Phillip. Laura's proven in the opening kilometers here. She is on point. She's on form. Nailed her nutrition on the bike. Everything going according to, I'll say, plan in air quotes uh, for Laura Phillip because we don't know exactly what the plan was. But she is executing a very, very dominant performance here today. Uh, really, really great stuff. But Chelsea's got to keep her mind, as she has almost from the beginning of the bike, on her own race. She can't be comparing herself to Laura. Yes, she'd like to win, but right now what she's gaining is valuable experience in how to pace this marathon. And that's such a critical piece of this Ironman puzzle. Yeah, going through the aid station, you could see that she reached into, uh, you know, the bag of tricks around the back there and uh, got one of those Morton gels out. And down the hatch it went, you know, just anticipating the water stop coming up. So that was really good planning, you know, on Laura's behalf and just able to, you know, continue to keep that pace up at the same time. It's just really impressive how the athletes are, you know, going through their aid stations and, and especially on the run, you know, it's it's always going to be difficult on the bike, but on the run, you know, to keep that pace up and, and to, um, you know, just nail it is very well done. So Laura Phillip is just having a great old time with it at the moment. She's in full stride, full flight across this Hoka run course right now, coming up to that halfway marker in the second lap. Full credit to the cameraman who just held pace there with Laura Phillip holding the camera. That is no easy task. He did stop himself short of running headfirst into the tree. So kudos to him for having the eyes on the grass ahead of him. Uh, but excellent effort from the cameraman there down on the ground. Well done, you. Yeah, he's been doing it all day. He was out there in transition. He was in the first lap of the run as well. But uh, keeping up with Laura Phillip is no mean feat at all. So you can see just on this beautiful run course, downtown Hamburg, <clears throat> just on the northern side right now, into the second lap of the four-lap run course. Laura Phillip is striding out, and she is beginning to open up a very sizable gap. It's coming up over four minutes at this point in time, and Laura Phillip... Looks like she's got one hand on the prize, but it's still early. They're not at halfway on the run course right now, but Laura Phillip is having it all of her own way. Yeah, it continues to look just absolutely fantastic as she bounds and strides around this Hoka Marathon course as we check in quickly with Manon Genet, who sits in third place, running very well. She's got a nice little turnover, a uh, good clip uh, up on her toes. She's got short little legs. She sort of bounces along the top of the pavement like that. But again, we can see the temperatures climbing, athletes uh, taking the water, taking the ice, keeping it cool, under pressure. We're cool under pressure, and we'll be right back. John Moran has, that's a hypervolt. That thing he uses to warm up and stay loose before he throws it down. That thing Tony Finau uses on course between shots. Ooh, that's money. That thing Robin and I use before and after we're on the bike so we can ride harder tomorrow. That thing Erlen Holland uses before smashing it into the back of the net. That thing that's for everyone. The hypervolt from Hyperice. Give your body the daily relief it's been asking for. Back with the action right now, Chelsea Sidoro from the United States in second place, holding that down. She's been in second all the way since T1 here today. In her first Ironman distance race here, she's doing very, very well, holding down the fort in second place right here. As you can see that uh, the arms just uh, flailing across the right-hand side of uh, Chelsea right now. So I think that uh, just a little bit of fatigue might be setting in to Chelsea. Let's just hope that she can keep that nutrition going, keep it on pace, and keep up the great work that she's already solidified in the first two disciplines today. The swim and the bike are behind our professional women in our leading category. We've got our age groupers out there on the bike trying to close it off as well, but they will go into the night. Well, these young ladies here, they'll go into the early hours of the afternoon before they cross the finish line. But Laura Phillip, 
the local lady, the German. She is leading the race right now and trying her very best to starve off the other athletes here as she tries to defend that all-important European title. Yeah, I think that'll mean the world to her getting to, uh, to to claim that title after having to miss the the world championship and really is getting to display the form that she's had all along um, and I think breathe a sigh of relief that uh, while she got knocked down by COVID, uh, it certainly didn't take it out of her and she is right back where she left off uh, prior to the infection. Chelsea Sodaro right now um, holding very, very strong in second place and actually distancing herself from Manon Genet. So uh, she'll be getting that feedback that right now Chelsea doesn't have to do anything extraordinary. She doesn't have to run any faster than she's running right now. She's out there to learn, 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 get valuable experience across this distance, which if everything goes according to plan, she'll claim the qualifying slot for the world championship uh, and be able to put this learning experience to use in October. She will be able to put that uh, experience in October, that's for sure. And I tell you what, right now, Laura Phillip is showing us exactly what she needs to do for October because, you know, like you say, Didi, having that, you know, race that she missed out on, she's extra hungry, you know. It was a title that she really wanted to get after. And we were talking about Laura Phillip going into that race as well outside of, you know, Danielle Reef. We were talking about her outside of Annie Halk. We were talking about her outside of, you know, Katrina uh, as well. So as it, as it turns out, she missed the race. She's here. She's giving it everything that she's got right now. And let's hope that, you know, she can go away and get rested and give it everything in October. Boy, am I getting excited for that already. Manon Genet, however, she is now turning right and getting out onto the second lap of the run course as well. She's sitting a little bit further back at about 19 minutes. So she's losing a little bit of time. You know, to our two leaders out there. So Manon Genet, she had a very impressive bike ride, though. Her and Chantel, you know, uh, sainted today. We're having a bit of a battle out there going back and forth in third and fourth positions. And now, you know, Manon is like, you know, separated herself and the glue came unstuck. The rubber band broke and uh, she was able to, you know, get out into third place on her own. But Laura Phillip, look at this. She's even taken all prisoners right now. The age group men athletes can't even stay with her. It's just really, really good to see. And uh, I think if if that guy is a good runner, yeah, you might want to stay there, buddy. She'll be a good pace for you. Well, yeah, if, if she doesn't kill you first. Uh, <laughs> again, she's through 14.6 kilometers now, maintaining that 350 per K pace. Uh, just absolutely incredible and looking so easy doing it. Of course, we know it's not easy, but she looks comfortable and well in control. Again, Chelsea Sodaro um, doing all she can, but it's just too much on the day from Laura Phillip. But Chelsea Sodaro, uh, in trying to compete uh, with the legend Laura Phillip is, is, is on her way to a, a fantastic Ironman debut in her own right. Uh, she sits comfortably in second, still uh, several minutes, uh, 15 minutes ahead of Manon Genet. Yeah, that's exactly right. And uh, look at this going right now. Laura Phillip hasn't, uh, you know, slowed down one little bit. She still looks absolutely fantastic. The stride length is there. She's reaching back. She's been right on target, you know, with that nutrition today. Look at that little, you know, mixture that she's got back there. And that's in between the aid stations. Look at that. She just does it every time that she goes into an aid station. She gets a good quick squirt, you know, of the Morton gel and, uh, you know, the solution that she needs to take on. And then she gets the... Uh, the liquid that she needs to rush it down with, right? The chaser. And this is the chaser. On the other hand, I'm talking about a chaser for gels and that being a liquid source and I'm talking about a chaser. Yep, this is the pursuer. That is Chelsea Sodaro right now from the USA rocking it out in her Ironman rookie debut here in Germany in Hamburg and she is giving us a great race, giving us lots of great things to talk about because that turnover is second to none. Look, this is just absolutely beautiful. Love what we're seeing right now. It's got a beautiful little fleet-footed style and you can tell that the, uh, you know, the, I think the stride is you know, maybe shortened up a couple of millimetres or so, but that's just, uh, you know, being a little bit ridiculous on my part. But, you know, just saying that, you know, fatigue will set in, distance will get you, and just stay on pace and stay on nutrition. Yeah, well, the stride may have shortened ever so slightly, yeah. and I think you're nitpicking just a little bit. Probably. But it, the, the turnover has, has, has endured. So she is still turning over at a really, really good clip, um, still... Uh, got the great arm carriage, still the presence of mind. She's checking her splits. Uh, she's relaxed in the face. She is getting a little uh, pink in the cheeks, which to me says it's getting 
uh, warmer out there, but uh, taking advantage of all of those aid stations uh, right now. Laura Phillip, the only one through 14.6 kilometers waiting for Chelsea Sodaro back at 10.4K. The deficit was four minutes, 21 seconds. So waiting to see what Chelsea Sodaro can put together through 14.6 Ks. Uh, again, she's been losing about 20 seconds um, every timing mat. So every four or five K, she's losing about 20 seconds to Laura Phillip, but is also simultaneously extending her lead over Manon Genet. As uh, our leader now is around about halfway into her second lap there, she'll be closing in on that 21-kilometre marker coming up here pretty soon, but it's six hours and 31 minutes into our race right now. We'll have to be looking at a race record here for Hamburg for sure because Laura Phillip is really showing us a great day and just exactly what athlete she is, and that is one of the best in the world. And I'd like to see, you know, Chelsea, yep, she is definitely... You know, drawing those tangents, which is really smart. I love what she's doing at this point in time, just hugging those turns and, and uh, you know, those corners here right now. Looking down at the watch and that, so I think that she's got all of her wits about her. She knows exactly what's going on. She's with it. Her nutrition is seeming to be on plan right now. Her pace certainly is. And, you know, going into the second half of the marathon, that's the business end of that discipline, as we always talk about the bike ride as well. But look at that turnover. Absolutely gorgeous and... Um, Things are happening up front in the first two. Yeah, absolutely. As uh, Manon Genet makes her way through 10K, she is 19, uh, 29 down and sits about 15 minutes still behind Chelsea Sodaro. So uh, Manon Genet, just as Chelsea Sodaro is losing a couple of seconds per K, Manon Genet losing a couple of seconds per K to Chelsea as well, but all three women running incredibly well. Yeah, and it's interesting to see, you know, the kilometre times right now. It looks like, you know, Laura Phillip has, <laughs> she's been very, very consistent. She was running at about a 252 pace. Now it's down to about a 251 pace, uh, which is amazing. I mean, she's been very, very consistent with the pace so far, and that's fantastic for her to know that, you know, going through this race, she's, uh, <sighs> you know, still sticking on, you know, the right uh, the right pace. Somebody needs to tell Manon Genet that these aid stations are actually staffed with our brilliant volunteers. She's going into each aid station as a self-serve. Uh, there's, there's volunteers standing there with cups. They're even labeled with what they're holding, which couldn't make it simpler for the athletes. But I think Manon Genet is in her own little world. Uh, she's darting behind the volunteers to go to the table herself. Uh, she wants to self-serve it. Yeah, in all fairness, you know, there was a couple of people in there as well. You know, some of the athletes just approaching that uh, table. So, it, you know, in, in the on the run especially, I... I'm giving her a pass on that one, but uh, yeah, anyway, but we do have fantastic volunteers. There's always a couple of thousand volunteers at all of our Ironman races around the world. And you know what? Our our sport is built on volunteer base, right? So all of these athletes, they're so gracious. They get out there and very grateful for what the, the um, you know, the volunteers do. And you always see them out there. Hey, thanks, you know, and it's always great to see that. And that's a great spirit of what we have at Ironman Triathlon. Laura Phillip is amazing today. She is really on. She looks great. She's not even puffing that hard. She's got a beautiful, you know, stride. Nothing much has really changed. And and this is just, a, you know, the power of, of what Laura has to offer. And I think, you know, come toward the, the latter part of this year, we're going to see a really, really decent fight for that world championship because Laura now is putting time into Chelsea. Chelsea being one of those runners that we don't know what Chelsea's capable of doing, but we know that, you know, she comes from a great great, you know, um, running background. And now at over five minutes, you know, lead, you know, coming up to that halfway marker, it looks like, uh, you know, Laura's going to have this one in the bag unless something drastic goes wrong with the nutrition. Yeah, it wouldn't appear that she's showing any vulnerability at this point. Still a lot of running left to do. I don't think she's letting herself uh, think about the finish line, but uh, great, great performance. And one of the interesting things as we talk about uh, the excitement as we head back to uh, the Big Island of Hawaii in October for the World Championship uh, later this year. <clears throat> the impact that having a second World Championship event, the 2021 event, take place in early 2022, what impact that's going to have on the athletes? Because I think all of these athletes will race a couple of Ironmans, perhaps, some of them many more than that, uh, but we'll race a couple of Ironmans in the build-up to the World Championship in October. But when you're talking about preparation for a World Championship event, it's 
it's sort of next level. Uh, it's a higher degree of focus. It's a higher degree of intensity. What impact is that going to have? And, and the athletes are almost being put in a position that they're going to have to be smarter to not over race in between those two events. Well, we've, you know, that's a million dollar question because nobody has that answer because people have been turning, you know, what we think is right upside down on its head. For sure. Like, look what Ben Hoffman did this year right. at Ironman Texas over to Ironman St. George, two weeks apart. But, you know, I, I would imagine that, you know, other athletes would look, I think that, you know, by by saying that, that that's one thing. But going into Kona and the, the travel time and the, and the you know, the, the different hours, the different time change and everything, it's a big difference. You know, when you're coming across, you know, from Europe, it, it's got to be two weeks for these athletes, these professional athletes that need to get acclimatised. You know, they're coming from, you know, Europe. It doesn't have the same humidity nor, um, you know, heat base um, that they would find there. And that's why a lot of their athletes uh, in Europe will go, you know, a long time ahead, like three or four weeks, or go to the, you know, the tropical islands like Lanzarote and, you know, Tenerife and, you know, Fortaventura and, and places like that. Even a lot of athletes go up to Cairns, you know, northern Australia and, and train up there in the heat and humidity as well and then go across from there because it's only a couple of hour time change, you know, from over there. Uh, so, you know, to be to be fair to all the athletes, they just need a very, very decent amount of time to acclimatise to get ready for that because like we were talking about, you know, a few hours ago, there is this uh, emotional part of Kona as well that there's a lot of pressure. A lot of the athletes feel the pressure. There's a lot of commitments. They got sponsor commitments, they got media commitments, and they got commitments, you know, to their you know, to their families. They've got a commitment to themselves and that's to keep themselves, you know, in a position where they can have a great race. So you've got to be rested and ready to go. So there's well, a, lot, that, of, I mean, a my, lot of things that come into it. To my point, they're having to do that twice in a year, which yeah. is highly unusual. And I think that changes the dynamic a little bit and it's going to force the athletes to be a little bit smarter about choosing their races between the world championship events. Yeah, exactly. And I think that, um, you know, going into Kona, you, you know, you want to be you want to be done with racing, you know, by early, you know, by early September. You don't want to be, you know, doing any more races after September. If you think you've got a shot at Kona, you need to give yourself a good, solid rest before you hop on that plane and get over there. Look, if you go on onto the plane tired to Kona, then it's going to take you a few extra days. It already takes a couple of days for the body to respond to the travel, to respond to the acclimating, you know, um, positions of, you know, going from one climate to another. You know, a lot of people, unless you're, you're coming straight out of Florida, <laughs> and who can train in Florida at that time of the year because it is so hot and so humid, it's even worse than Kona. So, you know, it's it's a very fine line and you have to have it dialed in and a lot of people have it dialed in. Well, and the, the other thing about Kona that, that is d distinct from the St. George event is that it sort of, it does a better job of equalizing the playing field in terms of the travel commitment, right? For St. George, somewhat of an unfair advantage for some of the US-based athletes that the travel wasn't as arduous as coming from Europe, coming from, South America coming from wherever, uh, at least with Kona, even US-based athletes from the mainland have a pretty significant travel and time change getting to the big island. So uh, it, it equalizes the playing field a little bit in that regard and the challenge in front of all of our athletes. We'll get back to that in a moment. From now, we're going to take a break from Hamburg.
Chelsea Sedaro continues to chase race leader Laura Phillip right now of Germany in the Ironman European Championship right here in Hamburg on a glorious day. And it is all Chelsea Sedaro in her Ironman rookie race. The debutante is getting after it. She may be five minutes down behind our leader right now, but she is having a great first race at the distance. And I tell you what, Didi, this has been very impressive. Oh, super impressive. I mean, as I said at the start of the race, it's a big question mark. We know on paper, super talented swimmer, really talented biker, comes from a strong run background. We know she's got all the pieces of the puzzle of putting them together on the day across a distance she's never competed in before. That's a, a, another story altogether. But right now, uh, she's making it look pretty easy for her Ironman rookie debut. I love it. Um, you know, you say you go in blind and uh, you just take what you get and that's what's happening with Chelsea right now, but very well trained and she's got the pace going. She's got a game plan. She knows how to execute it and she's doing just that right now. Through the water stations they go, just a little bit of respite from the heat that's bearing down on our athletes right now. 23 degrees at this period of time right here in Hamburg as we get up to the warmest part of the day. is coming up in about two hours from now. We're expected to get up to 24 degrees or 75 degrees Fahrenheit in the imperial measurement there. So it is a glorious day here. It's been such a great day to get underway at 6.15 a.m. today. And what a great swim that this young lady had. She led him out of the water in just over 50 minutes, just under the hour today. And it was Laura Phillip that was right hot on the heels, but she had a better transition. Out of sight, out of mind on the bike, and that was toast. Well, and again, not dissimilar. This is this run course in particular is very out of sight, out of mind. Uh, even if Chelsea Sodaro were closer to Laura Phillip, she'd have to be right on top of her in order to see her. Lots of twists and turns uh, in this course through uh, the city center. And so it really enables the athlete in the lead to, to run and hide. Uh, again, we see some of these blind corners. They really would have to be almost shoulder to shoulder uh, for Chelsea Sodaro to get any estimate of any any eyes on Laura Phillip. It's just not going to happen on this run course. But right now, I think Chelsea's mind is all on what she can do on this marathon course today. My guess is that Laura Phillip is out of her, out of her mind, not even thinking about Laura. There's nothing she can do about Laura right now. Yep, I agree with you. And uh, I think it's best put that way and uh, that she stays in that mindset as well because it's no use, uh, you know, worrying about what's up the road that's out of your control. Control the things that you can only control and that is yourself. And here we go with Laura Phillip as she makes her way toward the end of the second lap of the run. Two laps down, two laps to go it will be when she comes through the city centre. One more time there, Didi. And I tell you what, the crowd is starting to build on the side of the road. There we got our Swedish spectators. We've got our German spectators. We've got the Danes. They're all here in their forces today. They are watching a splendid race unfold right in front of their very eyes right now with this young lady, Laura Phillip of Germany. Yep, one one of the superstars on the future of the sport here in Ironman Triathlon. It just so happens to be that she is trying to defend her European championship and it's all going her way right now. It does kind of make you wonder what if, what if she hadn't had that positive COVID test? Where would she have been in the mix in St. George? Again, she is proving here today that her fitness is absolutely on point. Uh, and, and it does make you sigh a little bit and say, what might have happened for Laura Phillip on that day back in St. George? But uh, never the mind, she's getting to put on quite a show here today, proving uh, that the fitness is exactly where it needed to be uh, to be in the conversation that we were putting her in uh, for St. George. Yep, and this is where the fatigue is going to set in, you know, in the final two laps of the run as well. You know, you, you've been out there now for six hours and 45 minutes on the race clock and you're really giving it everything that you've got. The body is starting to fatigue a little bit. It wants to give up. The muscles are now screaming out for more energy and they will get it. If they stay on their nutrition, they're going to be just fine. And today has been one of those days here in Hamburg where it actually is really super nice weather. It's got high humidity levels, so it might have thrown them off a touch, but they are professional athletes and they have come in here with all guns blazing. These two at the start of the race, they were locked together in the swim on the bike ride. They weren't separated for more than, you know, three minutes all the way until the very end. And then it was Laura Phillip that was only able to get, you know, out there just a little bit more than what Chelsea Sodoro was at the back end of the bike ride. But now onto the run, you can see that it's out to five minutes, but... 
That's only around about 45 seconds every 10K. So who knows? It's still a tight race at five minutes and two seconds, but we're going to get our next split coming up here very soon. Yeah, Laura Phillip making her way back into the city centre where she'll cross that 19.2 kilometre mark. But at this point, it would take an absolute meltdown from Laura Phillip, I think, to uh, surrender uh, the lead here to Chelsea Sodaro. For as good as Chelsea looks... Uh, Laura looks every bit as good and, and continues to increase her lead over Chelsea. But great performances from both of these women so far here today. Great performances. There goes one of the turnarounds here. Laura Phillip goes through at 6.46 right at this point at 19 kilometres into the race right now. So we have around about 23 kilometres to go for our race leader. It's full gas all the way to the finish line now. And that is the platform that you need to be training on on the bike ride. That's right, full gas. And Laura Phillip continuing to stride her way along uh, she has not yet been over four minutes per K. So uh, that last segment at 3.55 K, uh, super duper consistent through the first half of this marathon for Laura Phillip. Being very, very consistent, as you can see, the train just uh, heading by here in the city centre of Hamburg. What a great city it is, just hanging around downtown, the cafes and all the great restaurants, enjoying all the German food that's on offer. A very international race, lots of Danish athletes racing, Swedes, the Finns are here in their droves as well. And you know the Americans are over there. There's lots of French, including Manon Genet today in, uh, from France. Uh, she's sitting in... Third position at the moment, a truly international event right here in Hamburg. And the second of those Ironman German races coming up in about three weeks' time down in Frankfurt. And we've got a great lineup on our men's and women's side of things as well. And they're sure to not disappoint just like today. And this is Laura Phillips. She is sprinting toward the halfway mark of the run course here with 21, 22, uh, actually about 22 and a half kilometres to go right now in this run course and that is a decent stride for Chelsea Sodoro as well. So their two leading ladies right now, Didi, are really putting on a show. Oh, they absolutely are. And, and behind them, the, the, the competition is, is good as well. Uh, Manon Genet has put herself solidly into third place. She's got a five-minute lead uh, ahead of now fourth place uh, Chantal saint uh with Heine Hartekainen in fifth place. Uh, Heine Hartekainen is actually about to overtake uh, Chantel to move into fourth place through 10 kilometers. So fourth and fifth place back, uh, just completing their first loop of the run course uh, while we're looking at Laura Phillip closing in at the end of her second loop of the run course. That just goes to show you how dominant Laura Phillip is. She may actually lap uh, some of our top five uh, women's uh, professionals here today. Well, it is ten and a half, you know, kilometers on this uh, this course right here in Hamburg, in the active city. We love it down here in Hamburg, and you should too, because this is a picture perfect day, and it's already been two great disciplines. We're closing in on the finish line, coming up to halfway in the marathon here. Laura Filler from Germany leads Chelsea Sodoro from the United States in second place, and from France, it's Menon Genet in third place, and she is now almost halfway. There's this beautiful moment in time when neither foot is touching the ground. We are free of gravity and weight, moving above the doubts, past limits, when we are light, transformed and hopeful. And if we were to collect all these moments, join them together, well, this is when anything becomes possible. This is when we fly. Throughout my career, people have doubted my ability and I've had it even more so when I've come into triathlon. I think this year will be very different. There will be bigger expectations on me. I love the way that I race. With my swim background, I'm almost in the driving seat from the gun. I'm the person that everyone is chasing. I want to be the best and I'm willing to work as hard as possible to get there. 
Laura Phillip continues to lead the race here, coming up on halfway. She's already done 13.1 miles. Next time she goes through to go out onto the third lap of the run course here today. And when she does go through that, there's just two laps to go around this beautiful circuit. Four laps on the run course today, one on the swim, two laps on the bike course and four laps on the run. So let's go over and take a look at a fighting chance with Laura Phillip. My name is Laura Philipp, I'm 35 years old and I'm a professional triathlete from Germany. Yeah, so um, you're here in the middle of my hotel room kitchen. Um, I brought this awesome rice cooker with me. Today it's um, quinoa with some sort of veggies. Um, close to an Ironman race, I try to reduce fiber and keep my meals very simple, um, but still tasty. Um, I really in, like it worked for me perfectly like this, so I don't have any issues on race day. Um, today will be quinoa with avocado, tomatoes, a little bit of cucumber, some hummus. Yeah, it's easy. You can do it everywhere. I also take this uh, with me even if I fly somewhere and just to make sure like I'm not picking up a stomach bug because I eat something <laughs> in a restaurant that was bad. Um, so last weekend was uh, a great comeback race for me after having had COVID. And it was a very cold race and my muscles, they got a little bit more sore. Um, but today I'm feeling good again. Um, I had my first little bit of an activation run this morning um, and the legs still felt good afterwards. So that makes me confident that Till Sunday, hopefully I will be fully recovered. It's a bit of an experiment to do like a full Ironman so close to a 70.3 race. You need to listen to your body. Um, maybe you think two days of recovery are enough, but if your body is still very tired and your legs are sore, it's clear signs you need more. This weekend, of course, I would love to defend my uh, Ironman European Championship title. Um, it was my first European Championship title I won last year in Finland, um, so yeah, it feels special to come back to trying to defend it. I think it's kind of a nice replacement for the missed chance at the Ironman World Champs. So after the World Champs, it's the European Champs. Um, that's the next biggest thing. So yeah, um, that's why I'm here. I'm not sure about my Ironman um, shape, um, but yeah, last weekend's performance performance makes me confident that I can also perform well on the Ironman distance. Well, she's performing just fine right now, listening to her body just well enough to uh, know that the 70.3 that she has in the legs from Crash Cow really hasn't uh, done Amy any damage or anything right now. She's running along just nicely and uh, I tell you what, Didi, she's having a great day out here and like she said, you know, a little bit of redemption, you know, coming back from the last, you know, uh, race out of the World Championships in St. George uh, earlier last month in May. And, uh, you know, coming here today, just knowing that she really wants to put down a good race and, and solidify, you know, her, her not only her ranking, but, you know, defend her European Championship. And she's doing just that. Oh, she is. And again, she's never going to get that race in St. George back. Um, that's just lost, but she's able to really prove to herself and reinforced to her team that she was on the right track uh, for a superior performance at that event. Uh, and and she, she's making that clear here today as she runs through that uh, personal needs area that we talked about. Again, looking for her bag, uh, taking a second here to find. Uh, they don't appear to have been organized numerically. That is a problem. Uh, that's gonna be a bit of frustration, but again, she dealt with the same thing on the bike uh, when she tossed her bottle, not able to find that personal needs uh, there on the run. Not ideal, not disastrous. Continuing to run into the second part of the run course right now, 13.1 miles down and the same distance to go. And that is 21 kilometers 
on the, the metric side of things as well. Just going through there, picking up a little bit of nutrition there. That wasn't ideal to go through the special needs and not to be organised like that. So, you know, that's something that's uh, going to have to be better next time. That's absolutely for sure. There she goes, just drops it in the bucket there into the rubbish can and continues out there and gets straight back into that pace right now. Here is our next athlete to come on through town, and that is Chelsea Sodaro. They're going to get a look at each other running back out on the course here pretty soon, and Chelsea looks looks down at the wash, just checking up on the heart rate, checking up on her time, making sure that she's just, you know, feeling it and in the pace where she needs to be. So Chelsea about to make that right-hand turn, coming on in for her second end of the second lap, starting out on her third lap. Yeah, Chelsea's still looking real good. Uh, I think the turnover has slowed just a touch, but uh, there we see Laura Philp going outbound. Chelsea Sodaro just about 1K to go inbound, which gives you a sense of, what that timing gap might be back at 19.2K. Uh, it was up to 6.04, so an entire minute uh, given up by Chelsea there. Again, the standard is really high. Laura Phillip putting together a, just a monstrous performance here today. Chelsea Sodaro is still running great. I think she's got nothing to, to fret about uh, but her pace, uh, just not able to, to to hold pace with Laura Phillip. Yeah, both ladies running under the three-hour mark uh, for the marathon pace, so that is uh, pretty awesome running, if you ask me. And Laura is running, you know, so well today. She's running at about 2.52 pace at this point in time. She can keep that up, you know. She's going to go down as one of the fastest, you know, run legs in triathlon as well, and uh, that bodes very well for her, go, you know, going into Kona in the, the latter part of this year because it generally comes down to a fast run after a strong bike. And, you know, we've seen, you know, Daniela Reef, she's broken three, you know, uh, Annie Howe, uh, Marinda Carfrey consistently in the low 250s, and that's what it's going to take, you know, for our athletes to win, you know, Kona at this point in time. If Daniela Reef gets back to the top of the game like she normally is and where she was in St. George just a, a couple of weeks ago, it's going to be very hard to beat her, especially with what she's got. She's got three very consistent legs. She's so strong on the bike. Her swim's great. On the bike, she's like second to none she, and getting out onto the super run. super dominant on the, on the bike. I don't think we've seen her be low 250s on the run, but she's making her way in that direction but for what she's able to do on the bike she doesn't necessarily need to go have there. to be so one of two things is going to happen either Daniela is going to have to whittle down uh that marathon to get closer to 250 or the rest of these women are going to have to raise their game so that they're not uh quite as far behind coming off the bike yep exactly and uh when you see it uh you know with the likes of you know Laura Phillip now you know just improving the way that she is you know race after race just getting better and better and better and uh you know today she's just showing everybody else that she's got the goods you know and what it takes to uh you know podium at the world championships in kona coming up in october as well all right here we go through another one of our little tunnels here you can see the nice uh, graffiti which is probably allowable uh through this tunnel uh no tagging but uh yep we got the graffiti going through there and uh here goes our athletes on the other side coming out into the bright sunshine yep that's right we have a picture perfect day here in hamburg today they swam past this very point uh, about uh five hours ago five and a bit hours ago as a matter of fact and uh, now they find themselves on the run course now laura phillip is into her third lap whereas a lot of these age groupers are into their first lap just getting off the bike it was great to see our you know uh start at 6 30 this morning with all of our age groupers getting underway as well yeah again always such a privilege for the professionals to get to share the course with the age group athletes a uh, little spaced out on the bike there but now uh, all converging onto this marathon course as we take a look at Chelsea Sodaro continuing her absolutely brilliant performance on debut here for the full Ironman distance. Uh, she's about to come through that 21K mark. Uh, she is giving up time definitely uh, more and more to Laura Phillip. Again, running very, very well. Laura's just absolutely running better. Uh, we've seen the stride of Chelsea uh, shorten a bit. Uh, we've seen the turnover not quite as much pop in each step off the ground, but still maintaining that good arm carriage, uh, those arms swinging, driving the tempo of the feet. 
So let's get you caught up to speed on our men's age group athletes out there running along. And uh, Jamie Berry from the UK, he was uh, first off the bike today. He rode a 4.20, yeah, 4.20, which is smoking hot time. He's out there running a 4.22 pace on the uh, the kilometre average uh, right now. Jonas Weller from um, Germany, he's in second place. He was uh, in a good position. He rode a 4.27 today. He's running a four, you know, four kilometre, sorry, four mi uh, minutes per kilometre meter pace at the moment that puts him on a, a 248 pace so that's awesome going from our age groupers today Jorgensen from Denmark was in third um, Hubert from Germany was in fourth place Kindworth from Germany in fifth place and it was Brook from the UK in sixth and then is Wettrich uh, from Germany Larson from Denmark Ashton from the UK and then it was Lemetier from Belgium coming in 10th place so that is it on our men's age group. You got an update for us on our women's age group? I do. It continues to be the German Enrique Gruper who is in the lead of our women's race. Boy, she put together one heck uh, of a bike split there, biking as well as some of our professional women. And she has currently uh, a 10 minute lead uh, over Carolyn Schaffert, uh, also from Germany. So great, great performance there, trying to pull up that. Uh, that uh, bike split was 440, 442.22 uh, from our lead age group of female there. So she is in a commanding uh, lead position here on the run. She is through 8.6 kilometers and running a really impressive four and a half minute K average pace. So uh, great performance from her. Uh, she cleans up that swim a little bit. She'll absolutely be amongst the pro ranks uh, any day now if she so chooses. Yeah, she was only three minutes off the uh, the course record for the bike and was set last year by uh, Renee uh, as well. So Renee went uh, 439 last year, so a 442 from our leading Age group female athlete that is absolutely smoking. And there we go, Chelsea Sidoro just uh, slowing down a little bit to make sure that she gets everything going through that, um, you know, aid station area right now. I think now she's on, you know, I'm not going to say damage control, but I'm just going to say making sure that she does not miss aid station. She makes sure that she gets everything down the belly right now because this is the critical time for an Ironman rookie. You know, we, we're going into... If, you, if you're talking about a marathon straight out, you talk about people hitting the wall. And that generally comes at around about, you know, 33 to 37 kilometres into a marathon. Well, we're approaching those uh, those kilometres right now. We're coming up into that danger zone. So let's just keep that nutrition going. Try and keep a hold of that pace and you will be just fine. But Laura Phillip, she's not having any troubles whatsoever. Well, and again, Laura Phillip has every right to have some troubles because she went through that personal needs zone uh, wasn't able to find that bag. So whatever was in that bottle that she was trying to grab, she's having to, to do without. I did see her uh, quick thinking and, again, experience paying off going through the very next aid station about 20 meters down the road and grabbing a mortgage gel so that she is up on top of her calories. The good news, again, is that because it's a four-loop run course, if they get those bags sorted, she has an opportunity to run back through there before she heads out on the final lap. So uh, she can sort of pick up... Uh, those extra calories, but uh, not ideal for Laura Phillip, but uh, has been cool and calm under pressure. Uh, current lead over Chelsea Sodaro, 6 minutes 33 seconds. So continuing to extend her lead over second place. And again, we have to go back to 14.6 kilometers before we can find Manon Genet, who is sitting more than 15 minutes in arrears to Chelsea Sodaro. Yeah, just choosing to uh, forego all the, uh, you know, hard food at the moment, just choosing to go only go with, uh, you know, liquid there. You can see that she got the water down, she got the Gatorade down, and there was a chance for Red Bull in there as well. So there she goes, Laura Phillip in the lead of the race, and she's doing a great job there. We can see they're coming up on some lap traffic at the moment. That's the leader for the race there in the blue shirt on the bike, just leading our uh, athletes through there at this point in time. And then we got some relay runners out there. we got got uh, an our age group men's division out there just running along. So the pathway right now is jam-packed full of athletes trying to make their way to the finish line of the Ironman European Championship for our pro women here. Has she got enough in the tank to get there and take it back-to-back -back titles? Laura Phillip is doing just that right now. No faltering whatsoever from the German champion. Let's see what she's got. Running down toward the finish line, we're getting very close to the end right here in Hamburg.
Whether it's on the road or in the pool, your activity has high demands. Rooted in sweat and grounded in science, we understand your unique fueling needs. That is why we created formulas just for you, endurance athletes, helping you replace what you're losing and keeping you fueled. And there's nowhere we'd rather be than with you along this journey. Because together, we are formulated for farther. From the creators of Gatorade, Gatorade Endurance. Formulated for you. Formulated for farther. Laura Phillip continues her quest to go back-to-back -back at Ironman European Championships right here in Germany. Yep. We are in Hamburg, the second largest city in Germany, only that to Berlin, that's right. And the third largest port in Europe is Hamburg as well. So Laura Phillip doing a fantastic job on her part today. She makes her way out on the pathway, out toward the turnaround in her third lap. There is four laps that will make up the 42.2 kilometre marathon circuit today here, the Hoka Time to Fly run course. And I tell you what, Didi, this young lady is going to be a force come October. Yeah, it's a hard charge here from Laura Phillip. Really hard to do that. She she had Chelsea Sodaro in the rear view mirror for most of the bike. Uh, Chelsea never more than about three to three and a half minutes behind Laura. So definitely on the forefront of her mind. But she's continuing to just extend that lead, extend that lead, extend that lead. So to continue to put the, 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 the pedal on the gas and, and to keep that pressure on yourself when you're not being forced... Um, is is difficult to do. Uh, again, Chelsea Sodaro having a great performance here, but just not able to really threaten Laura Phillip at all. So Laura doing all of this all on her own uh, and just exciting to see uh, and imagine what could be possible when she's pressed uh, by the best in the world come October. Yeah, I love the way the Iron Rookie is uh, having a having a real dig at this one today. And, uh, you know, Laura Phillip is just out there and she's just got, you know, just everything is really gelling for her today. And, and you can see Chelsea, she's having a great race. It's just that, you know, Laura's out there just going pretty quick today. And Chelsea's still got the turnover going. You know, she was smart enough to slow down going through the last aid station, make sure she got everything in. And, you know, she did that on the bike too. So, you know, she, she knows in the back of her mind that she has to keep on doing that, just like every age grouper in the race as well. That's, look, that's a given for all of our athletes. But, I'm really impressed that she actually slows down and does that because typically, you know, you'll see a, a pro athlete just like, all right, don't worry about it. I'm going to keep on going and, and, and so, so be it. But, you know, unfortunately for Laura, you know, she didn't find her, you know, special needs bag and I'm sure it'll be there next time through. Yeah, hopefully she'll get to swing back by there and uh, they'll have that sorted uh, as we see Chelsea reaching into that uh, suit to pull out uh, another Morton gel, get the fuel on board. Uh, again, that watch reminding her uh, when to take those calories in. She has studied this event. Of course, she's never completed this event, but she has studied it incredibly hard uh, and has had an absolutely brilliant performance here in her debut Ironman. Well, they swam really well and they biked really well as well. So why don't we go back and uh, check out the highlights of our bike course today? And that was Laura Phillips. She was amazing on that, uh, you know, first lap. But in the second lap, she was so strong and she, you know, she extended her lead as she got out there. And it was Laura Phillips first off the bike, just taking a little bit of a wrong turn there. But once she got through into the change tent there, it was the fleet-footed uh, fleet um, Laura Phillips that got out of uh, transition first and onto the run course. Absolutely. She wasted absolutely no time extending her lead uh, as we watched Chelsea Sodaro uh, give chase about three minutes and 30 seconds down from Laura Phillip. Uh, had a faster transition, uh, took back 20 seconds, but that is as close as she's been able to get as once both women were running, uh, uh, Laura Phillip has extended her lead. And then the next one was Manon Genet. Manon getting off the bike course uh, in third place, and she still holds down third place on the run, as you can see on picture in picture at the moment. But Manon Genet was third place, heading out, you know, just closing in just a little bit over 15 minutes down, heading out onto the run course. And then it was the the Finn. It was Heine Hartzikainen came in to transition in fifth place, uh, currently sitting there as we speak. 
Manon Chenet has continued her quest uh, for a podium spot here in Hamburg and continues the very, very nice running style and the pace is right there for Chenet at this point in time. Chelsea Sodaro going through for her first Ironman race right now is hanging in there. Look at that. Those legs are just turning over so nicely right now. She's got a wits about her. The pace is nice. She, she's got a nutrition tucked into the top there as well. She looks down at the heart rate. Everything looks normal. So she She's doing very, very good at this point in time. They're heading out for the second to last time on the penultimate lap here in Hamburg. Yeah, we have joked a little bit about trying to get inside the, the mind of Chelsea Sodaro and what is going through uh, her head as she makes her way around her first full Ironman course. And you said on the bike that uh, while she's maintaining that, that inventory, that to-do list of how's my power, how's my fueling, how's my hydration... At some point in this marathon, uh, the, the giggle in the back of her brain that said, hey, look at you, you're doing your first Ironman, is going to flip a switch and say, why do people do this? <laughs> so right on cue, Laura Phillip again reaches into the bag of tricks around the back there. She gets out the gel flask. She has a bit of a shot of that. She has a, a quick uh, sip of, you know, the liquid going through the aid station. And just like that, she goes through the aid station in a bit of a hurry like that. So Laura Phillip has been, you know, untouchable in those um, aid stations. She's got definitely a method of going through there and she's been spot on each time. Chelsea Sonaro slowing down, going through those aid stations, making sure that she's got everything on board to get herself fueled all the way to the finish line. And this is Menal Genet. She's coming in to finish up her second lap of the run course and head out on the third lap. At 24 minutes down now, so Manon Genet has lost a little bit of time, but Laura Phillip and Chelsea Sadara are running just that little bit faster right now, and Laura Phillip is just seemingly edging her way toward that second consecutive European Championship. And that'll mean a lot to her, obviously, uh, having to miss the World Championship. Uh, I think this is a... I don't want to say a consolation prize because it's a it's an outstanding achievement in and of itself, but uh, able to display the fitness and reassure both herself and her team that she is absolutely where she needs to be at this point in the season as she sets her sights towards the second half of the year and how those preparations will go for her next world championship bid in October. That's going to be interesting to watch. A lot of great athletes are going to be, you know, donning the uh, the fast bikes that day. They're going to be want to be swimming as fast as they possibly can in those deep, salty waters of the Pacific Ocean and that run course in Kona. Yep, it is hot. It can be windy, but it is going to be humid for sure, and these athletes will tackle some of the hardest conditions on earth for that Ironman World Championship coming up in October. But right now, they'll focus their time right here in Hamburg as Laura Phillip gets a beautiful little run style. Look at this. She's pointing those shoulders to the targets there. Everything just seems to be happening happening very, very nicely for uh, our race leader right now. And the biomechanics on her is just absolutely perfect. And look at Chelsea, Chelsea Sodaro. Look at her biomechanics. Everything's really nice. From the hips down, everything is perfect. Just pitter-patter. That turnover is just really, really nice. Arms are tucked in a really good position in the arm carriage. Very, very good. Yeah, again, a moment ago there, we saw Laura Phillip run by her partner and coach Philip Seip. Uh, gave her a little bit of insight. I saw Laura give a quick thumbs up. Uh, not a lot of emotion on Laura's face at the moment. She is uh, well-focused and well into uh, this performance here, but a little exchange there, uh, letting her know that everything is going according to plan. Uh, again, all Laura needs to keep doing is keep executing, keep executing. If she can get that nutrition uh, through the personal needs bags onto that last loop, just a little bit of an insurance policy. Uh, but right now, Laura Phillip has every reason uh, to be encouraged about her performance, as does Chelsea Sodaro. Well, I think she overpaid on the insurance policy because she looks very, very good. So anyway, she doubled down on that. But uh, Manon Genet is uh, heading through the uh, Morton gel area right now and the Morton move, well, she made a move all day long on Chantel, uh, you know, Santa there today. They went back and forth on the bike course and Manon Genet now has really, really shipped out on the run course. She sits in third place. That seems to be very, very safe at this point in time, but I like the way that she's going through the 
these aid stations getting everything that she wants and they're moving across to the side. Last chance going through there and she takes it. There you go. She gets the last chance and over the head, one down the mouth and she is back out onto the run course. So there we go. She's got uh, two laps underneath of her. She's got two laps to go when we've got Laura Phillip now. She's heading toward the turnaround with one and a half laps to go. On the penultimate lap, here is the Ironman European champion trying to make it a back-to-back. -back. Again, it, it looks like yeah, athletes feel differently about these looped run courses. Some athletes love them uh, because the laps seem to melt away more quickly when you have a single than when you have a single loop. Uh, but some of the athletes don't like it. It just absolutely... Um, it, 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 it grinds them to, to have to go, you know, so many times around the same um, piece of real estate. So which is it for you? Do you like the multi-loop multi run courses or do you prefer uh, the single loop? Well, in this respect, I, I think that it's really nice because the spectators really do come out, you know, in force in, in these multiple, uh, you know, lap courses. Uh, you don't have that opportunity in the Ironman World Championship down there because, you know, they have the course set and, and it is what it is. Um, but I think that, you know, in these big city races, it's really nice to do that because it brings the spectators into play and, you know, and it's all about, you know, the families and that as well. I think that it's, you know, great to have that. You know, um, she's on a, on on par for a really, really good uh, fast time today. But, you know, every time that we look at these, you know, times, we look at record times on their own courses. When, I, when we look at, like, a world record, well, there's a world championship record that belongs either in St. George or in Kona. When there's a record, you know, that's set in Hamburg, that belongs in Hamburg, they're all different races. Um, you know, some of the races are point to point. You can't really – there might be a net loss in altitude or whatever it is and elevation gains and losses and, and so on. But anyway – Laura right now has a really, really super fast time happening and we're really pleased, you know, to say that she's going to, you know, she might even pop, uh, you know, 8.30 day. We'll, we'll see. Just uh, time will tell on that one. She's on the way out to the turnaround right now. But this young lady here, Chelsea Sodoro from the United States, she is also on the way out. She's going to get a good look at Laura Phillip in a minute because they will be doing the turnaround and then heading back. And here we have Laura Phillip again lapping some of these age groupers on their first and second loops. Uh, Laura on her way back into town, and she'll do it just one more time, Greg. Just one more time. Yep, one more time around this beautiful course in Hamburg. As uh, yeah, she's got plenty of company out there running along, but it gets pretty narrow, you know, at times to yep. be running, you know, side by side with people as she goes through the aid stations right now, just slowing down just a touch. Not really much to speak of, just there to get that uh, that gel in. That's for sure. And there it goes, the Morton gel into the belly, and a last chance there for water. She gets it. And she will inhale that water and down into the belly it goes and then it'll go straight into the blood system, giving them a little bit of a spurt of energy here as Menagene from France just goes out for her third lap on the run course. She is on the Hoka Time to Fly run course. And look at that. Scream, laugh, hands up. Do whatever you've got to do to loan encouragement for our athletes here because they are now closing in on the finish line for the Pro Women Ironman European Championship. Hamburg, don't go away. We're closing in on the finish.
Laura Phillips continues to dominate the Ironman European Championship for our pro women in 2022 as only one of the age group athletes can actually hang on to her at this fierce pace at the moment. She is running very, very well and just over a 250 pace, Didi. This is awfully impressive. It is impressive. I think that age group athlete might regret this decision. I don't want to overstep. I don't know anything about him. I'm just saying... Enjoy your moment in the camera because uh, you could come back to bite you if you're running at that pace as we come back to Chelsea Sodaro, who through 25 kilometers sits now seven minutes and 54 seconds back. So those time gaps getting larger and larger and larger. It's just that um, Chelsea's falling off the pace a bit uh, and Laura back down to uh, sub four minute Ks there, that last segment, 353 minute Ks. Uh, Chelsea Sodaro now hanging around the 4.15 case. So uh, just the gaps. Uh, again, I, I'm not concerned about Chelsea. She's still running very, very well. She's she slowed a little bit from prior laps, but uh, she still looks very, very well put together, mentally there, um, engaged, uh, taking on the nutrition, checking the splits. Uh, she just can't hold pace to the likes of Laura Phillip. No, this is amazing. This is uh, going to be a dominating performance for sure by Laura Phillip. She, you know, over the last couple of kilometres, she's been averaging 353. So she's actually negative splitting at the moment, which is unheard of. This is fantastic, you know, for Laura Phillip. And, you know, she's going through a 353s, whereas Chelsea's on the 413 pace. Like, every three kilometres, she's going to be losing a minute, yep. you know, to Laura Phillip. So... Hey, no disgrace in that. I mean, this is all about, you know, just finishing, getting a podium, getting a spot to the Ironman World Championship, you know, later this year. So um, it's it's a learning experience. You just so happen to be coming up against one of the world's best right now. And the world's best at this point in time, you know, with Kat Matthews and, and Annie Haug and Danielle Reef and Lucy Charles. And Laura Phillip is a big part of that conversation. Yeah, she is. And she was a big part of our conversations leading into... The Ironman World Championship in St. George last month. Unfortunately, didn't make the trip there, but showing us today that she was absolutely prepared to be there, just had to have a little bit of delayed gratification on her display of fitness uh, on a race course. Laura Phillip continues now, and she's uh, just uh, getting through the run course here. As you can see that uh, the zipper is way down. It's pretty warm here for, uh, you know, Hamburg standards and uh, just making her way around this run course. You can see that the, the turnover is there, definitely strides shortened up a little bit. She's dropping the chin there a little bit. I think that getting a little bit fatigued, as one does, running a marathon in an Ironman triathlon, but you can see that definitely there is a touch of fatigue, you know, just uh, setting in. Uh, with our athlete here at the moment. And uh, I think our age group have popped. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I, he had his moment of glory. Hey, he's still back there. He's holding in pretty well. Yeah, like 40 uh, metres in the space of uh, two minutes. I'm going to I'm gonna guess that that, that uh, maybe he's on his first lap and was able to uh, put on a brave face and try to run with Laura for as long as he could. But uh, that's, a, that's a tough pace setter for sure. Yeah, Laura, look, she's been unflappable today and uh, just incredible. And look at her going right now. She is just getting after it. And, you know, getting into the last, you know, lap and a half or so, you know, in our run right now, she doesn't have too far to go. We, we're going to start talking about a very, very good overall time today. But her run time is going to be something that, you know, a lot of other people are going to want to, you know, see and look at. I, I don't think a lot of the top, you know, women athletes are going to be, you know, wanting to see that time, but I'm very interested to see what happens here because, you know, Laura is going to be in that conversation later in the year. And so too, maybe, uh, you know, for this young lady with, you know, Chelsea Sodaro, um, you know, just, you know, having a fantastic, you know, uh, first first uh, race at the Ironman distance, this is great to see because when you, when you look at athletes like Annie Haug, you know, going to Kona for the first couple of times, a couple of podiums, Jan Fredino, a couple of podiums. A lot of the top line athletes like that have had very, very good results, you know, the first time that they actually go over there and race. So let's see if Chelsea Sodaro can be one of those people that, you know, has a great debut later on this year. Yeah, I mean, but as you've mentioned earlier, that that race in, in Hawaii is, is unlike any other Ironman, just with the pressure, the travel, the obligations, the conditions of the course. The course itself not really that magical, not really that challenging, but when you factor in the conditions uh, that tend to, to face the athletes there, uh, it does tend to uh, compound things a little bit, not to mention uh, the pressure of it being 
uh, the Ironman World Championship on the big island of Hawaii. But as we look at uh, records being broken today, Laura Phillip uh, smashing the bike course record set uh, last year by Renee Kylie, And of course, makes me think to mention our run course record was set back in uh, 2019 by Sarah Piampiano Lord. That record sets at 2.56.21. I think we will see that fall today as well. Yeah, quite possibly, and a couple of records going down here in Hamburg, and uh, these ladies have been setting the standard today here in the European Championship. You know, uh, she was talking about, Laura Phillip was saying, you know, the next best thing outside of the Ironman World Championship is this championship, and that's what she's come here to secure. So she's going to give it everything that she's got today, and she certainly is doing that. She's giving us a lot to talk about. She's an incredible athlete. You know, coming back from a little bit of an illness, which has, you know, been devastating, you know, the world lately in the pandemic with COVID. Um, you know, Annie Haug was saying that, you know, she had it and she took a little bit of time to get over it and get back into it. And, you know, it wasn't so long ago that actually, you know, Laura Phillip got it. She got over it, went down to Kretschkow, you know, last weekend, and she finds herself here in the lead of this race and with not much fatigue in those legs. So uh, a great race it was too. And she was pushed, you know, by Blameth uh, last weekend. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, she, she definitely was pushed. Uh, it, it, what strikes me is that today she's doing a lot of this all on her own uh, while Chelsea Sodaro has been somewhat in shooting distance for the, for, for the duration of the bike. Uh, Laura is really in a league of her own on this marathon course and, and really pushing herself to this outstanding performance here today, one that she will remember for a long time. You know what? I've got a great way of uh, timing yourself in these races too. Uh, whether <laughs> five days or five years ago, the feeling of Iron Man or Iron Man 70.3 finish stays with you forever. Relive the emotion of the finish line with a permanent memento, the Breitling. Endurance Pro Iron Man Finisher Timepiece, featuring the signature black and gold accents of Iron Man Finisher Collection and embossed with Finisher Series on the back, this watch offers precision timekeeping in a lightweight luxury form. It's the perfect way to commemorate your achievement in a lasting and momentous way. You've shown yourself that anything is possible. We're the Breitling Endurance Pro. As a reminder of this, anytime. Discover more online at ironmanstore.com. Did you get them to send you one of those watches, Greg? It's a, it's Haven't a nice finished looking, an Ironman race a in a nice long time. It's a nice-looking timepiece, my friend. Oh, nice-looking timepiece. It really is. Sensational, just like this young lady on the screen right now. She's been nothing short of amazing all day long. Having a fantastic swim, swimming right on the feet of Chelsea Sodoro. If you're just joining us, she led the whole bike ride. Yep, it was windy on the way out. It was a tailwind on the way back in. Two laps on the bike and four laps on the run. We're in the third lap right now, so we've got one and a bit laps to go for this young lady right now. This is Laura Phillip trying to defend her Ironman European title, and she's doing just that. Chelsea Sodoro now is eight minutes behind and just losing pace a little bit each kilometer. Yeah, again, Chelsea's still running super duper well, just Laura being so, so strong. Her pace hardly fading at all. If anything, there are segments of the course where she's maintaining uh, the same pace that she did in the opening laps of this four loop marathon course, just so steady, so strong, so consistent. Uh, very little degradation in, in pace here, in power of her stride. Uh, just putting on an absolute uh, master class here in how to execute uh, an Ironman race course. And I love how she's got the open road. She's in first place overall in this race. And it's great to see that our women can have their own race in a championship format and have the road all to themselves. Look at this. Laura Phillip is in the lead of this race overall. She's going to get there to the finish line in that way as well. Chelsea Sodoro running along in second place. That's great for her at this point in time. She hasn't got the experience like, you know, our, um, our leader, uh, in Laura Phillip has at this point in time. She will get there. This is her first time at the distance, and she's doing a great job. Yeah, she is. I'll be curious to hear her thoughts after the race on, uh, on the, the highs and lows, the elation and the, uh, the, the utter shock that, oh, my gosh, this Ironman business is absolutely bonkers. Uh, but she uh, was very, very well prepared and is putting on uh, an excellent showing here today very safely into second place. 
Into second place she is. She's been there for quite some time now, six, uh, six plus hours in second. And it's been Laura Phillip that's been dominating out front since the start of the bike ride when she got out of the swim, which was on Chelsea Sidoro's feet. She just accelerated. She knew the Sidoro was there. And it was the first 10 kilometres that she put the hammer down, was able to establish a 30 second lead. Then every other kilometre was a second here, a second there. And it was just enough to build some momentum and just you know, put a little bit of doubt maybe into Chelsea Sidoro's, you know, mind. But there was a little bit of bobbling here here and there for both of them. You know, in the early going, it was Laura Phillip who lost the water bottle. And then it was um, Sidoro whose, you know, shoe came out of the pedal. So there was a little bit of, you know, mishaps happening all over the place. So like you say, Didi, it's never over until the finish and you've got to keep your wits about you the whole time. Concentration is at a high level. Have you ever gone through a race, you know, where you haven't been on the whole time? I'll answer that when we come back right after this break. Okay. Moran has, that's a hypervolt. That thing he uses to warm up and stay loose before he throws it down. That thing Tony Finau uses on course between shots. Ooh, that's money. That thing Robin and I use before and after we're on the bike so we can ride harder tomorrow. That thing Erlen Holland uses before smashing it into the back of the net. That thing that's for everyone. The hypervolt from Hyperice. Give your body the daily relief it's been asking for. And here we are back as we look at Laura Phillip absolutely dominating this race course today. She is through 29.7 kilometers, still holding sub four minute Ks as she continues to drill this marathon race course, extending her lead over the Ironman rookie sitting in seven, second place. That's Chelsea Sodaro, who is now uh, more than eight minutes uh, behind and Laura just in a league of her own. In the zone, as we say, and Greg, before the break, you had asked, uh, is it possible to maintain that focus throughout the entirety of an Ironman race? I think, again, the focus shifts. Uh, you want to keep the mindset focused on the race. Of course, you don't want to be thinking about, hmm, what's for dinner? Or, hmm, what am I going to do tomorrow? Uh, but different things will come into focus throughout the day, whether it's uh, your nutrition plan, keeping on that nutrition plan, whether it's coming back to... Uh, technique, uh, technique-based things. Hopefully that presence of mind stays on things focused in the race. Uh, but yeah, the mind does wander from this, that, and, and the other thing. Uh, and moments here and there where maybe you are thinking about what sweet treat you're going to have after the race. <laughs> Yeah, well, you, I call it in Australia going on walkabout is <laughs> where you sort of lose your mind a little bit. And this is the point in time where, you know, Laura Phillip just needs to, you know, think about the, the next uh, 10 and a half kilometre stage because she's at a point right now that she's got enough lead and, and everything's, you know, heading in the right direction for her. So just think about, you know, the, the best 10K that she's had, you know, on a T run or something like that and, and a pace and... You know, is she going to think about, like, you know, just backing it off a little bit too and just saving the legs a little bit? So I, I don't really know. how. What would you do? I, I don't think there's any reason. I think Laura Phillip is out there to, to discover what might have been possible in St. George, see where the fitness is, uh, basically grade the preparations that they had going into St. George so that they can learn from it. As we talked to Annie Haug earlier in the race, uh, you learn from these races and figure out what you need to twist and tweak uh, going into the next big performance. And uh, for Laura Phillips, that, of course, next big for performance will be the Ironman World Championship in October. So uh, what she's seeking to see right now is where the fitness is. Obviously, they had a little bump in the preparation. Um, she had said before the 70.3 last weekend, she didn't even really taper because she didn't have much to taper off of uh, because she hadn't been able to do the volume of training due to her illness. Uh, so she is currently building momentum, but they want to learn what they can twist and tweak before they get to the Big Island in October. Yeah, it might be uh, learning a lot today. I think that, 
you know, with the performance that she's throwing down, maybe a little bit more rest is going going to go a long way. And I, I know that a lot of people, you know, go into Kona and, and, and think that, you know, you've got to be skinny, you've got to be fast and, and all these different things. Well, I think that you need to remain strong. I think you also at the same time need, <laughs> you need to be, to be rested. fat and slow. Not skinny and fast, fat and slow. I'm just kidding. I'm no, kidding. No, not that at all. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, so anyway, uh, I think that you just need to go in there a little bit rested as well because, you know, you can go there all well and good and be in great, great shape. But if you cooked yourself a little bit too much before you get there, it's very hard to get that back, especially, you know, when you're inside of 10 days or so over there when you go into, you know, proper taper mode as well. So... But anyway, she continues to be strong here today on the Hoka. Time to fly run course. She now heads into the last lap of the run course here. And we can see just running through the inner part of Hamburg City right now. Laura Phillip has dominated this bike and the run section today. She had a little help from Chelsea Sodoro on the swim, but now she is going to go out there and start the last lap in first place. She gets out there to try and defend her European Championship. And it looks like it's going to happen today. She's only got 10.5 kilometers to run and Laura Phillip will defend her title. Look at this. Uh, what a great performance. What a great boost she's getting from these crowds now that are out there lining this race course. These German fans, these triathlon fans, these uh, Laura Phillip fans. So all of them out there uh, loaning all of their energy to uh, this wonderful champion in her outstanding performance here today. Uh, the cheers of this crowd are going to carry her through this last lap on this Hoka Marathon course. It's a sports crazy country, Germany is, and uh, she's going to go, go back in for that personal needs bag again. They got it organized for her now. Uh, there she goes. Someone's going to hand it right off to her. Uh, she looked for that again last lap. If you didn't see it, uh, bags weren't organized. Uh, she kept calm under pressure, uh, but now she's got those calories on board that she wants for this last lap, the final 10k here at the Ironman European Championship in Hamburg. Yeah, that's exactly what she needed. And uh, it was the gel flask that, you know, she was uh, looking for before. So it was the Morton gel, uh, you know, that she really needed to get into the system there. She's got a little system herself. Whenever she sees or comes up on a an aid station there, she always reaches around for the flask. She gives it a good old shot there and a good old squeeze. And then she gets on with it. She goes through, she gets that first possible container of water. And then she downs it. And then it is diluting you know, with with the gel as well. So very, very smart thinking from our race leader right now. She takes the sunglasses off. She takes a sweat from the brow there. Sunglasses go back on. She is stealth going into the last lap of the run. Only 10 kilometers remain between her and the finish line of becoming the European champion for a second time in successive years. Last year in Finland, this year on home turf in Germany. And I think what we've seen from Laura Phillip today is just to, to not panic in an Ironman race. Again, we've seen Laura Phillip have a couple of problems out there on the race course. She bobbled her bottle. She launched it uh, on a cobblestone turn, uh, lost that opportunity, was able to somehow get the bottle back. Uh, again, here through the personal needs zone uh, at the halfway point, uh, couldn't find her bag, had to go a whole additional 10 kilometers before she could get her hands on it. But kept calm under pressure and realized every problem has a solution. She wasn't able to get uh, her personal flask, but was, was able to absolutely lean on those Morton hydrogels on the course, didn't skip a beat, went right to the next aid station, picked up the calories she need and carried on with it. So as we see Laura Phillip now, she is now into her last lap of the run course as we see just overtaking some lap traffic here in Hamburg just after the midday hour here. And we are now closing in on the run course, the Hoka run course with about nine and a half kilometers to go. It is Laura Phillip heading toward the finish line.
Back with our second place finisher right now. She stands at about 10 minutes down from our leader heading on to the last run lap right here in Hamburg as we see the Ironman European Championship. Hamburg coming down into the last lap. Our first place, Laura Phillip, has already gone through. The German has. This is the American now. Chelsea Sodaro just heading out for her last lap. And then it will be Manon Genet, but it's all Laura Phillip today. But we see Sodoro here just coming through the thick crowds of the local people here of Germany. They have come out in Hamburg in their droves today. They absolutely love triathlon here. A big triathlon city. And as we can see, that Chelsea Sodaro just slides slightly tying up a little bit. You can see that stride just tightening now. Yeah, you can see it. She's just not getting the same uh, hip extension that she was getting before. Definitely not getting the same pop off the ground. She's still willing herself forward with that arm carriage, but those arms now swinging a little bit more haphazardly across the center of her chest. Uh, the arms a little bit lower as well in their, in their carriage. But, hey, she's holding it together well. This is the first time she's ever done this, and uh, she's doing a great job. A great job indeed through the active city right here in Hamburg. You can see that now Chelsea Sodoro, she's going to go up to the Hoka, the time to fly section there, and that will signal one lap to go. But 10 minutes down on our race leader right now, and she is not laying down whatsoever here. Laura Phillip is putting in a big effort, even with about eight and a half kilometres to go here. The German is really getting after it. She's going to put down a very fast... You know, overall time today, and that is going to be somewhere maybe in the sub 830s. We'll just have to wait and see. We will have to wait and see, but gosh, Laura Phillip looks so good still. Um, again, we'd have to be super nitpicky to pick anything apart by uh, about her form. Uh, again, yeah, the stride has shortened a little bit, but still just looking nice and long, super fluid as she is well into her final lap here on this Hoka Marathon course. Yep, just taking the uh, prisoners right here that are the age groupers of our race at the moment as she is just scorching away through the field here as she has one lap to go and uh, the others there just heading out on their first, second and third laps right here in Hamburg and it's been an enjoyable day. We've been able to watch all the action from 6.15am today and a great swim it was for Chelsea Sodaro and this young lady here, Laura, Laura Phillip was amazing. She just got onto the feet of Chelsea Sodaro and just stuck there like glue, but it was the transition area that she'd come away with it. She put on about a 15 second gap on our, um, you know, leader at the time. And that was Chelsea Sodaro, who's just slowing down a little bit to reduce to a walk going through the aid stations here. So just struggling a little bit at the moment. She just needs to get that nutrition in and keep it going. Forward progress is all we need. Forward progress is all we need. She's got a super comfortable lead over Manon Genet in third place, but she's got to keep running. Uh, she absolutely cannot be reduced to a walk. So uh, through 29.7 kilometers, she's nine minutes, 53 seconds down on Laura Phillip, but uh, back at 25.1 kilometers, she still had about a 17 minute lead on Manon Genet. Again, that seems like a lot, but if she starts walking, that will disappear very, very quickly. So she's got to keep the calories coming in. Again, she's uh, getting that band indicating she's on her way to the last lap, uh, but we can see the struggle start to be very real for Chelsea Sodaro. Going to be a hard last 10 and a half K here coming up in uh, Hamburg. We can see that now Chelsea Sodaro was reduced to a walk going through the aid station there, but I think that that was on purpose just to make sure that she was getting everything that she needs to get into the system. But for this young lady, there is no turning back. There is no slowing down down and as a matter of fact she has kept that great pace going along all day long here she has been fantastic in her pace setting at this point of time and she's coming up on two abreast running along the path here right now come on spread it out wide there guys get into single uh line there and allow our lady to go through in the lead here that is laura phillip and she is absolutely smoking she is smoking, and that, that, those are some of the things I was referring to earlier when I said that, that you know, little instances that, that didn't seem like that big a deal at the start of the race, uh, things like congestion on the race course, 
when you get this deep into the Iron Man, they can become annoying, but not for someone like Laura Phillip. What a pro, uh, just staying calm, working her way through the lapped traffic. Uh, she's got her escort cyclist there trying to clear a path for her. Uh, but again, on a four loop run course, it's great because the athletes get to see each other, engage with each other. What a thrill for these age group athletes to see Laura Phillip run by. Uh, maybe a little bit of envy as they're starting off on their first or second lap, uh, knowing that Laura Phillip is in her final lap. Uh, but what a great, great uh, opportunity for them as we take a look back and check in with Chelsea Sodaro, who still moving forward, uh, but again, not getting the same return off the ground, uh, much shorter stride, very much upright, uh, those arms not doing it for her in terms of the momentum they were carrying for her uh, at the onset. But she's got less than 10 kilometers to go. She's got a healthy margin to third place. Just needs to keep it together and keep on running. Yeah, and around about this time, you know, her, her legs are starting to feel like bricks. And it, look, it happens to all of us sure. in an Ironman race, in the marathon. Uh, those legs have been working so hard. And let's go back to the bike ride here because it's a very, very flat bike ride. And we we're saying that there's no rest in this bike ride because you have to keep that pace going. You have to keep that momentum happening. There is no hill, you know, to go down the hill and have a little bit of a rest and get your breath back and rest those legs, shake them out a little bit. You've got to keep that momentum going the whole way. And there was only one person that was able to do that today, and that was Laura Phillip. And you can see what she's doing out onto the run course right now. And and she's just having a great day out there. But for Chelsea Sodoro here, she's going to learn, you know, that was the pace that she could handle. She did it her own way. And, you know, she's going to learn that uh, maybe I need to change my nutrition or my pacing or something different about it. But, you know, she hasn't been this uh, distance before. So we've got to give her a lot of credit to be hanging in there and doing it tough like she is at the moment and just um, hanging in there. Hanging in there, but someone who's not just hanging in there is this woman right here, Laura Phillips. Man, she is still hard charging deep into the marathon miles now. She is approaching the 35.7 kilometer mark where she'll make the final turnaround and head for home at this Ironman European Championship. Uh, this is the first time uh, in quite some time I've seen Laura Phillips' splits be in excess of four minute Ks, but at 4.13 and still looks uh, like she's charging very, very well. Yeah, there are, uh, you know, turns on the course as well. So that's going to slow them down a little bit. You know, when they go around those, you know, turns on the Hoka time to fly run course, there was a couple of turns, you know, within the uh, turnaround area where they, you know, th they are in town uh, in Hamburg itself. So that's where it'll slow down a little bit. Now she'll hit a strap. So she got straight sailing out toward that four and a bit kilometres where they do the turnaround at that point, then they go out to the second turnaround point, and then they will be coming back into Hamburg itself to finish off the run today. But it's been a great day. The sun is shining down here. It's heating up in Hamburg, and that is Chelsea Sodaro from the USA finding the going a little tough in the last lap of the run here. Does she have enough in the tank to get to the finish line? We'll find out. On the other side of the break, don't go away. Laura Filler from Germany leads the Ironman European Championship. There's this beautiful moment in time when neither foot is touching the ground. We are free of gravity and weight, moving above the doubts, past limits. When we are light, transformed and hopeful. And if we were to collect all these moments, join them together, well, this is when anything becomes possible. This is when we fly. Throughout my career, people have doubted my ability and I've had it even more so when I've come into triathlon. I think this year will be very different. There will be bigger expectations on me. I love the way that I race. With my swim background, I'm almost in the driving seat from the gun. I'm the person that everyone is chasing. I want to be the best and I'm willing to work as hard as possible to get there. The run form of our leader, Laura Phillip, hasn't wavered not one little bit on this Hoka run course here today. And we just got information of our last year's second place finisher. That was Renee Kiley of Australia. She's double flattered and she is out of the race. Yeah, that's a bit of heartbreak. Uh, it's always frustrating 
You know, it's one thing when the body fails you in attempting an Ironman, but when it's in a mechanical issue like that, oftentimes uh, even the pros will carry a spare, but it's very rare you'll have somebody with two spares. So when you have that double flat situation, uh, there's unfortunately not much you can do. And my heart goes out to Renee Kiley, but she will live again to battle uh, another day for sure. Uh, I think her intentions are to stay over in Europe and do some racing over there. So we will see her out on a race course very soon. And also, we got a special guest joining us uh, as well. She raced last weekend up against this young lady that we're looking at right now, Laura Phillip. And this will be Daniela Blemeth and uh, joining us from Germany out there today. So, Dan uh, sorry, Diana. Um, sorry, Daniela. I've got the, got everything mixed up today, haven't I? <laughs> sorry, <laughs> da Daniela. How are you today? You recovered from last week? Hello, yeah, uh, thank you for the invitation today. Um, yeah, I have recovered. Um, I just got back from my long run, uh, Sunday run. So I, yeah, I, I watched the last, uh, say, five to ten minutes, but, but um, yeah, I haven't seen much of the race, unfortunately, but um, yeah, I had a look into the checker and... Uh, so yeah, they while, seem to while be you say, really uh, Danielle, you have recovered from last weekend, could you fathom uh, towing the start line for a full Ironman just one week after your 70.3 performance last weekend, as we're seeing Laura Phillip do here today? Well, this is quite a tough uh, race program, I think. Um, I also had uh, yeah, thought about it to do uh, middle distance, and then two weeks after, I was thinking about um, doing Ironman Hamburg, but... Yeah, we changed our minds and I did like a, a race block, so two middle distance races uh, in one week. So I did um, uh, the championship race in Samarine and then one week after um, it was the Ironman 70.3 Kreichgau last week. And now I'm preparing for Ironman Frankfurt in, in three weeks. So, yeah, it's it's quite an, uh, quite a, yeah, how to say, a strong uh race schedule and apparently it, it suits her well so she's she's really fast on the well, course today. Well you have today. a pretty strong race schedule yourself you took the win at Ironman South Africa earlier this year so talk about your progression from the race in South Africa to what you hope to achieve in Frankfurt and then in turn uh, what you hope to carry with you onto the big island in October. Yeah, well, at uh, the Ironman South Africa, the first um, most important goal was for me to to get the Kona slot and to have yeah have a race. Uh, like uh, it was eight months after having my second uh, child, so this was yeah really an experiment how to get back back to racing. And apparently, or yeah, it it, it was uh, the the hardest part was was the run in the end and. After that, we we thought um, I would not have to do another long course, but um, I think it it will give me more confidence um, because I think when you want to be competitive in Kona, you should run yeah at least somewhere around three hours, and that's why I want uh, I want to do another or want to give myself another chance. <laughs> so um, we took uh, yeah this uh, decision to make. Like uh, a race, of course, is always a good preparation for for another race. So we took this uh, chance to make, uh, yeah, like a race block with uh, the two middle distance races, and now the other long long distance in in three weeks. That's the plan. Yeah. So good. We've been talking a lot about Chelsea Sodaro, who is another mom, iron mom out on the race yeah. course. You, of course, have had now your second child. So uh, you're a veteran at juggling the demands of motherhood and your Ironman training. Uh, how, let me ask you this, and it's a, it's a too broad a question, but how in the heck do you do it? <laughs> <laughs> Well, I think um, children, uh, yeah, is, is the best, simply the best to give you the balance. Like um, you are, of course, the training is tough and um, it's it's all, yeah, kind of organization. So you have to, of course, be very disciplined and, and structured in, in your daily life. But I think, um, yeah, the kids give you the kind of... Um, balance and uh, like easy good recovery kind of <laughs> like uh, not 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 too much sleep but um <laughs> they give you um yeah the the good feelings and um i just i wouldn't want it uh, any other any other way it's uh 
I really, I'm, I'm still kind of um, finding back my my old uh, race routine. So I have, I haven't found that <laughs> yet quite, but um, uh, it's it's all about the progress, and um, I try to be, yeah, every better in every race, um, be be a better version of myself. So it's really motivating to to show my kids that it's possible to actually live my dream and that's a big motivation well i'm sure they're super proud of their mom and and you're showing them truly that anything is possible and and chelsea had talked about uh the amount of joy that her daughter brings to her life and uh they don't care whether you had a bad training session or a bad race they just they love you still the same so uh what a great example uh for for all of our parents out there age groupers or professionals uh what a great standard you're setting yeah, that's true. I haven't I haven't met uh, Chelsea personally yet, but we have um, messaged a little bit uh, in over the last uh, year, and we had a podcast one year ago, and uh, we're talking about it a little bit. And yeah, it's amazing how she how she can do her rookie race today. I'm really uh, happy for her. It looks looks good for her. <laughs> Yeah, make sure you put a little bit of energy into her right now. She's, uh, you know, having the rookie race, just slowing it down a little bit there, Daniela. And um, I, I have a question for you. Um, you know, going into Kona for the uh, the end of the year this year, Annie Haug, uh, you got Laura Phillip and yourself, and the three big Germans to go, you know, uh, head-to-head over in, in Kona. We haven't had that, uh, you know, from our German women in quite some time. So that's exciting, you know, that the, the German women are having such great success with their depth yeah it's, it's really uh, motivating to have uh, yeah actually some of the best uh, women in, in, in the same country and um, I've raised Laura last week and it's yeah it's just a big motivation to have um, you you always see where you are at you you see where you want to be or where you have to be and um, like I said that's one reason why I want want to do another um, Ironman race to be more confident with the run also because of course running was was not the easiest part after after pregnancy to to come back and um i yeah i would like to be under under the three hour mark in frankfurt so that's what i'm preparing for right now and um yeah like i said it's it's well kona is, is totally different again um i'm hoping for a tough day, a lot of wind would would, uh, would be nice for me. So make it, <laughs> yeah, the very tough on the bike would would probably be uh, good for me. Yeah, yeah well, we, we, we said, we, had said and we were just <laughs> discussing that earlier in the race, how it's been a few years uh, since Madame Pele has been a little gnarly with the athletes out on the course. So we ourselves were also hoping for a windy day. Danielle, you've been so gracious with your time. You've had a busy training day and you've got two young ones mm-hmm. to turn your attention to with the rest of your afternoon. So with that, we thank you so much for joining us and wish you all the best in Frankfurt. Uh, we'll be calling that race and cheering for you in that sub three hour marathon uh, on that day. Yeah, we will see if I can. <laughs> yeah, thank you for the invitation. And of course, I will follow now um, the, la- the rest of the race. Um, was, uh, yeah, couldn't couldn't watch the, the first part, but I will definitely watch it now until the end. So yeah, hope to have a good uh, Good afternoon for everyone. <laughs> All right. Danke, Sean. Uh, there, Daniela. Danke, Sean. And uh, Fida saying thank you very much for your time, and we'll see you at Ironman Frankfurt when we get caught up with our ongoing coverage at Ironman now on the Facebook Watch channel there. We are now getting into the nitty-gritty. Yep, Laura Phillip is coming up toward that finish line. We've got Chelsea Sodaro just over the 10-minute mark down and Manon Gene, she's uh, 29 minutes down in third place at this point in time and uh, we can tell you that Laura Phillip is racing toward that finish line and she's racing to a great time today. She is going to be, uh, you know, hovering around the sun Number 830 mark here today, and that's going to be absolutely fantastic to see. Yeah, we can see her taking a couple of deep breaths, sort of gathering herself there. You get to this stage of the race. 
Uh, you really just want it to be over. Uh, at the same time, she has every right to enjoy these final Ks, uh, but I think that's, that finished shoot is going to be a welcome sight uh, for all of our competitors today, but of course for our champion uh, back proving she is on form, uh, on racing form, and the fitness um, perhaps that she feared she had lost uh, due to her illness, absolutely not. And a little bit of a resurgence here from Chelsea Sodaro, getting a little bit of pep back in her step, uh, again, sitting very comfortable in second place. And I think that uh, Laura Phillip is going to crush the eight-hour, 30-minute barrier, which is so good. It is so good, you know, to to have these times. And she's done it all of us, uh, you know, all on her own out there after the swim course today and uh, pushing the wind, you know, on the way out. She had the tailwind on the way back and then same conditions on the second lap. But on the run course, she's been so impressive, hardly slowing down whatsoever. Look at this zigzagging around the age group athletes, just slowing down just that little bit to get what she needs, just going through there and keeping her head in the game, not losing her cool and just uh, remaining patient, and that's great. Look at the stealth look that she's got on her face right now. This is a gamer. This lady here, she is ready to play. She is ready to fight for what it takes to get a really good time today. Look at that. We've just ticked over the eight-hour you know, marker right now. She's coming up. Uh, she's gone through that 36-kilometer marker. She's actually gone through this 37-kilometer marker, so with about four and a half, five kilometers to run, we're looking at a sub 8.30 time today. Yeah, great performance for her. I was struck running through that aid station, as you mentioned, how she kept her cool, a little bit of uh, uh, zigzagging amongst the age group athletes, uh, a little bit of a fight for a water cup there with another age group athlete. And it's funny to see the age group reaction uh, when a, a guy reaches out to grab a cup of water and, and Laura grabs it from his hand. His initial reaction is, hey, wait a minute. And then he realizes who it is. And he's like, oh, yeah, you take the water. We're good. Go ahead. Uh, again, one of the things I love about our sport, uh, the pros and the age group are sharing the course on the same day and the interactions that you see between them uh, out on the course are just absolutely priceless. They are priceless. And uh, I tell you what else is priceless, and that is all of our spectators. They are just absolutely amazing. Look at them. They're out in their droves today, and they're going to be right out there until the midnight hour. You know that for certain. They do not like to miss out on anything. No, I will say a year ago, the weather was not as cooperative as it's been today. It was uh, pouring with rain at times out there, definitely soggy on the marathon course, and the crowds were still there. So we knew when we had a beautiful weather day today uh, that they were going to be out there in force as well. These are diehard fans here in Hamburg. Well, they're gathering around the finish line for anticipation of a German champion. That's going to be a repeat champion at the European Championships for our pro <laughs> women division. And look at this little girl An here. Iron, uh, so Iron, ath Iron Man athlete of the future again, oh, uh, holding Iron pace Kids. with Chelsea. Chelsea Sodaro, that's great. <laughs> I love to see that. Her moment of glory. <laughs> yeah, wasn't that fantastic? You can see Chelsea. That probably sparked her on to give her a little bit of a push as she makes her final push toward that finish line. But Laura Phillips, she's almost there. She's inside of four kilometres to go and a great time that we're looking at at the finish line today. So finish line preparations are getting ready to crown a champion here at the Ironman European Championship on our pro women's division. Don't go away. The finish line just around the corner. Whether it's on the road or in the pool, your activity has high demands. Rooted in sweat and grounded in science, we understand your unique fueling needs. That is why we created formulas just for you, endurance athletes, helping you replace what you're losing and keeping you fueled. And there's nowhere we'd rather be than with you along this journey, because together we are formulated for farther. From the creators of Gatorade, Gatorade Endurance, formulated for you, formulated for farther. 
And we are back with the action here on the Hoka Marathon course at the Ironman European Championship here in Hamburg. We're looking here at Manon Genet, the French woman holding down third place very securely. She had to pry herself free of the likes of Chantal, Chantal uh, saint Cyr off the bike, uh, but has continued to distance herself and now sits in third place ahead of the Finnish woman, Heine Hartikainen, who has also overtaken the Brit. So right now, Manon Genet um, sitting a solid 18 minutes behind second place, uh, but a very, very comfortable uh, four minutes ahead of the Finn. But the Finn uh, running very, very well. So Manon Genet with a little bit of work to do if she wants to secure that podium spot, Greg. A great battle as we knew it would be. Uh, we didn't know who the players would be, but a good battle uh, for the third spot on that podium as Manon Genet uh, makes her way through uh, the city center and heads out on her final loop uh, of this run course as we come back to Laura Phillip, who can finally start to think about the finish line. She's got uh, just about maybe three or four kilometers left to run, uh, so nearly lapping uh, the third place competitor on the day uh, as Manon Genet makes her way out for the final loop. Laura Phillip heading back into town to celebrate the finish line. And what a performance from this woman today. Yeah, and you know, you, you can see the, you know, the distance that she's got between the, uh, the other ladies at this point in time. So you just have to put it down to a career day so far. This is going to be one of those races that, you know, Laura's going to look at and just uh, take a lot of, uh, you know, things uh, about this uh, this time because she was, you know, sidelined with COVID and then she went and, you know, had the forced rest. And these these times are really going to give us some great intel on how to move forward and, you know, how is she going to set up, you know, for races in the future. So I think that, you know, with Manon Genet just going through for her last lap, you know, of the run right now, you know, being around about 10 kilometres or, or not even 10 kilometres, about nine kilometres, you know, behind our champ here, it just goes to show you exactly what form that Laura Phillip is right now. So it, very scary. It's, it's a bittersweet, I think, feeling it's got to be for Laura Phillip uh, to know that the fitness is there, that she's uh, primed, she's peaked. Um, she is amongst absolutely our conversations and, and well within our conversations of some of the best in the world. A podium contender for world championship would have been, I think, a podium contender in St. George. So that's the bitter, but the sweet is that the fitness is there and she is absolutely stomping this race course here today. Going to come across uh, with a bike course record, uh, likely a run course record and an overall record and an outstanding uh, time overall that is going to send a message out to the women who were able to compete in St. George and say, hey, don't forget about me because I'm going to be there in October. She'll be there for sure, and we know that other athletes will be too, like uh, Chelsea Sidoro, just hanging in there, just getting through the aid stations and making sure that she gets the nutrition that she desperately needs to get in that system to make it across, you know, the next six, seven kilometres of her race as we close in on the finish line right now for Laura Phillip at 8.07 on the clock right now. We are not too far away. Inside of the next 15 minutes, we should be able to see our athlete coming into that finish line. And the German is going to get a rousing reception from the boisterous crowd here in Hamburg. They're going to be giving it up. They'll be all standing and they will be rocking and rolling on that finish line and they will do all night they are really raucous here and a great crowd all around all around as uh, Laura can sort of see the finish line certainly see the city center uh, got to make a couple of twists and turns through town uh, but we see these crowds now two three four deep along the race course when we get uh, to the finish line there what as you said Greg a party and a celebration it will be and it's going to go well into the night. You know, Laura will be back there later in the night to get all of our final finishes across the line as well. And tradition is what we do 
in Ironman Racing here in Hamburg. You can see that Chelsea Sidoro right now is still running nicely. I think that she's had a little bit of a, a revitalization here and, uh, you know, about, I would say about six kilometers ago, she wasn't looking that great. She had a bit of a rough patch for sure, but she has absolutely gotten it back together, which again, the more times that can happen to her out on this race course, the better off she's going to be because she's going to have the faith that when it happens again, she'll know how to pull her way through. It's that experience experience uh, that you have out on the race course that is going to absolutely serve her well as she's got her eyes forward towards the finish line. A little fun fact for you uh, here, Greg, as we make our way towards the finish line. The finish line is situated next to Hamburg's Parliament building. It's a spectacular city hall so large, it's got more rooms than Buckingham Palace. Do you know how many rooms it has, Greg? I want to say 54. It has almost, it has 647 rooms. And do you know how many more that is than Buckingham Palace? No. It's six more rooms than there are at Buckingham Palace. So okay, there you go, as Laura Phillip makes her way towards the magnificent parliamentary building that uh, abuts the finish line there. She will celebrate uh, and will be able to roam the halls of the parliamentary hall <laughs> and get lost in the 647 rooms that they have there. Well, I think I'm moving to Hamburg. Maybe I'll get one of those rooms. Uh, but uh, yeah, anyway. They got room for you. I tell you what, Hamburg is a great place to be, you know, with their beautiful big port. And also, uh, you know, just, I mean, there's a lot of famous people that have come out of there. Theresa Merkel, she's uh, the Chancellor of, uh, of Germany. And uh, she was born there. And the Beatles, they've had success there. They were, uh, you know, seeking success out of the UK. But it wasn't until they came over to Hamburg and the crowd really liked them and it really really did elevate and spearhead, you know, what was to be one of the greatest groups ever in music. And the Beatles can claim that from Hamburg. And we can claim that Laura Phillip is setting one of the fastest times in history in the Ironman here in Hamburg today. She is going to crack that eight hour and 30 barrier. Look at that, overtaking four age group men and one foul swoop. Get out of the way, boys. Here comes Laura Phillip, absolutely. <laughs> uh, again, what a good sport Laura Phillip is. She's been very, very calm. Uh, lapping traffic this late into the marathon can be frustrating. You don't want to change your line at all. She wants to have the straightest shot to that finish line where she can finally smile and celebrate her accomplishments. So even a step or two uh, laterally can be a source of frustration, but not for the focus there. She just went by uh, her partner and coach, Philip Seip, who is now going to jump on his bike and motor to the finish line so he can beat her there uh, to celebrate this great day and great accomplishment with her. Well, most seamstr uh, seamstresses around the world will be very jealous about the way that she's been able to weave around the traffic <laughs> on this course here in Hamburg today. It's been a stellar performance by Laura Phillip, but this one of Chelsea Sidoro, a great learning experience, a great experience for her Iron Rookie Day here in Hamburg. And it's great to see that so many people are out watching our race today up fan favorite, a festival down here in Hamburg as we see our lead athletes closing in on the finish line here at the Ironman European Championship. They're on the Hoka Time to Fly run course and we're flying off to a commercial break and we will be back very, very soon. Back to the action here in Hamburg with Laura Phillip. Yep, 
the local German lady athlete here. She is running toward the finish line. They call Hamburg the active city. She doesn't have too far to go. She's closing in on that line at 8.13, 17 on the race clock right now, Didi. This is going to be one of the fastest times in history. Absolutely. She has posted it up, um, and, and which is so amazing because the swim wasn't super stellar, but what a bike performance and the marathon performance that she's put together. Again, what a confidence boost, uh, lifting her spirits after the disappointment, bitter disappointment of missing the Ironman World Championship, but absolutely proving uh, that she belongs on one of those top steps amongst the best in the world. Yeah, you know, she really improved today. I thought she had a very, very strong swim, you know, with Chelsea uh, Sodoro, also Manon Genet there today. But the bike ride was super impressive as we get a good look at Chelsea Sodoro, our early swim leader. At the beginning of the race today, you know, taking off at 6.15 a.m., it was a great start that they had. But the lead four, they stuck together and they worked together and then they got to the end of the swim and then it just, like, just you know, just went sideways for everyone when Laura Phillip, she got to the front and did her thing. Chelsea Sodoro was awesome in second place. Manon Genet and also Chantel Santa, they were strong right up until the three-quarter mark. And then it was, you know, Manon Genet to go on her own and Chantel was left, you know, just to fend off what she had left in the tank. Then Heine, Hardekain and from, uh, you know, Finland was the one that was really impressive coming off the bike and then running now up into fourth place. So we've had a little bit of a change you know, not quite on our podium, but in the top five. Well, and Heine Hartekainen certainly making a go of it to get on that podium, uh, running super duper well. Uh, I don't think she's going to make it because I think Manon Genet is just running too tough, too strong. Uh, but what a performance there and a, and a couple of uh, change-ups in the lineup amongst the top five. But so dominant today, this woman, Laura Phillip, just Greg, wow. Yeah, Wow's right. She's uh, not giving an inch. She's continuing the pace all the way toward the finish line. She's not going to ease up one little bit here because she wants to throw down that fast time. She's going to send a message to the rest of the ladies in the World Championship division that she's arrived. She's got the time down there. She's really improved as we see the streamers getting caught up <laughs> on our screen right now. But she's not too far away from the finish line here. She's going to finish off with a great time today and back-to-back -back European championships are going to go by, by way of Laura Philip. It's going to stay in Germany. Yep, last year it was in Finland. This year in Germany, staying in Germany. I would imagine that's going to mean a tremendous amount to her being able to take home that European title. Uh, it's one thing to do it to, to have the European title, but to do it in your home country, uh, gotta be such such a boost for her, certainly a boost for the fans. They are going nuts down there at the finish line. We can hear them all the way up here in the booth, Greg. That's right, as she closes in on the finish line right now, just a little bit to run right here. Look at the spires of Hamburg. It's a glorious day, a Chamber of Commerce day, they normally say when the sun is shining and everybody's out having the time of their life. It's early in the summer months. We've got lots and lots of summer days to go, but this is another one of these great days that Hamburg is putting on for us. The sailing boats are out. They are replacing all those thousands of athletes who were in there this morning. And now Chelsea Sedora, she's got her chance to get through town and finish off her race as well. But it's going to be a great rookie uh, day for Chelsea Sedora. She is feeling the pinch right now. You can see losing a little bit of time to the ground there. Yeah, definitely. But uh, a woman bounding towards the finish line right here. Laura Phillip swam in the lead pack, took the lead as soon as she got onto the bicycle and hasn't let up at all. Had some mishaps along the way with nutrition, dropped a bottle, uh, wasn't able to get to her personal needs bag when she wanted it on the marathon, but never faltered, never doubted, absolutely charged her way uh, to the finish line here, setting what will absolutely be a new course record and one of the fastest times across the Ironman distance. Yep, that's for sure. We know that's going to happen. She's closing in on the finish line right now. The crowd is building. It's going to be thick as she gets in toward that final 100 metres or so, but not too far to go now. She is bounding, like you said. She is up on the toes. She is getting after it. She's not letting up one little bit. She's really getting after the time today. So excited. This is it. Left-hand turn for the others. A straight shot now into the finish line. But this is Laura Phillips. She is going to become 
the second time European Championship winner. She's going back to back today. Laura Philip of Germany is taking our Ironman European Championship to the bank today. And this is back to back wins for Laura Philip. A well-earned rest as she gets down onto all fours there and absolutely exhausted. Look at that, 8.18. That is incredible. She gave it everything at a time like that. That is absolutely nuts. It took a minute for the smile to come across her face. You can see uh, just the look of fatigue, uh, but the smile is there. She's taking a minute to absolutely soak it in. What a performance. Two 45-39, officially, that marathon split. That is nuts. 2.45, that's going to go down as one of the fastest uh, marathon times ever for a woman on the course. As a matter of fact, I think it is the fastest time that we've seen. You know, Erin Bacon went sub 250. We've gone sub 250 before, but a 2.45 today by Laura Phillip really sends a message that she has done it. She has arrived. She is a legitimate contender for the World Championship coming up in October later this year. But now it's Chelsea Sedoro. She's got to finish off the job here. Shell, she do that. She will be lining up for the World Championship in October as well. But Laura Phillip closing it off with a 2.45 today. That is absolutely astounding. I, my jaw is on the floor. I'm having a hard time picking it up. What a phenomenal performance uh, from Laura Phillip today. And I think, uh, again, we had spoken to Annie Haug. Uh, do you take notice of these things? And that is going to demand the notice of the fellow female professionals. We're going to take it down to the finish line here for an interview in just a second with our very, very deserving Ironman European champion as she acknowledges the crowd taking a hot lap up and down the red carpet celebrating with the hamburgers. Well, I tell you what, that hot lap is <laughs> looking pretty good. She looks like she could go out and do another lap and no problem whatsoever. All smiles now. The smile coming easy now that she's had a chance to gather herself, uh, exchanging some congratulations with our finish line staff down at the finish line. We're going to get a word with our champion in just a moment. So just to recap it here, as we see coming down the finish line, that is Laura Phillip and getting over the line with an 8.18 time with a 2.45 run split. This is one for the ages today, the Ironman Hamburg European Championship for our pro women only. Yep, the men are coming up with their opportunity in Frankfurt in a few weeks time, but right now, 8.18 and 20. One seconds on the race clock, one of the fastest times in history, and a 2.45 to top it off. Yep, I said it, 2.45. 2.45. I just, I have to keep saying that to myself because I don't quite believe it. Again, we said, you know, Chelsea Sodaro was putting up such a great performance, and, and Laura Philp was making her look kind of pedestrian, but the, the fact of the matter is, Chelsea Sodaro is going to come home with a super fast performance here as well. Let's take it down to the Hyper Ice Recovery Zone with our champion, Laura Phillip. We're all stunned with us, the winner, the European champion defending the title and setting the process. Laura Phillip just idea of what Right yeah, I think uh, this was my kind of revenge for missing out the Ironman World Championship in St. George. I was just so much full of frustration and yeah, I think I like, just lit it up today. And uh, yeah, it was amazing. Like, I think I had a really good day. And uh, yeah, I don't know. Like, I never knew that I was Everybody on this uh, kind of time yeah. and like, well, <laughs> the beat, uh, until like, the last day. Um, so I guess Philip, my coach, always Thank you. 
Well, thank you very much for those uh, words there and uh, great to catch up with our champion. She got it done today and boy, was it impressive with a fantastic swim and even better bike ride. But the way that she closed it out with a 2.45 run with really no pressure coming from behind, it was all about her. It was all about doing her time and all about not wasting that fitness that she lost out on when she unfortunately got that, uh, you know, the call to say that I've I've turned a positive, uh, you know, COVID-19 uh, test and that way I won't be able to jump on that plane and go and do what I do best and that's perform at the World Championship. Well, today was a message sent from Laura Phillip that I have officially arrived with that 245. That is going to put her right there where she needs to be. Absolutely. There are some eyebrows raised around the world in the female professional ranks uh, after that performance from Laura Phillip. My favorite part of that uh, when her coach and partner Philip Seip says to her, okay, now you can push. She's like, whoa, what? I thought I was pushing. Uh, not much left in the tank for her. I think it is still uh, settling in. She said she couldn't believe uh, that she was on that kind of pace, uh, that the fitness was quite that strong. Uh, really, really special day uh, for Laura Philip as we come back to Chelsea Sodaro, uh, who is in the closing kilometers herself, not quite yet through 40.2 Ks making her way back to the city center for the final time where she will get her own finish line celebration. Chelsea Sodaro really hurrying those arms through right now. The carriage is really trying to carry those legs through. You can see that the cheeks of Sodaro are getting flush. She's getting a little sun. She is getting hot. And it is now up to her to really struggle and, you know, t talk herself into it. You can see that the legs are not wanting to give what the arms are giving. And it is real. The pain is real. She's going to finish off, you know, in the last couple of kilometres after this turn around here. She's not going to have too far to go with a couple of kilometres to go. And Chelsea Sodoro is trying to hang on to that second place. It's going to be a tough closing three kilometres. It, it is a tough closing couple of Ks here as we see the, the stride really shutting down here. Um, she's tried, she's just lost all the knee drive. She's lost all the kick. Um, she's not getting much um, distance off of the ground, but she still is turning over pretty well. She is so safely into second place uh, that she's trying to sort of walk that fine line between pushing as hard as she can and pushing so hard that she cramps or seizes. Um, again, trying to hurry quickly, um, but not aggressively towards the finish line. Uh, she will be very excited and should be extremely pleased with her Ironman debut performance. Yep, no rushing the finish line now. She's uh, slowly, you know, coming up to the finish line there where she will secure a spot to the Ironman World Championship start line. If she gets there on time there, Menagene, she is trying to get herself up onto that podium as well because she would dearly love to make it to the World Championship as well. And then there will be one spot after that. So maybe Heine from, uh, you know, Finland is going to have enough in the tank to get across that line and take that third spot as well. Three spots offered today for the Ironman World Championship right here in Hamburg as we see our ladies cruising it into the finish line. We've already got a Great champion, Laura Phillip across the line with a 2.45 closing marathon. Nothing more can be said than astounding, impressive, and look out. Yeah, no, absolutely look out. But uh, again, I think uh, Chelsea Sodaro opening some eyes here. I think people questioned, hey, is it is it too soon for her to move up to the Ironman distance? She hasn't seen her full potential across the 70.3, but uh, 
I think she's proving herself to be a fierce competitor across this distance and is a name that could absolutely uh, be thrown in the ring as, as a potential top 10 competitor uh, come October. Yeah, no question about the top 10. I, I think that, you know, she'll learn from this uh, experience and then um, they'll go back to the drawing board and, and see where they're at. And, you know, being, being so young into this, you know, the age, uh, sorry, into this distance, you're going to have to have the body, you know, adapt to the mileage as well and, and without doing any damage and without getting um, injured as well. So it's a very, very fine line. But here we go at 16.48 at last time check. And uh, that was because Laura Phillip just didn't let up today. No, she, the, the closer she got to the finish line, the faster she got, I think. Uh, again, Chelsea Sadaro willing herself towards that finish line. What a day for her. A day, again, you have the confidence that you've done the training. Uh, she said on paper she kind of knew what she would be capable of doing, but putting it together on the day is such a big piece of the puzzle. And uh, she managed her nutrition so well. For the most part, her pacing really, really strong. She she put up a good fight to Laura Phillip on the bike, giving up only three and a half minutes across the entire bike course. Uh, and she just needs to shore up the back half of this marathon and, and absolutely uh, better days to come for Chelsea Sodaro. And this is a pretty good first day out. This is a fantastic first day out. You know, this is this is going to be one of those days that she looks back and just takes a lot of data away from it and a lot of, you know, experiences. Um, she'll know that, you know, she came over in, in plenty of time to get acclimated. She did everything that she possibly could have done. And when when you go into these races, a lot of expectations, you have times and, and all that. I, I think that she's just going to throw it all out and just say, hey, listen, I swam really well. I biked super well. And today, yeah, maybe my nutrition at about, you know, 25 kilometers just sort of went a little bit sideways or I really felt the pinch. And when we talk about a bike course that doesn't have hills, yep. um, a course that you just have to keep pedaling and pedaling and pedaling with no rest, you know, there is no resting on a bike course like this. So therefore, you know, the legs are turning over all the time with no respite. So I think that she's going to walk away with this one and just say, I did really super well and I am glad that I've got it behind me. I need an ice bath. I need a, something to drink and uh, somebody else take my child tonight. I need a decent rest. <laughs> yeah, I, I think she's going to want to celebrate this one with her daughter. I think uh, it's a journey that the two of them have made uh, together. She made this commitment to move up in distance and her daughter has been there uh, right along with her providing that uh, side dose of joy through no doubt what have been some long training days. I think it might take Chelsea a moment or two to say uh, to herself, well, do I really want to do this again in October? Uh, again, that's a reflection that uh, all athletes make. I think it takes a few seconds uh, for it to, to settle in and say, uh, yeah, yeah, I want to do that one again. Uh, because right now, all she wants to do is be done and never think about the sport again. Uh, the world of hurt that she's in is she is surrounded by some age group competitors here, uh, making her way around them as she makes her way towards the finish line. Less than about a kilometer to go now for Chelsea Sodaro. Yep, as she makes her way down into the finish line, we've got all of our age groupers heading out onto the run course right now. So let's get you caught up to speed with our age group leaders right now in our Overall, <clears throat> excuse me, in this position right now is Hubert from Germany is leading out there from Jonas Weller, also from Germany at this point in time. Jorgensen from Denmark has moved up into third spot. We got Berg from uh, the Netherlands in fourth position there and Wegricht from Germany in fifth place at this point in time. So the, the running times they're doing not too bad at around about 4.29s and 4.14, somewhere around there. But I tell you what, it was very impressive if, you know, our woman, our lead woman today to get across that finish line with a 245, that is sub four minute, um, you know, kilometers today, which is insane. It's hard to believe it. And she is just amazing. And it was a career day for Laura Phillip. And I think the little bit extra rest that she got today was enough to give her the opportunity to go out there and really give it everything that she had. And now look at uh, Chelsea Sonoro <laughs> just coming across the line. She is she going to be so lost happy. all of her momentum going around that corner. Right. It was like she willed herself around. She's just changing direction now. She only has one direction and it's forward uh, and she is literally shuffling her way towards that finish line. The stride is gone. Uh, rounding these corners incredibly difficult. Uh, it's like you almost lose balance. Uh, you don't have the control as she picks up her final wristband 
and will earn the right now to head towards the finish line. Again, the smile's not there yet, but give her a few minutes. Well, remember last time around, she actually walked through that part and got the wristband. I think that she probably said to herself, if I walk right now, I am not going to start running again. <laughs> so I need to keep running. Give me that wristband. I'll put it around my wrist and I'll be just all golden. All right, so those uh, two legs there, they are now feeling like concrete blocks. And that's exactly what it does to you in Ironman Triathlon. If you don't have those concrete blocks, you didn't go hard enough, TD Greasebauer, and I know that you go hard enough on your training rides and runs and in your races as well. So we're all feeling it for Chelsea right now, but we are pulling for her to get across that finish line so that she can get a, a nice little rest in. She needs to recover and get on with it. Come October this year, Chelsea, we're so excited for you that she's going to earn that qualification as she makes her way toward the finish line now. Yep. The Hoka time to fly run course is closing down for Chelsea Sodoro here, and she is going to take second place on that podium. Yeah, so pleased for Chelsea. It's been not the most ideal uh, beginning of the year uh, for her. She didn't have the performance I think she wanted in Oceanside. So to come out here and, and uh, perform so well on debut across the full Ironman distance, I think is going to be very, very satisfying for her. She did have a strong day in Mallorca in preparation uh, for this, quote, European tour uh, she's been on, was very precise in her build-up, uh, making the trip, making the commitment to get over here with her family uh, to be sure that she was absolutely as prepared as she could be. And she is definitely a name to watch in the future uh, if this is what she's able to do in her first attempt at this distance. Well, she's moving now. The stride seems to have in, uh, increased and, uh, you know, the, the turnover has increased as well as she's honing in on that finish line. She can hear the crowds from the finish line from where she is. She is going through Hamburg and you know that they are going to get loud and raucous at the finish line today for the American as she makes her way through in a debut race. She's going to stand second place on top of that podium today when we get across that line we'll have the podium presentation coming up for you in a little bit so don't go away we'll, we'll have that for you in around about 30 minutes from now but Chelsea Sodoro she is going to be second place today and a great effort yeah what a super effort and and I can't wait to hear some of the thoughts that have been going through her mind uh, as she has tackled her very first full distance Ironman but I think right now all she's thinking about is getting to that finish line to give uh, her husband and her baby girl a squeeze and celebrate this truly family effort. Uh, the support that she gets from her mom who has traveled with her to Europe to, to help with her daughter. Uh, you know, Chelsea said her recovery looks a little different now. It's more about playing with her daughter uh, than, you know, being uh, in, in the Normatec recovery boots necessarily, but uh, it all has served to make her a happy athlete and a happy athlete is a successful athlete. And that success for Chelsea Sodaro is bringing her to second place here at the Ironman European Championship here in Hamburg. Let's take it down to the finish line for your second place pro female from the United States of America, Chelsea Sodaro. And the smile says it all, Dee Dee, getting across that line. Yep, that's relief, and I am thankful that it's all over right now. Chelsea Sodaro takes a good long lean into those legs right now. Those quadriceps are going to feel like concrete blocks tomorrow morning when she decides to walk down the stairs but she's going to have to turn around backwards and go down there backwards because it's going to be almost impossible she has given it everything today and she can barely stand up but it was the day that belonged to Laura Phillip that's for sure and what a great day it was with an 818 finish and that was so respectable and now for Chelsea Sedora punching her ticket to the Ironman World Championship Unofficially three hours, 21 seconds. So just over the three hour mark for Chelsea Sodaro's first marathon off an Ironman bike split. Very, very respectable. She was just beat by a woman on fire today in Laura Phillip, but uh, what a great performance. 8.36.42 unofficially total time for Chelsea Sodaro and unofficially uh, stamping her ticket to the Ironman World Championship on the Big Island of Hawaii come October. Yeah, I think that, uh, you know, her race today just proved that she can go the distance absolutely no problems. But I, I think that what, you know, Chelsea probably learned today is that, you know, the nutritional part of it has to be, you know, starting a lot earlier, probably in the beginning of the bike or, or so. But, uh, you know, to get herself through... The, the marathon portion, it's just going to take a little bit of time to build up, you know, some more strength and uh, a little bit more mileage in those legs as she makes her way, you know, 
into the future of Ironman racing. But today for Chelsea, it was a fantastic day. She got it started leading out of the water. Then she got started on the bike ride. She had a very good first loop. She didn't lose too much time getting off the bike. As a matter of fact, it was only 3.20. And then when she get out onto the run course today, it was just that she couldn't match the speed of Laura Phillip. And that's where it all, you know, sort of stopped uh, for her. But a second place today was absolutely magnificent. As you can see that when she went through the course, see the four laps. Thank goodness she had the crowd out there to pull it through. Thank goodness she had the Morton Gels and the Gatorade Endurance. And thank goodness she's got a heart of a champion to hang in there and to not give up. Well, I, you know, again, Greg, we look back at Laura Phillips' debut performance across the Ironman distance, the fastest time ever by a woman on Ironman debut, that time 8.34.57. So for Chelsea Sodaro to turn in an 8.36.42, not dreadfully far off that. Again, I think it's a bright, bright future for Chelsea Sodaro at the full Ironman distance. Oh, you are so right. And uh, it's it's really incredible to see, you know, the talent and uh, the next American, you know, lady to come through the ranks into the Ironman distance. And it will be a doozy in Ironman World Championship coming up October 6th for our ladies. We are going to have a cracker race coming our way with the return of Daniela Reef and Annie Haug. Can Cat Matthews be a part of their conversation? Will Lucy Charles have enough time to get injury free and hit that start line? What about Laura Phillips? She's going to have something to say about that. And now Chelsea Sodoro, another name that we can add to that long list of champions and long list of athletes that we need to watch out in the future of Ironman distance racing. And it was good enough. The second place today, she makes her way toward that line with a three-hour marathon with a total time of eight hours and 36 minutes, anybody would take that time any day. Absolutely. Never never mind on debut. So for her first time out at the full Ironman distance, tremendous performance. She's got so much to be proud of. Uh, I think she's probably looking forward to a bit of recovery and perhaps a trip back home uh, to the U.S., uh, to celebrate with her family and get ready for whatever it is that comes next. Yep, she deserves a big break because it was a monumental effort today. Look at those quads right from the very outset. They were putting down the power. The wattage that was getting outputted there was the telling story of what was to happen in the run a little bit later today as she reaches down for that all-important nutrition. She will go away with a new set of tricks. She'll go away with a lot of data. She'll go away with the memory of a first First Ironman race being a great one at 8.36. Are you kidding me? Yeah, no kidding. Now, uh, here we go down to the hyper race recovery zone with our second place champion, Chelsea Stone. Uh, 8.36, second fastest Ironman rookie in history. And the first words were, man, this is hard. How are you feeling right now, Chelsea? You know what? I'm so proud of myself. I'm so proud of myself right now. I think um, I really want to Regardless of your level, it's never a guarantee that you make it to the finish line. And I had a lot of hard You absolutely delivered, without a doubt. And you know, despite the pain in the body, what outweighs right now? The, the pain or the, let's see what else I could do now. <laughs> I hope they've seen what it's like. You know, it's so funny sure. because now you get off sure. the sure. 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 slot right after you sure. finish sure. doing something, oh. while you're still in a lot of pain. Um, but man, you know what? I knew that things weren't going to go perfectly out there today, and I actually lost all of my nutrition 40 minutes after the bike. So I had to problem solve, and I just, I didn't, I didn't nail everything, you know, so I'm definitely curious to see what I can do when I get like, a, little, a little more dialed in, and quite frankly, I didn't know if I was going to, if I was going to show up for this race, it's been like a huge battle to get to the starting line, um, yeah, so, yeah, yeah. so, just sit here right now, do you feel it's sunk in yet or not? Just you being blown away, we're blown away. 
Charles, you said it best, and uh, it's all about the crowds, it's about the volunteers and, and your support crews too. I mean, it was incredible down here today, the racing, but the crowds are just flocking out there. There are tens and tens of thousands of uh, spectators lining the course, whether it still be on the bike course out there or on the run course downtown. It's only a 10 and a half kilometre loop here, but the one thing is for certain, you're not going to have too much trouble finding motivation out there. No, absolutely not. Motivation, not a factor at all for the athletes today due in large part to the enthusiasm and warmth and reception of these crowds here in Hamburg. We're gonna be right back in a minute to bring you our third place uh, champion across the line today in Manon Genet, but we're gonna take a quick break. Don't go away. That thing John Moran has, that's a hypervolt. That thing he uses to warm up and stay loose before he throws it down. That thing Tony Finau uses on course between shots. Ooh, that's money. That thing Robin and I use before and after we're on the bike so we can ride harder tomorrow. That thing Erlen Holland uses before smashing it into the back of the net. That thing that's for everyone. The hypervolt from Hyperice. Give your body the daily relief it's been asking for. Yeah. Back to the action of Hamburg right now, the Ironman European Championship for our pro women. Well, we've got our first two athletes through the finish line. That goes to top honours with Laura Phillip with an 8.18.20 today, recapping it with a 2.45.39 on the marathon today with an average pace of 3 minutes and 53 per kilometre. That is absolutely insane. Well done to Laura Phillip. They are racing these Ironman races right now. Didi Griesbauer as Chelsea Sidoro also comes in across the line. And I want to talk about her three-hour time. Her three-hour marathon is absolutely incredible. But the way that she did it today, I know she can knock 10 minutes off that. Oh, easily. I mean, she said right then and there that uh, she, she lost her nutrition 40 minutes into the bike ride. Uh, and again, for a rookie, that can be certainly unnerving. Uh, she said she had to problem solve, she had to triage. And we've been saying that all day long. Uh, Iron Man is about problem solving. It's about finding a solution. No one's day is going to go perfectly out there unless you're Laura Phillip. But even she had some, some issues out there as well. So uh, again, the important thing, Chelsea Sodaro didn't panic uh, and just kept coming, kept coming. Uh, again, all the things that we speculated, oh my gosh, I need to do this again in October, question mark, do I really want to do that? Uh, but yes, she absolutely will be there as we now get ready to welcome our third place competitor from France, Manon Genet, across the line. She has battled all day, uh, was in that top four a uh, group of women across the swim uh, really hung in there on the bike, was able to distance herself and put herself firmly into third place. And she's been running there consistently all day long. She's been very tough today, and I, I give it up for her because the way that she did the swim, you know, it was all on her own. She was out to the side, yep. whereas the other ladies, you know, lined up bang, 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 one, two, three, right next to each other or behind each other. But it was Manon Genet who, you know, went out to the side. She attacked it in the way that she only attacks it. And then on the bike course, she got up to, uh, you know, Chantel Saint and, and sort of went around and, and had a bit of a dig early on. Then it was Chantel Saint that came back at Manon and really helped helped her with the pacing, but it was the last part of the bike ride where Chantel wasn't able to hang on to the pace of Manon. And then one, once Manon got onto the run, you know, she just, you know, put one foot in front of the other. And it's just a beautiful little pace that she has, you know, going right now. And I look at it and I just see the same sort of style as the, what she did starting out. So I'm very, yeah. very proud of her, her for what she's doing right now. Her form has held together remarkably yeah. well. I mean, again, her pace has faded somewhat, but her form has really held together. I knew Manon was a very, very solid runner. Uh, I didn't think she'd be threatened. Uh, the, the Finnish woman, Heine Hartekainen, took a swing at her uh, to try to get, she's probably within four minutes, uh, but I think Manon Genet has been uh, just a little bit too strong. Again, that lead now up to... Five minutes over Heine Hertekainen from Finland. So Manon Genet 
firmly planted in third place can enjoy this finish line celebration. And those will be your three uh, Ironman World Championship qualifying women from this race. Laura Phillip already qualified. Chelsea Sodaro will take the first available slot. Manon Genet, should she choose to collect it, will take the second. And Heine Hartzikainen uh, will also qualify for the Ironman World Championship uh, if she can make her way across the finish line in that fourth place position, which barring disaster, she should be able to do. Yeah, it looks like that's going to happen. My nation, eh? She has only got uh, five, uh, less than 500, about 400 metres to run right now. She's going to make a right-hand turn, and then she'll be going straight down the finish chute, whereas the other athletes are going to make a left-hand turn to the hooker. Time to fly run course. Four laps today. She's on her fourth and last lap as she makes her way. She's going to make a right-hand turn and then head all the way into that finish line. Interesting to see what her run time is going to be. I'm guessing just a a touch over three hours today and that's going to be great and good enough for third place. Here comes Manon Genet from France in third place after a great swim, a good bike ride and a very solid run to come in third place in the Ironman European Championship. She's going to be standing on the podium as well. Absolutely. She will stand on that third step on the podium very, very proudly. Again, I don't think anybody could have held a candle to Laura Phillip today. And Manon Genet put in a tremendous battle. A uh, great, great swim from Manon, as you said, gave up just a little bit of time to Chelsea on the, on the bike. But I, I think we'll be very close uh, in terms of performance uh, on the marathon to Chelsea. So I think uh, a really, really great performance from Manon. And of course, uh, the opportunity now to go race again uh, on the Big Island of Hawaii come October. 150 meters to go. That's all the distance that stands between the podium and this young lady. Manon Genet from France has had a great day here in the city of Hamburg. Look at that. We've got downtown in all of its glory right now. The sun is shining. We're just off the North Sea. The Elba River has given us all the pleasure today. The course was great. The athletes were even better. They were solid out there. Laura Phillip picks up the European Championship. Chelsea Sodoro, good enough for second place. But the French woman, that's it. Manon Genet, she is about to capture the third place on the podium. Uh, what a day for Manon Genet. There's the smile across her face. She turns around, acknowledges the crowd. I think one of the universal things we've taken away from this race here in Hamburg is how much the crowd is absolutely a part of every athlete's performance out there out on the day. Yep, what a great day it has been for our third place finisher. We've got a couple of age group athletes across the finish line today from Germany as well. But our podium is now set. It is Laura Phillip that takes the Ironman European Championship with a great time of 8.18. And that was magnificent and good for a course record here today. In second place, Chelsea Sodora also broke the course record and she broke the bike course record too. And then Manon Genet, third place across that finish line with a marathon time, Didi, of 3.02. 302.43 unofficially for a total time of 8.52.02 for the woman from France, Manon Genet, rounding out the podium here at the Ironman European Championship here in Hamburg. So that's Manon Genet getting across the line, turning around, respect to the crowd, respect to the athletes, and thank you very much for coming out in their droves and bringing her home today in third place. We'll be checking in with our podium presentation coming up momentarily. We'll also get a word with our third place getter in just a few seconds. And look at that, Chelsea Sonaro down there with a the baby girl. Yeah, that's, I mean, that's just absolutely brilliant. Uh, again, it's a shared celebration between mother and daughter. And again, full acknowledgement from Manon Genet, who is more interested in talking to Chelsea's daughter, uh, perhaps than rehashing uh, the race. Uh, what a great, uh, what a great photo there. Uh, two absolutely fantastic performances from these two women here today. Yeah, Chelsea's already gone into mum mode and uh, given the baby some uh, water there, but let's go down to Chelsea. Manon Genet, first of all, congratulations. Eight hours, 52 and two seconds. I believe that is your fastest Ironman so far. Uh, I don't know. How how long did you say? Eight hours, 52 minutes and two seconds. Yeah, no, I was faster in Almere last year. It was flatter, I think. <laughs> flatter than Hamburg, that's impossible. But <laughs> you look very happy, though. Third place in the championship race here behind Laura Philip, Chelsea, Sodaro. How are you feeling right now? I'm feeling very grateful for my amazing team, uh, who's behind me and I'm 
I'm happy about what I did today, even though I'm very far away from the two girls in the front, but yeah, it was a great day for me and I'm, I'm happy, yeah. You know, you got a huge smile on your face and there were incredible crowds out there. How were the spectators for you? Honestly, I had a very a, a wonderful day. Hamburg is just an amazing city and the crowd is amazing and it's been a while that we haven't seen such a crowd at uh, an Ironman distance. And there, there's been the, the sanitary crisis and everything and all races were so... I don't know, silence, you know? So it's, it's been incredible to see so many people around us. So such a race here, what's the season gonna look like for you for the next couple of months? Well, I think there is uh, St. George uh, World Championship, and I guess there is Kona, well. <laughs> I, I guess if you, if you rock up on Monday, there might be a Kona slot. Yeah, probably, but uh, there are also many other races that I want to participate and um, I'm just trying to focus on one race at a time and do my best each time. Well, we wish you best of luck for all those races for now. Just enjoy, celebrate. Right. We're excited to have you here and congratulations once again. Well, thanks to all of you, to the team, the crowd, the volunteers and well, thank you. Hamburg is great. Thank you. Well, thanks to Till Shank for uh, conducting our interviews down there right now. We're standing by for our podium presentation for sure. But let's get you caught up on our age group men as they get across the finish line. So first across so far, nothing's over until the very end of the night, of course. But Sasha Hubert was first across the line with a 2.58 closing for an 8.30. Then it was Jonas Weller from Germany as well with a 3.01 with a time of 8.32, but Olaf van der Berg from the Netherlands has run a 2.50 down there today. What a great run from Olaf as we go down now to Heine uh, down here for fourth place. Yep, she is in fourth place. She will take that third slot to Kona, a step off the podium, which uh, no doubt is a little bit of a disappointment, but I think she'll be thrilled uh, to secure her invitation uh, to compete on the big island of Hawaii in October. So a great performance for her, her marathon time unofficially 3.02.02 uh, for a total time of 8.56.31 from the woman from Finland. Look at that, we've got uh, three of our athletes, second, third and fourth going three hours, 3.02, 3.02. And the smile on her face says it all, Dee Dee. She is ecstatic to know that she's going to get that spot to go to the world championship and that's exactly what she was after. And now it's another Finn, you know, athlete making it to the start line, you know, uh, going over to Kona as well. So we've already, you know, seen the likes of, um, you know, Laura Phillip getting across the finish line today with a 2.45, a 2.50 for our top age group male, getting across the line so far. Maybe we're going to have a woman with the fastest run time today Overall in Hamburg with a 2.45 by Laura Phillip as we look over the top of our finish line right now. This is going to be going all night long right up until the midnight hour where we'll get all of our athletes across the finish line. And don't forget, stay with us on the Ironman Now Facebook Watch channel right here because that's going to be where you want to see all your favorite athletes coming in to those late closing hours. Oh, absolutely. Uh, if you need a dose of inspiration, you just turn on that finish line cam and see the <laughs> celebrations. They will go well into the night. And I tell you, the crowds by that point will absolutely fill this square. Uh, we heard Manon Genet say how refreshing it was to actually have fans back at Ironman races. There was so much gratitude throughout last year that we could get to races uh, but certainly uh, crowds were sort of discouraged from gathering, but we are, you know, resuming a more normal uh, pace to life and, and so great for the athletes and the crowds out there uh, to have a dose of inspiration uh, and to be together once again uh, at Ironman race courses. Great to see the crowds coming out. Great to see the athletes getting out there and running along the streets of Hamburg today. Four laps is what they're tackling right now. The age group athletes are on the Hoka. Time to fly run course. We are standing by for our athlete podium presentation in our Ironman European Championship Hamburg Pro Women's Race. That will be coming up momentarily and we will wrap our part of the show 
soon after that. We'll give you some highlights packages coming right up as well. But today, Laura Phillip was just absolutely astounding. Oh, just uh, again, I, I shake my head and, and marvel um, considering the, the, the time she missed in training. Uh, she's got to go back with her team and wonder if that was a blessing in disguise and do they learn from that and say, hey, maybe less is more, maybe a little bit extra rest going into this race. You know, these races uh, isn't a bad thing because she certainly put out uh, the performance of her career thus far. And again, we're so early into her career uh, that it makes me shake my head to think about what might be possible in years to come from Laura Phillip as we see her once again uh, bounding towards the finish line, the joy, uh, the celebration. Uh, I think she astounded even herself out there today. Well, look at this. She's just striding out. She's not slowing down one iota. She wants to get across that finishing line. She wants to solidify a very fast time in an 818 in an Ironman triathlon unassisted. Absolutely incredible time today. She gets across that finish line in first place. 8-18-21, unofficially on the clock today. Laura Phillip takes out the European Championship once again, but it was Chelsea Sadara in a first Ironman distance race. She was gallant in her second place today. She led the swim. She got onto the bike and did her own thing. She was very solid through all parts of that race and onto the run course just failing just a little hey, she, bit, you know. She flirted with some dark spots out on that marathon course, but that's the experience she needs to make her better and stronger for the next time out. But good enough to get the nutrition back into the tank. She got a little bit of a spring back in a step toward the last five kilometres or so and ends up coming in in second place and the second spot on the podium. And a great congratulations from our two champions today. That is Laura Phillip and that is Chelsea Sodaro. They're both booked their spots to Kona and the third place belongs to Manon Genet from France who was just rock solid all day long and finishing up and closing with a 302 marathon respectable and an 852 overall time podium is set for our women's here at the Ironman European Championship again in one universal theme across the board for all of our professional women who have made their way across the finish line today the support of the volunteers and the crowds of support here in Hamburg. Every single one of our professional females has said, Hamburg is simply next level. We certainly have experienced that, Greg. We know the history of this, this city and how it embraces uh, its triathlon racing, uh, be it the WTCS short course racing format or uh, when we come uh, with Ironman here to town. These crowds absolutely love it. It is the active city and boy, do they embrace their athletes and the athletes that come from around the world to compete here. Well, just look at the crowds, you know, lining the 10 and a half kilometer run course down here in Hamburg, and they'll be out there all hours of the night, you know, getting all their favorite athletes across the line. And now we see that uh, our next athlete to get across the finish line here, absolutely fantastic. Now we get Chantel Sainter getting in across that line. There he is uh, right there. That is uh, try rating Mr. Try rating himself. Let's go down now for the podium presentation. In an Ironman debut in an incredible 8.36.42, fastest, second fastest rookie time in history, representing the United States, Chelsea Sodaro. <laughs> Let's get ready to make some serious noise. She was the defending champion coming into the race here, and she did defend. In an incredible 8 hours, 18 and 20 seconds, setting a new Ironman world record. Representing Germany, Laura Fille.
And here we go one more time. Hamburg, you are top three ladies. Congratulations, you make Chuck the beer. Oh, that's hilarious. Just a little bit of athletic brew over the shoulder. Well, you take it. No, you take it. You have it. Laura Phillips sets a record here, 818.20. That is a course record here in the Ironman European Championship. Hamburg, Chelsea Sodaro goes into second place and on the podium in third place, Manon Genet. So the podium, once again, is set right here at the Ironman European Championship. We're going to take a short break. We've got a great highlights package coming up right after this. We've seen the first of it down there in Hamburg right now. Right here, what a great race today, and it was fantastic. Laura Phillip taking the win in emphatic style, a course record right here, 8.18.20. Second place, it was a great first race for our rookie, and that was Chelsea Sodaro. And then finishing off, Manon Genet having a good all-round day there, Didi. Absolutely. So much inspiration out on this race course from start to finish. And boy, uh, Hamburg put on a show here today. The weather cooperated. The athletes had really, really great conditions out there. It was, it was a race for the ages. And, and again, a record-setting performance from Laura Phillip. Let's see how the whole thing uh, unwound here this morning from the start. Yep, let's go down to 6.15 in the morning. That was when we started here. Local time in Hamburg. We got off to a great start. And it was our lead four athletes that right off the bat, they got into a nice little pack and started swimming as two groups of two. And then they all came together. And right at the very end, it was Chelsea Sodaro, the iron rookie that came to the front of the race. It was Laura Phillip, the eventual winner that stuck to her feet like glue. But then in transition, it all started to unfold. That's right. The longest transition here we have in Ironman racing. Uh, Laura Phillip took full advantage of that as she jetted through transition, was the first to mount the bike and never looked back. It was the women behind that continued to chase the rookie. Chelsea Sodaro sat by herself in second for most of the day, but a very respectable performance, losing only three and a half minutes uh, by the end of the bike to Laura Phillip. Great pacing out there by the Iron Rookie, well-trained and well-advised, knowing that everything can and will go wrong in an Ironman race. A little mishap here, you know, out there on course, a little bit of a shoe slip, but it was our leader that went down there first and turned around in first place, and that was Laura Phillip. But this was Manon Genet. She was in third place, just going back and forth in fourth place with Chantel Sainter all day long until the last part of the bike ride. But this was one of the moves that Manon Genet put on Sainta for the very last time to go into third place on her own. That's right. Sainta and Genet traded uh, leads here as the two of them incented each other to the finish, but it was Laura Phillip off the bike in record-setting performance out there. A uh, little misturned as she went to rack her bike, but she set out on the marathon course uh, with single-minded focus. Zero flaws in this athlete's uh, gate today, and this was coming in off the bike, Chelsea Sodoro, and she got stuck into it right from the outset. She got a beautiful pace going. The rhythm was right there, and then it was this young lady here. This was Laura Laura uh, Phillip today on an incredible day. She, nothing went wrong. Everything went to plan. The pace was right there. And at the end of the day, it was going to be the pace that she needed for a race record. But getting back to Chelsea Sodoro, this was a great way to start the race. The first two and a half laps 
fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. Her form looked great. She was giving away just handfuls of seconds to Laura Phillip here and there, but ultimately on the day, Laura Phillip, just too strong, even surprised herself with that shocking 245-39 run split. 8.18.20 for the win for Laura Phillip in second place in 8.36 in her very first Ironman race and an 8.52 going out to France with Manon Genet and that is how we filled our podium today on a beautiful day here in downtown Hamburg. We're not uh, going to leave you. You can stay right there and you can watch all the finishes going late into the night for Didi Griesbauer. I am Greg Well saying so long. This is the end of our live show right here from Hamburg and we'll see you in a couple of weeks' time at Ironman Frankfurt. And, Didi, that will be our Ironman Pro Race for our men. And here we have our recap of our top five. It was Laura Phillip all day, so strong, 8 18 20. The Iron Rookie, Chelsea Sodaro, 18 22 back. Manoj Day from France in third. Heine Hartikainen out of Finland in fourth place. And rounding out the top five, Chantal Sainter. Bittersweet for her, the first one not to collect that Kona slot, but her time will come. Yeah, her time will definitely, you know, she gave it a great shot today and, you know, very respectable. And uh, But now it's time to say goodbye from uh, Hamburg right here on behalf of Didi Griesbauer. I am Greg Welch. We will come again to you at Ironman Frankfurt in a few weeks' time, just a little bit south from Germany.